Welcome to the start of the group stages here for the Elite League. We had five days of Swiss stage action where we saw eight teams qualify and now they're going to join some other incredible teams that already got a direct invite to the group stages. Lizard, excited for the action today? How are we doing? I'm doing fine. Actually, woke up uh, just recently. It's not really that <clears throat> early here, 10 a.m., but uh, what a better day to start uh, uh, than with a cup of coffee and a really nice series coming up in this Swiss. It's not Swiss. It's round robin, round robin stage. Is it right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ram Robin Sage, Group Sage, whatever you want to call it. We'll take a look at the Swiss Stage qualifiers, though. And in fact, our first series, we got an NTD vs. OG, two of the teams that did qualify through the Swiss Stage. And actually, they played each other in the Swiss Stage as well. So I'm sure we'll uh, be able to take a look at that. But this is a nice little table to put it all together. Boom, Entity, well, Boom and Entity, I should say, were the only teams that went flawless. And then, of course, there were a couple teams with 3-1 victories. And then those crazy 3-2 series, which we saw last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last night we had uh, a lot of really nice... Like, the last couple of days, I feel like, had the best series. I don't know, is it because... The, the the teams are playing against each other and they have to fight to the death you know to get eliminated or to go through but the last couple of days had the, the good old full best of trees but i'm looking forward to these teams that have been invited directly we're not gonna get them immediately i believe but some of them are looking really scary at the moment and i haven't really casted them in the last couple of tournaments so i'm yeah i'm excited about this i have to uh, see what team liquid can do i've seen some um interviews by them recently in which they aren't really happy with the position that they are in so maybe th that shakes things up a little bit and uh, we see team liquid finally uh, taking gold maybe in the tournament I know I'm just coping here, but uh, a lot of uh, different teams as well, Team Falcons, that have been not really on the rise. They have been on top for quite some time now, uh, playing excellent Dota, Team Spirit, of course. And then like these teams that have qualified, you know, that we don't really see very often in tournaments. Uh, as of late, we, ha we see them like OG coming in strong. Um, going through the Swiss stage. I mean, they, they didn't really win every single series. They didn't go clean, but uh, they're also looking like they're finally improving. Unfortunate for Nigma fans, for Secret fans, we're not going to see those teams as they did drop the ball. They did get uh, eliminated during the Swiss stage group. But even them, like I feel like even those teams are... Um, it's kind of sad to say even those teams for such powerhouses as you call them but even them uh, they have improved a bit and you can see that they're on the upward they have the upward trajectory yeah yeah that they do indeed so the first series of the day like we saw in the schedule is going to be entity versus og running through the teams now and the players they uh they actually played off against each other as well in the swiss stage and that was a 2-0 victory for entity so Bit of a different result than what we saw in the Birmingham qualifiers. Of course, that was a different roster with OG then, but they actually were able to beat Entity at that stage in in two one fashion. But Entity they have been they've been looking very good. I had the opportunity to cover some of their games in the one win tournament uh, where they. Well, I, but yeah, where they won the grand finals, I believe versus Virtus Pro. I think three one was uh, was the score count in the end and. They are just, they're clicking. They're clicking, and I really think in particular, finally, I'm seeing Watson, like, just do rank one things. I don't think there was ever a doubt of his, like, play, like, his skill overall, but I think now he's really starting to have performances like Yutora, where in some games he can just solo carry and, and get the team over the finish line, and previously we weren't seeing as many of those games for Watson. Yeah, I mean, this entity team is just too cool for me. It's one of these teams that, uh, you know, they, they came into the scene with a fresh stack that was pretty much unknown, and they started dominating with Watson and Storm Stormer, and it looked really damn good for them. Um, of course, they did have to switch the team up a little bit with some players leaving, joining different teams. But right now, this stack that they've got, like this, this set of five players looks... I don't know why, but when I look at them, I I'm feeling like, okay, there's some synergy here. And then I open up their profile and, I, okay, these are all Eastern Europeans. 
it's all like Russia, it's Belarus, it's uh, Ukraine. I don't know if you can call Kazakhstan. It's not Europe, but uh, it, 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 they speak the same language or can speak the same language. So there's a lot of uh, connection between these players from pubs, from previous teams as well. And uh, because of that, I feel that their ceiling is really high. Um, I'm a big fan of no one as well. Like I, I do feel that this guy, you know, true history has had really strong performances on mid like maybe a couple of patches he wasn't really on point but most of the time he was uh for for how i saw it at least most of the time he was he wasn't the problem in the teams that he was playing with he had some stacks that weren't on his level though yeah i think also like his down years where you look at him joining OG, for example, he was on that roster for almost a year playing as a carry. And I was very impressed with the transition he actually made to the carry role, where he was grinding pubs. I think at one stage he was like top 15 rank or something in, in Europe and made a very easy transition to a role that can be very difficult with a lot of the carries around at the moment. And I also have been a very big fan of no one. I think he was a pivotal reason why there was so much success on, on Virtus Pro. And um, it was exciting to, to see him jump regions a little bit as well because got to keep in mind he had a short stint on smg over on in southeast asia so let's see this, this entity team at the moment looking very strong of course og are building up momentum we actually had a chance to speak to r as well after one of their wins and should Ari we talk about them a bit maybe about OG? OG? Yeah, we, yeah. We, can, we can come we, maybe we can dabble mm -hmm. into in, into the og talk i mean not too much though you know we don't want to we don't want to sound too biased there's a lot to, to discuss with these lads but where, where, where would you like to start? Is there someone you would like to start with, OG? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, very uh, familiar with the organization, right? And uh, did a couple of those OG monkey business shows and everything. I have to say they have this member. His name is uh, organization member. His name is Chadnar. This guy is just like, I, I feel like whatever organization he is in, it's doomed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's uh, they they have good uh, social media presence. He's a part of it. They also have a really nice stack here. That's stack. Why am I calling team stack? A set of five players that have they have recently. It can be said gathered um, with a couple of SA players and okay versus entity. They didn't look great in the Swiss stage, but I do believe that they're one of those teams that can adjust quickly. Why do I feel that? It's because they have this position five that's a boomer. Like he played some insane games even in the Swiss stages. Like, um, like the skills did not go away one second. I, the Chen game was good, even though they lost. The Enchantress game for me was also really solid. But most importantly, I feel that the the experience that he's bringing to the table is uh, very valuable for them. I will see. Let's get our draft on the way. Let's see what changes we have. I think, uh, you know, like like I said, NTD, they've recently played versus OG in the in the Swiss stage. So they're able to get a 2-0 victory over there. Um, and it is going to be the same response entity in game one. They opened up with the Batrider. Um, we, bands are looking pretty similar overall. A lot of respect. Of course, you need to deal with Fishman's Chen. In that series as well, both bands were picked it. off. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you reckon you got? What's a go-to order? What's a Mac? Uh, What's a Mac's order? That's DM, right? I feel like that is DM, yeah. I feel like that's a, some chicken nuggies and a big burger, and that's it. You know? Okay. Uh, that's the, right. uh, he strikes me like a, like a vanilla guy when going into into McDonald's. <laughs> Plus, it's breakfast. Maybe he got one of those. Uh, maybe he got one of those seconds, egg really? things. You know. If he's looking after the, his diet, like the egg sandwiches or whatever they're called, like egg burgers. Yeah, the muffins. Dude, they, I mean, I got them a couple of times because there was nothing else to eat. So I'd get them and they would hit my, I would remove the bread. Like I was, uh, I was really into counting carbs and stuff. So I'd remove everything and just eat the eggs. And those eggs are so wet. I, I don't want to talk about that anyways. Bat Rider versus Dragonite. Um, like OG, like you talked about this a little bit. I feel that snatching this DK away from this man on the screen from no one as well is very important once again. And um, 
just having it on your side like the dragonite has been looking insane i they have a bit of a problem with cameras these teams i i, I see um every now and then but we're gonna see two big strength boys timber saw is banned out Dra dk and centaur picked up okay like this is abusable a bit i feel like yeah i guess life still is banned so looking at percent damage for entity Maybe some spirit vessel builder is something we could be considering. Ancient um, apparition. <laughs> yeah, but that hero is non-existent. They will still go for the Bane, though. So, again, this is, of course, a Fishman staple and something that they played in both games versus OG very recently. Mm -hmm. It's also one of those heroes that every time I'm faced against, I go back and reread what he does. I feel like they've... Uh, switched it up way too many times for me as well but it is a fishman staple like he's probably one oh. of the best bane players like the man is always on point like the saves were massive in previous tournaments with entity with that sleep and darkseer yeah like this uh this little man was around in the last series that we watched with og even it wasn't og playing it they played against it right it was heroic with darkseer uh, Darkseer Tusk, I feel like, versus OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Cofield on Tusk, and they played Darkseer on 3. And they had a really good time, and they did win that game. Now Entity decided to kind of roll the same kind of strategy against OG. But what needs to be said is, Bat and Darkseer... I, I don't know. I feel like that lane might be actually uh, pretty good. It's not a melee for with the Darkseer, but I feel like it could be good. I, I, do you feel like the dark here is abusable though with not seeing his his lane matchup like uh, how do you feel about this well uh, what do you pick like you don't see his lane matchup now og can insta go three cores and pick an am here i guess i mean like that's your surely option. oracle like it's such they a good oracle to... game yeah but what how, how do you fit oracle ah okay never mind i'm i'm dumb you're right uh you're completely right there's oracle there's enchantress they go for Rubik instead first. No, no, no. You're, you're completely right. For some reason, I'm looking at Entity and thinking that they need to draft against Darkseer, you know, even though <laughs> Darkseer is on their side. Uh, caster's fault. Caster's fault. Blame the caster. Your fault. Don't, don't, fault. don't loop me into this. Yeah, no. this is... <laughs> I mean, Caster's as one caster. One caster fault. One caster caster's fault. fault. Okay, cool. um, yeah, they go Rubik. I mean, Rubik and Chanter sounds good. Even versus oh. Bane, it's solid. They had a good Enchantress game previously. It's good versus Darkseer. Oracle as well is kind of out of the meta, but versus Bane, versus Bat, would work. They go with Ench. I think Ench is a bit easier. Uh, more meta. Um, if the lane goes poorly, like you can do more. Sometimes Oracle just gets like dodged or he doesn't win the lane or Darkseer jungles early and then suddenly he's useless. Like he isn't really... Oracle isn't doing anything. Like, Darkseer gets too much. Even though I would like Oracle regardless. If he was in the meta, he would be picked here for OG. Yeah, I, I think it's also like if it was Insania you're on you're playing on the other side, you would this would be an Oracle pick instead of an Enchantress. Like I think it's I really don't remember seeing Seb play it. And of course he's very familiar with Enchantress. I think that's another factor that, that goes into it. So um, let's see that they're saving tomatoes here to last. Maybe there's, I mean, I can't imagine there's going to be flex with the Dragonite because the Darkseer is, is pretty good against it as well with this Scepter build. So um, let's see, more than likely, you know, it is going to be busy and playing the DK mid and Entity there going to pick up their, well, either the carry, either the mid laner. Yeah, let's see what they get for uh, Mr. No One. They don't have the last pick in general, so... They can get their... Okay, they get their safe lane instead. Instead, they get the Watson Morphling. They, they also get this hero that's uh, pretty much... Oh, I, I would say the top one carry at the moment. Like, there is nothing that comes close. Faceless Void, perhaps. Um, Life Stealer, of course, is picked a lot. Luna as well, but Morphling still feels like the best. And Antimage had to be banned. Like, you have to ban AM now. Um, what else? Like, you're banning out Sunny. the AM. Sven is also really good versus Darkseer. It farms well. It gives you some nice tempo. I do like Sven as well. 
um i'm just thinking can you ball out with something like a pl because you have a good inch lane if you could give um if you could give them some timado pl or naga that's also very solid into morphling like maybe it doesn't yeah. uh, come online as fast as sven because he just farms really quickly but this looks like an amazing pl game to me it looks like a solid naga game as well all the illusions hitting Bane, Batrider, Morphling can't really deal with. I'm I'm actually happier with Naga or PL. It's it's a much harder game for Bane than. Yeah, I agree, and uh, it's very difficult. NTD they have the twenty third pick, so you will not be able to respond to an illusion hero. So you kind of have to like preemptively go for a mid laner with a bunch of AOE, and I think Pango is definitely one of them. Whether this is mm -hmm. now whether this is because they're trying to protect some illusion hero or whether it's just because your know, pango is very good and that's something that they're kind of lacking like a little bit of aoe control because they are a bit single target at the moment from entity minus the darks here um i think bat rider and team fights is, is quite single target with lasso so what are some other options for no one as well um there's a storm that you could go for no one his staple like uh, good laner has a rubik to worry about and that's it and also good to hunt down most heroes um i feel like did you see this dragonite and centaur i'd like to rip one of those out and put them in entity somehow entity I, I, I feel like they need more than just this uh, yeah 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 razor was a good good another one you know these dps razors i yeah. They can get this AoE, like you said, this flash, flashy hero that goes in and out. But I'm not sure that that really rounds the draft up well. I'd rather have this... I'm a beast sitting in front and I have this Dark Seer that's going to follow up with Vacuum Wall if you go on me. You okay. have to go on me, though, because I'm hitting your towers. Like a Lash, lash Band. Uh, I don't know. Dragonite, Razor... What I mean, else you said like, DP. DP. Like, you brought that yeah. up before. How do we feel about it, though? It's good. Like it's it's a good DP game if they want to go for it. But let's see. Storm is also fine if you want to go the different route. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. It's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Just big, stupid <laughs> goes in front, yeah. has an iron shell on it, on, on him, you know, and just creates chaos. I, I love this. And importantly, a bunch of AOE damage, which was. You know, let's see if it's enough to prevent the PL or the Naga for Tomato. The Sven is still in the pool as well, if that's an angle they want to go down. I mean, maybe there's even a another carry potential for him. Um, I, I, let's see. I still, I, mean, feel, the... I, I still feel like the illusions are solid. They go with the Weaver. Ooh, okay. So... It's... Hmm. I mean, you have a... You have that uh, mana burn talent as well on Weaver. You can go for the Disperser build as well, and it's be the hero becomes annoying. Um, I, I'm not sure, like, he probably is going to get that Gleipnir. It's a really good hero into into Bat. Like, you... But, holy shit, I... I the more I speak of it, the... I'm not sold. Like, let's see. OG is cooking something, I'm not sold. I'm, I'm seeing this Weaver into Bane and Bat. Like they're yeah. gonna, like you're picking a hero that literally has to build defensive items now. Like you need a Lincolns on this guy, or someone has to buy it. Like, how do you save the Weaver from one grip or one lasso? Like Morphling with the Kanda will instantly blow him up. Uh, huh? What are the benefits, though? Um, it's a strong the, lane. I mean, that has to be the big benefit, right? Like Enchantress yeah. Weaver sounds like a really strong safe lane for, for OG. It is, it is. Then again, when I look at that lane, no matter what you picked, you're laning with an Enchantress versus Darkseer. Like, Ench Dumpster is that lane. Most of the time, no matter what you pick, you should have a good start because one of the Iron Shells is gone. You're never going to play versus double Iron Shell. Unless Seb wastes his Enchant, like, you're never playing versus uh, double Iron Shell. I'm just thinking if there is some build that they can go for on this Weaver that makes it so solid. Like, the Gleipnir is pretty good the shard is very nice um you can be very active on the weaver of course that's like one of those things he's a scuddy builder as well into into the morphling very mobile and they do have dragonite wait yeah they no they're not the one do they have dragonite 
Yeah, or do you have Dragonite? Yeah, they have Dragonite. Okay, so with, with the Dragonite, you can kind of have another semi-core that plays the game really fast, and you can rely a bit more on BZM as well to carry you with Manta, Aghanims, Mage Slayer, whatever. So, uh, looking at it that way, yeah, if you spread if you spread the farm among them, you can play the game as five a little bit faster. I do like with your Doxy point though. I think it is nice. Sorry, with the the Dragonite point, I think it's nice again because the Doxy wall. Like you, you often look at some agi carries that Doxy really likes to play into. You know, Luna, Terrorblade, whatever. I really think Dragonite with the the Scepter build is is always nice to be able to get a, a illusion inside the team fight. So that is something that could potentially backfire for for OG as this game goes on, but. Let us see. Again, recently, Entity, they did play OG in the Swiss stage and they were able to get a 2-0 victory. So let's see what OG have learned from that series as a whole. It does seem like, though, when you were talking about the Weaver's itemization, it seems like he's going to need a, a lot of items this game. Like Maelstrom for farming, Lincoln's... I, I would be a little bit intrigued if he... Uh, surprised, I should say, if he doesn't go Lincoln's because all the single target... Um, mm -hmm. you know, and then, like you said, Scardy looks really nice for them. Is he going to need like a damage item afterwards? Because you know, maybe Seb can go down the right click like we've seen him do often on the Enchantress. So it does kind of seem like though Tomato needs a lot of items to have a good game, which is a bit of a concern. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Sometimes if you are really winning the lane hard though, and uh, this Weaver has... Um, like a very early Lincoln's, very early Maelstrom, Maelstrom Shard, basically. Like, I really think this hero doesn't need a lot when it comes to farming. Uh, Maelstrom is already enough. Maelstrom Shard and you're farming as fast as anyone. Like, you're literally uh, farming as fast as a Luna with Mask of Madness or Manta. Like, you're just... the Shard does so much. Um, but yeah, let's see. Lincoln's 100% something that he'll need. Are you surprised we didn't actually cast as many Primal Beast games in the, the Swiss stage? It seemed like maybe it's a very, at least what I've been seeing, it's a very dependent thing on the team and the players, but I feel like the hero is quite strong. I'm surprised okay. we didn't get it more. So this is this is how it goes. Are you ready for some, for some, some knowledge? Five, right. fi for some five head knowledge. You don't see Primal Beast a lot because the hero isn't really that strong, but you see him and only in the games in which he really is. And because of that, you get the notion that he's actually really good. You you, you catch my drift, and then because I of... Catch, I catch it. Yeah, and because of that, you kind of feel, okay, this hero is actually really strong, why aren't we seeing it more? And then you see it more in games in which he isn't good, and then he falls off again. Uh, it's like the, the meta classic circle of life, I, I'd say. But yeah, versus DK, you can do well. The trample allows you to farm. Um, you versus most heroes, like even versus some timber saws, you can just trample the wave, go back into the jungle, farm the hard camp. Like uh, I do like the fact that you can always get farm with him. It is going to be a little bit difficult for how he's going to be able to play the post laning stage on no one though because again dragonite is a hero that puts a lot of pressure onto the tower and primal beast is someone that likes to rotate and, and influence some of the side lanes so you're going to have to do it at a, a cautious timing whenever bzm is, is not really going to be able to use that out of dragon form aggressively yeah and you have to have a lane to rotate to you have to have a lane that is at least uh, doing fairly well like so far on this bottom lane this is the first iron shell that I'm seeing, the first one that has been used, and they're not going to even enchant it because it's so easy to, to just kill off the creep with two ranged. Um, also, Seb never even leveled, which is also something that's interesting. He never leveled uh, his second spell. He's just keeping it to see. If he needs enchant, he's going to use it. If he doesn't need it, he can keep the point, maybe take... I mean, he's going to take... I don't know what he's actually doing. Like, you're going to take enchant regardless. <laughs> like, you need it. Uh, heal is nice, but you really need the enchant to make the zero work. Yeah. And, and what about top though? Because you were mentioning, you know, the Dino kind of needs some side lane to be able to rotate to. 
this definitely feels like a lane that is a yep. little, bit, little bit more difficult for him to rotate to, no? Um, yeah, this is the lane in which you should expect OG to do fairly well. Like Rubik plus Centaur, old school, very strong lane. Lift, stun, there's a lot of damage versus Fishman versus Watson as well. And you can see that already, like Centaur is having a blast. Morphling doesn't have a lot of rain, but lane. All right. DM will be fine. Who found it? Looks like DM was actually able to strike first. Uh, it was it was more about OG striking first and then DM getting the the kill. Like they overcommitted a bit. Enchant was used. They get a kill on Weaver. Like look, Weaver dies really damn quickly if he's double iron shelled around him. It's just that double uh, double iron shell shouldn't be a thing on this lane. Um, because of Hench. This time, though, it, it, like, it, a lot of damage was dealt regardless. Well, see if it's going to be played a little bit more differently now. Only two points up in the enchant, so the cooldown is a little bit less. I guess it is the one issue, though. Like, Enchantress likes to play with creeps in the lane, and then if you're forced to save enchant for the shell, Maybe some of your harassment is reduced due to that. Yeah, it's it's really a lane in which you have to give up on taking a creep. That's usually how it goes, at least. You, you give up on taking a creep and you just uh, use the creep that you enchant. Because you can, you know, you, you dominate the creep and you enchant it when, he, when the enchant is used on a creep. But of course, there's your carry is going to miss its CS because of that. And Seb, you might die again. Yep, looks like he will, maybe. All right, Dim's able to step in okay. with the vacuum. So, one thing that I have to say, like, Bat Rider was always a pain in the in the butt for Ench. Like, it's just one of the worst heroes to play against. Like, throughout every patch, even when Enchantress was played as a core, Bat Rider just owns you. Because he doesn't care about Untouchable, he, do he deals more damage than your heals, and he can reposition you very easily. So, yeah, Seb is like, okay, the first death for him, but this bot lane is going 10 times better for Entity than I expected. Yeah. Does seem like though mid lane is going quite well for BZM. 22 and 15 compared to the 19 and 7 with the Dragon Tail making it very easy to be able to secure last hits. Bottom again, Seb is getting ran down. They've already used the Flame Break, but the Surge is going to be there as soon as the Enchant is used, so... They are, uh, they're bullying Seb, and Tomato isn't really at the stage where he can punish top lane as well with the rotation. No one should be able to get the last little bit of damage onto Whisper. That is a much needed kill for the Primal Beast. This is going wrong everywhere for OG at the moment. Like you said, BZM at least getting some farm mid, but OG should not be happy with this can't be happy and you know like one, the way that you deal with dark series you zone him out early on and he cannot get his farm and he's constantly under leveled he can't get to his level 3 iron shell that's what you do to him but once he gets to this level 3 iron shell this lane is done enchantress just doesn't do much here whatever creep she gets it's not going to help her bizim has a dd though Maybe something he can do. Tomato was always wrapping around DM. No enchant. He's got surge, nice but stun. BZM is going to be able to hold the stun as soon as the surge is used. I mean, Night. it is a kill that they're able to find. They do get both wisdom runes nonetheless for Entity, but you're very happy with being able to get BZM into the game and slowing down the offlane darks here. Yeah, if it was some support kill, that's probably not worth it, but trading wisdom runes, but killing the Darkseer that actually had a fantastic game. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Nicely done by uh, Seb as well. After the rough leaning stage, gets that heal troll. Mid lane. Mid lane, yeah. This was once out of Ari. He may even keeping in to go for that. Top lane, okay. Watson and, and Fishman again, so Whisper left alone. A lot of attention from OG put around the, the mid lane to try and help BZM with taking the tower, but that leaves a vulnerable Centaur with two deaths now in, in game one. Mid lane. 
Should be fine. They have a centaur stomp if they want to go a bit more. But this is all about securing the rune. More than anything else. Katomi actually gets it. He also might... Yo, if he steals these stacks, it's oh, no. so bad for OG. Like, this is huge. At least Whisper is coming in. He's going to get a lot of them, though. Um, he's, he almost he's got all, all of them. He got to wow. all of them, yeah. Ooh, it, this is just... Yeah. Good luck, OG. <laughs> it's it's not gonna be easy for for them to uh, come back off of off of this. Like your bat rider is level six almost. He's higher level than the, the same level as the offlane uh, centaur after the wave. Has that lasso now to work with? Your mid lane tier one tower fall, just fell to BZM. But uh, does it change? Can a lot? they go Let's on see. him? And they're gonna try. They have gets the stun. Ah, oh, with the stampede, yeah. I don't think they're really going to be able to touch no one, though. No one even... <laughs> an turns. angry use to the ultimate. Actually, they're going to be able to continue to go for this. Okay, never mind. The ulti will pay off the end. They're going to mechanism as well to help protect no one in case some other heroes look to show up. And meanwhile, Katomi, he's running down Whisper. They know the stampede is there. This is a level 6 bat rider. Pre-10 minutes in, double wisdom room and taking the stacks. I'm paying off huge here for the entity supports. Fishman now has his six as well. And the mid lane, very deep ward. Uh, your position for Rubik is level four. Enchantress level five. They're just... It, the, the difference in net worth isn't really that big though. Who's making this? I mean, Tomato, I guess. Way. Yeah, Tomato. Weaver is free. Oh. Fishman, first fiends, but a little bit awkward of a usage, and he's going to try and TP out. That is kind of ambitious, but I'd say much needed kill. That, that, that Bane was a very high level. 7 R going to be level 5 now. Yep. Both of the supports getting level 5 now. Level 3 enchant helps enchantress out as well. Uh, one thing that I didn't really mention is, is this Rubik Bane matchup. Like, it's not that bad for Rubik. Like, if you can steal a grip, and it's not an if, you should always be able to. So, they have this blade mill now in Centaur and BZM and enchantress. And this is what I expected from them. I expected from them to start uh, really pushing in early on. But uh, this isn't necessarily that early, just because of the way the lanes went. It's still good. They got tier one mid, tier one top. Dyer's top tower has fallen. And bottom as well, in fact. So all tier one towers have been claimed here for OG. Probably a big yeah, reason why this net worth doesn't look that bad as well. And today we'll try and smoke and intercept OG on the retreat back to their high ground. Might be in a prime position as well to catch OG unaware, and they're going to do just that. Oh, a little bit awkward with the Nightmare. It will miss out on some of the important damage on the Whisper. Nice now, stampede. he's going to be able to retaliate. His own stun sets up for Tomato's rotation. Now, with the damage out of the Weaver, this is a disastrous fight for Entity. Fishman's going to be killed off solo from Ari. Luckily for no one, had an invis in the bottle, but a little bit messy from Entity. Oh, super messy, I would say. <laughs> like... Uh, trying to use sleep when you have what you have firefly and you have trample around you that it's probably not going to work just to re just resets the fight in OG OG's favor whisper with the stampede great to see tomato getting involved and I love this as well he's just instantly back to bottom recognizing like this is his primary location on the map very easy for him to be able to shove it out and then you know duck out of any danger that comes. Yeah, the, the, one of the best things about this hero definitely is the mobility and how fast he gets in and out of fights and also you are uh, like what I like about Weaver is how he scales like he's always uh, it, it might not be the hardest carry later on in the game but he is always able to be active Fishman yeah, far, what's, though. this is not gonna happen <laughs> Oh, he got three TP, sorry, two TPs out with that. It might 
signal yeah. is a ward nearby? <laughs> yeah, they do. <t> <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> a little piggy running away, waving at them, you know? Like, he just scares everyone. Usually when a Bane goes on you, you're probably dead as he's setting up for something. Uh, luckily, right now, there's not really a lot of burst damage on Entity. There's th this Primal Beast and that's it. So if you want to sleep, kill someone off, Primal Beast needs to be a part of it until Morphling comes online. Once, once Morphling is there, of course, it becomes easier. I do like the adaptation, by the way, of only the Morbid Mask on Morphs now. Like, no one's going top lane Morph. He's fine. Um, I have I have no idea. I've, yeah, I've, no no I one is like going Vlad's a... anymore. Yeah. It seemed... We've got a couple of games, but really not as many as what we were getting when we saw that initial change to the Vlad's. So... I'm 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 really not quite sure. I mean, potentially it seems like people are going back for this, you know, Morbid Moss Falcon Blade. That was a nice thing about the Vlads that it gave you some mana regen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is a very like specific question for Morphling players. Yeah, it's just interesting. For me, it's not that much about the um, the item build itself is just how the meta evolves and how players copy each other so damn fast when it comes to what items they should buy and how fast everyone adapts to even these small little changes. Nice scan, Whisper. Although that is... Well, I mean, he's got the boys coming. He's baiting. I mean, they're going to be able to respond. Can they deal with the Fiend's Grip straight away? Maybe with Watson's damage, they can get Fiend's Whisper grip. before stolen. the reinforcement show, but the stolen grip... Strength Morph doesn't matter when all of OG are nearby to get the damage required. DM will actually rotate through, but it doesn't seem like it's a fight they can still take. Fishman? He's the one left behind. Not escaping this big dragon. Nice little bait there by uh, Whisper. He knew what was going to happen. He knew that most likely he will die. They have no saves on their side anyway. Uh, so he just baits this Fiend's Grip. Yeah, like, like we called out a little bit earlier, will prove to be massive for Ari. It's just a spell that... It, it's too easy to steal. You know, some of these spells that's just... Like, how do you... How do you dodge the steal on Bane? It's almost impossible. Radiance middle tower is under attack. I don't know who had the read, whether it was Whisper or someone else that scanned the smoke, but... That was pretty much the only reason why Whisper was able to have enough time to position himself accordingly and, and OG to react as well with the smoke. So very nicely done from whoever it was. They seem like they have an idea of Katsuomi farming pretty aggressively in OG's side of the map. But the miss of the stun, he's... Wow, he's actually out. <laughs> yeah, they're hitting OG with a lot of uh, voice lines and tips. Under hitting them uh, with their own weapon but yeah it's it's what you see a lot from bat riders by the way uh, to be expected like they find this farm on the map that not really any other uh, support can maybe an enchantress bit bot lane fishman do you have the damage uh, for this they are coming I'm if they don't defend it it's got to mean something else is happening on the map and they're actually looking for what's in top so Fishman, sorry, they'll get the kill bottom onto Whisper. But the question is, are they going to be able to get Watson as well? Waveform up in a couple of seconds. Oh, Ari's not going to check. Damn. Whisper died for nothing. Because <laughs> they had all the time in the world to react to that, by the way. They could have yeah. TP'd. Like, they could have rainbowed TP'd. That's how long it took Entity to kill him off. The only trick is... You don't really know if that's possible. You don't know where they are. You don't have this perfect vision at all times. So they went for the Morphling kill instead and uh, it didn't pay off. Rubik still has grip for a little while longer. I know on mid lane. Oh, they're going to try and shut down Whisper once again. This time it looks a little bit more difficult. There will nice be a response. Eyes on Diem and what he's able to Ooh. do with the vacuum wall. Oh my lord. That is perfect DM. Greaves as well to stop any threat of the turnaround potential and entity. Oh, they just rip him apart. 
That's the dark seer you want in your games. Exactly that. Perfectly done. Like cancels the grip as well. Vacuum walls everyone. Four heroes vacuum walled, right? Something like that. I think we were only one that manages to get away. Dark seer once again is in the meta, and I'm happy. I'm just happy. This hero just, just does makes the game more interesting. It's fun. The vacuum wall is always. It's always a feels good man when it's. Uh, when it goes through properly. Yeah, let's say that again. I mean, just look at this. You, you just, you're, you're baiting the, the primal beast. So much health. They cancelled the fiend's grip as well from Ari, who, who still had it inside that team fight. So not only did you get all the important heroes, but you also stopped that, that bit ult big ultimate that Ari uh, was, was utilizing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like this read is kind of... Speaking of Ari. see this, Ari, yeah. What's Uchi, got? They're going to consider about taking the fight. Bizim will jump in to cancel the Fiend's group, but Katomi can still chase Ari down. Uh, they are just lacking a lot of damage at the moment. Sam's no still going to be killed off. Maybe they can even look for more as well. Katsuomi's got to lasso up in a couple seconds. Whisper's going to jump in with the help of Tomato. They'll assassinate Fishman on the back line. Now trying to turn to Deem as well. Is this still a fight that OG wants to take as Watson? He's going uncontested at the moment. Maybe they're going to be able to isolate Katomi. They should be able to secure with a kill, but now it's getting a little bit more messy for Entity. Deep the inside wall. OG's territory. And the wall, the wall. They, 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 don't, they don't want to go through it. Because of that, they will get just these two kills and that's it. Yeah, another, another fight pretty favored to Entity, I feel like. And another fight in which... They don't lose a single core. They continue farming up, and these big items are, unfortunately for OG, coming really quickly for Entity. You have Primal Beast, no one with the BKB completed, flying in. Not even gonna talk about Darks here, he's got everything already. BZM. Lasso. Should be, yeah. I was gonna say, should be able to get it. For the Dragon Tail TPR. I just... It really feels like this game is all on Tomato's back. Which is going to be so much pressure. Because you have a Centaur who... Is about to be low in net worth. Are they actually going to get Tomato? Lincolns? Popped at the end. They don't they're have even going to search Fishman in. But they don't have Crib. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. It's like... They're, they're just trolling him at this point. <laughs> they, they, there's no way in hell they catch him here. No Lasso. No Grip. But... Still trying, you know, uh, nice effort by Entity. But for me, the, the problem is like this carriage carry matchup is a bit scary. I don't know. I look at Morphling, he's going for Kanda. Madu needs to be super careful because he can die just as some support. Like, usually, as Morphling, you jump in and you kill off supports with Kanda. Like, he can do the same to Weaver this game. Radiant he can do the same to Weaver, he can do the same to the Rubik, the Enchantress, really anyone he wants to. Entity with a sweep Just... across the map, top to bottom they go, they won't find anyone though. Uh, Katomi is smoked and he sees BZM. Oh, never mind, looks like they no will. Less, so. Yeah, that's probably a bit of an issue right now, but with Watson showing up, Whisper won't even think about jumping in, just gonna chill on the low ground. Bench, Recognizing a, a loss that it is, and now Seb as well. Gonna lose set, mo multiple members here. They have less so Without again. Tomato, really, there is no fight to be had. He's starting to run. Whisper with the jump. You'll keep Seb alive, but they're just gonna kill off Whisper instead. Tomato will TP in late, but. Yo, now. Again. Dark Series coming in as well. He's got everything. He's got Greaves, he's got Wall. Vacuum Wall is ready. If he w even wants to go in, they can wait out the course first. Let's see. No one is in. And Watson should have the finishing kill. Nice life near. Ooh. Oh, nice Lincoln's given over. I know if it would have been enough damage. Now, Fishman stuck on the low ground. Should be an easy kill for Tomato to get. BZM's going to be able to snag it as well. Entity should be able to escape with their remaining four members. Oh, I mean, OG Ruby. Hunt and Ari with the stolen nightmare. But he could be still on cooldown for no one currently. Can BZM get in range over the blink? Continue it to get cancelled thanks to the surge. Can he get the shield? They're going to take it away, and unfortunately, no one... Yeah, they're probably just going to be forced to leave in. Dim chucks out a random wall, really not doing too much in the end. No one does get the charge away. No way. Is he really going to live? Tomato's He's hunting, living. but... He's alive. 
they, they, they were playing around their spells. There, there are some big mind games happening that to us plebs might not be too obvious, but like Enchantress saving uh, Enchant, like Darcy saving Surge for the last moment, and they're just playing who who starts first. Because if you use this, this spell, if you use the, the sleep from Rubik too soon, then the Surge instantly comes afterwards and he's out. And uh, like he, eventually that's why Entity managed to get uh, Primal Beast out. Inch. Maybe Roche is Morphe. I mean, they can do Morphe's. whatever they want to at this point. It's literally uh, the only fight that OG is winning is, well, not really winning, but <laughs> when they lose a fight and then they respawn and somehow they catch them, catch some stragglers with Gleipnir. That's when they get tomato. Oh, sorry, the Bane went up instead of down. Mm, I, I don't think they can, like the two of them, anyway. It's just a bat, and even with the full grip, do you, can you actually kill him? I'm not sure. Mm, maybe they TP? I don't know. Yeah, I, you just don't have the time. He has Lincolns. And you're doing Rosh, you don't want to leave. Now it's possible, of course, but while you were doing Rosh, it just felt weird. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I mean, it's only 6,000 number lead. I, I'm honestly uh, quite surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, the the lead not being higher than what it is. Fights look... The, the fights only look okay when Tomato is involved and, and very early on as well. Not when he's, you know, starting to show up with one or two members dead. So mm. we're probably going to have to see OG start to play a little bit around Tomato or Tomato have to play around the rest of the other members because that's going to be even more difficult now with the ages though because it does make it very awkward to play together as five. Bizim is caught again. He has Manta. No extra stun lock as well. No one probably going to cancel. Are they really? Oh, they missed. They missed. They missed. He juked them. It's a really nice juke with the stampede. They were going to continue diving top lane. Tomato is caught, but how? Can you actually do something about? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's there's nothing. That's the problem. He's too tanky. He's Let running him out of him. <laughs> Bottom beat by Bizium. How? Okay. And then no one also got Seb. Seb. So, I mean, they're, like, they're running to try and connect to, to Tomato to try and deal with Bane, but Entity sees some free kills on OG's side of the map, and a high ground's not going to stop them. Seb is man. really making them work for it. They don't even get him. Get him. <laughs> What's but going they do on get, right now? They got Fishman because of that, you know? Like, while Seb was creating space, they got Fishman on the other side. And Shantress is, you know, it's a hard hero to kill. A hard hero to kill, a double enchant, like the second level of untouchable. Um, you use that enchant on primal beast, let's say, when he's using trample, like he can't get on top of you, he's dealing absolutely no damage. The only hero that really deals with her well, well, too, Batrider and Morphling, like Morphling can blow her up with Kanda, uh, is the burst damage that really hurts Ange the most. Top lane, Ari. Another lasso again, and no one's in a great position to be able to combine with Kataomi. Will be a kill into Ari. Tomato is close though. Should be able to have the damage required to, to kill off the Batrider. Dyer instantly teeping in though. And with the Lincoln's pop, Tomato needs to play safe. One for one. Mm -hmm. you know, like the, the way OG is splitting the map is the reason why they're uh, only 6k behind. Like you could see Entity, they're, they're making all these moves. Usually they have at least 3-4 heroes committed. Meanwhile... On OG, you have some enchantress farming with the creeps. You have Weaver always farming. Fishman, surged. Still no fiends group. <laughs> they just have a nightmare. And... Is he going to be enough to blow him up? Nice Lincoln's once again given over to Seb. Yeah. But man, a couple of crits just at the end. Yeah, with, with the Morphling, you can kill her. And uh, she is annoying, but Morphling just has too much attack speed anyway. Adaptive Strike will hurt. And this should be a tier 2 tower for them, even with the Glyph. There are some really big items once again coming for Entity. They have this Aghanim's Primal Beast. 
It is completed. I think DM Scepter is completed as well. Yeah, DM as well. The problem is, once again, on, on like we talked about it, on the other side you have these heroes that um, want to buy BKBs, like Centaur, but he needs a Lotus to help out with the Weaver problem, just to cast it on him. Katomi? I mean, jump in the burst. Yeah. When Seb's not able to get the, the nature tendons off, see how fast he's able to be blown up thanks to the Condor on Watson. Age is down in 30 seconds. They got him. Uh, well, he wanted to get got. Arista Lasso? No, wait. Lasso stampede. Oh, but it just sets up for Deem's vacuum once again. They're going to be able to retreat. It's a different placement than what we saw last time inside the river. So easy for OG to play accordingly inside their territory. Pulverized Stolen as well. So some respect needs to be given, but a good retreat from Entity recognizing this was a scary fight for them to take, and they're going to be happy with backing out with the melee barracks. Yeah, they used most of their spells as well, right? Like the wall is a big one with the vacuum. You get everything that you came for, you go back, because your Morphling also has 4,000 gold. So that's almost a full extra item to be completed in a very commanding stage, and their lead is growing further and further. I'm just trying to think, for OG, they need to have some insane steals from the Rubik. That's how it has to happen. And so far, Ari has been on point. Like, whenever I click on this Rubik, he has an ultimate stolen. They aren't too difficult to steal, that needs to be said, like Pulverize and Fiend's Grip. But still, like, he's, uh, las he's lassoing heroes, he's playing really damn well, keeping OG in it for now. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah, they're staying in it, but do we think this game gets easier for them as it goes on? Easier? Oh, all right, they're gonna have to stampede to get the DK out. Yeah, do we feel like this game gets a little bit easier, or like even though they're gonna be so. more than likely playing from a deficit? Um, I, I think it gets easier for them eventually. Oh, Ari, almost solo killing Fishman. Now Whisper's potentially getting baited. Seb wants to go. You get the kill, but are you going to be able to escape to get out, after yeah. getting the Bane? Ari's going to be killed. Okay. And one no one else one. is there. Something's going on in the mid lane. It's going to be a lasso. I mean, they've got the extra control and they get Tomato. Okay. That's super unfortunate for them. I believe he had a full uh, Satanic completed as well. It was flying out to him, so no buyback for him as well. This should be a tier 2 at least mid. Top lane, Seb, he falls as well. Uh, they make such a nice play on top lane. They get this kill, they bait out the wall, and then they lose Weaver completely unrelated on mid lane, and now they lose Seb as well, and it all kind of crumbles. Like you asked me if, if uh, the game gets easier, I, I do believe it does, but it, they need a lot of armor and a lot of heroes. The stage entity with two people dead there are going to be able to do a lot of objective damage to make it difficult for OG to actually get out of the map and find that farm. These buildings fall fast with the Morphling. You do have some big items that were just completed though with the Orchid on DK and the Satanic on the Weaver. But you now just lost a full set of barracks mid. And all eyes need to be over towards that second Roche. Mm. That's the that's the biggest problem, right? Like if you're OG, you can't really let it go. You are two sides down. Letting this next Roche go, it's it's probably the best fight that you can take. They smoke up. Yeah, they, they just want to take this triangle, maybe. Yeah, but this is so, such a great spot for Deem to fight. And they're going to be able to get the start onto Seb. Prime will be a different straight, iteration yeah. of the Morphling shotgun build, but we see it has plenty of single target damage. No one's in some danger. It's going to be okay, though. Activates the BKB. Now with the break, they just rip apart the Dragon Knight. A hero who's supposed to be tanky is not at all, and Weaver as well is that gone. Game. Just call it, tap out, Entity have their number in this first game. 
Yeah, this just looks like game. They can go Throne. They can go Ari first. There's an Ultra kill. Give this Weaver a Rampage. I mean Morphling Weaver. And he gets it. With it. Yeah, they, they have some buybacks, but... I don't think it will matter a lot. Top lane. They have creeps. They can go get the megas. Okay, okay. Still super disciplined. I really respect this. I would have been in front of the fountain waving, tipping them at the moment. They go for the mega creeps first. I mean, there is really nothing stopping them from going thrown afterwards. And they will. Yeah. OG uh, may be taking this time to lament. Lasso is there. And they're even going to be able to get Seb as well. So, surely now, Whisper finds There's a pretty a good angle for a stun. There's a buyback. But with that, Tomato, who now will be able to rejoin the fray. BZM off the back of the buyback, attempting the kill into no one. No one's able to get some separation with the onslaught. Looks like Bane will at least go down. Whisper's still hunting, should be able to catch up to no one thanks to the Stampede, but the rest of the boys will join as well for the damage required. Ari oh, also now oh. caught Watson. Any stunners? They're yeah, gonna glide near. Alright, Watson. Wait, the bait. Now the secret debris with the illusion, maybe? Okay, never mind. That's that's a bit too difficult, a bit too fancy, unfortunately, with everyone surrounding him. Nonetheless, though, OG, okay. I mean you yeah, you, you get four kills. Come back! But, <laughs> <laughs> What's the probability? Zero percent. Okay. <laughs> okay. Look, if for all those flower boys in the chat, the the OG fanboys, um, you do have some strong cores, and even Enchantress scales well. Is it gonna happen? Probably not. Like you are playing into Megas. You have heroes that deal with mega creeps, that's no issue, but you just these team fights are way too difficult for you. They do see Fishman and DM on top. Let's see. Just poking him. Get them? Respawns are coming up from Entity. This has to be pretty quick on OG if they want to get a kill and then get out before. Fishman? Yeah, all right. Fishman's Go gone. <laughs> Stepped a bit too far forward. Ari's going to snipe him. Roche is up. I don't think they, they'll they go. Can... They'll go. I feel like they'll go. Okay. I, I'm not sure if they can take it. Uh, they don't have the bane, but they'll try. Like this is the equivalent of smoke hail mary play. You have to do it. If you lose the sages, the game is probably done. They do know what's going on, and Radiant don't take it very fast. Yeah, Maybe we'll they're going to be forced tanker. to try and take a fight instead. They'll see no one just charging in. No cares in the world here for the DM. Dragonite. DM as well with the aggressive jump. is going to be able to play around with the Dragonite Illusion. Now the Weaver one as well with the wall. And it's just... As soon as the combo is out, all the Illusions will just tear apart OG. They cannot stand against the overwhelming amount of team fight that Entity have been playing with in this game one. Yeah, no buyback on the DK, no buy buyback on the Weaver. They know it. I just love the resilience from OG. Like, let, let's let's at least give them that. The game wasn't that great. They're still not giving up. They're still playing against Mega Creeps. All odds are pretty much against them. What's the probability? What did you say? Zero, per zero percent. Yeah. Don't really see that very often. Yeah, no, you really don't. <laughs> Sorry. And Gabe must not like their chances if it's zero percent. It's like uh, the, the, when they went for that rush. If Weaver has a different kind of a build, if he doesn't have this Lincoln's and Satanic, maybe they can kill it because usually you have more damage on Weaver. But this isn't a Weaver that has a lot of um, like burst damage. He's more of he's not a glass cannon. This is more of a, I'll sustain myself throughout the game. Oh, the M again. Just almost every single fight, it seems like he's finding multiple heroes inside the combo. And I think it's now time to call it. They're up inside your fountain. And the G's are going to be dropped. So, Entity. This was, uh, wow, quite the performance. Nice one. Nice one by Entity. So, this takes them 3 0 versus OG, right? Yep. 
um, yeah, they just have their number. They're playing a bit better, a bit faster, and um, I, I, you could see at times what OG was planning for. You could see at times that okay, um, I had a big issue with uh, we were into Bane. But you could see, yeah, but there's a Rubik, he can steal the grip, maybe lift, you know, there's a, there's some Centaur Stampede, there's Dragonite to create a mess. And if the lanes went, the biggest issue for me, of course, are the lanes. Like the bot lane, they got Omega crushed. Like this bot lane, you pick Enchantress to win against Darkseer and then you lose against him. Um, and you, lo you lost pretty hard. Um, they Also, that was Darkseer that I, I believe didn't use a single Iron Shell before level 3-4. Um, and then they turned with just very nicely done by them, covered the Darkseer's problems. Like he hates playing against these heroes that can dispel, but usually those heroes are very squishy. And then you get on, get this Katomi Batrider that's able to get on top of them, kill them. I, I love this combo. I, I they they really taught it through. And another guy that taught this game through is this twenty kills to deaths Morphling Watson, completely on point. I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, this is what I said uh, to, to start the series. This guy is on another level currently. And I saw it. I had the opportunity. It, it kind of reminds me when I was covering Eastern Europe t um, Division 1. I think it was like 2 or 3 or something. And I, I was watching Yotoro. And I was just, I was seeing him just carry spirit in a vast majority of their games and that was of mm -hmm. course towards the end of the season then they go on to win Riyadh then they go on to win TI and it's like okay he's like hit that peak form and it just it reminds me a little bit of that with Watson at the moment it just seems like in a lot of the games that NT are playing Watson is just having incredible performances and and this wasn't even like I think everyone on entity had an incredible game and i think really the, the big thing is well we just felt the support difference in this game in particular maybe not as much with ari but like he had some good steals i just feel like this rubik game can be a little bit difficult to play when you have a dark sea bat rider mm -hmm. and, and a primal beast on top of you your spell casting you're always going to be the primary target but this bat rider here man it's another game it's just another game where Batrider is a higher net worth than the enemy team's core, where you are continuing to take aggressive farm in their jungle, where you're continuing to cut waves and get like blink lasso initiations. Like it just, he has to go. I think he has to go if you don't have first pick and it's just doing way too much for teams. Where's he gonna go? Uh, just ban him. Like get just, get rid of him and let's- Just ban him. <laughs> no, I like it. I like, I like your, I mean, look, what, he's probably the main reason they won the early game and early game is where this game was won because I, I do think that this lineup of OG needs to perform a little bit better in the early game and then yeah they took down all tier 1 towers that's fine but your centaur struggled uh, your stacks got stolen your bot lane uh, was okay it, it, we were had farm but I, I'd still say that was a loss because you want to win a lane against Darkseer you want to make him really uh as poor as possible so for og maybe back to the drawing board figure out what went wrong a little bit in in this early uh, stages of the game and uh, yeah just been out the bat rider i feel like what you said is completely right like he created too many problems across the map I don't know if this is a playstyle thing as well or, or, or what, but I do think OG fights that looked decent for them was when Tomato was there very early on, that I think there were minimal fights where we actually saw that be the case. So I don't know if this was Entity having a vision advantage and smoking up and catching OG off guard when Tomato has TP on cooldown or if he's on the opposite side of the map and difficult to connect, but um, whether that's props need to be given to Entity or potentially for OG to be positioning accordingly, I'm not sure, but it definitely felt like where you compare Entity, like Morphling was getting more involved in some of the early game fights com compared to the Weaver. Yeah, it's it's hard for uh, the team that's kind of on the back foot to have their carry join every single time because you're already, let's say, an item behind and then if the carry joins it's like the fights aren't gonna look any better you're just gonna lose the carry as well even though it's a weaver so he did what he could in uh, the state of the game uh, entity they had all the items earlier they had a uh, greaves blink on darkseer very fast they had this bkb on primal beast meanwhile um the centaur plus uh, 
plus Dragonite, we're struggling, and that's probably the biggest issue. Like, they're the ones that... I, I don't believe DK ever bought a BKB in this game anyway. Uh, Centaur had to go for Lotus. You know, like, you're playing into Lasso, into Grip. You're going for Lotus instead of BKB. It's understandable. But you're also doing it to help out your Weaver. Uh, who had to also go Lincoln's and then on top of that Satanic. So you're joining all these fights, but you really aren't that scary Weaver that goes in and just kills you off of the shard. You know, like uh, two Geminid attacks and a shard attack, and he crits you with Daedalus and I don't know what, whatever, like in Blood Torn. That's, that wasn't the case. He needed to go into full defensive mode, which also works for Weaver in some games. It just didn't work in this one. Yeah, unfortunately it didn't work for in this one for, for the Weaver and for OG Preventity. Like you said, now three games against OG in Elite League and three victories as well. Let's see if they're going to be able to make it a fourth and start off the group stages with a fine to zero. Uh, we'll have to find out though short. First, a quick break. When we come back, we've got more of Elite League. See you guys soon.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We've got our next game coming up very, very shortly. OG with a game disadvantage here in our first series. Looks like... No, we'll see. We'll see if they're going to be able to adapt Mr. Lizard. Uh, do you feel like they have what it takes? So that is the... That's the ultimate question. Do they have what it takes to be able to get over the finish line? Well, so far, uh, they didn't have what it takes to, to win versus Entity, right? Like on OG, that is. In this tournament, they haven't succeeded at that. But you aren't playing a best of three. That's, I, I believe, a, maybe the most important thing. Like, you're not playing a best of three. You're playing a best of two. I'm correct, right? It's a best of two. So it doesn't really matter that two. much. You can experiment in game two as well. You can change things up. You can uh, figure out what works for you, what doesn't very early on. Uh, every game, of course, matters here. But... Um, <clears throat> You don't have to. You don't have to uh, uh, strategize too much about the series and what you're keeping, what you're hiding for eventual game three or something like that. So, I do do believe that they have what it takes. At the same time, something went horribly wrong for them in the laning stage, and that's something that I would like to see them improve on uh, first and foremost. Like, if you're an OG fan, that's probably. Um, the first thing that you're looking at because the game is so much easier to play when you have at least two lanes one uh, when, when you're kind of suffering on, on on different lanes at the same time uh, with heroes that should be dominating then you know uh, the rest of the game is always going to look the way the, this game one looked yep uh, well, let's see. Let's see what they're going to be able to do to adapt and set themselves up with a bit stronger overdraft and potentially some stronger lanes as well. We've got our second draft getting underway. Entity going to be playing on the Radiant side. They've got second pick OG on the Die side with the first pick as well. Very intrigued to see where the Bat Rider is going to go in this follow-up game. Yeah, and of course we don't see it right now. The Bat Rider not gonna get banned. We don't hear anything. Yeah, of course it's gonna get banned. They ban out the uh, the Bat Rider and they snatch up something different for themselves. Okay, okay. This is a hero that has been banned recently. They get uh, uh, the Brewmaster. Like, what hero do I like on Whisper the most? I feel like Timber, I would say. But of course Timber is not something that he's going to be getting. So they snatch up the brew instead. It is a very early brew. And some heroes that Katomi and Fishman play are good against him. Uh, we'll see. It's, it's definitely a different opener for OG. I do like the Chen ban as well. And I wouldn't mind some Enchantress now uh, for OG. Like this, I, I feel that they can really play the map well when they have um, a lot of st just stuff. You know, like Naga Illusions, Enchantress Creeps, this Brewmaster that you have to deal with, his Primal Split. I feel like they're really strong in these uh, kind of lineups. Uh, is your, do you feel like your opinion on Centaur is going down over time? Yeah, 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 like for, sure, for sure. Little, yeah. I agree, I agree. Um, the hero is played too much and players are recognizing how to play against him. And uh, a lot of the time, he just falls short. To, I, the, the thing is, there's always that stampede that we're kind of taking for granted now. And maybe that's why uh, we don't think highly of him, but he still does a lot. Like, you have that almost instant stun that's AoE. You have a hero that's strong in the lane. You have a stampede that's always helpful. But usually I like more... I, I like seeing these... Mars more Mar Mars like heroes, heroes that have these big ultimates in the team fight. I like the Bane, by the way. Yeah, like it's probably a hero that can deal with uh, Brewmaster, and it's so comfortable for them. I love the Naga ban as well because you don't have an option to go for Brew, and it would be very disgusting to play against both the Brew and the Naga. When you see a uh, Bane getting picked up, what are kind of the weaknesses that the hero brings to a draft and how can OG potentially exploit it? Well, <clears throat> first and foremost, you can pick Rubik into it. Like, that's the no-brainer. Second, this hero is all about single target. So if you have these illusion-based heroes or any hero that doesn't really care that much about the grip um, or can deal with it, like Lycans, heroes that aren't necessarily in the meta, but... Um, 
uh, heroes that can chase him down. So your Chen Enchantress, uh, Rubik, um, any sort of a summon hero like a Beastmaster is, is good. He's a strong laner, uh, of course, but uh, he suffers against summons, basically. Uh, Brewmaster as well, if he manages to split, it's a huge problem for him, but most of the time that's why you pick Bane into the Brew, so that you, you are able to catch him before he even uh, manages to split. Yep. I feel like more than likely we're going to get our Seb support here. And it will not be our Seb support, it's going to be the Dragonite once again. So, already revealing BZM's hero. Do you, what do you feel like is also the read for OG coming into this series? Because they're putting a lot more emphasis onto the Dragonite in particular. Um, I know we've seen BZMB on a lot more like tempo playmaking heroes. Do we think this is some a, a read of theirs where they feel like it can deal with some strategy that Entity have? Or am I just looking into it a bit much? Well, no one is a beast Dragonite. There's that. Like Taking the Dragonite away from him is probably... Uh, something that's that can prove to be useful for og so snatching that dk from him i do like dragonite i feel like this hero is uh, in every game that i watch more or less he manages to have a huge impact he doesn't lose the lane and uh, just takes towers gives you that objective taking gives you a solid stun i don't know there's nothing bad with dragonite right now Sure. Yeah, I'm always trying to think when I say Dragonite, like what hero you can actually pick against it in the mid lane that is going to be able to beat him. I feel like there really isn't any. Only some that will trade even. We're going to get a Grimstroke out of NTD. Of course, once again, Watson will be playing his Morphling. Uh, are we getting a Naga? Do they want a Naga? Isn't it banned? Is it? Oh, it's banned. Sorry. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> My game crashed. I couldn't see, but uh, yeah, I, I thought it was banned. Uh, like heroes that can work against him are usually like when it comes to Dragonite. I mean, heroes that work against him are heroes that are just solid against him, not and can lane against him. Don't necessarily beat him. Monkey King used to be um, a hero that actually wins the lane. Right now, I, I'm not sure if anything wins the lane. Maybe a Razor or something like that, but not even a Razor, I would say. Maybe a Viper? I I, I don't know. They you, you can always get something like a Kunkka to just have a lane against him, you know, doesn't doesn't really lose it. And uh, you farm, he farms, and that's it. Um, I'm like, historically, DP wasn't bad, but the hero like, isn't really picked that often at the moment. Some teams are experimenting with DP, but uh you don't see it as nearly as much as the dragonite mm. do you like the grim um i do i do interesting drought pick it's quite a nice draw i mean only really worried about the centaur so yeah the two supports can jump you it's only the Morphling that can. Of course, they have Stampede. Like you said, they have to worry about uh, that. But um, we, we called for this draw in many previous games. Whenever we see Morphling, you, you kind of are tempted to go for the draw. Right now, what I'd like to see from... Uh, well, they can't really. They, they only have a support left remaining for OG. I was going to say, I like the draw, but some crowd control would be pretty solid for them. Uh, I like OG last... or ET. I think that's yeah. that's what I'm looking at. Uh, oh, clock's actually banned. Sorry, I don't know if I said clock. I meant clock. But clock and ET are definitely ones that I was looking at. Fortunately, ET clock, is fantastic. So... Yeah, ET is fantastic. Kind of, kind of, um, like it doesn't. It combos well with the draw in the lane, but you're you're already kind of countering Morphling, so you don't have to look at it that way. But ET is still great. I still like it. I, th another reason I'd like it is just to to deal with the fans group another way. Mm -hmm. So so they 
What are, they think the Brews are actually going to be played as a support, which is a very interesting read from them. I, I'm not sure if Seb has done this very recently. I know the, some China position fives are pretty big fans of trying to flex the Brewmaster into yeah, the, red, into the red five roll. Yeah, yeah that <clears> Red Panda used to play it a lot, and then he started this trend where everyone was picking it on five. It's a good support. I'm not sure right now how good he is. I don't think he's nearly as good, but uh, remember what we were talking about. Summons... I even mentioned Lycan. I think we talked about Lycan versus the Bane. He becomes even stronger into Bane and Grim. A lot of summons just running at you. You just can't deal with this hero um, as these two supports. But I'm not sure if that's what OG needs. I still think OG will last pick some support, supports, just a position 5. And go off of that. But uh, like when you see this Brewmaster and he's playing into... Uh, Phantom's Embrace, he's playing into Grip. I can understand the temptation to just put him on 5 instead. Entities. You know, here you go, Seb. Have fun. And okay. And they cool. do. Mm -hmm. Alright, so now we need to look at Entity's mid laner. Must be a hero that uses Inkswell and that is able to get on top of the Drow range. Oh, they, those are really the big things. Ooh, it also must be a hero that doesn't care about the silence, so you need something tanky for that mid lane as well. Some big boy. I I'm not sure. Like, if you're going for any of these spirits, like, the Night Stalker really messes you up. The AoE silence will be obnoxious. So, yeah, gotta see. I love that OG experimented. They went completely out of the box with the Night Stalker, with the Brew. I, I, I like this. It's it's different. By the way, Brew Draw is a strong lane, so you have that going for you as well. Like if yeah. if not if not for for the Night Stalker, your game would be much easier to pick, like some Storm. Yes. For yes, yes, yes. That was That's... that was the point I was just gonna bring up. I feel like this Night Stalker really denies a lot of heroes that Entity would be lacking. That is a very interesting pick where it's kind of the best of both worlds right it is a spirit hero so someone to get on top of the draw ranger it's also a melee tanky hero that it does not mind the night stalker being up in his face and, and preventing him uh -huh. so and it's still going to be frustrating nonetheless but i definitely feel like that's that, it's a cool pick it's a cool pick it's a cool pick he's smiling He's happy about it. Like he seems like, yeah, let's go. But I don't know if I look at no one, I, I don't see a nerd spirit spammer. Like mm, I, I can't remember. He was playing Earth Spirit a lot when was um he? when Earth Spirit was getting played mid. Yeah, in in NC when he was on SMG, he was he was playing. He actually looked okay. pretty decent on it. Okay, okay, I stand corrected. Like if he can play Earth Spirit, um, and if he can perform really well, then sure. Uh, the hero is completely dead though. Like, no one is picking it. You, you don't see it. And no pun intended. I, I really meant, like, not a single player on position four. I can't remember the last time I saw it. I don't think we've seen it in this tournament as well. So far, in the Swiss stages, maybe there was an odd game that I didn't watch, but I really don't think we've seen it. So, le let's see what he can do. Check. Like fr From that mid lane, the hero definitely does more. You're frozen, my friend. I, I, we can. Is it at least a good freeze? Was it? No, like, you look pretty bad. Like... I'm not gonna lie. Oh, no, it was, it was a pretty shit pose. Yeah, sorry, man. God right. damn! Why Definitely. do I always freeze in a bad pose? Uh, I checked the stats. Earth Spirit has four games and zero wins. Four so... games, damn! I can't believe it got yeah. picked four times. I actually. I do remember that someone played it twice in the mid lane, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember what team it was, but it was one of the teams we covered and I went back and looked at some of their games and we picked the Earth Spirit, but anyway. I see, I see. Okay, so Earth Spirit has been drafted uh, before. Dude, my, my PC is falling apart. Dota is now crashing. I'm done. Again? Yeah. Dota crashes oh, no. way too often for me. They do need a bit of a spring clean. That would be nice. I would like that. I think a lot of people would like that as well. But yeah, I'm playing on sub 60 uh... FPS. It ain't great. Oh yeah, my oh, brother. I am. Yeah, I am too. I think a lot of people are. It's definitely a fun time. You know, <laughs> sexy. Yeah. 
Yeah. I had more FPS with the worst PC five years ago than I have right <laughs> now with a better, better one. And the game is the same. Mid lane, are they gonna fight around this rune? Seb is going in. Nothing to proc it with, right? Like they have nothing to. Okay, they do now. Ari's there. Yeah, random boulder. Step aside, my friends. Is that actually. I, I think that helped getting him out? I don't know. I really yeah. don't know if he would have died anyway. They kind of had to step away from it. Let's just say it helped. Hold on. Yeah, and if it. Uh... If it connects, it slows them anyway, right? So they have to step. They, yeah, it saved. It helped. It's something. Well, how do we feel about the lane setup for OJ? This was one thing that you were mentioning that we saw your previously entity where we have a, a good start off the back of the lane. So we think the lanes are a little bit easier for them this game around. I thought the lanes were better for OG the last game, and then uh, it didn't really look that way. I, I do think that they have some nice things now in the lanes. I feel the... Uh, I'm not sure how well the Panda will do with the draw, but it feels like a solid... I have a front laner that's going to bully you, plus I'm a draw from distance. So it, it seems like a decent lane. Bot lane, <clears throat> you are playing this Night Stalker. So early, early on, Night Stalker isn't that great, but... He becomes very scary very fast. Like you have AoE silence to hunt down even the even the morphling. Like the AoE silence, I, I don't care. You have this mid lane uh, earth spirit. He's tankier of all the spirits for sure, but he might struggle uh, from it as well. So basically, the way I see this game, it's whispers to win. Like, yeah. If he has a good time on the off lane, this night stalker last pick can be just. A massive problem for Entity. Tomato top lane. Whoa. Alright. That was even without the ink spell getting used for Katomi too. So, on. Oh, big first blood for Entity. Nicely. Very nicely done by DM. Maybe, maybe now Seb maybe, as well? Yeah, like, yeah he's dead. Maybe. Oof. Yeah, this is looking rough already. I want to go back to, to Whisper because I 100% I agree. I feel like this Night Talker, if he has a good game, he can actually, without a doubt, get OG over the finish line. I mean, the support's a uh, crippling to play into the Night Stalker. The Morphling as well is it can be very frustrating. I do think Whisper has a, had a pretty lackluster tournament so far. At least the games that I have seen, he has not been performing up to par, and I even think... Uh, in and a tournament even before this as well he was having some some sh difficult games of course it happens and i mean i've seen whisper and you're know, pretty much with his since his introduction into the scene he's always being the the shining player on whatever team he's on so you know it's bound eventually to have a, a bit of a low period but uh, hopefully he can have some success in this one in particular because it does look like a very good night soccer game yeah, do you care about uh, do you, do you care about stampede though? That's like one thing that I see for uh, for entity that can can be a problem for this uh, night stalker. That's the stampede, right? Like every time you try hunting, if DM has uh, stampede off cooldown, it can get heroes away uh, from that AOE silence. And that's usually how it goes. Ari bot lane. I have to check up in Shirley. Watson went a bit of a weird direction, though. Mm -hmm, yeah, Just yeah. longer going to the right. Some fight going on on top as well. This time around, they managed to uh, use that uh, drunken haze properly on DM. Oh, yeah, nice roll from no one. Ari He's got actually Lotus. might be okay, though. Yeah, he should be. That's so much damage mitigation like you have your fade bolt you have your breathe fire from bzm the only thing that really does anything there is is magic damage yeah maybe something we actually need to pay a bit of attention to inside the team fights for for watson and you know more than uh, we'll definitely we'll see the manta but how is he going to be able to play with the manta to do with that damage mitigation 
you even where's a BKB going to be considered? Because that's probably the best way for you to be able to nullify some of the effectiveness out of the Night Stalker through the mid to late game. Yeah, just an additional thing to worry about, right? And we'll see how much mm, you'll be able to do on this Seb Panda, like what he even goes for. I guess it's some... What's he gonna buy? I guess some urn. And speaking of him, he's uh, probably gone right now. He's not looking that tanky, by the way. It's not looking that great. But I like the build on Earth Spirit as well. Just going for, for an urn. I think that's probably a vessel afterwards. Like, you get that vessel... Um, suddenly you have ways of dealing with Whisper, you have ways of dealing with Dragonite, and let's see how much Whisper can do with his first Knight. Top lane though. Again. And now with the rotation actually out of no one, Inkswell just in range, and I, without a doubt he's going to be able to chase down Ari. Nothing the Rubik can do. Two tanky boys up in your face, another kill, 5-0 star for Entity. Yeah, is maybe mid lane at least being pushed in. I don't think Dragonite has level 6 even, right? Like, so he can't really do much about this. You have this Bane TPing mid. Morphling actually left alone against the Night Stalker and he's doing fine. So, pretty much everything going uh, Entity's way in the first 6 minutes. 5 kills ahead. And it's not like someone is farming really well on OG. Like, no one is having an advantage uh, when it comes to the net worth. Dragonite, perhaps, I guess, like BZM. Yeah, it's yeah. a DK again, but like we saw the exact same thing last game, and unfortunately, BZM just wasn't able to do particularly too much with the net worth, and they're hunting him as well. Katomi here. I'm gonna let's see, they're gonna go through 1100 health, even DMs here. All right, <laughs> why not? A random rotation for the centaur just walks down the river and <laughs> joinks the kill. Okay. And that's, uh, uh, usually you see this happening when someone is stacking the heart camp or an ancient stack. Ari is only level 2. Like he is, he was thinking about that wisdom rune and he's gonna think about the one it with some the more now. He's got the magnetize onto Tomato. Oh man, if this continues like this, we might have a messy second game. No one looking for the last magnetized stone, he'll be able to find it. There's a rotation out of Whisper. But there's the Stampede. This was exactly like you were talking about. Stampede resets away from Whisper. In fact, they now go back in. They see an angle where they've been able to bring enough members to combat the Night Stalker rotation. And now Whisper is lower net worth than the Grimstroke. The Drow Ranger is under the fall as well. Uh, what a perfect start for Entity. Uh, this, is, this is some absolute disaster for OG. I'm... Not sure how you come back from this. You need to just go full crazy mode, five man. Brew is dead again. Your Drow Ranger is getting Dowen under the tier two. Fishman's here! Yeah, they always just have a plus one. Drop some banners. <laughs> oh, dude. It's Entity Team. All right. I really think they, they read them so well with those last two bands and now this is just looking insanely bad bzm at least he's got some farm he uses dragon form but he can't really kill <laughs> fishman here he just tps out the the biggest issue is like you have this hero in night stalker that really likes to dominate early on he likes to have his first night be very successful either by farming or by rotating and getting kills and he didn't accomplish one or the other. He just died with the first rotation. So it's still not. It's still very early. Of course, the game can change easily. Stampede. They need uh, to react is... to these moves, though. This is ambitious, sir. I mean, no one is still going to be a really big issue with the early magnetized damage, but potentially with them going this deep, we can see a response with the dragon tail. Yeah. It will stop no one short. That one was far, far too deep, and OG, they'll, they'll condemn, them, condemn them for that attempt. Some big kills for them to find. Yeah, that, that, that's massive for them. Every single kill right now matters quite a lot. It gives them a lot of experience. And that was just such a wild dive from Entity. They're, they're really feeling themselves a bit too much. No one can blame them, though. They're, they're just having fun at this point. 
you know, sometimes your laning stage goes so damn well and you, you do have the third spirit on mid lane. Like this hero, this is where he needs to shine. He doesn't scale that well. He doesn't scale like a Dragonite does. So he actually has to be doing this. And these, these rotations have to connect for him. OG, all they have to do is respond properly with multiple heroes every single time it happens. Mid lane. Yeah, instant mm. TP. Instant TP from Seb. That, that's what I'm Still talking not about. not six, though, on the brew. Even DMs here as well, but the Stampede being on cooldown. They actually want to look to try and enter the fire, but the Inkswell's going to be able to buff up the Brewmaster. Watson's here, too, and just with the raw number advantage, Entity, once again, are putting a lot of priority on bringing that extra hero required to be able to come out successful in these early fights. They might go for BZM. Stampede still at the ready. And they'll surround the Dragonite underneath the T1 tower. Yeah, they just have this... Yeah, they, they have a couple of problems. One of them is Morphling is level 8, level 9, whatever. And it's much easier for him to join than it is for this Drow that's being gone on once again. Fishman? He's alone, yeah. He does he does this from time to time. Just forces a TP. But look, even a forcing a TP in a, in a game in which they're so valuable is a, is a win. It's, now anyone else on the other lanes can get Dolan, so... But yeah, back to the point, Morphling joins as well. They, like, the Entity just realizing that they can't keep the ball rolling. They're too far ahead. And Morphling, different build, by the way, look at this. He is playing into a Drow, so that's one of the reasons. He went for Dragonlance. Gives you some uh, range as well Speaking against of the Drow. Nice move, Entity. I mean, so on point. They even Still got his neutral, I think. Did they steal it? They did, uh, right? Yeah, I believe they did. I, I don't know how that well. happened, because Tomato... Yeah, okay. So why is this still a thing? Why is this thing where Tomato has a neutral item already, but it still drops his that he technically hasn't... Because it, it must have been someone else's that he then you know, got delivered on the courier, but if you have one, it should just instantly go straight to the shop like all the others do. Don't, don't. Don't make me start when it comes to neutral items. I'm pissed about the whole idea of neutral items, but the way they drop and how many times I died because I have to go back and pick it up. Yeah. You know, it, it, like you're farming the enemy jungle, you start to go... Uh, like you're a bat rider. You start running away, the item drops, you have to go pick it up. You go back, pick it up, they catch you. I hate that. BZM has a shield rune. It's tanky, but there's a vessel... Uh, the cancer will come out is it too late though with this vessel they're gonna be forced to use a secondary charge deeper inside og's territory they go there's gonna be no concerns whisper as well zoned away thanks to watson protecting katomi and he's on 50 and seb kind HP. of in time and he's got the split on seb but yeah there's gonna be no hope it's just that whisper has no resources he's on half hp he can't really go in and it's night time again, so that's positive. Like, maybe you can play with this Night Stalker now. Maybe there's something that you can do. Mid lane. Alright. No one in DM together. He's got a split. Oh. Yeah. Alright, well, there's some rotations coming through. DM. Looks like they're going to be able to get a return kill. Nicely done. Bottom as well, starting to converge down. Fishman, first point of contact. They will tip into the T1 tower, but the rest of Entity have already been able to retreat. Fishman also escapes with a teleport. Now can they catch up to Katoomi as well? Gonna look for the turn with the Soulbind. Watson set up the bait on the high ground. Oh, God. I mean, just no killers for free. Watson no still gonna in. be able to get Seb. Whisper just TPs out. <laughs> So close, though. Yeah, he morphs into the Dragonite, and yeah, they're gonna maybe take down this tier one tower as well. The game is looking. This isn't where you want to be as OG. One hundred percent, twenty to five, seven k ahead, fourteen minutes in. That's a lot of net worth advantage this early on. You just have to stop the bleeding somehow. Like if you're OG, they they are moving top a bit. Whisper is here. But I, I'm not sure how they do it, but they need to find a way to... Yeah, another one. It's so it's hard, so though. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, and more. And, not... and more. <laughs> There's always plus one. There's literally always plus one. Timado wishes he was a weaver or something this game, so that he has at least a bit more mobility to escape all of these gangs, but... They have to Most stop piece. the bleeding. They, they have to smoke up, take a side of the map or something, word it up. I'm not sure. Play only around there, because right now, if this continues, this game might be over in five minutes. Well, looks like they'll be able to get the kill onto Fishman, at least venturing a little bit too deep into OG's triangle. Yeah, this is it. Five heroes in the triangle. Drow is farming. It's not optimal. It's not what you want, but at least you can protect her this way, and then you can spread out after getting a kill. And that's side time. So maybe you catch another straggler, but you see the respect from Entity. Like, no one in Katsomi retreating as a team. Watson as well playing very safe on the, on the west side of the map, but... OG do get some control of an area like you were asking for and potentially with the catapult wave down bottom they might be able to get an objective too. Watch this though. No one will be here to connect with the smoke regardless so it's probably going to secure the tower and at this stage you are happy with that. Vision's going to be laid down. So these are the little things. These are the little things you're asking for and the things that need to be done when you're playing from this large of a deficit early in the game. And it's just baby steps for them. They're actually even teeping back. They've got a pretty big wave Radiant's mid to try and farm. And they are clumping together. Threatening a, a tier 2 tower push if they want to. Watson's nearby. Manta, Dragonlance. And they're even going to see Whisper aggressively TP into the lane. DM instantly. Nice sound sir, from Whisper, actually. And now they're thinking of turning it around. The supports okay, okay. are over position. And Fishman's just going to run to the right. He recognizes his role. Try and sacrifice his life and hope that everyone else gets away. But with the split from Seb, they're trying to catch up. BZM on Fortune with the blink. Mispositioned. Uh, no one was there, so Kataomi also is going to limp away. So just the death onto Fishman's Bane. Mm -hmm. They're 9k ahead and they're still taking some decent fights like this last one. They did use the split though, and it will become a bit harder once the night time is over. And that, that's pretty much where Entity will have the ball in their court again and they'll be able to, to pressure them. But for now, even Radiant's if you're Entity, I don't think you're that sad attack. about the state of the game. Of course you're not, but even with the, this last fight, you can just continue chilling. And they're not going to do that. Instead, no one is going in again. Has been this is massive, by the way. The BKB on him I, I, just changes the way that he can play the game. He'll have that BKB... Even versus the silence, even versus all of uh, the sounds from the nice stalker, the lift, the the gust from Drow, which is so annoying to him. A lot of people they found. We're in some danger. Grip. And another kill for them. Grip so, I mean, and what rip. are you getting across the map? In? Grip and rip. <laughs> it's, uh, look, you're at, you're at this stage of the game where you just, you have to bleed kills unfortunately it's on and off laner Seb might even die as well directly on top of Radiant Observer Ward lane shoved in so this should be a T2 tower that they're going to look to pressure man Entity is just looking insane in game one they had a different kind of a lineup it wasn't this aggressive different playstyle completely and they won with it now they are having just a blast BZM Ooh, okay manages to manages to blink away Still though. I think they got a glimpse even though. Yeah, they see where he is. Vessel is on him. Yeah, they're gonna get him. There's also I, I, Bane coming. <laughs> Who were Entity playing next? Let's see. They got another series today? They don't. Tomorrow they play Spirit. Okay. I'm very intrigued to see how they perform versus Spirit. Because I... I, I, I want to know where this team... Uh, if they can match up with... You know, some of yeah. the best at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be because I, I know what you mean. You want to see the power level against other heroes, other teams. Ari, man, this is just 
it it feels bad if you're an OG fan right now watching this. This is a massacre that's happening. 26 kills, 19 minutes in. More kills than minutes for Entity. Now Seb. Are you are you a bit of a no one Ursper believer now with what I said? Uh, I mean, I kind of now remember him playing it as well. I just forgot completely, but I am a believer. I also remember him losing Earth Spirit games though. Uh, but those games are usually games in which he d doesn't manage to get a lot of rotations early on and that's where this hero feels really bad when uh, the first rotations miss then you don't get that pkb you're running around with two bracers like 16 minutes in this game is just completely different and the the lineup is really good too like having this inkswell on top of him all the time katomi is always in the right position seb they don't have silence here though after. They have grip and no one silence, but that's it. Maybe it's not the best, yeah. It, it, it would be a bit greedy. He has split to work with. Oh, he's in. Oh, look at that caught. Tomato's been a little bit sound for the past couple of minutes farming, but once he shows in the lane for a moment, Entity just. <laughs> everyone are there again and. And some more, Ari's maybe? Under the T2 tower. Whisper's gonna attempt with the turn. BKB on cooldown to a bit of an issue here for the Earth Spirit, but it might not matter. All of Entity come to save the day. DK's gonna TP into his own death. We might be at the territory where OG yeah. are gonna look to call it quits because this does not look like it's gonna get any better. <laughs> no, this is. Yeah, 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 this is. Look, they didn't call it quits versus Mega Creeps in the last game. I don't think they call it here, but this is looking absolutely disgusting like for og it already feels like we have to defend the high ground boys that's it like he jumps the draw here which is exactly what he needed the bkb comes in clutch like the brew dies to the grip and then this tier 2 dive here how much fate he has in his teammates you know it's like he usually if he's alone 100 percent he dies but uh he's not alone of course got the centaur got got the sleep fishman is there watson by the way, I love this roll as well. Like, perfect roll on Whisper and then the double hit with, with the rock as well on both of them. Not that it, it, it doesn't even matter anymore. It's just style points at this point, but it, it looks nice. How do you feel about the Bane here as well? This is two games now where... Uh, and well, I know Entity, again, had a lot of success on it in the Swiss stage, and, and I feel like Fishman has had some pretty good performances so far. Do you feel like this is a undervalued support and something that other teams need to be looking at now? Well, Fishman is definitely making it work. Uh, OG tried to respond to it the same way with the Rubik twice now in a row, and it didn't work, so obviously something needs to be changed when it comes to at least OG playing against it. I'm not sure the hero is that broken. I do think he's strong. I do think that yep. he should be uh, picked a bit more than he is at the moment, not only by Fishman. Yeah, because he seems to really be the only person. But yep. I feel like we're in a very interesting position right now with the patch where some different teams have uh, another identity or different opinions on heroes as we do see Seb killed off. But you know, we, we saw the Beastmaster yesterday that was from... That was Toby, right? Was it Toby? Who played it? Who played the Beastmaster? Now I'm forgetting. BZM, actually, I'll hold that thought because it does look like they're going to be able to get the kill into the Dragonite. Dire are nearby. Fishman still got grip and Radiant is starting to run to bottom. And they're pretty mobile. They can stampede as well if they want to close the distance, and that'll be the case. Watson, once again, another great use of the Dragonite. Replicate. Whisper as well on the TP. He'll make it out, but DM and no one catch up to Tomato. And he's much not better even kill move. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Getting that draw. I'm not sure who played it. Was it was it uh Toby or Oh it was um it was Boom. It was Boom. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, and it looked good. Like it looked it, it looked yeah. really nice. I I completely agree because for me we were we were what did we cast together? We casted Dream League qualifiers, we casted qualifiers for this, now we're casting the main event and 
uh, for me at least the meta started feeling a little bit stale and then you have a lot of these teams suddenly starting to experiment and pick different offliners like we've seen a couple of dark series now uh, Beastmaster as well and Beastmaster with Helm of Overlord even more so you know like going back mm. because the item did get buffed and no one was buying it I think in this game as well there was an option for OG to go for that kind of an offliner um, like your Beastmaster is your your Lycans. Lycan did get banned, of course. But this what they did with the Night Stalker is a huge hit or miss. Yeah. Unfortunately for them so far, it's it's been it's been missed playing versus five butterflies. It's been missing a lot. And he's gonna be dead again. And everyone else is gone. Oh, yeah, there we go. G okay. Damn. The Again, like I said before, I really want to see what NTD can do versus uh, another team and, and versus, you know, some of the upper, upper, upper echelon teams. This is no slouch to OG at all, without a doubt. We even heard Ari say in the interview that they feel like they're even 40% at the moment in strength level. This is no critique to them. I just... Uh, NTD blitzed through the Swiss stages. They didn't lose a map. And now L they Look just... at no one. I'm sorry. Look at no one. That's the camera I want to be frozen. That's how I want to be frozen. <laughs> you see? Please, C Chrome, next time you crash, make it be like that. That's a, that's a good angle, good angle to freeze on. But yeah, no, again, this is no slash to OG. This is just like, I really feel like this entity team at the moment are doing some crazy stuff. And I also was feeling this way in the other tournament. I casted them recently. So I want to see how they can go up against, you know, your spirits, your, your falcons, uh, your, your, your bet booms and, and, and whatnot. So um, today they are a bit too strong for OG. We'll see. OG, do you have another series later today versus G2 IG? So they're going to be able to have enough time to... Uh, uh, relax, you know, chill out, maybe decompress, talk about that series in particular. And that's a nice, like, mid-series as well to start the day because G2 IG have been really struggling in some of their just games as a whole. They, I think, bombed out of Dream League Season 22 in, like, last place. I do believe they just actually won the, one of the qualifiers, like, three zips. So um, I guess that is something to be said. But, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see. OG, though, in this series, uh, in this game, I should say, in particular, really was... Um, not the one they'd like to remember. Yeah, th this kind of a game you just forget. You, you, m maybe one thing that you do is you print out Night Stalker, you put it on your wall, and you uh, take a red marker and just go X over it. Don't pick the hero. Uh, like I don't think it was uh, Whisper's fault that much. It, it is a hero that really needs to do a lot from the offlane early on, and he didn't manage to. And he had actually probably the best game after BZM for their team. Top lane just crumbled. Timado, Centaur and Grimstroke did way too much. Absolutely crushed Seb and Timado. And then they could just rotate across the map and just hunt them even deeper in the woods, in the forest. Just a perfect performance by Entity for OG. I hope this doesn't break their spirits, you know, because we are just entering this best of two stage, uh, this round robin stage of the tournament. So I hope that they you know, just chill out a little bit, go enjoy that Portugal stun, you know, get some uh, vitamin D and uh, come back with a bit more dopamine because this, this kind of a game crushes anyone. You know, it's just not enjoyable to play a game in which you can't even connect anything. There is no gameplay because you're constantly dying. Every minute someone is dead. This isn't Dota. This is like your uh, low priority Q. You know, this is this is yeah. this is hell. Yeah, no, and uh, they wanted out of out of hell as, as fast as they could, and they stuck around for a little bit, but. In the end, regardless, it was a, a pretty early GG from, from OG. So, uh, yeah, let, let's see what they're going to be able to do differently in their latest series today. For Anti, though, a very, very dominant victory. Cool last pick as well for, from no one. Very, very cool last pick. You, know, we were, you, you mentioned in particular, the Night Stalker really makes it much more difficult for you to go for some of those other spirit heroes that you were wanting to get on top of the Drow Ranger. And then you kind of get the best of both worlds with the hero that combines really well with the uh with the ink swell so uh, yeah it's it's uh it's cool overall for for the boys on uh for the boys on nt very excited to see what they're able to do with their upcoming games now yeah it was uh layup right this earth spirit pick 
You just have to recognize that it's a good game. Not only is he amazing with Grimstroke, it's also very tanky, so you can uh, go in, uh, get silenced by Night Stalker, and still be tanky enough not to care about it, like survive in most of these team fights. And uh, yeah, just perfect last pick for them. I also would like to know if uh, I'd like to know if they knew from the get-go that the brew is going to be five, and. That this is something they saw OG, do, OG doing, like with the Lycan pick, because they did ban out the Lycan. I feel Lycan or <clears throat> maybe um, Lycan Beast, I feel like these kind of heroes for OG could have broken the game. Like they could have won with them easily. Um, like, what are you going to do with Grimstroke and, and Bane as supports? You're just constantly being harassed, hunted down. So, uh, very nicely done by. Very nicely done by Entity. I am a big Entity fan once again. Once again, so it's good to see them having their success. Uh, we will have the opportunity to be able to speak to one of them, though. We're going to have to go to a break before we uh, get to ask some questions. We'll set up the interview when we come back. We're going to have Fishman joining us, too, to hear what Entity have to say. But, of course, first, a quick break. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Quick break, we are ready to go with our interview. Had to set that up. We're gonna get the lovely Fishman joining us from Entity so we can ask him some questions about their victory. Firstly, Fishman, congratulations. So it was an uh, incredible performance from you guys. Um, I wanna know, what's your opinion right now? I know you're a very big fan of the Bane. You've you've always been known as a, as a Bane specialist. How do you feel about the hero in the current position of the meta? I think hero is uh, good. I mean, nobody played. it. Because I guess uh, this hero is not obviously good. I just uh, know some, uh, you know, small details. I guess, yeah. But uh, I think it um, uh, will become more popular very soon. Okay, okay. And what makes you guys so strong against OG? Do you feel like is it just kind of uh, your strategy versus their strategy? Do you feel like you you've worked something out against them? Because this is now four games in a row that you've been able to beat OG. Uh, I think we won lanes and we just played faster. I don't know. It's like you know, uh, change the action. You win lanes. I just checking graphs right now. Like minute uh, six, if you check Centaur to Planet Wars. Uh, yeah, Gem is like and Katomi uh, do very great on lane. Uh, me and uh, Watson 
like won uh, last uh, lanes as well, right? So at least didn't lost. And then we just run on enemies. No one as well a good laner, and it's yeah. We just play faster. Okay. We play very okay. fast after lanes. Let's say aggressive. Okay. Thank you, Lizard. Up to you. Yeah. Did you did you guys? By the way, congrats once again. That looked like a stomp. Uh, it was a stomp. Uh, what what do you think about the? Brewmaster first phase like did you guys know from the get-go it's gonna be a position five or did you think okay this guy has to be a five we have a bane and a grimstroke it's not an easy game for him thank you lizard for yes uh and uh no we see brewmaster with like okay brewmaster well we pick and then dm say oh guys 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 i know they can flex it if uh, like to flex this hero to position five uh, look, we need to, to think what can uh, like uh, close you your ban morph. Uh, yeah, and we're like, oh, yeah, okay, we ban Enigma and uh, Lycan, and uh, then he picked the Stalker. <laughs> so basically, I think we uh, like uh, understood, yeah, and we ban two best heroes in my opinion. Yeah, it, it it looked great. Whatever guy, you guys did, it it definitely did look great in the end. What I want to know is, like, you guys are, for, from what I've seen at least, looking stronger than ever, like the Entity lineup. Uh, of course, you had some changes. How is it uh, with, with the changes? I mean, uh, is the communication a little bit easier? You're all... Uh, Rusko Govoriachi now, I believe, in, in the team, right? Like, you can all uh, speak your na native languages. Is it a little bit easier now to play with each other? No, I think uh, I'm almost uh, for free. Uh, can speak English, in uh, like, uh, let's say, in Dota. In, uh, even right now, I can uh, say anything I think right now. And even right now, I think in English. So, for me, it's not a problem. And mm -hmm. for Kartomif as, as well, for example, he already two or three years uh, playing uh, uh, in English team, yeah. So English teams. Uh, not really, but uh, of, of course something changed, and uh, yeah, not uh, entity from one year ago or two years ago. It's a different team right now. Oh, oh not not fully, yeah. of course, but like slightly, you know, it's like. So, so if you if you would compare the team to like the previous years, would you say that you are the same or much better or just? Just a different team. Uh, you know, it's hard to say. In the previous rosters, we also had like uh, ups and downs, and uh, uh, the distance will show what uh, we can achieve, right? And then we can uh, make, uh, um, and then we only on, on, only then we can make uh, how it's uh, conclusions, conclusions, yeah. Yeah. No, well put. I wish you all the best in long distance in this long distance run. Congratulations from me once again. Yeah, thank congratulations you, from me as well. Thank, thank, thank you for joining us, Fishman. Yeah, have thank a nice day, thank guys. Thank you, thank you. You too, brother. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you. you. All right, Bye. there we go, Lizard. First series done of the day, and we now get to look towards our second series as well. Entity. This is uh, this is nice. It's always good to be able to see a team kind of. One that you are expecting a little bit less, you know, there's always those star studded names and organizations, you know, like I was kind of bringing up before, you know, your Bet Booms, your Falcons, and your Spirits, forgetting a couple that you're really expecting to, to play very well at some tournaments. And it's nice. Uh, look, it's just game one. It is their first series. So mm -hmm. I don't want to get like too ahead of myself, but they like something is really starting to work for them they did just win that one win series tournament they blitzed through the swiss stage they 2 owed og in very convincing fashion and this is why i was saying i want to see them versing some other teams now and see how they're going to be able to compare up against those teams so it's going to be very exciting to see their development um in the in the upcoming days yeah i'll, I'll have to say he has a really good head on his shoulders just uh, uh very well thought through everything that he's saying even uh, even he's not giving away a lot about Bane and when he's talking about the team <laughs> he's uh, really uh, straightforward when it comes to you know just how he feels about it and they are in a good spot but distance like time will tell just like time will tell if I ever validate Dota again I'm stuck on 62 gigabytes for half an hour now man, i swear I you just had to do that thing. again like recently did you do that like a week ago as well i, I don't just... know yeah i don't know if it's my pc but i'm validating dota like once every two weeks it feels like 
something unlucky. is up. Yeah, unlucky. What can you do? I am winning do, a lot of games though, and I am casting a lot of oh, games too. Care. So I'm lucky in that way. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm care about then the you second care. part. You winning the games. <laughs> yeah, then, then I care. You winning games. You know, I don't care. What I care about though is Spirit vs Heroic. That sounds like a very, very fun series. We had the opportunity to cast one of Heroic series in the Swiss stage, and they came out with a lot of unique strategies that we have not really been seeing from some other teams. And for Spirit, they've also been struggling in some recent tournaments, at least not having results that a lot of people would be expecting. So this is going to be their first series after a little bit of break. They're going to be going up against the South American team in Heroic. So we're going to have some much more exciting action going on. First, we need to go to a break. When we come back, second series, Spirit up against Heroic. We'll see you guys soon.
Two brand new teams giving us the action for our second series of the night. We've got Heroic, one of the teams that made it out of the Swiss stage, taking on Team Spirit, one of the teams that got invited. Did you lose your glasses again? Okay, there we go. Found them. Got them. Got them. Him. You got him. I'm you looking at now? you. I know what you're going to start. I'm not even going to go into that. I found them. Ah. <sighs> Now that I see you, I better take them. Oh, <laughs> just <what>? kidding! <laughs> just kidding! You're you're lovely. <clears throat> you're one of my top ten favorite casters to work with. But uh, we have <laughs> what, a really, what really fuck? great game. <laughs> really great. What? what you you were messing with me the whole morning? I need to strike back a little bit at least. But no, top uh, ten. No, no, no. I'm of course I'm I'm joking. Like uh, top. You're up there. You're up there. Um, <laughs> I would, I would, if I want to swear some more, but I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it a little bit. I'm gonna keep it under wraps. That's right. We'll, uh, we'll box this one out. We'll sort our Dang. issues out off, uh, off air. But no, we can, uh, we can, we can look at the series instead of having to, uh, having to fight between each other. We got Spirit vs Heroic, my friend. This is, this is gonna be a very exciting series. And I'm really glad I'm doing it with you. Like it's an exciting <laughs> series. It's a good series. Good teams. Heroic looked, uh, of course, Team Spirit, they uh, got instantly invited, right? Um, but Heroic, they had to go through the Swiss, Swiss, Swift, Swiss stage. And <clears throat> they did really well in the Swiss stage. They won versus some really nice teams, ending up with, what was their score in the end? Like 3-2, uh, 3-2. They did lose to Entity, though, and Entity looked really strong. Uh, they also lost to OG. Heroic, that is. I believe uh, the score was 1-2. That game went to full stretch. Because of that, maybe the power level of Heroic and Team Spirit is not the same. Maybe Team Spirit is a bit more favored. But hey, Team Spirit in the last few months hasn't been performing too well as well. And it is a team that kind of slumps before TI. That's at least what happened last year. They didn't really perform throughout the year and then during the uh, TI season, like a couple of months uh, before they really ramped it up and they started playing insanely well. Like these guys, most of them at least, just won two TIs. It's, it's very difficult to... Um, it's very difficult to stay focused and to, to continue playing on the same level uh, the whole time when you're... It's like you... You let's say you're playing Skyrim. You finished all the main quests, everything, and now you're just farming the side quests. You know, you you're not necessarily playing as as seriously. They finished the quest. When it comes to Dota, they finished it. Like two times TI winner, actually three times. That's what they have to do to beat OG. You know, to to be the only ones they have to do it three times. Maybe this is the beginning of of that story. But uh, they're looking really strong. Heroic for me. What I really like about them. I think you will agree as well. They have a lot of flair. They're playing a little bit differently, right? Than everyone else. They have their own meta. Yeah, no, I, I agree, hundred percent. It's it's exciting to see the different strategies that they have coming out. I mean, we got to cover the OG versus Heroic series, right? Where we got the dark here from the Lama in game one, which went like seventy-two minutes, and it was very very fun game to be able to watch. So we'll see what other things they have in their back pocket. Um, with that being said as well, of course, we do have some other streams going on simultaneously. In fact, we got one stream going on. They're going to be covering the Blacklist versus Aurora series. So um, that'll be a C Classic affair. We'll, uh, we'll get to see how they're able to perform. Of course, that stream is just uh, underscore B at the end of the link. And then so you guys should definitely go hey, check hey, that out. Hey. Hopefully you have multiple monitors. Now that, okay. now that all the SCA fanboys are watching Blacklist Aurora, I don't really like Nasi Lemak that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, come on, I, dude. Maybe I there's really a couple don't. that are still going to call you out. No, it's not that it's, bad. It, it's not bad, but they they have uh, better food. I, like Just just plain old uh, satay, uh, chicken satay, Nasi Goreng. I like those. Nasi Lemak, I mean, it, it kind of has a weird flavor. Now that all oh, the yeah. SEA guys are out, you know. No, no, but we okay. can continue talking about uh, our games. Do we have any SEA players here? We don't. Uh, am I correct? Yeah, we don't. Heroic is SA and Spirit is almost well, the Eastern Europe or all of all Eastern Europe. So 
we, we get a different sort of a clash. Heroic already played with one European team in the Swift stages, I think maybe even more. They played versus OG for sure, and now they have to face um, Team Spirit. I do like that SA and Eastern Europe, to me, and SCA always kind of had a similar um, gameplay with SC, with with uh, Eastern Europe perhaps having the most the biggest amount of um, experienced experienced captains which historically put them ahead and which historically made them uh, better in all the international tournaments things are changing a little bit you can see that SA teams are becoming stronger and stronger a lot of talent are coming from there same goes for SCA but Eastern Europe for now at least are still on top and uh, yeah interesting to see if maybe Heroic can uh, make an upset here. I really wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Spirit have been looking pretty rough lately. I mean, really, the, the big thing for me is it's not like they've actually taken too big of a break. It's yeah, their loss. They played in the Dream League qualifiers, which was just under two weeks ago, and they weren't even able to win that. I mean, they came fourth. Uh, Eastern Europe is very stacked right now, without a doubt. So, you know, there's... But, but still, this is Spirit. You, you're expecting them to make it through. They didn't even make it to the grand finals. They were knocked out by one win. And then in the... And then speaking about one win in, in that tournament as well, the one win series spring, they also came fourth place. So, look, I know I know you said this is uh, still uh, a team that do take it a little bit slow. You know, they take the, the gas off a little bit on the, the early stages of the year, but they haven't been looking in their top form. So... Wouldn't particularly be surprised if Heroic are actually able to find a 2-0. I do think you're more than likely it'll be a 1-1. A lot of it could also come down to how these two teams actually match up against each other. Maybe I think it's similar to like what we just saw with OG versus Entity. I think Entity just their play style seems to, to work much better against OG. Maybe that could be the case with these two teams, but I feel like it's pretty reasonable that this series should be a 1-1. Yeah, um, let's see. I think 1-1 one, one is very reasonable as well because of just uh, usually if we are around the TI time, I would say it's much, much easier for Team Spirit. But like you said, um, <clears throat> not really the case here. We are still very early on in the season. Um, they also, on Heroic, they do have... Where is the Vailama from? Is he Romanian or something like that? He is, right? I, I can get it off one sec. I, I, I think so. I think so. He's like Eastern European, I'm sure. So uh, they, they do have some um, Eastern European Belgium. spy. Belgium, never mind. I, same colors, though, just flipped around, isn't it? Kind of similar. Not sure. same, sim similar. I'm not good not with my... flags, no geography. Definitely was not my not my strong suit. I uh, I leave that to the other people. But no, he's... Uh... It's not the same. It's not the he's Romanian Belgium. Flag. Yeah, Romanian flag has a blue one. I knew a uh, blue color and Belgium has a black one, yeah. So not really Eastern European. This guy is as Western Europe as you usually can get, but he does know these European players very well inside and out, played pubs a lot with and against all of them. Uh, we'll see if he can maybe make a small contribution for Heroic, but this is like a stretch. These, these teams are international teams at this point. These aren't teams that um, have any problems knowing one another because they are facing each other. At least the players, they have faced each other in multiple tournaments before. So um, uh, you can't really be hiding any strats, which is interesting because in that last game, hiding the strats is what didn't work for OG, right? Like they picked that Brewmaster very early on. And because they played with DM in the past, he knew that they can swap that Brewmaster to a position 5, that they like to flex it. And because of that, uh, they, they managed to, to ban out all the good heroes and still, still win the game very convincingly. I don't think we're going to see a game that's as stompy here. Like, I think this series will be... Pro, right? Like, do you agree? Like, you already called it 1-1, but I also don't think we'll see a stomp in that 1-1. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I think at least a lot of the group stages where best of twos are, I see a lot more stomps than not. What are you laughing at? What's going on? What, what, what is, what is this? <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, let me post, I, like, I literally just threw a question at you because I wanted to go through their mini profiles and I wanted you to talk a bit oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm looking at me, Miposhka has the best, um, Best mini profile I 
I've, seen a I've lot never of that. seen that. Why is there just some naked guy on Raposhka's mini profile? It's, it's, it's Dragonite. It's naked Dragonites. The butt is it naked actually? Dragonites. Yeah, I think so. I think it's butt naked Dragonites moving up and down. And then Raid, Raid King with. Yeah, you guys, everyone that's watching, if you get the chance, open up Miposhka's, uh a mini profile. Check it out. It's, it's pretty good. Mira has a nice little cat as well, if you're into that. But. Uh, yeah, you guys aren't seeing that, so we can maybe talk about what the Heroic has been uh, drafting so far and how they played against OG and all that stuff. Like we mentioned, what did we mm -hmm. mention so far? We mentioned the Darkseer, right? Like that's something that Heroic played really damn well with, um, but they lost with the Darkseer. The game that they did win was, um, I believe, the Gyro support, right? Yeah. They played the Gyro position four, and it looked really damn good. I'd still like to see. I'd still like to see Schofield on one of his blinking, create, make stuff happen. Position fours like Tuscar, Tiny, things like that. I feel like if they could get their hands on these position fours, he looks pretty damn good with them, and they do have some flex potential as, as well with those heroes. Same like with Gyro. I believe one game that we watched the Gyro, he was a position four, and the other was a carry. So uh, another flex potential from Team Spirit. I don't really know what to expect. Um, do you have any ideas like when it comes to Team Spirit and what their drafts are going to look like at the moment? Because I didn't really... Uh, I've, I've seen <clears throat> some games that they have played, but is it just meta or is there anything extraordinary? We can do a bit of hunting on the Dota 2 Pro Tracker. Wow, Yutori has been spamming Templar Assassin and Moeta. Mm -hmm. Also, Anti Mage has a lot of games as well, which is pretty interesting considering no one's really picking Anti Mage at the moment. Well, what do um, you think about Moeta? Like, AM, hey, okay, Dark Series picked a bit. Anti Mage isn't weak, by the way. He's He has his place in the meta. I think he's he has really good games sometimes for him to be picked. Uh, but Moeta, <clears throat> basically. I feel like it's the hero to pick against um, against Omni Knight. I think maybe that's the reason why we see it a little bit. Like, Omni Knight is popular and Murta actually makes his life living hell. Uh, you get that AoE silence. He can't really hit you later on as well. So some things that are maybe the reason why he's playing her. Is this... What is this? I'm looking at Lala's Dota 2 Pro Tracker now. He's playing Clockwork mm -hmm. and Earth Spirit mid. What is this? This seems very interesting. And I, he's, I, I he actually has thing, yeah. a pretty decent win rate. I mean, five games on Clockwork, 60%. It's not bad. Sniper, a little bit of games. Bristleback, a little bit of games as well. Mm -hmm. So, all right, now let's go to Collapse. A couple of Smurfs. Naughty, naughty. I love I love what Laurel is doing with the clockwork as well. Like he's playing a lot of games on clock. Yeah, I see it as well. And he has different builds, but I love that he's going for this magic amp. Like he's going Kaya very early on. Like Aghanim's Blade Mill Kaya. But then again, I look at the games that he has won, by the way. And uh he's got like Aghanim's minute eleven. What the hell is this? Yeah, true. Is this I don't know. Right? Is this right? Like, this pro tracker is giving me. No, no, no. Well, that's what I saw as well. So. Yeah, but it, it's kind of wrong. There is no way. Like, there is. Is there a way? I guess there is a way. He's. I. I. I I'll have to watch these games because they're looking, like, ridiculous. Like, oh well, look. Getting. I was fifteen and zero in that game where he got scepter at eleven minutes. So. Yeah, yeah. Look, let's say this. Yeah, this 15, is, could be interesting. 15 0 12. Yeah, like, I, I'd love to see it. I'm all down for it. I'm all down for these wild picks on the mid lane, especially because he played into an OD that game, by the way. But still, of course, he's playing in uh, team spirit for a reason. So, uh, makes things work. I think that uh, another build on, on clock mid could be Orchid. I feel like that's uh, another thing that players might. I've seen some players experiment with like getting that orchid early, just hooking in and orchiding like minute 10, 11, 12, 15. Not a lot of heroes can deal with that. Yep.
It's going to be interesting. Hopefully they can cook some stuff up. Sorry about the little bit delay here, guys. We do have a draft actually now underway, so we should be getting that one up on screen very shortly. So we did some research into what Spirit have been playing recently, and we'll get to see if anything comes to the forefront or not. This was interesting, though, for Heroic. Uh, we did not mention the less track, but this is something that they have been playing to some success with recently. We saw it in their series versus OG, and they actually banned it because more than likely Spirit would probably pick it up with the with the first pick, considering we've often seen Lyle play it. Uh, and there's that mm -hmm. Templar Assassin ban as well, which Yatori has been spamming in his pub so far. But I also want to look at the Disruptor. This is something that Maposhka has got five games on very recently and 100% win rate. And regardless if he's even winning with it in pubs, it is just uh Maposhka staple it's an eastern european staple for pretty much since the birth of dodo i have to say though uh, when it comes to lash like it, everything is right that you said but i really do think it's something that heroic does the most like they pick lash a lot they respect the zero way too much and then they if they don't have first phase they always ban it just because they think the hero is the, the strongest one at the moment and needs to be first phased it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone else thinks the same but uh <clears throat> do you do the same thing? What's he resting on? By I don't know. I was trying to work that out. I I usually rest my head on the on the microphone. I I know it it, it might be annoying for you. I I not during the casts at least I don't do it. But sometimes when I'm streaming, um, and yeah, I, I'm not sure what he was resting on. Interesting. I mean, I kind of do as well. You know, my nose is like on my mic. I don't know if it sounds weird right now, but no, I I kind of. I rested a little bit, not like not like the chin, because like, it just pushes down. But yeah, you I have a it. strong arm, arm like, This this blue yeti is too big, man. This is too heavy for for an uh, arm. Production didn't want to see it. No one wanted to see it. They got they got it off straight away as soon as you were about to show it. They don't want us. Yeah. Okay. Sure. No, no, you don't it's have to come back. Here. It's oh, it's okay. Oh. We don't. We can we can see spirit. It's probably better. Don't worry. Don't worry. I won't show off. I won't show off my. Uh, this big microphone it's it's ugly it's old anyway it's been around forever um tiny picked up yeah like this is what we talked about a little bit earlier uh, for Schofield. i feel like he's best on these tinies and tusks and team spirit snatch it away from him so no tiny for for mr Schofield at least maybe some sort of a of, of a tusk or a disruptor maybe I, I like these heroes, like we've been discussing Shadow Demon yesterday and how strong he's looked in the Swift stage. At the same time, like this is uh, the first game that we have a team. Yeah, it, it's the first game that we have a team that we haven't seen in, in, in the qualifiers or the Swift stage. So we have a team that can completely shake up what we think is good about the meta right now. Yeah. Like they can come in and just start picking uh, different stuff to what these qualifying teams have picked. And see if that happens like tiny first stage nothing too crazy so far already looking at disruptor and crystal maiden for spirit two supports that i think are a little bit frustrating for primal beast to play into so we will see shadow demon as well but i think it's more often mirror that plays that mm -hmm. so yeah already looking at a couple of those supports potentially for maposhka when it gets to his turn Clockwork is also really solid, but Clockwork Tiny probably, you know, not, not the two spores that you want to have kind of fit the same bill. Um, they ban out the Enigma on one side, the Morphling on the other. Like Primal Beast looked pretty solid in the last series as well. Uh, Entity played it uh, very damn well in that game one. Maybe something that Heroic can uh, uh, recreate. For now, what I'm expecting is just um, another support for Heroic, uh, or at least the first support pick. Like, I don't know, man. Disruptor and Shadow Demon for me right now, they look uh, too difficult to uh, to ignore. Like, uh, the two of them have been the flavor of the meta for the last month. For most of these teams but then again heroic are a bit wheel, wild when it comes to supports they do go for pugna even and and um you know they think a little bit out out of the box i i like the grim like we discussed this hero recently and we i, I believe we this is our second game of course of grimstroke today but the hero was gone 
like absolutely gone like very rarely would you see it picked up and now we get it twice in one day because there's nothing wrong with uh, Grim. like he's still good <clears throat> like you're playing it with this primal beast you have ink spell but shadow demon is actually good against him and uh, like you get that purge you get the cleanse as well uh the illusions to deal with phantoms embrace like overall i always like shadow demon that's my problem though i i can always praise the hero yeah, it seems like that's it doesn't really feel too bad with picking Shadow, Bin, Shadow Demon up in, in a lot of games. I'm not quite sure, though, why we haven't been getting a lot of Grimstroke. I, I value this hero quite highly, too, but I feel like it offers a lot. But, of course, there are a lot of downsides that can come to the hero as well. Like, you know, in particular, being Renat. And we'll see if Spirit are going to be able to do that this game. They'll go for the Dragonite here. So, some flex for Collapse and Lull. Yeah, it can be just your mid laner into the Primal Beast, right? Like the Primal Beast, we've seen the same matchup the last game. BZM did well with the Dragonite. It wasn't really a hard game for him. Uh, the game was hard, but it wasn't a hard matchup mid. So um, something that you can play around. The Illusions are also very nasty once you get the Aghanims. I mean, even before the Aghanims, Shadow Demon Illusions with Dragonite um, form are annoying to play, ag play against. You get the cleanse, you get some extra healing from the Shadow Demon overall. Just a solid hero right now. I, I, I feel like Dragonite is almost in every single game. Potential thoughts of Grimshark going Scepter this game just because of the Dragonite? Maybe if he's able to get enough it, farm and we get late game? Uh, of course. Of course, why not? Like, if Greenstroke has a good time, getting that Aghanims later on can be uh, game-changing. It's not very often that you see it, but Greenstroke overall isn't really a bad hero when it comes to farm. If you get, like, some Philanthropist stone on top, like Philly stone, stone and then you can uh, spam your Stroke of Fate, defend a little bit, you know, quote-unquote defend. The hero can get a lot of farm. See what they go heroic, really trying to work out. Alright, so they get a bit of flex with the gyro. So potentially our K1 hero, which again we saw previously was also played as a support. Which... A bit of a flex, right? Uh, like, gyro and Grimstroke for me in the safe lane isn't bad of a combo as well. Like if you play these two together, of course it doesn't have to be. You can still have a different five. Um... Do I like a gyro as a four here? Not as much. I feel like a five shadow demon can mess you up. Like it's not a bad lane for a shadow demon at all. Like you, you start rocket barraging can, can disrupt you. You don't really have a lot of HP, so just shadow poison stacks can like destroy a gyro support. Team spirits, turn to pick. But it will be okay. They disagree. Not they do. What do we got available here for Team Spirit? We have I've maybe Darkseer could be something they are looking at. It depends if how much they value the hero and if they want to you'll put the dra dragon at mid, which will do fine versus the primal beast. That is a route I because know, man. of the like, I have to I have to just say one thing. Like Gyro for me looks looked like a bad support in this game, like maybe a better carry. But then when you pick Luna, it, it ah I don't like it at all. Like this is a Luna into a Shadow Demon. It's just like this Shadow Demon has one job in the whole game, and that's literally to just uh, disrupt the Luna. Like this, this, he just stopped being that save hero. You know, like okay, okay, of course you can use save if someone gets gone on by by Primal Beast, but if you use illusions on Luna every single time, I, I think you're completely happy with that. Nice dark dark seal call, by the way. I have to shout you out. You're a, you're you're probably the biggest brain caster I worked with. What's your MMR? You're you're like you're like six k, right? Five k. No, we we don't I'm, have to talk about it if you don't want to. Oh, we can talk about. It. I peaked at five point three, but I haven't touched ranked in maybe. But that's good. Three years, so. It's a good it's a good peak though. Five point three. It's pretty pretty solid. 
Usually you don't ask casters about their MMR. That's something you run run for. No, no. Uh, yeah, it's a no, no. Dark, I, I like the Darkseer pick overall. Like you have this tiny Darkseer combo. Um, they're both extremely tanky. So I'm not sure just how much a gyro can do in that lane. If he's like some five. At this point, maybe it's even... I'm not sure. Which, which, which one would you rather have? Grimstroke or gyro? Probably Grim. In my opinion, but laning with Luna, that is. Uh, I feel like they're both kind of. I think I'd rather the Jari. I think the Jari does a little bit more damage in the lane. And I feel like that's going to be a brawl heavy lane. I'm just concerned that like Spirit are just going to run at them. Because I feel like, regardless, if you get on the Jari or the Grim, they're both in some trouble to the Darkseed Tiny, but maybe you can get a return kill because the like two points rocket barrage yeah i feel uh, focus on getting level three on darks here the moment you get that level three um, and the, the, the lane becomes pretty difficult for luna we'll see if maybe maybe heroic have a different read and that's something that i've not noticed from a lot of teams like i asked one player privately even because uh, it was really irking me this this life stealer into centaur lane and he's like yes centaur does not like that like you can play it of course i because Every time I play Centaur into Lifestealer, I get bodied. And they're all, they all kind of, one player goes like, yeah, you can't play into that. It's it's just not a good lane. And then suddenly someone goes like Whitemon, uh, like when we interviewed him, and he says, yeah, it's a good, good lane for Centaur. I'm like, oh, how? So uh, a lot of different players have different thoughts on how the lane should be played and how the game should be played. And maybe this Luna into Shadow Demon, maybe there's something about the shard. Uh, once the illusions are made, maybe the shard can just mitigate the damage. Not sure. Um, they get the Lina some bonus burst damage, uh, but so this is your carry, right? Like this is your position one. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm trying to think if they want an offlane or a mid. Regardless, I I just want to hear it to get on top of the Lina, get on top of the Lina, get on top of the Shadow Demon, use the Ink Swell. I, Storm? I think it's mid lane. Sure, it's fine. Not really played a lot, but Void Spirit as well. Okay, okay, I, not bad. Like it, it isn't. Look, you know why I like it. First, the, oh. the vessel will prove to be super important for them. What what happened? Ah, uh, Yator is playing DK. I thought Yator was going to play the lane of this game. Okay. Why? Very interesting. I have seen DKs actually do very well into the Coddle because you just like you have such okay. an overwhelming amount of right click advantage. You just like out deny the the Coddle for like the first couple of waves, even longer. I'll I'll give you my perspective. I hate playing DK into Coddle. I think Coddle does well there. At least that's how I feel. Um, like this the lane the or lane. the 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 early game. Even the lane with a couple of rotations, the. The moment okay. Kotl hits six, it's hard. It's hard to push into him as well. He's constantly pushing the wave, but uh, I, I have a different problem uh, for 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 uh, for them. It's not really about the Dragonite. It's about the Lina. Like Lina safely, in, for me, feels really damn scary. Into uh, uh, well, she isn't scary. She's scared against Grimstroke and Primal. I feel like those two heroes can really mess her up. Like the same way Drow got messed up last game by Centaur and Grim, I feel like the same thing can happen for Alina in the lane because you have ways of getting on top of her. Because of that, I feel it's better uh, to put the Lina mid and Dragonite safely, and he's a bit tankier, less prone to uh, just dying constantly to those two. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's see how, how they're going to be able to go with the draft and if Heroic are going to be able to take it or Spirit... We'll find a game one. Keep in mind, of course, it is a best of two. No more best of threes with us entering into the group stages. How do we feel about the draft from either side? Do we have a preference heading to the game one? I have a huge preference uh, towards Shadow Demon in general. Just uh, the hero looks great. And then I see uh, him being played into Luna. And it's really hard for me to go against him. I like the Coral pick. I like the fact that they can play really damn fast with the Coral Luna. A, uh, Primal Beast making all the chaos happen. Then you have tr early travels on Analog. I think there are some nice things. Um, I also 
thought that they could have picked a different carry that would work better against Team Spirit, but we will see. Um, how do you feel? Are you leaning towards one way or another? I am leaning a bit towards Team Spirit, yeah. Um, I don't. I, I I think both sides have the potential to be able to come out on top. I am a bit of a coddle hater, but this hero okay. can. In a game like this, let's see what he can do. Like, Vessel is going to be really nice versus the aura items that the Darkseer is going to build. Speaking of the Darkseer, Collapse. Might actually give up our first blood. They're going to have a, a bunch of slows with the blood grenades. Another round of the Rocket Barrage shortly. And KJ is going to draw first blood. Maybe some damage onto Mira. I think this is ambitious to get the kill, but you bring him down low. I really think, yeah, they could have went for that kill as well. They had Rocket Barrage, all they had to do is split the tanking. He was slowed, but it's hard. It's hard. You don't see him behind the trees. You'd have to use Tango. Nice start, like amazing start for uh, Heroic. Exactly what they needed. You get this uh, bottom lane a little advantage. And I'm just... Yutoro didn't play DK right, and his pubs, like, we took a look at the pro tracker. I didn't, I, I don't remember seeing no DK. There, okay, there are, there are heroes, there are heroes that you need to play to get good on them. And, like, a Naga, right? Like, you can't play Naga without playing a couple of games on her, at least. Not in the pro sense, at least. Dragonite, I feel like anyone can play it. There's a reason why this guy was in, uh, the, what was it called? noob experience or something like that i can't remember i don't you know, know the i have no idea what you're speaking the, about the, the dota tutorial dragonite was in it all right yeah sure yeah i mean he's, yeah I, look i i completely agree yeah there's you know it doesn't compare to like your morphlings your nagas whatever but he still doesn't need as much practice but let's see let's see what he's going to be able to do i mean don't really think of Yutoro DK, but you know this has always been one of his biggest attributes is just his really, really diverse hero pool. But it is what was it like seven, eight heroes that he played at TI eleven? Like <laughs> every game, I, I feel like he had a different carry. Uh, yeah, I think TI it was even like high double digits of like maybe even fourteen of like unique heroes in a row. But I could maybe that's. Maybe I'm fibbing a little bit, but no, no, I feel no. like I, it I was pretty so. high. I think, I think you're right. I think you're right, yeah. Because 7-8, maybe anyone can do it, but he he had he literally had a different carry in every game. And that's also such a cool thing about Oda. You can feel that there is like one or two carries that are broken and constantly spam them, and then some dude just comes in and plays every hero and does exceptionally well with them. And that's your tour. Yeah, with that set top Toro. lane, I, I think it shouldn't be too hard for Yatoro. Like, they have more kill potential on Radiant, the way I see it, definitely. But you can maybe play against that with disruption. Every time Inkswell goes on, you disrupt. Yeah. I wonder how the matchup changes as well with the Dragonite in the side lane as Mapochka is actually going to get run down. Once you see the banishment is actually used onto Scofield, it means Divai Lama. He's got nothing to fear about his trample being cancelled, so nice read from them to be able to play aggressive. Yeah, if you if you try an aggressive move such as that one, and you go with, uh, with if you waste your disruption, basically it's very easy to to die. I'm not sure what happened mid, by the way. Analog was running around with a bunch of creeps, and he is losing this lane very hard, by the way. So that's another reason why Lina is mid. 20 last hits, 11 denies. And not a good time for Koro. Yeah, not a good time at all. Top lane once again, Yator. Looks like there'll be a return kill from either side. Inkspell is going to connect. Divide Lama needs one more. Horned hits, apparently. Just a headbutt. Sort of a smack of the wrist or something like that. So. I love I love the animations in Dota, like how we have some random leg kick and whatnot. Toss back on the Luna bot lane. Oh, they're in trouble with the TP rotation. They might both die on Spirit if they don't get quickly get the kill into K1, which they will, but it's not going to matter in the end. Another round of the Rocket Barrage. 
And this was exactly what I was speaking about inside the draft. Those two points Rocket Barrage give you so much potential for the turnaround if Spirit play a little bit too aggressive with the Darkseid Tiny. Mm -hmm. And it becomes just worse and worse. This Gyro getting a lot of farm, a lot of levels. Like Sometimes sometimes a position for Gyro can feel like he... I don't know, he's a beast. Just winning the game on his own. If he gets a good start. And that's exactly what he got with the first blood. And now with these two kills... Perfect for KJ. Mirror off the back of the death is going to TP mid and refill Lars' bottle. So at least you are able to... Assist Lau a little bit. Maybe they'll even try and hunt Analog down. They do have a nice Observable that did just expire, but potentially they can frustrate Analog, maybe even take his hard stack. Ooh, bottom lane, okay. Apologies. Collapse is going to go down as well. So this should maybe be a bit of a signal for Analog. I actually don't even know if he did see Mirror TP mid to refill the bottle, but the fact that Mirror still isn't bottom, probably going to be a concern for him. They're going in. Gonna dive in he though. didn't know. Yeah, he didn't see. LSA. Pass back into the LSA. Yeah, there's no is Dragon more... Slave though. Not enough damage. Gyro. Oh man, KJ. Dude, KJ. Alright. He's I having. Hope they him. Just a <laughs> Yeah, give that boy mana. And even if you don't give him mana, he's got clarity, he's got 8 1 st stacks, and he's gonna have Arcane Boots in what, like 75 gold? He's rich! Like, he's Omega rich on this gyrocopter. They're making a lot of stacks on uh, the dire side as well. Mm -hmm. Alright, Heroic! Playing incredibly fast, and look, not even required really for that kill, and. And we see Maposhka was starting to, to move mid to get some vision set up to potentially dive the Coddle, but this is one big advantage that Heroic have, just the overwhelming amount of magic damage. Early BKBs and a potential pipe from Collapse is going to be a must this game, but until those items are, are completed, Heroic, they can just rinse Spirit every single time. Yeah, he was making he was making stacks like Shadow Demon left top. He started uh, stacking up a little bit. Schofield will be there to at least snatch some of this uh, experience. But he is counted. Can they connect on the stun? Let's see. Wait, oh, the Vilama actually wants to go in. Spies a bit of a freebie on to Maposhka. so there will be a exchange in the end. Yeah, but a pretty nice one, right? Like if you're if you're uh, the Vai Lama, you're very happy with that. Uh, maybe Grimstroke not as happy, but you know sometimes you have to take one for the team. By the way, <clears throat> speaking of items and all these uh, items that are coming soon, Arcane Boots completed on Gyro. He's level five, farming the jungle on his own. But Collapse actually moved to jungle and he's completing Helm of Dominator. He's got it now. So no Greaves, no pipe. Uh, Dominator instead. Mm. We discussed this item quite a lot. Like it's yep. much better now. I feel like with the gold that it's giving you. Mid lane. Oh, mid lane would be a huge kill, and they should be able to get it. Divide Llama looking to assist his team. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> like, what is that damage? And it's just it's gonna be the case on every single hero they run into. They literally had, uh, OG had the same experience, bot lane, Mira. They had the same experience last game in which um, they were just being ran down by Entity and Heroic, I feel like they took some inspiration, they're pretty much playing the same way. Very active, 11-3, 2k ahead, stealing stacks. I wonder if they're gonna block it with the sentry as well. Already blocked the hard camp. I do know Darkseer is someone who's is able to kind of farm the jungle much easier than what he used to be able to. A lot of this is the, you actually catch up for the hero, but 2000 net worth. What do actually, what does Spirit need to do? It, it, can they even do anything to kind of stop a lot of the aggression that we're gonna see? Oh, for sure, for, for sure, for sure. I think that they can uh, counterplay this very easily in the next couple of minutes. Like, you, you do have Lina, you have Vacuum Wall once Darkseer hits a couple of extra levels. Not for now, though. Collapse might fall again first. Oh my god! Nice cooldown placement as well from KJ. 
Yeah, perfect. What's also crazy is that this is the power of Gyro. He has no items that are amping him up, no urn, vessel, whatever, veil. He just dishes out so much damage just from the levels. And when you have a good start, you get a lot of levels. Like the game almost always feels good. You do fall off eventually, though, because you are all about that damage. So if you do not manage to get a full um, advantage out of that in the mid game, the game can start to feel a little bit harder. Mm. How do you how do you feel about the lean of this game though for for lol? Because at least how I look at it, I feel like if we can get to the late game, are they really going to go for the kill on KJ? It's got a shield rune. It's a good carry to carry matchup. Like if you can get to the late game, it's actually pretty good. Mira, mm, Mira. Right, he's got the Vilar marker in his face. Let's use the higher cam, but. They're not going to pay off in the end. Yeah, I, I, I really feel like Lyle can actually carry this game if he gets there, though. That's can, at least how, how I view it, but... It's... Because they have no one to get on top of the Delina, and it's literally only the Primal Beast. You're going to itemize for BKB. You'll probably have a Hurricane Pike as well. Once you have once you get slowed by the Coddle, or once the, the Dino's on top of you, you just reposition with the Pike, and then all of a sudden, they won't be able to close the distance after that. So it's just a question like, they may take way too much map before the Lena is really a big threat. And it's seeming like that might be the case, because Analog yeah, and KJ, this is deep though. Collapse is ready for the vacuum under the T2 tower. Back won't even look to go for it now. They'll split away. Divai Lama gets a bit of a glimpse onto Lal, and they're going to dive and look again at the burst. Anyone reveals himself for a split second. They are blown up from four to zero. I mean, even Yator is rotating. I think Blink is getting delivered on the Corrier, but unfortunately, it's just a couple of seconds too late. Heroic have already repositioned. They're going in. Oh, besides K1, he's got a big one. Eclipse as well, but the boys playing behind him. They're going to turn it. Well, there's nothing they need to worry about. Soul by for the double pulverize heroic. Welcome Dude. to the massacre. What's happening to Spirit? This is just insane. And also, you talked about the blink dagger on DK. Well, Primal Beast has got one as well. Like, and it's I would argue way more effective. Another thing that I kind of do not like Radiant about middle the, tower is under attack. Oh. The playstyle on Team Spirit is that they don't have Disruption maxed out on Shadow Demon. He went for Shadow Poison. Like Shadow Poison is great, don't get me wrong. It's always fun to have it. Like you can get solo kills, you can farm a lot. But like level 3 Disruption or level 2 at least would do so much. In any case, they just need to regroup. They need to start playing the game uh, as a team. Because right now they're just being picked off. Look, maybe there is some like... Ratting potential of collapse just to eventually start cutting waves, but I feel like we are still too early into the game for the Darkseid so really to be able to do that with the home dom. Yeah, he didn't go for uh, what's the standard build, like the Greaves. With the Greaves, you become very active um, the moment you buy them. But even with the mech, you are active on Darkseid, but he went for this Helm of Dom and then he died just as he got it. And then Tiny dies, so he can't really even utilize it. He can't be super uh, annoying with it. Yeah, well, he's going to be going for those aura items, but... You are going to have a big issue with being able to balance the farm between anyone, which also means that Mirror is going to have a very delayed blink timing. Shadow Demon is a support that loves to get some items as well. That won't happen. Does look like, oh, they're actually slip plus mirror and they're going to be able to run into Lull. An incredible smoke from Heroic. I mean, the conversion from them so far this game, all their movements are just paying off. The Vailama is just on point. And then he has this follow up of Coral, who doesn't even need Blink. Like we talked about heroes that are unable to get on top of Lina. They all can because they're very speedy. It doesn't even matter. You have Primal Beast with the Blink and then follow up with everyone else. And it feels like Ooh. they're forced to get BKBs on, on uh, Dire, on Spirit. Huh. Bottom tower is under attack. Mid lane. Analog. Dyer's top tower. Dyer's top tower has fallen. What was I doing? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. This is... I don't, know, I don't know what they're going to be able to do. He's dead as well. 
And instantly you see the Kotl coming in. Instant. Oh boy. This is not the ideal way <laughs> and how you'd like to start your tournament, unfortunately for Spirit. I mean, let's see, this is, I've always praised Spirit, and I think a lot of people have, that this is probably one of the best teams at being able to play with the deficit. But this is, yeah, this would be something if they're even able to make this an even game at some stage. Yeah, because Mira, I'm not sure what the plan was. Mm -hmm. Dark collapse is going to run in. That Phantom's Embracer for the Tiny is so frustrating. So, wall is going to be used. Collapse is trying to run down Schofield. They're going to be cautious if they step a bit too far over. The backstab is coming from Analog, and now Divai Lama just sums back in. You'll cancel the Pulverize, but it, oh, it's just... Can. It just doesn't matter. Yeah, they're, they're being crushed right now. And now, yeah. lol, KJ with the Invis, or Glimmer Cape, in fact, he... He's this could be a he, solo kill. No way he's going to solo kill him. Okay, bit of an awkward cooldown usage. Analog is here, though. Yatoro's going to be able to slow him down. They got him. Divide Llama jumps out from nowhere. Now no, they're going to go for Yatoro as well. Quick timing onto the blink, but they're not done. They will hunt a TPR, any cancel. There will not be, but... Yep. <laughs> 10k. Almost 10k ahead. 15 minutes in. This is looking like an absolute stomp. And I like Team Spirit's draft. I thought it had a lot of potential. But this Lina carry is not working out. Uh, but, like, whatever carry you had, it's not really about the carry. You're just not making any plays on the map whatsoever. I mean, Dragonite carry, whatever. Lina is the true win condition. I want to say as well, I'm very impressed with Analog's performance this game. And like I said, I'm, I am a bit of a, a, a coddled doubter. I've seen some performance where it's been very lackluster, but there are these games where you know we see it have exactly this. I feel like when it comes to Coral, the hero is always going to do what he does. It's it's all about the rest of the team and how well they play with Coral. Like if you have this primal beast with a blink early on instead of a BKB, I love the itemization. I love that he went for blink first. Usually players go for BKB. But Blink just allows this Coral to be constantly active because he can TP anywhere that Primal Beast goes and the two of them, uh, they're a deadly duo. Yatoro again. Some people have to die. Unfortunately, it's Yatoro this game that's going to be the space, marker, space maker. It is all on Lao. How many Dagons all do you buy on, on, on Coral? What level? Um, what level do you I'm get? Not, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, level one is amazing because you you get the spell life steal as well. It's just a solid item, but yeah, we'll see how many he goes. That's gonna that's gonna tell you all about his confidence in this game. The more levels of Dagon, the more confident he is. I'm trying to even think of what else he would be. Considering. Some mobility as well. Mobility is always nice. Some forces, blinks, octarines. There's a lot of a lot of items like a hex later on. A lot of items that uh, Cold really benefits from. Alright, well, for Spirit, really, I think the the big thing for them is this pipe on collapse and then the the Lena BKB. You may hopefully by then Mirror's got blink. That would be ideal if you're able to combine all these three items together. Uh, there's probably a good chance that's not going to be the case. Maposhka! Looks like he's going to be able to TP out. And Banishment actually kills off the entire wave, and they're also cutting top. So these are the little things. Yeah, that's actually a real, really nice play. Very well done. This is just a couple of minutes going to get delayed. Mirror's going to be able to farm another wave down bottom. Lull over at the Ancients. Getting close to the catch the collapse. Nice so vacuum. should be able to. Yeah. Embrace is also so annoying for the Darks here. A lot of heroes that don't have too fun of a time into the pesky sounds, so collapse will go down. Did lane as well, they see Lal. KJ is in. Uh-oh. Analog's going to be able to TP. This time, the cooldown is much better position. Lal at least will be able to escape and doesn't have to use that freshly completed BKB. This all is without the gyro even get, having a shard. Like, with the shard, is actually when he becomes being... A real 
hard hero to deal with because the amount of damage with that shard is ridiculous. And um, he doesn't even have the shard and he's owning Team Spirit at the moment. Feels bad for uh, all the Team Spirit chatters at the moment. Press F. We must have had a 3 2 2 kill count, right? I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. It, it had to be at some point, yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess. I guess they just got two kills, so yeah, so. At least, uh. We, we we're getting the that. fun numbers, yeah. Fun numbers, yeah. yeah. We got one of them at least. What's your favorite fun? <laughs> yeah, don't go there, it's fine. Uh, let's not. Larm let's... does have his favorite <laughs> item, he's got the BKB. Alright, uh, they got pipe. They do not have longs. Oh, it's. Uh, that, yeah, okay, it's still quite a while away. Ring Trask is a bit expensive. Still going to need about 1400 gold. So, see what the call is going to be from Spirit if they will try and force a fight without her, if they will continue to stall. Top tower is going to go down and. No, they're going to smoke, but it will be to bottom instead. So, maybe trying to catch someone maybe a rush. away from the team. Oh, okay, maybe actually, yeah. I mean, it's scary. It's 20 minutes in and they don't really take it fast. And they don't also don't have a lot of vision. They have this nice ward at the Twin Gate. Collapse, I believe, did show a bit on the mid lane with uh, with something. Maybe a creep or an iron shell. The shell they are coming. Yeah, they are going. My push is out. He's going to try and take those Lunar Illusions. It is K1, K1 up on the high ground. The rest of the team are not there. Are they going to be able to read this? And yeah, K1 has to pop a BKB because it now collapsed under the T2 tower. Collapse. They got him. Divai Lama just hit the buzzer. So close to being able to escape. But Heroic were in a great position to be able to get him. Final seconds or final moments, I should even say, of that teleport. Yeah, if they still had collapse on Team Spirit, they could maybe chase after Luna. BKB TPing away, but without collapse, you really can't fight. Uh, because of that... It's just a trade, BKB, Luna for, for a Darkseer, not really the best trade you can have, but... Also, like, Lina used to be really strong into Luna, as, as a carry to carry. I still think she's decent, she's good, but I'm, maybe this Kanda build changes things a little bit, because you can spam her from distance, if nothing else. And K1 is Omega rich, by the way, he's 100 CS above Lina. Yeah. 8k gold. Kanda completed. He will have the Sages as well now. This is probably one of the most farmed Lunas at this stage of the game. Uh, he's actually... He's huge. He's like elk level net worth. Yep. And they're coming from Spirit, but they will be far too late. Let's see if they won't even want to take a fight into the Ages. I mean, this has to be perfect. This is probably your last ditch attempt. Somehow heroic no, though. No one, yeah, kill the no one is showing on the map, right? <laughs> that, that's something. Absolutely no one's showing anywhere on the map, so because of that maybe it's a bit easier, but the wraparound will happen. Alright, how can they start? Yeah. Do they really want to go on K1 with the Aegis? Smoke's gonna pop. Here we'll get the Kitchen's jump from the support. Kill. That's not bad, that is not bad! Can they kill will make it really difficult though. Lowe has to use a BKP to just get the kill and... Now it means it's a BKB where he's not retreating or, or right-clicking at all because K1's going to be able to enter pretty shortly. And with the Eclipse damage, they should be able to continue to chase. Meanwhile, Divine Lama. Lama also wants to catch up to Lal. Inside the river, though, K1 bike himself, collapsing your Toro. I mean, you're fighting to the Asia's advantage. K1 now has Analog to play with as well. They're going to be Good. able to vacuum him back. Yeah, Good you did with the Aegis. But it doesn't matter in the end. Collapse. Oh, what's going on inside the base? Divine Lama he still didn't get is him. continuing to chase. Yeah, yeah, he still didn't get the Lina because of the region rune and the uh, changes, of course. He's hitting her, but she's still healing, and in the end, he actually didn't... He could have died even if uh, they maybe turned their forces on him, but still. Uh, good team fight, nonetheless. They get Mira, they get Yatoro, Kotl, uh, finishing off the Octarine now together with the Dagon, with the Vessel, feeling good. But you can see a little bit of strength from Team Spirit, you know, like, the, the stronger the Lina is, uh, sorry, the stronger the Luna is, the stronger your illusions are from Darkseer, from Shadow Demon. So that's the upside. That's, that's how you look at this game.
Let's just sure. feed them. Feed them so our illusions are better. I, I think it will get like we will see that shard though, and then as soon as you come out of banishment, you'll just activate the shard and you'll lose the illusions, and all of a sudden the value of the SD is gonna feel a little bit lackluster. Jump in your Toro. Well, they tried onto KJ last time. Looks like if they're able to bring him down before the glimmer cap, it'll be a bit easier. Not to fight Llama's looking to enter. So, please, I don't know. It's looking messy with the pulverized mechanic with the, the soul bind, but regardless, it works out into their favor. Beyond godlike here for analog. K1 Mice will also be able to catch collapse. Everyone else is a little bit too far away, and that surge was just initially used. What's K1 doing? Ah, oh, he's going mid. Mid lane is pushed in. They don't have a tier one on the mid lane. Keeper of the Light as well TPing in. No DK. They need to start spamming the wave. Laurel needs to be there. It does have this BKB Gleipnir, so kind of ready to fight on Lina. Not really there, not as much as K1 though. Oh my. <laughs> A buyback too. Actually gonna play it safe. A lot of respect from, from Heroic. 20k lead. Yet to pierce the high ground. 20k lead, still a tier 2 on the bot lane that they can take, maybe the Tormentor first as well. We'll see Team Spirit, they are going in, they expect this Tormentor to be happening, look at them. It's getting in close, Putting, I love this ward as well. Like, this could be a nice play, if they drop low enough from the Tormentor, then maybe you can jump in, make things They gotta make sure they're not close enough so they get hit by it though, I don't know what the range is. Yeah, they, they should know, they should know. They yeah, yeah, exactly. Dubai Lama, Dubai Lama oh look at that. God. What a read. Pulverize. They're all comped up. And again, this is a defensive BKB from Lull. And now they are wet. Mirror's going to try and get the jump. I mean, maybe Dubai nice Lama, right? Stars. BKB is expired. That's a big target if they're going to be able to kill him. But can they kill him is really the question. And they can't even. Glimmer Cape again protecting them all. It's such an awkward location for a fight. In this close proximity area, this is where Collapse should shine, but... They're just too far behind to get Those anything going. Illusions, KJ though. will still die. Now your Tor is going to try and run out of the base. Yeah, those Luna illusions that just wrecked KJ. And because of that, they need to fall back. Not too bad of a fight for Team Spirit. Like, really nice toss back by uh, Mira. Unfortunately, of course, they couldn't get the kill on Primal Beast. They do get the gyro in the end. And that, uh, but that's also probably the craziest place to fight if you if you're heroic. You're literally fighting at the barrier. Like you can't cross it. it it's hard to uh, go one way or the other. Collapse. <laughs> yeah. okay, they're just hunting. 24k ahead. This is literally almost as much of a stomp as in that last game. It feels worse, no? I, I have really I forgot so. the last lane. Nah, it, it doesn't feel nearly as worse. Like, uh, your Lina has only four deaths. Like, he's got the BKB Gleipnir moving towards Crit. Like, this is a true, game. True, true. Poshka. Will die. Yoink it, KJ. <laughs> no, you're right. I, secured. I forgot he's that. Secured. Uh... Secured. Oh, yeah. right. Secured. Yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Well done. Nice secure. Well, hmm, yeah, what's the probability? <laughs> it isn't zero. It's no, still it's not percent. zero. There we go. Ah, right, you know, some toss back. Back even further back. DK stun. To 3200 health on the Luna that they and, have to kill off. And maybe analog disconnects at the same time. Yeah, yeah ah, we yes. can always hope on that. Okay, okay. I don't like when my uh, my analyst is speaking about some disconnect being the way back in. <laughs> I feel like this. Uh, look, like, uh, like maybe that. if you maybe if you get some good shadow demon illusions on Luna and uh, Lina can follow up on the disruption with some stun. Maybe if you manage to blow K1, if you manage to blow Hector down in in one go, it isn't easy. Like you speak, you spoke about the shard, and he does have it completed. So. Why does it cost blades. 25 mana? Why doesn't it cost 500 mana? That's what you mean, right? Yeah, like, why is it not, like... 
a hundred or uh, just why is it twenty five? What is this? What is this number actually? It's like a it's like a BKB number. Like you need something at least to use it. Like we want you to use it almost at any given point, but if you're crazy enough to lo lose all the mana, then who cares? Maybe not a hundred, like seventy-five something. I don't know. I just see seeing twenty-five on this is just. I, I have I have some issues with that. I have potentially some issues with all the other numbers as well. That goes with the shard, but yeah. Can't tweak everything. Scofield's got a scepter. I don't even know how long he's had this. Potentially even a kill onto Mirror. Might actually be able to TP out. Hold on. And you tore it with the Mantra is starting to cut. You even have the Helm Dom creep just sitting down bottom as well. So I don't know. Like uh, really, the the most ideal place for Spirit is a, a high ground fight where you do get the toss back, mm -hmm. and maybe then so you you wall the Luna. Maybe uh, is he even going dark? No, I mean there's no way you'd be able to get Scepter. I don't know. You're just looking at some like miraculous high ground defense from Spirit, and until then, pretty it's much. you are taking zero fights. Uh, yeah, pretty much. You're you're hoping for some crazy high ground defense, but you'll probably lose uh, ages if you continue doing that. Bot lane, they're searching, but they're not gonna find anyone. They could go into the pit. Like you can go into the pit if you're if you're radiant right now. If you're heroic. You're, oh, you're after some cheeky stuff here. Did you talk about... Uh, I, I forgot about the Aghanims on Grimstroke. Uh, I brought it up, but yeah, I didn't. Yeah. You, you you have that as well, right? Like um, another thing to worry about if you're Team Spirit. Like you brought it up during the, the drafting stage as well versus Dragonite. It's always nice. So you're no way, have Mirror, a right? Your side. Like, does he actually guess this? Let's see. See, I've okay. Went too early. This I was gonna say. Like, how do you guess? A a and yeah. how do you know? It it's kind of luck. It's also like I guess you must have just played a ridiculous amount of Dota games to know, like, to be able to predict the the damage that they would do from Roche. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, he went quite early. So if he saw them move in, he should be able to have like not a perfect guess, but a pretty good one. Which like he did, 90, and they, the yeah. the verse cry went off as well, so he knows. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, went a little bit too early. Probably give it up. Let's see. Let's see what they do. They're actually uh, TPing back. Yatori is cutting. Actually, they don't have a glyph though to deal with this way. But ten oh, Maposhka. At least he got the lunar illusions, but yeah, okay, they're gone straight away. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't last that long. He's got the glaives now. That shard really making quick work of them. And this is also something we talked about. The the adjustments that players make so quickly. They're very on point. Gleipnir misses. Ooh, Miro. Okay. Maybe a toss back? Toss back. Instant BKB. K1's not even going to give them that opportunity to maybe play with the toss back. Divide Llama attempts as well with the Pulverize. No slow to swap's going to protect Lau. My Lama's stuck deep inside, but are they actually going to be able to capitalize? Nice it's a pretty good vacuum. Avalanche to follow as well. Two heroes vulnerable now. Lars having a decent though. fight on the Lina. We are actually finally starting to see some of the damage output once Lal is able to stand strong, but I don't know if they're going to be able to get more. Yator is attempting quick limit cape, and now he may have gone too far, so has the BKB to work with. Heroic There's that dragon form. The back illusion. in they go if they want to. Dude, the illusion is just destroying shadow demon no, look at this no. he has to run ah oh, yikes okay it will die in the end by the way that whole fight while it was going on on the right side while the Vai Lama was dying uh k1 he just abandoned him he abandoned everyone he has ages satanic uh, but no bkb and because of that he just moves back mid and starts hitting braxes like the whole fight he was just hitting uh, hitting objectives so i guess objective uh, Taking mentality from Hector. He has a DD now. Do they see him a Pushka? 
Yeah, I think they did with that high ground ward, but he's back inside the base. 4v5. They don't have the coddle recall. Oh, he's got the outpost in mind. Doesn't matter. Toss back. That's, That's a long oh. whoa, toss. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Nice blink from your Toro and... Has he got BKB? He does, okay. He's got BKB. Meanwhile, Divide Lama's going to catch Miro over to the left side. So it looks like Divide Lama should be able to get a solo kill. Maybe the pipe rip collapse is enough to keep Miro alive. Can he get another toss before his death? Sends him away. Unfortunately, it doesn't put him in a position where they're going to be able to get some kills. Meanwhile, as well, Maposhka does also go down to Schofield. Wait, wait, wait. That's... Cool. Oh, <laughs> he okay. ran into Poshka. the beam. We're gonna try and jump Vector. BKB. Is it enough damage? Low. Standing strong. Lotus are once again is gonna be able to protect him, but once K1 activates, Eclipse is gonna be able to run forward. Just That's the satanic. raw net worth lead. It's too much. The vacuum is nice, but That's it does it. not matter in the end. K1. Ooh. Okay, they got him. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, wait, he had a rapier. Oh, wait, Law had a rapier? Okay, I didn't even know that. Did he? He must have. All right, my bad. There is no defending this. Mr. Darks here, good luck. Maybe there's a chance, but it's a very small one. One versus four. Hit him, Analog. Use the rapier. Nah. Hit him. <laughs> it's okay. It's a 100 damage rapier. It's not that much. But uh, it's more about the spells, right? Dragonite now, but dude, they're just not giving up. They don't care about. Uh, they don't have megas. What am I on about? Like they still have top lane. Okay, but they are defending. Why did I think they have megas? I'm insane. Anyways, Mira is up. And so is Yat Yatoro. Goes back. Well, they're gonna lose Mira, unfortunately, for his efforts. Oh, they sh might have the damage for KJ. Maybe the fireball Yutori can he get in range? Alright, they got him. Ooh, plane. Stick around apparently. Yeah, the creeps do take uh, the tower. I don't know why I thought they had megas, like something is uh, crazy. But okay, they do manage to defend. There is a rapier on Kotl, there is 50%. It doesn't really make a whole difference, like a whole lot of a difference, but it does still keep them in the game. I don't know if you noticed, but one ridiculously strong adjustment that Heroic are doing is this Aghanim's on uh, Grimstroke that we mentioned earlier. So, he's not using it he's not using it on Dragon Knight. You know what he's using it on? He's using it on a, a enemy's Luna Illusions and they're getting mm. another even stronger Luna on their team. Interesting. It's it's broken as hell. Like it's literally, and every time he does it, he tips uh, Miposhka. Like thank you for helping me. Because last time he <laughs> took the illusion and then it's he sent it on Miposhka and he killed him with it. I guess same can be done with the wall one. Like if you can do it on disruption, you should be able to do it with the wall illusion as well. I wasn't even sure it worked that way, but yeah, this is. Pretty damn good for Heroic. Oh, yeah, 44,000 net worth lead, man. This is crazy. He's got a Swift Blink now. No boots on Luna. Why, why do you need boots? He's got Swift Blink to work with. Can jump in behind all of them with that BKB. Still has to be a bit careful. Like His BKB has been really nicely kited by uh, Purge of Miposhka. All right, last fight. I don't see. I just bought a crit stick. Yummy. DK illusion. Yeah. Just siege with it if you want. They really don't have to wait Oh anything. my god. Look at that. Oh my lord. Oh, Luna's oh. in. Oh! oh. <laughs> god damn. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the illusion! I <laughs> uh, did the Divine Lama doing this thing. Oh, Miro jump in. Memo as well, lol. It's gonna be okay actually. K1 was a little bit hesitant to continue. Running down the lean up, throwing to expose. They want killers, or they can win the game, whatever they want. K1's gonna turn to the Ancient. Meanwhile, Divine Lama just wants to, to add the, to the tally. 
It's a good vacuum, but there's no follow-up. Jeez, a cord spirit. Uh, not Jeez. the game they would hope to remember. Yeah, Team Spirit, they start off this uh, best of two series the same way OG finished their last ones. Maybe in the end, of course, the lead was much bigger for uh, Heroic 50k lead. They just crushed them. This wasn't... Yeah, we expected, everyone definitely expects more from Spirit, no matter what form they are in. But this game did not look nice. They they just figured out everything they had to do against Spirit. And uh, they adjusted correctly with their draft. I loved the Primal Beast plus, plus Keeper of the Light. I feel like this Primal Beast is an answer to most of these Glass Cannon long-range heroes. Especially if there's some sort of, um, like... You, you're a mid, right? And you're supposed to be making some plays, I suppose. Like, you're at, at least you have the most levels in the game at all times early on. But he, c he just couldn't do anything. They were collapsing on him 24-7. Your Dragonite as well wasn't really doing a lot. Um, but it all started with Gyro having too good of a game. Like, you called it during the draft. I wasn't even sure if he can do a lot in the lane, like Tiny and Darkseer, if they hug the creeps and there's just Iron Shell everywhere, Rocket Barrage can look kind of stupid, like it's not really doing a lot, but they found a way to play around that very nicely, and uh, they just completely dominated bot, then Gyro started rotating everywhere. Davai Lama, of course, most likely my MVP, but uh, for it, I should say, yeah. everyone did their part. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I just kind of hmm, just kind of clicked on me as well that it, it seems like this Grimstrike hero very similar to Disruptor in a way where we see a lot of drafts tend to be very high tempo, like run at you so you can utilize the glimpse. And it feels like this is definitely the big advantage that Grimstrike provides as well, where if you have a lot of heroes with low cooldown spells, you just can non-stop keep going with ink spell and this is you know what you can do with the primal beast so i don't know very cool to see them use this hero to the the full limit that it can because we're not really seeing a lot of other people play the grimstroke as much like we saw it you know once early today but besides that people are still trying to shy away from it so it's cool it's cool i wonder if they're going to continue to put the priority on it if they feel like this is a hero that needs uh, a little bit more value but nonetheless it was just a dominant performance overall from heroic so um yeah we were we were saying to start the series that we were thinking it was going to be a 1-1 one, one. i really did not think though that it was going to be this dominant hopefully the second game is much closer maybe spirit just needed to get the cobwebs out because i haven't played a official game in you know about two weeks or so but uh let's see let's see what they're, they're going to be able to change up Unfortunately for them, though, it was, was an absolute massacre. So they definitely would like some revenge because Heroic had their number in game one. But let's see. We're, hopefully they can make some adjustments and all our questions can potentially be answered. But we're going to have to find out after a quick break. When we come back, we're at game two. We'll see you guys soon.
Let's see if they're going to be able to repeat that success and find a big 2-0 to start their group stage hunt to be able to make it into the playoffs. Mr. Lizard, my professional analyst that you are, I don't want to praise you too much. Uh, what needs to be done a bit differently? What, what are we wanting out of what are we wanting out of spirit in this upcoming game? Because I, you know, I, I'm sure everyone will like a bit closer of a game. Yeah, we want an enjoyable one. We, we want to you know, be able to sit here on the edge of our seats and not watch heroic, just do whatever they want at their whim, at their will. I don't know. I like, I, I, I like stomps. I like them. I, I like uh, long games as well, but I like stomps. I enjoy them. I don't know. It, it's fun seeing how far a team can go. And then sometimes uh, they make a couple of mistakes and then you get this huge comeback. Um, stomps are okay like they're a part of this game i would say that maybe one thing that they need to um, address was that gyro pick like it's it sounds weird though you don't want to be banning out the gyro but kj made a huge difference on the safe lane that that was one of the issues they had then they had an issue with uh, this lena pick just being bullied constantly with, by the primal beast then they had the issue of analog being completely unanswered on the keeper of the light like what do you what do I want to see different? A lot of things, and draft is probably the first place where they have to start making some changes. Like uh, like overall, it didn't feel. Overall, it just didn't feel great. No, 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 didn't feel great. Didn't look great. So let's see. Of course, yeah, you know, you big brains over on Spirit. A couple of TI winners over there as well. So they will be able to find a way to be able to work out what solutions need to be made heading into the the upcoming game but we'll see very impressed with heroic it's just a question are you going to be able to repeat that because a lot of these your know, tier two teams a big thing is their consistency maybe even of course you can say that for for spirit as well at, at this current stage but yeah it can be and i think group stages as well as a whole and this is Something I see very often in group stages, there's just like a lot of one-one ties, and there's just a lot of stumps. Which mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah, is people bit, people you know, tend to in, in a best of two. Maybe you can experiment a little bit more. Every game is like a world on its own, right? Like there is no connection. You're not going for a best of three, so like you can uh, you don't have to like we talked about this a bit earlier. It doesn't matter what you pick or ban uh, in the first in the first game. It won't relate to game number three. So you also have to adapt to a team very quickly. And now for Team Spirit, they they're faced with this. Um, <clears throat> crossroads where you have to decide do we ban out heroic heroes do we change our own heroes do we ban out what they have been playing right because when you look at heroic and what they just drafted there's a little 
little amount of heroes that they have um, drafted before that they just picked up. I mean, they have, of course. We talked about their, their gyro uh, support and carry. But besides that, I, I mean, if Team Spirit want to ban out something else, Heroic might might snatch that Lush, right? Do they have... Heroic might snatch Lush, yeah, yeah. They, they have first phase uh, pick now. So it's a bit different. It's a bit different now. Uh, let's see. Let's see if they're going to be able to get that less shock like they desire. It's, or if it's going to get banned. Yeah, like th that last game is probably the same like OG's um, last game. Just forget about it. Just move on. That's it. This is a completely new game. It has nothing to do with the last one. You just have been shown that Heroic are here to play, that they're no pushover and yeah you can see on his face he doesn't look very happy he's not happy uh, he's that not happy at all happy. <laughs> that's a which could be concerning because making claps mad is i don't know if i particularly want to, would like to verse him if he's in this uh in this mind state yeah but there is one well, there is one uh, thing when you're uh, unhappy and one thing when you're mad it's not the same when you're mad, you're feeling like I'm much better than these guys. I can win. I'm going to show it to them now. When you're unhappy, then, uh, and maybe there's something different afoot. But uh, Pangolier, actually the first one for Heroic. Interesting, they don't go for Lash. They put so much emphasis on banning Lash, picking Lash back in uh, their previous games. This time they just go with Pangol. Let's see if they do go for that Lesh Sam for Spirit or not, if this is going to be uh, an answer they feel like is okay versus the Pangolier. Uh, if they even want to put priority on it, of course you can go down a different route. You know, we've seen Shadow Demons, we've seen like Crystal Maidens, we've just seen other like support openers. You're potentially your offlane hero like DK, maybe they're going to scratch that. A lot of options, a lot of options for them. One man we do not see on screen, of course, for them is silence. So, obviously, would be communicating with the team and trying to work out what hero they would like to go down. And it's going to be not changing mirrors things. tiny. Yeah, there is just not changing things. I, like uh, the opener right now is um, <clears throat> very versatile. Like we see some teams starting off with a position of one. We see some teams starting off with an offlane. Most of the time, of course, as as always, it's a support or something that's uh, pretty broken in the game. What I also find interesting from Team Spirit is they obviously watched the tournament and the Swiss stage, but people have moved away from Kunka a bit. Like not even because uh, not even because the hero is banned every game, just because uh, like his win rate started dropping off uh, very quickly. Uh, and team started realizing how to play against him, started uh, um, uh, pretty much capitalizing on the greediness that the hero brings as an offlane. Some lifestealer picks as well did help quite a lot against him in the lane. Let's see, what do we have? We have a ban from Heroic coming up. Um, just a Luna ban. Just one of those carries, right? Like we have Luna, Lifestealer, and Morphling. Those are your top three picks. We'll see if uh, Yatoro maybe goes for one of them. As they do have the next pick on Team Spirit. I'm pretty sure you still wait it out a little bit. Maybe get an offlane first for Collapse. Like some... Mm, Mars isn't amazing. Like you have a Pango on the other side. You could pick an er earlier puck as well. One really nice thing that they could steal from Boom yesterday is that beast. Like maybe not this early on, they steal something else first. They steal the gyro, but I really like the adaptation to the Pango in um, in the series Secret played. Like that beast master on offlane going for Helm of uh, Overlord again because the item is buffed, and then you get that roar into Rolling Thunder. As long as you have something that can hit him in the Rolling Thunder, some ranged carry. Like, uh, Pango just isn't safe. He needs a Lincolns, so... Maybe an option to think about. Look, I don't know if Yutora's opinion about Gyrocopter has changed as well recently, but uh, at least... I, look, I know it's been a couple months, but uh, through TI, he was very vocal that he thought Gyro was a, a pretty crap carry. Um, 
And I mean, it hasn't particularly been buffed up a ridiculous amount since then. So I am really expecting this to be Mopushka playing the gyrocopter. Yeah, don't you think it's yeah? I I, I think so. The same. I I feel his he thought Jaro is crappy. I think Jaro is still crappy as a carry. Like he can work if you have some IO uh, to combo up with you. You know, some uh, really big buff that makes the hero work differently. Then sure, Jaro oh. can work. Oh, it's a dead you know. hero. You really like it though. Are you excited or what's what's going on here? I'm just I'm just intrigued. I think it's we don't see a lot of the stat fire, but a lot of team fight already. BKB is once again going to be a must from Spirit to do with the Pango, to do with the snap fire kisses. Yeah, Grandma I'm back in. We don't we don't know yet if it's I mean ninety nine percent it is a support, so you're going to have this Grandma and Enchanter supports. Um, I know Dubai did play it as a three. Did he? Okay, so yep. what does he? Analog build? played it as a Just... two as well, but I think with the Pango, you like, unless you flex the Pango off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think there is maybe some potential to put it, put her on the offlane, maybe some, but besides that, I wouldn't like to I wouldn't like to see her mid. I don't want to see Pango on offlane as well. That's one of the reasons the hero just doesn't do as much, isn't as strong. So just leave the pango maybe on the mid lane for now. Um, put the grandma on four or five wherever Enchantress wants to go. Enchantress into Gyro is a weird one. Like this is again, uh, it can like if you have a good lane with Ench and you get creeps and you can bully the Gyro, that's fine. But eventually, the amount of sheer damage, magic damage that he brings to the table, blows up the support. So support to support matchup, it's already nice for Gyro. Uh, to be able to just run across the map and uh, make stuff happen. <laughs> when okay. in doubt, okay, yeah. mag it out. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. This this uh, strikes me as, as some loss of confidence, you know, when you're going back to your uh, roots, when you're going back to your most, most comfortable heroes. Mag is still good. In Collapse's hands, I'm sure he can make it work. Pretty sure even in some of the Dream League games, I think he was actually going Scepter pretty early on. Aganims? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I've actually noticed in the in pubs as well, like when I see a Mag. I'm not really happy about it because the in pubs at least it's a grief. But um, in in pro games, yeah, it can work. It's a lot of damage that you that you get from it. It's not that bad. But overall, I'd still if I have a Magnus, I'd still rather have either that guy that carries a lot, like and uh, has a lot of right click DPS, or the Mag that's all about this positioning, like the one that can blink in, horn toss, really? skewer back, RP. The Yator Gyro. What? Unless it's some tiny mid. Maybe. Like, that's the only other option, right? Like, tiny mid with some gyro 5 with a different position 1. Like, that's maybe the flex that they can have. Maybe. Besides that, I really don't see it. Like, the gyro carry for me does not look great. And you could just morph here. Like, if you're heroic yeah. and if you're comfortable on playing morphling, this looks... Like an amazing game for you. We've seen what what was it that stand in kid for everyone that didn't watch like satanic. Aurora had an amazing uh, seventeen year old stand in yeah satanic. And he played uh, gyro in, uh, morphing into gyro and just made the game look silly. Well, it's an old school counter of course, and it's even better now. Gyro isn't really that strong, and as a as a carry that is. I say I, you know, I've, I haven't always particularly been able to follow the SA region as closely, and when I think of K one, I don't think of morph. Yeah, you you think of these if you think of K one. If you're like me, you think of these heroes that uh, are. Uh, yo, shout out to the dude on Reddit that made that uh, post yesterday, like different carries. And he put like this guy is gonna carry you. This guy is gonna grieve. This guy is gonna dive. 
and he he did some psychoanalysis of a kind of player that picks different heroes. And K1 for me definitely fits the group that picks Troll, Abaddon. You know, he's a, a I think he called them aggressive carries. Like, and wait, I need to actually find that. Like, he, he I don't want to butcher his work, but it was really, really cool. Something like, um, uh, something. Well, I'll find well, it. Give me a yeah, well, you find it. Yeah. No, let's, let's, let's see how the troll going to... Yeah, I, I okay, really... I found I'm, you found it? Okay, sorry, I found it already. Which carry player are you? So troll, he fits the animal. Uh, he fits yep, the yep. animal uh, sort. And he just wants to man fight their carry. Will overextend to a disgusting degree for, degree for kills. Will yell in voice chat out of excitement. Sloppy laning, but wins the lane anyway because of aggression. That's literally how I imagine Hector in, in most games anyway. And uh, Troll just fits that bill. It's it's a strong hero. It's good versus Mag, by the way, as well. Uh, into Gyro, if Gyro is a carry, I don't think you you, you care too much. Um, like Overall, it, it, it is a carry that I expected to see a bit more of. Ah, I see. So you're not a troll hater. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not a troll hater. No, no, no. Mm, I'm okay I'm with troll, troll hater. At the uh, what can you do? Tier is doo doo. Absolute doo doo. Yeah, no, I have right, faith. I have faith in troll. Yeah. Look, I, that's I, I a. Think... a that's a hell of a lane. No troll enchantress. <laughs> like, yeah. like, no fun. Especially if you're some melee core. I, I know with Magnus that you can play around the equilibrium a little bit and some lift into, or, or maybe not lift, maybe toss, whatever. I don't know who's going to play with him, but maybe some lift into skewer back. That's always doable. Like you can play against Troll, but it's not an easy lane. And you, you can see that Heroic, they're not buying it. They're still banning out carries. Like Windrunner banned out, Weaver banned out. They're not buying this gyro position one. See what offlane are they go? I would like some jump initiated to be able to play with the snapfire kisses. It's kind of hard for them because they don't don't they obviously don't believe Gyro is one, so it's a little bit more difficult for them to pick the one the the, the offlane. They don't know what he's playing laning into. Okay, oh so is it snap off or pango? I think pango. I think pango. Pango off. Um. Okay. Cool. Interesting adjustment. Can you wait? If you put Gyro, doesn't Gyro do fine? Then it, it is scary for Gyro until he gets BKB. There's so much damage coming from Coddle, like with those boots of travel again, and you get some early blink on Pango or Diffusal, whatever. It it, it could get rough. Um. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, muscle. I'm gonna take the more fling instead. So, I mean, this is a hero though that like really doesn't like versing spirit vessel and a, a bunch of early magic bursts, and that is what the cold does. This is what we saw last game. Mm -hmm. I think more things probably gonna have a pretty good time versus the Pangolier inside the lane. That is a big advantage. I think heroic again, their safe lane is going to be very strong as well with the enchantress and the troll, but. You know, we saw we saw the the coddle work very well last game. They don't, I think, have as much to enable the coddle this game. Like no primal beast and no grimstroke with the primal. But let's see. Yep. Yeah, I'm t I'm 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 not the biggest fan of the pango offlane. I I don't know what he's gonna build. Even is he going to do the classic pango from mid anyways, like the diffusal blink, um, or will agonims, or will he be doing some greaves? You know, like the old school pango offlane. Where you're going more for utility and you're um, more active with your it's just activity is the same, just that you bring some more utility to your teammates. Not sure which one it's gonna be. In any case, I do like that Yatoru is playing Morphling. I feel like you're giving this guy the ultimate win condition in the game, and like you said, there are difficulties, but uh, nothing that he cannot deal with. Like you can buy a Manta, you can buy a BKB later on, and uh, you you definitely can make the Morphling uh, win this game eventually with proper itemization. Yeah, it's just a question of is it going to get to that stage because we saw last game it did not to where Lao was able to get the move. Are you saying, saying they're going to get stomped twice in a row? 
I think there is a very real possibility that that may happen. Mm. Like I, this is kind of why you picked the coddle, I believe, because you're trying to run them over. Um, yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Uh, this tiny mid, though. Let Let's see how how much she can do. Like Laurel with tiny mid. Yeah. It's it's not great into Coral as well. Like Coral still enjoys playing versus these kinds of kinds of heroes. But if you get an early blink, like it can change things and you can be the one hunting the coral instead. Like you blow him up. Every time you see him, you blow him up basically. If if you get the items on time, of course. Yep. Of course goes you know, back and forth with then the vessel and the coddle. One thing as well, like there is no response to Horn Toss this game. Or whatever mm -hmm. it be harpoon skewer this game you know we've seen in the past like instant stuns you know of course psg lgd with their their rubik on gq to to answer the skewer and this time you do not have that so maybe late game or i can be like mid game depending how far manalog is but he could go with like a hex which i think he definitely will this game but you know until then collapse is really not got too much to worry about and that can be important that's almost like you know enigma not having you know counters to be could be black hole so Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see. I like this late smoke though from Heroic. A nice little wrap around. Ooh, if they uh, collapse, it's kind of hard though to go on. You can level skewer if need be, but it looks like it won't be required. I was maybe thinking that they will wrap completely around and then if you hit them from the tier one, like the the, the little pathway between the tier one and the, and the stairs, then maybe they could get something. But Riposhka, sir. That's the wrong side. What, what was he trying to do there? Maybe okay. Maybe if he finds one hero, then he can bully them with rocket barrage. Maybe that was the game plan. Yeah, so so. I don't know. Just uh, look and have some fun. See if you could get maybe a high five before entering the lane. Mm -hmm. Do you, by the way, see Dyer's wards? Like, uh, at, I do. Yeah, look at how different it is. Like between the the, the two, two sides, just the wording is crazy for me. Like Dyer is just covering the ancients and uh, scouting out uh, for Coddle so that he can farm. And Radiant all in on mid lane, all in on those ganks. Just like you can see how they feel about the game just by looking at the wards. How do we feel about this top lane, actually? Because, yeah, again, I thought, like, Troll Enchantress should really have a good time, but do we think, you know, with the really comfortable Magnus and, and Rubik, I mean, these are probably two of the... They are two of the best heroes for, for Mirror and Collapse. Do we think they still will, will be able to get some farm? I absolutely think that way, especially when I look at KJ and see that he level one nature attendance. So he will... Like, this allows you to, to trade a little bit better level 1, but at the same time, uh, it's super defensive and K1. Look at this. He's dead. Yep. Well done, telekinesis into the skewer. That's a big right click as well. Nice high roll. And... Alright, I mean, skewer does so much damage at the early stage with that percent damage getting changed too for the, for the distance's damage. Yeah, just... Uh... Really nicely done. Nice little kill. They also blocked the small camp from Ench, so she's kind of stuck uh, on level 2 without enchant. Like, he can level it, but can't really take a good creep to help the troll out. Right now, they're bullying him, and the troll, all he has to rely on is the mischance, really. Just play around that. Does importantly look like the Vilamas are off to a good start. This can often though happen against the Morphlings just with not many points in the attribute shift nor adaptive strike to be able to harass. But uh, the Pango offlane has always been a little bit volatile. Definitely a hero that relies on levels in particular and also just the, the power runes as well to be able to keep your resources up. So it's, it's a greedy call. We'll see if they can get away with it though. Gonna be the fuser rush as well here for the Dalai Lama. So I know you were questioning if it was just gonna be the cookie cutter Pango build. Looks like that will be the case. I was just Again, muted. I was talking about Pango. 
hour like 30 ah, seconds way. yeah oh, what are you so, saying enlighten us uh, no basically the diffusal build that's all fine what i dislike about pango here isn't really about the pango it's about the team composition like you don't have a secure reliable disable constantly until he gets blink you know what i mean like you don't have this tide mars something like that on the offlane Insta Slardar Mira will die. Oh, he had the Lotus too. Huh. Okay, what nice freebie do? fan log. What did he do with that sentry? That was interesting. I think he tried to bait them into thinking that he is the warding or something. He moved the sentry from one slot to the other by... Uh, like, I'm not sure, it looked weird. Like, activated it somehow. Yeah, I don't know. K1? Kimura getting range for the telekinesis, a little bit too far away. I wonder if he's yeah, going to be forced to go in early boots on the troll. He's got Glover Haste now coming out on the courier. We'll also get his courier sniped. Little Bloodseeker courier. Cute. So, so far the lanes aren't that bad for, for Team Spirit. Like, Tiny is probably the biggest uh, difference. Like, look at him. He oh. uh, he might even go and snatch some creeps. Uh, we've got a couple. I do want to mention that Kari snipe down bottom, though. That was a very big kill. I think there was a at least one Wraith band. Oh, Morphic, my Yatoro. Yatoro. oh my Ooh. god. And now actually they Scofield's might turn. in danger. Nice level up in the low shred is going to be able to deal with the missile. They also have a rotation out of KJ. He's going to zone Yatoro away. Oh, Pushka is dead. Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%. They're going to make sure they tank up on the rock barrage. Divide Lama gets the kill. Uh, this was a big bait. Like, he had a huge stick there. He had the fairy fire as well to work with Lotus. Schofield. He looked like he's in danger, but he truly wasn't. And now with the enchantress, they can pressure this. Yeah, with him leaving, though, means that K1's going to die. But yeah, they'll pressure Yatoro. No waveform leveled up. They got the creeps to be able to tank up the tower. Maposhka is back alive. The Vilama actually... Okay, never mind. I they missiled him. He's got 16 one charges and that missile didn't go on him, so... I even thought that he might be able to go back in. Shield crash, go on your Toro. He might still do it. Look at this. Ooh. They're even looking at mid lane as well. Lol. In a lot of trouble with the rotation out of Schofield. Seems like they're lacking just a bit of damage. Okay, KJ... We'll be there with the enchant pretty shortly. It's a nice avalanche from Lao, but no one there to TP to, to utilize the, the stun lock under the tower. So they'll get the kill. They'll get a D ward as well. You know, we were, t we were talking to Lorenov yesterday and uh, during the interview, Mira, uh -oh. he's going to die as well. During the interview, he said something like the only problem that SEA had is they didn't play fast enough. Last game, OG didn't play, last series that is, OG didn't play last fast enough. And now it feels like uh, Team Spirit are not playing fast enough two games in a row. This is just one rotation after another. Just constant movement coming from Heroic and it's not punished. Poshka, we'll try and steal this Wisdom Rune though. Good scan from Heroic. I would have scout Maposhka out. I'll deal with the missile once again with the little shredder. Now Divide Llama is going to be able to get a free kill. Yep. They're, they're playing really well, man. I'm quite impressed. 100%. Uh, especially after, uh, like, the after seeing OG get bodied, I thought, because Heroic lost to them, I thought that the Heroic might not be on the same level like Team Spirit, but yeah, far from it. It's more of a team-to-team -team matchup than anything else. Definitely the big thing for Spirit is uh, Collapse is free farming top. I mean, this is going to be a ridiculously farmed. Magnus and K1 is struggling. That is always the big advantage of the troll is that you very minimally, uh, very uh, rarely, I should say, lose lanes. And you have lost your lane with, without a doubt. It's about a 1,000 lead from, from the mag. So it's going to be an early blink. And I'm very intrigued if it is going to be the scepter afterwards for, for Claps or not. Yeah, early blink. And they will have two heroes to, to do the same job, basically. Laurel is the other one. He'll, he's going for an early blink as well. Boots into blink. So basically two heroes that will be able to initiate and jump the caudal. I think that's probably the most important one. Hector, not really oh, having wow. the best lane ever, but uh, there is a rotation coming. 
They got the vessel already. And this is a huge kill. A, such an if. important kill. Collapse top net worth. You gotta get him. Ooh, oh got my him. lord. At the buzzer. He's even gonna RP. To the low You're not making either. it out. You're Dude. not making it out, unfortunately. So that is a big cooldown. Now for Collapse. <laughs> and a really, really important kill as well for Heroic. But th that RP needs to be commended. That's a tip right there, though. Enchantress <laughs> mid lane. Toss back onto the tower, but not enough damage here. Instead, Mira will maybe die. Yeah, I mean, also Lal as well. The White Llama with the Diffusal already, along with the Rolling Thunder. And it looks going to connect, and... I don't know, man. This is starting to look very reminiscent of our previous game. Yeah, like almost the same. The only difference is Yatoro hasn't died once. The Morphling is keeping up the farm but like that's the problem with most carries like it doesn't matter what kind of a lane you have early on it's all about the playmakers like if they are suffering eventually the map will crumble for you too that's what it looks like analog this keeper of the light just needs to be banned from him second game in a row he's 402 just taking stacks now as well this There's is not a good react. spot for them yeah, Schofield's gonna run into a couple. Does Analog get out though? Lam might be able to toss him back. Meanwhile, wait, Schofield. he's running in. Analog. Schofield's even gonna try and drop the kisses on his dying breath. It's a decent chunk Arl? of damage onto Lam with the vessel still applied. Is that... They're gonna get a return kill. Well done. And what, what a good one as well. Troll now is joining in as well. K1. <laughs> Do they want the Ancients? Oh. It's a pretty big stack. It's daytime as well. Just uh, very easy for them. They have a lot of vision. They can heal wow. through. Wow. They stole the heart camp and now the ancients as well. No, they're just playing too fast. It feels like Team Spirit. They're answering. They're they're responding to all their movements. But that that's a first bad sign as well. Awesome. Like you're always on the respond. The second bad sign is they're too late like all these movements are they feel a bit too late radiance top tower is under attack dire structures are fortified and now it looks like this tower is going to go down as well you still have the catapult you got the dark troll summoner and it's not going to be a question it falls incredibly fast and now you've lost two towers six hours in net worth lead your triangle is not yours to control which is very important for a magnus lineup You've got Blink though now and Collapse, and uh, you, this first play with the Blink must convert. Uh, it's not really, like, if it was a Blink on Tiny, I'd be a bit more ha happy. For, for Team Spirit, at least, I'd be... <clears throat> they'd be in a better position, but okay, they smoke up. Let's see what they can do with this Blink. They have RP, they have Blink. Was it under the ward? Did you see? I think it was before, and then they started running there. I'm not sure, because the ward is... Actually, too good. It was in a, such a good position. They're baiting on Schofield, who's got the shield rune still. And it seems like they know. They re it yeah. really seems like they know. Look at his positioning. They know for sure. 100%. They do see K1, though. But I believe the smoke's going to expire too soon. I, even I think they saw Mapoche could pick up the invis, or someone pick it up, so... Okay, one though, uh, uh, you can't do this. Like, not with the two supports. Like, level 4 Rubik, level 5 Miposhka. You're not killing him before he procs his ulti. That's actually heroic that are going to look to try and make their own play. Toro has been getting a couple of minutes by himself. I haven't even noticed. He just went null. Interesting read. Uh, nice scan. So it's going to be on the mark. They know exactly where he's currently farming. Yeah, and he's going to go left. If he's farming this, he's most likely going left afterwards. And uh, un unfortunately for Heroic, they don't have any wards to put on this cliff. Instead, they will take down the tier 1 tower, which is still okay. You go for the tower. Yatoro still lives. He gets to farm up a little bit more. He needs his Manta. Like, this is like the first item that could activate him. At this point, if he joins the fights, it's just very dangerous for the Morphling.
They're hugging together though in spirit. Secondary blink has been picked up. Hero Heroic won't brave the high ground though, so... Dodge a bit of a bullet. I, I, another big thing for them is the fact that you get away with the greed on the Pango. Now you have this incredible core who has the net worth of what a, probably a mid lane Pango would at this stage. And this has always been one of the concerns, like running the offlane. It is greedy and some of your lanes can be very vulnerable and you can then be playing without a bunch of items. But this game will be look very different. And yeah, that's, that's the main reason why he fell off um, being picked on offlane is too many games in which Pango just gets bodied and then he has no impact afterwards. But this is like you said, this is a rich Pango, not too far away from a blink on, of his own. Nice word to scout out, yeah, Toro, by the way. Right. Slowing down a little bit is the game. Uh, Network lead is continuing to go for the boys on Dyer. Of course, K1 with his Battle Fury now has Yasha completed. Is so this... He's been able to free farm. Miposhka. We'll go on KJ. Uh, look at Morphling just running away. They know they can't fight this. They need to run away. Kotl is too damn fast, though. Oh, no. Not fast enough. enough damage anyway. I feel like oh, why Heroic did slow down is just out of sheer respect for Magnus. And Collapse Magnus, of course, on top of that. Like, you're playing versus this mag, you know how much this hero can do, and you haven't seen him on the map for some time. Like, your, your deep wards expired, you don't know what's happening, and you don't have enough vision to make these crazy moves anymore. Nicely done uh, by Team Spirit to play the map, though. They're, they're quite far behind. 7k, 15 minutes in is no joke. Uh, but they are recovering slowly. They are. But they are indeed, but still not getting anything out of the blinks, but let's see if the Empower is... I mean, to be that big thing that's going to pull vault their farm up. You've got a Blink Dagger now on the Pango, which could make fights a little bit easier for them. This was one thing you're also saying, which a bit of a concern for Dyer until you get the Blink on this hero, that your guaranteed stuns are not really an option. So maybe they're going to look to try and force down KJ some of the objectives. Mid. Collapse mid lane, KJ. Oh, he's fine, though. Might maybe with your Tori yeah. here, it's a bit of a different story. KJ, Parvis given over the last second. Rolling Thunder is stolen. But the kisses along with the Rolling Thunder, it's just a great Collapse combination. It's going to net them the kill onto Mag. Meanwhile, Lyle's still going to be able to reinitiate. Schofield leaps over the Rubik's Cube. And now this is looking scary for Spirit. Even K1's going to look to enter the fray. But Poshka wants to finish can blow onto Schofield. Is he even going to be able to get the damage avalanche just on the tip will secure it? But it puts Lyle in the compromised position where he had to edge too far forward. And that enabled Heroic to instantly turn it back around onto him. A four for one in the end. Or two, I should say. Yeah, like when you see Enchantress in front of you, you probably don't want to go on that pick off. Like, the, the biggest bait in the game is this Enchantress, always. Like, she's got a Dragonlance, Fluffy Hat, Magic Wand. Like, you just aren't killing her fast enough. And that's also, by the way, he just, uh, on KJ, he just took Untouchable. He had no Untouchable that whole time. Like, literally, zero levels in it. Dyer's so, <laughs> I mean, and she still was dying slowly. I, I Just too much from uh, the Snapfire. Like, the Solar Crest came in clutch. I think it was Paris at that point, not sure. But it did help out. And now they'll get Roche. Oh, another objective for them. Ages. Probably on K1, but... Honestly, you could argue maybe someone else if the troll is still a little bit hesitant to get involved in the fight, but he's got Sanj and Yasha now completed, and a lot of bottom farm for him. SNY and Battle Fury, like, without a BKB, this feels really good to have an Aegis, because it allows you to be way more aggressive than you would usually be. And that's very nice. What do you think about Null Talisman on Morphling, by the way? Yeah, I don't know if this is a replacement for Falcon Blade slash Vlad's. Um, I guess so, yeah. It's some Yatoro uh, twist on the hero. Yeah. Like, he's an amazing morphing player, of course, but I'm not sure. Like, uh, the, what I see the most is Morbid Mask and uh, Mantis style at the moment, so people stop 
going Vlad's, and instead just go Morbid Manta, and you kind of get the best of everything. And you just play with Morbid Mask until the end of the game, maybe you can convert it later on into something bigger, but... Yeah, I just with the null in particular, I have to imagine it's got to do something with the mana pool. This is why Vlad's was, I mean, because you would get life still where you want for the morbid mask, and then then you needed mana, and that's sometimes we were seeing like Falcon Blade. We weren't really getting any like casual sun, uh, sage's mask or like raindrops. So, I, yeah, I really would just have to imagine it's a a replacement for that. Yep, he's cooking. Let him cook. I love the snail, by the way, on Schofield. The, this set That's for cool. me is uh, really nice. By the way, I got messaged by one oh. of the viewers on Instagram. Bot lane K1? Oh, no. I was pushing yeah, in. No, no, no. It even... wasn't anything like that. It wasn't anything like that. It was a good message. He messaged me to okay. tell me that you can still see the cosmetic items. But uh, you have to press on the scoreboard. And then when you hover over a hero, there is this magnifier that appears again that's how you can uh, uh, that's how you can go back because uh, uh. i didn't know where the, where the magnifier the magnifier was usually on the hero icon it and uh, then it yeah. disappeared but yeah it's there shout out to uh. shout out to our my you know okay I thought you gonna... helper. thank you great helper much appreciated mm. oh can't have completed. For the Tony. And what's lead is not going though. 8,000. You got the T2 tower down bottom. Looks like they're sweeping the top. They currently see Mirror with the Observer Ward. Radiant not the most valuable pick off. But I guess you'll take it if you can't get anyone else. They might get collapse if they hold the trigger, but they won't continue on. Looks, looks like, like they're they actually want reading this. Right? Yeah. Team Spirit, I'm not sure, is it Tormentor time or is it just Smoke time here? It looks like Tormentor time. And then maybe Smoke. Collapse smoke, does yeah. have an Aghanims. Yeah. Ah, uh, they're so low. They, like, you ain't smoking anywhere. You're smoking to the fountain, maybe. Well, the Poshka shot's not bad. It's the best one. Like, literally. This hero needs the shard. Like, you buy it always, and... Having it uh, comes in handy. Like it, it's very annoying for Keeper of the Light and Enchantress. Like they usually like to keep their distance. By the way, do you see the the Bounty Cave next to the Radiant Tier Two Tower? There's a Bounty down the cliff. Mm, hold on, collapse. Yeah, Enchantress. Jesus Christ. Um, really fast. What? What did you say? Where am I looking? Radi Radiant tier, tier 2 tower top lane. You'll see now if they follow, if we follow Poshka a bit, Larl. On the right, you see there's a bounty in the in the cliff right there. You see in the cave. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lost and forgotten bounty. How the hell did it get there even? What the? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was the, the gold they needed to get towards their next item, and that item could have won them the, the team fight, and then they could have came back, and then... It could be one one tie. Maybe they can are you related? K1. K1 is... Are you related to Butterfly yeah. Effect, maybe, by any chance? No? <laughs> no, no, no. Collapse. Sure, sure. Second. Oh, oh, what? Oh? What just... What? What did you get stunned by? Did he cancel this? Did, did you, you not get, get ensnared, right? Did you get mini stun? Can we? From what? I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Didn't look like an ensnare though. Bottom lane? The White Llama set up onto Yotoro. I'm just going to try and play around with the Panko Replicate. It's not going to happen though. They're all here. Spirit Vessel out as well. And Yotoro will eventually go down. Uh, this is an easy kill for Roic to be able to find and a great setup for the White Llama. Just one item after another, Troll is getting like no Aegis anymore to work with, but Basher is the next on the line. He's got that BKB as well. Still not really, still not truly worried about even those skewer plays, unless he's skewered like super up on the high ground somewhere. And they're in full control. Unfortunate for uh, Yatoro, like he's going towards his Kanda, he's still not there 
it up like 1100 11000 net worth so it, it's considering the state of the game he only has died once this is uh, the time and like up his farm they're losing 10k we... difference but yeah i was gonna say can we see what happened at the the ancients production if we I have the chance to I'm intrigued. We gotta pause. I just kinda wanna I wanna know what happened. Actually go back and get a useless replay just to answer some of our questions. Uh, 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 no, they don't want you to tell them what to do. That's the only reason. Usually you'd get the replay, but if you did ask, like, what's gonna happen? By the way, do you like if the you... agonims? Do you like the agonism? Um? Oh, it's messing with you. I, I... <laughs> I was gonna say if you asked what they uh, what they've said it, but um, do I like the agonims? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, I like it. I, it's a nice response to the mag, I believe. I don't know how quick the cast animation is. I believe it's pretty quick, but I think if mag just jumps in, you could just use the the will o wisp. Will o wisp. Yeah, yeah. Because he went for it last game as well, and it looked strong. Did he? Uh, yeah, I think so. Or was it? Oh, he How did many too. Kotal games did we did we cast? No, he didn't. How many Kotal games did we cast? Today? Was Entity playing Kotal as well? They weren't, right? They didn't. No, he did. He had Willow Wisp. He had Willow Wisp for sure. Hey, I did. I checked. I checked. I just. I, I mean, I don't know. Last uh, me five minutes. I look. I last five minutes. Kind of. It was a bit of a blur. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Collapse yeah, Magnus. Yeah, Collapse Magnus, but unfortunately they are just hu huddling together for a couple of minutes now, and this net worth lead is growing for Heroic. Mm. You're at a stage where you can't really leave each other's hands, so their net worth, at least on the, the tiny, the mag, isn't really continuing to... The... Okay, so on the upside, there is a Here Kanda completed on tiny, and there is a Kanda almost completed on Morphling. Okay. So... In an RP, realistically, you can blow anyone up. If you manage to... Even, even the Stroll dies before he oh, drops one. K1. Oh, is he going to get PKP off? Oh, he's too slow. This is a gigantic pick off. And now they're going to get another plus one as well. Divine Lama might be able to get the ultimate. Nice stun from Yatora into the burst. All right. Team Spirit. Nice Get couple back, of catches baby. for them. Yeah, that's the that's the play, right? And look at look at collapse. Like he's on a hunt. This man knows they can't go for more. They're very mobile. The tiny and, and the Magnus and straight up hunting for more. Even if they just ward up, even if they de ward the enemy triangle, plant some wards, it's still a win for them. That's something that you have to worry about on on heroic. You have no saves, like literally no shadow demon, nothing like that. So the target that, that gets RP is. Probably dead. What did we steal? Enchant? Yeah, not bad. We did have Chakra. I wonder if that was a bit better. Okay, regardless, they're starting to respawn on Heroic. So once again, Spirit going to have to play accordingly. Ace Rune's picked up by Lull. Mm -hmm. Um, I any other? Four staff as well now on mag, okay. Yeah, yeah. N nothing really super game changing, but every extra mobility is good for them. Uh, however, I do think that they have to wait for RP again, which will be up though in 30 seconds. I'm not sure that they can take any sort of an engagement before RP is up. Might try though, look at them, they're moving top. KJ will run in first. They have wards to play with. All right, they're going to smoke. I know what on mirror. I just got some vision up. to be able to lay down. 10 seconds. Let's go field, smoke pops. Oh, dude, that's Instant D world. Divide Lama's going to be in. A lot of hate from Miposhka. I don't know if they saw mirror though before the glimmer cape. And now Divide Lama as well inside the bridge. They're actually going to look to try and take the fight off the back of the buyback. Divide Lama's in a bit of an awkward spot now, but. Collapse. We're not going to jump Ooh. into... Oh, nice cookie! The cookie! Well done! Now can you protect Divai Lama, though? Looks like Spirit hesitant. I mean, Blink's still on cooldown for Collapse. Maybe Dead they damage. can get it before the retreat on the other side of the bridge, but... 
It's back to safety. Great cookie from Schofield. They may still go. Let's see. They don't have Rubik, of course, but they have smoke and uh, they aren't going to let this rush go. The heals are there from the Cardinal. So rush really isn't doing any damage. And they clumped up. And it's going to run into Animal. them first as well. This is a great pickoff and they should be able to blow him up. Four to zero and they get the Pango. Schofield's going to be able to jump in now before the Archbishop K1. Rips apart your tour. Well, it's going to be caught as well, but yours, unfortunately, once K1's ultimate expires, he'll be able to turn instantly back over to the water. Tiny Mirror is here, but I maybe Collapse can play nice the edge of the team fight and find an angle for the RP with the both supports nearby. Collapse as well with a skill up, but you've got to be cautious of the rainbows. KJ's out of mana though, and Collapse. KJ I mean, he should be able to clean this, up. Yeah. And this is a fight that Spirit are going to win with losing Yatora early on and Lal as well, but collapses Magnus once again. Mira might die here, actually. Let's see. He's going to have a nuke very soon in one second. Okay, he's good. Boop. When in doubt, pick collapse Magnus. That's literally what it is. Just even with all the nice plays by the cookie saving uh, the troll from that first attempt, they still find the right angle. They use that smoke, come from behind, get the Kotl and the Pango. It's just a perfect initiation, you couldn't ask for more. Uh, troll still proves to be a problem. Um, and this game is still not completely in, uh, in an even territory. I, I still think that Heroic have got an advantage, but these RPs are definitely making a huge difference. BKB on Morphling soon as well. It will make it a bit easier for him to survive once Troll go gets on top of him. Can they take this Roche fight though with RP on cooldown? It's such a weird place for them, for Heroic to 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 fight. But with RP on cooldown, like you said, 30 more seconds. I have so much oh. vision. Two wards that are still standing. Okay, Mipoche is going to get one. Never mind, they'll get both of them. Nice sentries. A Roche scream. Is this going to the other side? Oh, th they can take it in 10 seconds and they're going to be bought. Like, it's a it's a nice play. Look at them. No they're way. Again, but what? No, no way. way. They're actually. No way. Do they have RP? Can they? They might be able to. They? No way. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. That's... Uh, what are you waiting for down bottom, boys? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, they're... They're, they're so back. These voice Yikes. lines, they're like, yeah, we've been quiet the whole Scratching game. Scratching their heads, waiting around the twin gate down bottom. Like, what just happened? Did they actually kill him in five seconds? And you don't even know if they use the RP or not. Like, you can't know for, for sure. So you have to still play the game carefully. We're playing versus Yat Yatoro now that has a BKB and ages <laughs> oh okay they're clutching it spirit is i mean they are a team that clutches very damn often but that was some next level stuff it's a bit unfortunate that because of it changing to daytime roche dropped the banner instead um so they didn't get the cheese oh, come on that's the that's the least of their worries. Oh, yeah, dude, come on, come on, come on. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, it's... it's You're biased towards heroic, biased cast. What? Yeah, I see. You don't wanted it, them to get the cheese as well, I see. Don't even I put that in the, the people's minds. They'll believe you. Biased they don't they know you're confirmed. joking. <laughs> of course they'll believe me. They believe every caster is biased. It's like... 101 to chat. Okay, I'm a I'm a Twitch chatter as well. Yeah, when I'm when I'm not covering the games, I'm in chat. I'm spamming my pogs. I'm spamming my all the emotes. Look at him yeah. trying to be cool, <laughs> in with the boys. I am one. one. Of us. I am one. Uh, such a pick me. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> I want them to like me. <laughs> oh. Are they still? Uh, yeah, we've had. What's on the courier? Look at collapse. Okay. Leave the damn courier alone. Gets him. Gets level 18 as well. After, uh, let's see if he's 
he will not farm the ancients, but he can farm pretty much anything he wants to, as long as Yator, Yator has this Aegis in his inventory. I feel like Team Spirit is very safe. Also, like, we talked about the BKBs. The BKBs are so huge for them to get, because you are playing versus pretty much one fo sort of disable, and that's the Pango with Rolling Thunder. Once the BKBs are up, you don't have to really worry about that, and they don't have the chain control to stop you from uh, BKBing. They do have Abyssal on Troll, which will be helpful, of course. <laughs> Click on uh, the Vailama's Courier at the Secret Shop. Dive Secret Shop. I like the name. That's, that's a cool name. Kavailama. Uh, that's very cool. Looks like uh, looks like a llama as well. I respect it. He's all in on it. Is it? Isn't it? I mean, it's like a. It is a llama. It's yeah. like a flying llama, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell between alpaca and llama sometimes. Oh, okay, yeah. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I'm... I have no idea. It's, yeah, no. It's one or the other. How confident? Like, do you feel like heroic? Or... Missed a bit of their stride here, because now I'm really like, you know, what is what does Coddle Lake game particularly do? I'm a bit concerned. Not a lot. Not a lot, yeah. He falls off very heavily. Um, you can play around Willow Wisp. You got Hex here? But, uh, with, with some Hex, like, with items, like, you do something, but it's not great. Um, the, the hero that can make a difference really for them is Hector with his troll. He's going Lincoln's next. After the Lincolns, I feel like this blink will be massive because they need something to follow up the Pango rolling in. I feel like that's one of the problems that their draft has got at the moment. They can't blow anyone up like in, in an instant. It's much harder for them to take team fights because of that. What's he worried about with the Lincolns on K1? Is it Horn Toss? I, I don't even know. I checked what are you worried target, about? yeah. Yeah. No, it's not that. So, you you have what? Like, you have a, a burst damage from Tiny, you have the lift from Rubik. Like, I don't know. I, I'm actually. I don't know how Hortos I feel about will it. will not proc it, right? So, yeah. Is it morph? Just morphing into you? Is that the issue? Um, because whirling axes are a problem, like, right? Like if he sure, if he takes your form. Okay, yeah, maybe. Let's see. We'll uh, we'll find out how your is going to look to try and play these team fights. Aegis has expired, of course, many seconds ago. But Spirit, you still weren't really able to get too much out of the map. But without a doubt, they are very happy with the current position there, and they've cut this net worth down to only three thousand. You are going to have late game Yatoru with Empower. Lao is going to be able to scale because of the Empower as well. Mm -hmm. Collapse is going Refresher next too, so we're going to have double RPs inside the fights. It's like game breaking. It's game changing completely. Once he gets it, it changes everything. Meanwhile, on the other side, I'm, I'm, I'm clicking on these heroes and everything that they're buying is kind of defensive. Like all of these, like even Enchantress, you know, this is like some position uh, 5 Enchantress going for Eternal Shroud. You yeah. Know, no, nothing, nothing a bit like I usually like my inch five becoming a full carry with, uh, with Pike, and then I don't even know any damage item afterwards. Mage Slayer back in the day. Look, the, the hex on analog I like, but yeah. Let's see. Top like, lane look at is. Pango. What's Pango got? Sorry. Octarine. It's got Aeon Disc. Like he, he, All right, yes. No, sir. Aeon Disc it just completed. Like, just completed a full Aeon Disc. Didn't even lock it. Just goes for it not to die in uh, one single burst. But, and he's going Octarine next. I feel like he needed the Basher as well. Hmm. I mean, potentially they feel like can. Well, yeah, I mean, Basher definitely helps out with your control, but Octarine also gives you more Rolling Thunders if this is something that I think is a requirement. Collapse mid lane. Let's see. They got a really good high ground ward on Heroic. I mean, this would be a perfect spot for them to take a fight. And, and K1 is just charging forward, but it's really going to be able to retreat. If he had the blink there, you know, if he had this blink that he's so close to 450 gold away, 
he'd be able to jump, but not like this. Instead, they're forcing mid, but this tier 2 tower, I don't think it falls for free. Radiant oh, they're coming. Maybe top, they might go. Maybe that's a bit easier, making it difficult for Collapse to position. Just hit level 20 as well, so potential skewer range increase. He actually went shockwave damage, okay. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't know with the shard. I think they got maybe a glimpse the, of that agonics, smoke. Right? Yeah. There we go. In they jump. K1's gonna be able to react to Link. It's protection to Vylama as well. That's a huge rolling thunder. The chaos. RP. It there. might not work. Can K1's almost time, but he got the battle chance off. Last second ultimate from K1. Now he's gonna be able to stand strong and get you. Toro, is the damage enough? It's not. The Toro is somehow still alive. Wave form back to the base. And now you just gotta get out. Team Spirit, they buy back on Collapse it. They will keep your Toro alive. Dubai Lama and Enelok are actually oh, thinking about standing Marl? strong on the high ground. Dubai Lama swash back into the middle, collapse. No, the Will of Wisp, not gonna matter. Skewer out into the grasping hands of your Toro. And with the crits raining down, they'll be able to kill Dubai Lama as well. It, it looked like a nice hold on the high ground uh, until that pesky Aghanim, the Horn Toss Magnus, goes in. Tosses both of them back and they lose the Enchantress and the Penguin in the end. By the way, yeah, the Lincolns is 100% for Morphling. Like, I was literally just watching the, their, them two head to head. And uh, Troll almost had him until the morph into Troll. Whirling Axes, you suddenly are dealing no damage. He's just missing. There is Butterfly on, on, on Morphling. And on top of that, the mischance from the Axes. Like, couldn't. Okay, yeah. Yeah, wow. Well. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Man, what's He's got MKB now queued up. Control, yeah. okay. He's got MKB queued up after that. Maybe it will help in the next team fight, but he's pretty pretty damn far away from it. He just purchased the blink Dyer's as well. No buyback on the troll. And having no buyback into a Magnus with an RP is really scary. Can they even contest this? No way. Oh, it goes too fast. I'm, I really, really like this item pickup from the post He just bought out of Vlad's. We saw last fight how it was pretty much just a a 1v1 with Yatoro versus the, the troll. And now Yatoro having a Vlad's as well is huge. And not only him, I mean, Collapse is going to really enjoy it. The, the Lal is going to enjoy it as well. So it's a really cool pickup from the jar. And the ones with the lead now, 5,000. Third Roche as well, right? So... Was, oh, yeah, it was Third Roche. What did they get? Is it Scepter? It was... Yeah, Mira's got Scepter. Something, I believe so, yeah. Radiant Two spells for Rubik to steal. Not too bad. What was your other option? Like, you're not going to give it to Gyro, so... Yeah, no. Out of the two supports, it's definitely him that gets it. You could have given it maybe to Morph, but... Yeah. I think we cast it again Nothing. recently where they like, didn't even give it to Morph. They gave it to a yeah. lesser priority hero. Yeah, yeah. No, no one DD. is buying gags on him. They might just jump KJ. Doesn't KJ die to the DD Morph? Okay, they enchanted it. Uh, enchant, yeah. He went in just to dispel that. Nothing more. Like the high ground push is still a bit scary. A lot of vision that you're freely giving away. A big uh, 25 talent is going to be K1's battle trance. Being able to have a strong dispel so you can get it off inside the RP. Analog is really lacking the levels. I mean, had a, a great early game. He's still only one death for Analog, but has not been able to really get the levels off the back of all this involvement. Hex, of course, has been completed for a while, so we'll see how we can look to utilize that. That does give you a bit of an opening. If Morph is sieging high ground, potentially then to the, the Pango rolling thunder and the troll jumping on top with Blink. But they are really going to play this one passively. Yutoro is going to be able to pick up the Wisdom Rune. This should be his 25. I feel like that's the way Heroic played. The moment um, they stopped being too aggressive, the moment they paid respects to this um, Collapse Magnus,
they, I don't know, they, they stopped looking that scary, they're just too defensive. That's the reason why Coral is only level 20 now. It's just because he's always with his teammates. Like they're moving as four at least across the map. Can't get any levels that way. Let's see. Collapse smoked up. I was ready to jump. And collapses as well. They're going to send the creep in for vision. You kind of know, right, though? If you see the creep following you around, they, they smoke up on the other side as well. Look at them. Yeah. They want to, they're recalling the troll. They might get Mira. Or oh, they might get Lala instead. Lala, maybe. Lala. Just jump straight on top of where Heroba currently smoked, and that is a great pick off if they can kill him. BKB, Lal is out. Great yours from, I believe, Mira to be able to slow down K1. Still there on the hunt. K1's finally going to be able to catch up to the Tiny, so Lal will go down. Where is your Toro? Morphlin getting control to the northern side. Schofield's going to be able to land the cookie. Your Toro is still playing Completely with the ages. K1 might be in some danger. BKB already expanded. Oh, Clive's going to be able to find the RP onto 2K1, though. Activates the battle train, stands strong, it's a die back on collapse. Now the hex is there as well. And once K1 is locked onto his target, all he's gonna be worried about is Mutori turning back into the, the troll for the replicate. Now with that mischance, K1 cannot win the man fight. But there's another battle going on down to the south. Divai Lama with the supports attempt to deal with Mira. They're gonna do so successfully. Troll buyback. Operation Kite Yutoro. And he is out. Attempting at a TP. There is no stuns to cancel it, however. Maposhka oh. also will look to escape. The bash is there. Divai Lama clips him at the buzzer. Yeah, he run he up didn't to the get north. the bat, Miposhka. Uh, I don't think he'll survive this, sir. Um, the bash didn't connect on the most important target, though. He didn't com connect on the Morphling, so he manages to TP out. Still has that Aegis. 420 uh. extra seconds, though. It will die. And a lot top lane. Oh, what? the recall. No way. Again, K1 though with a mischance. He's at least got the epistle this time. Radiant don't have vital buybacks to be able to protect your Toro. Ages about to expire. They're just gonna seconds. wait. Oh no. I mean, they can probably kill him a second time. What do they got? Hex is back up from Analog. Cookie to start as well from Schofield. Perfectly placed. And now K1 as well. He's got all the further stacks he needs with the chain control. At least your Toro has got a buyback, but this is a big opportunity for Heroic. There's still a tier 2 tower on the mid lane. So if they do go top, they cannot get, get Mega Creeps. They need to either go Throne or go back after top lane. But just very nicely done by Analog catching on top lane. The Morphling and then using Recall on the Troll. They're playing around this hero extremely damn well. Okay, the tier 2 is being pushed in by the Creeps now. So. They have to be careful about a... Skewer back into the base, into the buyback on Morphling. That is a potential defense that Spirit can look for. K1's hey, even going to pop the BKB. the BKB, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's scary, you know, like going here and trying to go for, for the end or trying to even take a Rex is almost impossible for Heroic because there's no buyback control. He just used it. If you get RP, then there's some crazy buyback from Morphling. You can lose the game on the spot. How they play afterwards, after all of this, like a couple of really nice pickoffs, and they're pretty much back in the game if they were, were ever out of it. But uh, I feel like for Team Spirit, it's maybe a little bit easier to execute. All you gotta do is find a way to kill this troll, which is, of course, easier said than done. I mean, double RP is going to be very difficult now for Troll. You can battle trance off one. But how are you going to look to deal with the second? We're still very far away to the MKB. Due to him having to buy back previously. So, I mean, like you said, with the you, you were keeping attention to some of the early fights and how Morphling was looking to use the replicate is just solely onto the Troll. Big reason... I went for the, the Lincolns. We are now aware of this. We've seen how debilitating it has been, though, for him inside these team fights. So, still without MKB is going to be a bit of an issue. Yeah, and you saw how hard it is for them to even kill the morph. 
when every every single hero was on top of him, it still took them quite a long time to kill him. It won't be any easier now that the team is uh, alive and around. Rosh might respawn in 15 seconds. Let's see how lucky Team Spirit is, because they're in a pretty good position around top lane at the moment. You know what? I'm 10. Actually, as Analog is finally finding some... F oh, only one minute respawn. Not too bad. As Analog is finally finding some farm, some extra farm, like he is uh, on top of that hex, he's got a Wind Waker. This might be game changing. Like Wind Waker versus all of these big heroes with big spells like your Magnus, your Enigma, does wonders. And Keeper of the Light usually doesn't get caught in any big spells because he's too mobile, he's always on the outskirts. So now they actually have a counterplay even for. Uh, in, even for the Magnus, no matter what happens, you should always be able to pop Battle Trance on Troll. Because you will get that Wind Waker off. And the Hex on the Snapfire as well. And MKB. I don't know how he... Did he sell something for that? Where did he get the gold? Wait, who's got the Troll? Who's the, got troll the, the Troll, the Troll. The Troll, yeah. He... Too bad. He didn't sell anything. He's got a swift blink. Maybe boots, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if you... I mean, yeah, sure, boots. Had to be... Radiant had to go. Yeah, I thought it was a big item, though. Alright, well, MKB, let's see. Roche about to be up. Lala's not with the team. He TP'd back. Have they got recall? Okay, Mira's got recall. <laughs> It'll fall fast. They're gonna hear the roar, but they'll be too late, I think. Kisses oh, to snap, try to give snap. them the information. Yeah. Collapse. Oh, what a hex! What a hex from Analog! No way! Collapse is gone. They're gonna be able to get no Collapse buyback. to start the fight. That is a huge pick off! And now Roche is all K1. That win condition, they had to potentially get the die back on Troll, is not there for them now. What a reaction from Analog amazing kisses as well to give them some info why did they run back so fast though like this morphling has a rapier he didn't even stay in the pit to try and finish off the the roshan who was so low like 10 percent 15 percent hp instead instant back magnus she's not even close to the buyback 50 seconds no mag you have to defend without him and okay you do have a rapier on you do have a rapier on morph, maybe it's possible. Oh, that damage. Watch back potentially, lol. Hex once again from Analog. And now K1's gonna be able to react in time. Battle no trades back. out. Lol is locked on. And without the tiny, how are they gonna be able to do a 3v5? 20 seconds until collapse. I guess it is, it looks like. Willow Wisp once again can be planted. Oh, he's in. Mira got. Mira doesn't have buyback, it's, too. It's so annoying, and they don't have a way to deal with this Ignis Fatus. Like, who goes in? Who has enough range? Like, now Miposhka is going in, but it's like you. It, it's super annoying to play against. You could see the way Tiny jumped in. He instantly got clipped by that Willow Wisp and then controlled afterwards. Like in some games, you it, it, it's easy. You have a I don't know any sort of a hero with long range to kill it, but this one it's really difficult for them. They can defend against megas though. Victoria it's out of the not base. Not really a big deal. Lyle has got his timer back up in a couple of seconds, but he's just lacking the gold at the moment. He's gonna respawn anyway soon. That bounty rune. Okay, one with the aggressive jump in. Collapse once again is going to be initiated on now with the Ignis Fartus. Or the AoE control. Collapse is gone again and he can't even get a spell off. Heroic. It took them a while, but Yatoru does not get him a single right click off with the rapier. Right? 51 minutes in. Heroic will find the 2 0 over Spirit. Whoa. Wow, congratulations to Heroic, an amazing performance in game one.
like literally one of the best games that I have watched for them recently in game one game two uh, maybe not as clean but still a super fun game to watch they managed to make this comeback even versus a refresher collapse uncharacteristic for collapse he gets caught like he got caught a couple of times he doesn't have a buyback it all fell apart because of that around the pit but uh just a lot of vision was given to heroic by both the Davai Lama, by both Snapfire, Schofield with, with those kisses. Like, I didn't mention it, but a couple of times he had so much impact in the fights. Like that fight when they caught Larl next to the high ground, or next to the dire high ground, he stopped anyone connecting with uh, Snap's kisses. Like he was actually in the base and he stopped everyone from blinking and helping him. Like Mag couldn't get there, uh, Tiny couldn't get there on time as well, so. Uh, sorry, Morph couldn't get there on time. Just very nicely done. Damn, Heroic, they're onto something with this Kotl mid. The way they play around it is way too good. And I really think the teams need to start respecting it. Maybe banning out the Keeper of the Light. Like the Gyro in the last game, okay. He had a fantastic game and th those kind of things don't really happen way too often. But every single time this guy is playing Keeper of the Light, he's doing way too much. Like, yeah. Even the way they, like, it, it was game changing. Not only in the lane, like we talked about how he falls off. Well, he never fell off because of the way they used recall. Like th they are really good at um, making this connection work. Either like in the last game with Primal Beast, Grim, and uh, Keeper of the Light uh, with Travels, or this time around Keeper of the Light TP's in and then recalls someone like a troll for a pick off. That's Amazing gameplay, gameplay by Heroic. I first and foremost didn't expect Spirit to be uh, O2'd. I expected maybe an even game, maybe Team Spirit winning, but this definitely isn't the Spirit that we are used to watching, like the one that has full potential unlocked, but for Heroic, like all the praise. Yeah, all the praise. Very well deserved victory for them. Like you said, they've you know they've got a, something interesting going there with this strategy. You know, it's not like we we do see some teams still running the Coddle. I know you know Samuel for Enigma were running a lot. I know PSG Quest really like to run it. Noob has a lot of success on it. There are some other teams as well that are still picking this hero. But it seems like heroic, like you said, have, they play very very well around the around the Coddle. So. Um, impressive to see. This is a team again, like we're saying, coming in with a lot of different strategies compared to other people. It's going to be exciting to see their run in the uh, in the upcoming games as well. But that's going to be it for our second series of the night. Hopefully, we're going to get an interview with one of the heroic boys. So. Um, first up, what we're going to do is, if that will be the case, we're, uh, we're going to need to set the interview up. So regardless, if we don't, we're going to be back with our upcoming series. So a bit of a surprise, either an upcoming series or an interview. You guys are going to have to stick around because when we come back, we'll have, uh, we'll have something in store for you. We'll see you guys soon.
short break like uh, Mr. Aries uh, promised here and you are not getting the first or the next series immediately instead what uh, you're getting is a, an interview and with analog no one else analog welcome congratulations like a fantastic showing from you guys how do you feel thank you feel very well like very good after this victory i think we uh did a super good two games so yeah happy but still like looking for the next matches you know uh, spoken like a true professional what i want to know is did you expect spirit to uh, bow out of the games this quickly like you guys stomped them game one let's call the let's call it what it is and game two also okay it was a little bit more difficult but um it felt like you guys were always in control is this something that you expected from spirit maybe you screamed them before or are you surprised like we are uh like we knew if uh we enter in the game like very prepared and we, we could like do it and we went with a style that we are good at and we just run then you know like uh we know we, we could do that. I knew Spirit is a, a big team, right? They, they are good. But if we play well, we are a good team as well and we can beat anyone. Oh, definitely. It looked that way. It looks like you guys can beat anyone. Um, one thing that I have to ask, though, in that game one, like you picked Luna into a Shadow Demon. Like in my mind, that's not really the best uh, pick against the support. Is it because of the shard that maybe Luna doesn't suffer anymore versus Shadow Demon? That's my only question about Dota, I promise, about the drafts. <laughs> <laughs> I think right now uh, the hero is super strong, the Luna. I, I think the hero is mm -hmm. uh, very annoying to play against and it's hard to control the hero. And also like uh, the Kenda uh, uh, changes a bit his, his matchups, you know? Like, it's like the Decay. When the decay was so broken, you like okay, you suffer from magic damage, but you go mage slayer and agonist, and suddenly you have you are so good against a lot of matchups, you know. And I think the heroes in more or less in this point right now. Okay, so it's more about the items. But thank you very much. All from me. Congratulations once again, Aries. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, just two questions. You were mentioning about the preparation for the team. Is it is it mainly Caps, the, the coach, that is doing a lot of the preparing? Is there other people as well, uh, the players kind of helping out as well in that area? Uh, yeah, like the preparation is with our coach Cafurtado, with our second coach Manguzu, and also we have our touch on it, right? Like, like oh, I'm good with it, like I want to play it, I think it can work with them, like mainly when he's your own hero in the first in the first picks, like uh, I know today we could like pick this Primal early and I know today we could pick this Pango early and I said no, I'm fine with it, like I like the scenario and we, we, we should do it. I, I'm glad that you don't ask it any other Dota specific question because they will probably be mad at me already because they were asking about the loan and I revealed too much, but... <laughs> well, no, nothing more, nothing more, I promise. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. We, we won't, we won't try kidding, and get, the, get you angry from the coach. Yeah, but I, I'm intrigued, actually, though. It, is, you, it won't be revealing too much at all. When you do have like a new hero that you're maybe suggesting when do you even bring it up to the coach like how does that work are you like do you play a couple pub games and you say look you know, I've, you know my games have been looking pretty good on we are whatever hero i'm experimenting with and then maybe we can give it a go or like how does that process work yeah exactly like i think the first thing you see a trend or a hero that you want to try you try it on pubs and say okay i'm only on my pubs or it's going very well and uh you bring to the team and you try screens, you, and actually like, you're going to be ready to play tournaments with it, right? Sometimes, sometimes you can freestyle and just pick it in the tournament without even practicing or playing a pub, you know, the top song style, but sometimes this don't work. So the normal way is you try out first and, okay, I have this theory, you try, it works, and then you bring it to the real conclusion. That's the tournament game. 
Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, always uh, a pleasure to be able to, to watch you guys play. You definitely have a unique strategy and ideas when it comes to Dota. So always, uh, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us, Analog, and good luck in your upcoming games. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Lizard, there we go. Second series of the night. Now done, we are going to uh, jump back to... We're going to jump back to a team we casted on the first series. We've got OG up against one of the Chinese teams. I was going to call them Powerhouse, but you know there, there's some big names there, but the organization is not currently performing too well, but uh, that org is going to be G2IG. So we got OG up against G2IG as our third series of the night. It's going to be exciting because uh, hopefully OG going to be able to bounce back as well. They had a very, very rough early series, and this is going to be G2IG. IG's first series as well for the tournament. So we're going to be able to see how they've been able to adapt from some of their difficulties over in their own region as well. But first, a little bit of a break. When we come back, third series, we'll see you guys soon.
And just like that, we're back. The break wasn't really that long. Aries, did you grab some refreshments maybe? Run out, get get a breath of fresh air perhaps? My friend, I needed it. You know, there's no rain for me to, to combat right now. I've got to go, you know, run outside, inside, get some water. But it's okay. You know, I'm not, not soaking wet. We're good to go. I got refreshments. No food though. Quick break. Hopefully everyone else is going to be able to uh, get some food while we get ourselves set up for the next series. <clears throat> yeah, I hope also that, yeah, I, I went back, I took just a little snack, some, some chocolate, nothing really that big, just to keep me up uh, and going through the next series. But I hope that OG got some really nice food. That's one thing that I have to say, because in the morning they got clapped. That wasn't easy to watch. Uh, that was a stomp. And uh, it, it's kind of hard to come back off of a game such as that one. Uh, it, it's hard to just refresh and set your mind up for the next series. I hope they huddle around Seb and maybe he, he gave one of those Seb speeches or something, you know. Um, at, at, may, maybe that's something that can lead them into this next series because whatever they were doing in that series one, it did not work. Well, didn't they, look in, they look in good spirits though. Oh. I know Tomato's given a couple of smiles and... I think I saw a smile from BZM as well. No, no Seb camera. And Ari looks a little bit frozen, but no, it's okay. A little bit later in the day, we'll see if they're awake. Let's even check if they you know, got crazy and played a pub. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. Probably doubt it, but let's see. You never know. Uh, Tomato didn't. Tomato didn't. I doubt anyone else did. Uh, no, okay. I just checked too. I can't be bothered going through them all. So Tomato and BZM didn't. I imagine they were pretty mode chill as they were preparing for this series. So G2IG, of course, going to be their opponent, the team that... Uh, who they replace? Why am I forgetting? They replaced LGD. They placed, uh, I was going to say PSG LGD, but no, just LGD. We get to see them up on screen. Yeah, LGD stepped back. From this tournament uh i don't know what they're doing they're completely reshuffling right yeah 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 not uh so, i don't know there's something something going on over there they uh they tried to cook a bit too much with the roster and the roster uh, kind of burnt and it just didn't work <laughs> it yeah, just really didn't work good. in the end a bit too much spice but we'll see from g2ig because this is a team as well that you expect a ton out of right i believe they are in uh, their German facility at the moment. I'm not sure. I think they're playing out of Germany. Oh, cool. Uh, at least that's what I caught of talking to oh. Jack a long time ago. But they, let's see, because at least they're happy to be in the tournament even, right? Like they weren't supposed to be here and um, they are a stack of players that you expect so much out of. And so far, they didn't really live up to the expectations. Now, let's see if they can take down OG and how well these two teams match up against one another. Because for me, OG is a wild one. Yeah, they did lose quite convincingly today in the morning. But it's also a team that, um, like, you just so heroic in what they can do to uh, Team Spirit. Well, OG did the same to Team Heroic. So it's kind of in this unknown territory. It all comes down to the draft, your understanding of... of uh, of the team that you're playing against and how to play against that team. It's something that Analog, by the way, revealed at least a little bit in the interview. If they're well prepared against any team, they can win. As long as they know what they need to do against um, each each team individually. Yeah, yeah we'll see. I don't know. The, like, the, the expectations for G2IG so ridiculously high, and honestly, they should be with the lineup they have and the organizations they're representing now, but Maybe it's on the come up. Like maybe it is because they did just play in a qualifier where they went 3-1. That was actually the PGL qualifier. So that is, yeah, that's pretty impressive because previously before that, they were really struggling a lot of the other qualifiers and, and having some some pretty bad placements and not even making it too deep. So, um, I mean, you, you've, they've also, you know, there was one qualifier where I believe they lost to uh, Azure 3-2. So... Uh, look, we'll see. Maybe they're on the come up now with that recent success in the PGL qualifier. <clears throat> You're talking about G2 or OG? Yeah, yeah, G2, G2. G2, because like it, it doesn't even matter because it, it's the same thing. Like you could you could say the same thing about OG. It's also a team that really hasn't looked that great in the past. Um, I don't know when I say past. I guess past year, year and a half, maybe even two. 
but uh, recently in the last couple of months they are looking um, better and better like when we talked to them they said what that they're on like 40 percent when we talked to ari he's like yeah we're on 40 percent we're not that strong but that's what every single player is gonna uh, answer we're, no one is gonna say yeah we're slapping we're too good they're all like yeah there's so much room to improve this humbleness man like we need we need some saber lights in these interviews to to shake things up but i i also think that what he was saying is true that they aren't tr truly there yet and that there's a huge amount of potential between these players especially now with the recent roster changes i think they um they refresh the team in in, uh, in a good way i think both imado and whisper they brought something extra to the team uh, yeah. from whisper you got this god on the offlane on certain heroes and from Timado as well, uh, heroes such as Naga are always uh, scary to play up against. Yeah, I I'd like to continue the discussion around Whisper as well, because this is something we were speaking about in the early series today, that he's um, he's struggling in a lot more games than what he has in, in recent time. And I would maybe OG could potentially change a little bit of their draft up look they qualified as well in the end i don't know so i'd like maybe i'm overlooking it too much you know they were they were able to make it into into the group stages i believe with a 3-1 count so maybe i'm looking into it too much but i do think whispers you know, had some rough games so maybe they can prioritize his hero a little bit later in the draft or like we'll see what g2 ig want to ban as well i think timber is going to be a hero that is very hotly contested again i mean it's like that in every series but G2 IG play it on nothing to say and JT, they will first pick it. And of course we see OG do it as well. So I think whoever has first pick, you know, I'd like to just see OG go for it because Whisper Centaur has been very hit or miss pretty recently. Yeah, who are we missing by the way on the camera? Whose JT, camera J are uh, JT? Like his PC shut down, right? That's the mm -hmm. just so everyone knows, that's why you are waiting. It's it's not Caster's fault. It's only Eris's fault. I, I, I think he doesn't want to start the game. I, I have nothing to do with it. What? Why? Why am I? Why am I catching straight? Why am I getting blamed? <clears throat> start the game, Caster. Come on. I'm just an analyst. I don't have that power. You don't have the power. You I feel like the power. maybe maybe you should speak to the admin, tell him to start. Do you, do you think G two IG would like to play four v five? I, th I think not. I think there's still no? chilling, eating a little bit, wait for the PC to start and then we can go. And I do believe that we might have a game. It did load Did you start right it now. already? I did, I did. Of course, I talked to the admin. I'm like, start 4v5, I don't care, just uh, go. See, I see. So, I mean, I know G2 IG are pretty strong, but playing 4v5 is... Uh... Look, it's it's not it's not an easy feat at all. It's been done in the past when people have like DC'd mid game and haven't been able to rejoin, you know, power outage or whatever. But starting the game four v five from the start is is going to be a rough one. But let's see what they're going to be able to do. Admin side of the game, and we are ready to go. Draft will be up on screen shortly. Yeah, one advantage that obviously G two IG have got is. OG did play Swiss round, and because of that, a lot of their strategies, a lot of their drafts are already revealed. Now, the previous qualifiers weren't that long ago, so it's not like you have a massive advantage, but still seeing what they played recently, like even this morning, what they played and how they played allows you to perhaps uh, prepare a little bit easier and uh, set up the right kind of draft that you want for yourself. Yep, yep, without a doubt. They're going to have the backing as well. Of course, Misha being able to do all that homework required to be able to do, scout out G2IG. And I know they also have the coaches too. I'm trying to remember whose face was on screen. I know it's so familiar. Who was the coach on G2IG? The one that was on camera? Why am I forgetting? Super, that's it. Me. Okay. Super, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big brain super. Been around for a while now. And there we go. Draft up on screen. Who's got first pick? OG got first pick. They didn't ban Timber. So incoming Whisper Timber, and let's see what the response is going to be from G2 IG then. Something that they have to, right, expect. Like if, if we can call it, I'm, I'm sure that they can as well. They go with Luna. I've seen this, by the way. We've seen exactly this response in a couple of games. What was it like Luna, uh, Luna Bat, I believe, 
was one of the one of the options. Like you get the Luna versus Timber, it's already a good hero, a lot of damage, a lot of magic damage, but it still is a whispered timber. Like you probably don't want to give this man timber, even if the lane is bad. I think he finds a way to make it work. Is is the Lunar Lane even like... What is the thing about the Lunar into Timber? Because I thought it was like you need a little bit more... Like level 5, level 6 till you... Get Lucent Beams? Yeah. I mean, you don't... You get like one level and that's it. But you get a lot of damage overall. I don't know. Every time she, she hits, it hurts. Um, that doesn't need a lot of attacks, just needs a few. That With that Lunar's Blessing, you get a lot of bonus damage on both you and your support. Uh, you get that range to play against him. It's not great, but it's something. But most of the time I've seen Lunas do fairly well against this, against Timber. I, I believe, I'm not sure if it was Bat or Disruptor. I feel like it was Disruptor, and Disruptor is banned. They get Lion instead. It's another hero that's super annoying for Timber, right? Like, you get a lot of catch out of it. The mana leak is great. I Okay, Bat is banned. That's not something they can get on 4. Hmm. What do you get for Ari here? He's been playing a lot of Rubik. Rubik banned out. Surprised that Hoodwink has died, but maybe that was a lot of it with the Mage Slayer getting nerfed. I know that was the big item that Ari was often going for. Do you like what's your stance on Hoodwink and Timber? Because I know there are teams that still play it. There are still teams that even make it work because they use Acorn into Timber Chain and it's like a really good mix. But I see it failing so many times. Just the uh, Bushwhack being killed by Whirling Death. He cuts the yeah. trees. You can't really do a lot. It's, it's annoying. Instead, they go for two cores and the techies. <laughs> okay. Techies fell off. It's only Chinese team that I feel like are picking it uh, a lot, and OG actually snatch it away from uh, possibly G2IG picking the techies. Big techies in Jura, so... I, does Seb even play it, or is it it's mainly Ari, right? I don't really remember seeing Seb play it. Yeah, I think it's mainly Ari. Seb doesn't strike me like a Techies enjoyer. Give this man an enchantress or something like that. Maybe. I know we just talked about analog and uh, about this uh, Kanda and Shard build into Shadow Demon, but maybe that's an option for them as well. Plus, you have Magnus now. <clears throat> can be played by JT, can be played by Nothing to Say, of course. Both of them amazing. I'd, la I'd rather see Nothing to Say play it, but can be played by both of them. Get some undying for Seb. But then they switch Magnus, put him mid, right? So the, the flex yeah. potential is maybe not that great. Uh, let's see. Mm, okay. A lot Thank of you. heroes that have been picked today, right? Like, uh, continuing the trend. I mean, you can... I feel like Enchantress, definitely, if this is something that Seb wants to go down. You're very reliant on your Pango to be your playmaker, so he kind of has to have a good game. And it could be you, a little bit difficult. Do you think about just going for the carry? There's Morphling, there's Lifestealer. Both of these heroes have issues. Like you're playing into Lion Bane, of course. But both heroes are pretty solid against Luna. And maybe these are your options. Um, what else? Something like... Even a Sven, it's it's not that great, but uh, playable. I'm thinking, I, I see this Magnus and just Morphling feels maybe the best for Timado. I, I'm not sure. Let's see. They they played a lot of different heroes on him. Uh, Void is also left in the pool, which is one in a lifetime that you see Faceless Void go through. They have catch for him, they have control for him, but the same can be said for literally any carry. Yeah. Yeah, regardless of what you pick up, it's still going to have some difficulties. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not sure if you have to wait for the last pick to pick the carry here. You already know what you're up against. Um, per perhaps there is some flex potential for G2IG to put Magnus mid or offlane. Instead, they go with TB. Oh, look, like, 
this is flexible as well. So that's what makes it really nice for OG. We have seen a lot of position 4, position 5 TBs. Do I do I like it? I, I, I actually wouldn't mind some TB Timber Solane into Luna. Make her hit herself. Alright, no, no, not that bad. Regardless if it is going to be a terrible carry though, of course. I mean, still like you're saying, a lot of valuable reflection to Luna. Bane struggles with illusions. There is one thing about the Lion having the, the Ag Shard to be able to deal with it. Uh, they will look to try and protect it. Zeus banned out. I don't know how bad of a hero Tinker is. I'd say he's pretty goddamn bad. I've never seen him before, but it is nothing to say. And he is versus Terrorblade and Timber. So I'm just going to, in this random You're just chance, gonna throw it out there. I'm yeah, just going to throw it out there. I'm just going to throw it out there. It, it looks like they're expecting TB to definitely be the carry. It is a good matchup. You are playing, like you mentioned, there are some difficulties for him as well, but they are expecting a position 5 last pick, and they just ban out all these heroes that Seb has been playing. ET is out, Enchantress is out. Um, Clock is good if it's still there. I like Clock mm, a lot, actually. Yeah. You don't like Clock? Yeah, no. Um, I don't mm. mind it. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I love Clockwork. I love this hero. Uh, and it's not bad. Like, you can get on top of Lion, you can t get on top of Bane and Luna. Like, in that aspect, it's pretty good. I'm just thinking about the lane itself. And, uh, you yeah, know, it's good. It's good. I like it. I like it. I, I think that's a good pick for them. Maybe an Undying is my second call as well. Like, having a hero that zones out. Um, zones out the Magnus. They don't really deal with the Tombstone that well on these heroes. I mean, they Darkseer, don't even know man. what's... It's it's good, but they banned Darkseer and Zeus. They don't know exactly what G2IG are doing as well. Because they are also very flexible with the Magnus. They can... Covering well, all bases. Yeah, so Clock on Dying... Um, is there something that's broken and picked a lot right now that we aren't really recognizing like a position 5 or 4 Shadow Demon still left in the pool like a nice save good with Terrorblade as well yeah, a true. lot of illusions good versus Luna instead they yeah. go with Avenge just go Storm okay. go Storm I have to I have to. Storm looks very good very very good anything else? um <laughs> For nothing to say. Tiny is something you can consider. I that's banned, never mind. Okay. Um How how much do we hate Ember? We no, hate you, we much? hate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hate we it. Hate we it. Hate okay. It. Yeah, yeah. So no Ember. Yeah, yeah. I like any of the spirits. I feel like it's they're good. Um Maybe some puck as well isn't that bad. True. Like you get that dream coil. You're not laning into timber, so the silence into TB later on. There's no catch basically on on OG. So because of that, I feel like any spirit, any mobi mobility hero is good. I think the early mm -hmm. game damage might be a little bit weak if they park. Very early, very early game. But I. But also, it might not if your supports get levels and. Your Luna's fine. They do puck. All right, so let's see. So, you you tell me why you like the puck, and then I'll also go in a little bit more why I'm a bit can at least my worries about it early game. Puck for me does deal enough damage. Like you you have finger with him as well. Like you have this lion to bring some extra oomph if necessary. They look kind of worried on OG. I'm not gonna lie. Like they they are looking worried. BZM trying to cheer them up a bit the rest of them are just like yeah zoning out uh we need to do some face ai for these dota cameras to to detect like what their uh, feelings true feelings are about the game but oh, I, I like Puck. I, I i feel like there is absolutely no control no no catch for him like maybe later on with some uh with some pangolier rolling on top of you with the blink venge stun is not catch for puck at all 
like overall, I think it's a fantastic puck game. Terrible, it hates playing against him. Like you can't move around, you're being attacked, you're being silenced, you can't sunder freely as well. It's a hero that you can't usually sunder anyway when he gets on top of you. Um, so overall, for me, it looks like a pretty damn solid puck game. 100% agree. I think every point you brought up, and it's but but to just let's let's see the early game. Let let's see the early game. You know, Pango is Pango is a good lane into puck. We do know the low armor on puck can be a little bit difficult. It's potential rotations. I think G2RG have decent support to be able to rotate to the mid lane. Whisper, got to take the game over. You just, there is, you first pick this hero. It's a pretty decent game. I know they've like kind of countered you with Luna. I imagine some Bane random and feeble could be pretty frustrating with cast range. In fact, it sounds really not fun at all. I think I've heard even people mention about Bane and Feeble onto this hero, so we'll have to keep close attention on that. But I really want to see what Whisper's going to be able to do in the early game. So there's uh, my eyes on him. Because again, his, you know, his early series, he's trying to put it behind him. All OG are trying to put it behind him as well. Behind them, I should say. So, uh, so let's see. And he didn't really have a, the worst game. Like when it comes to OG and how they played it, I, I don't think it was on him. Like <clears throat> he had, uh, what was it? Like the Night Stalker in the last game that he played versus, uh, who did they lo lose to again? I forgot. Uh, Entity. Entity, yeah. Like the Night Stalker game didn't look that great, but let's see. I I'm sure that he can do way more now with the Timber. Finally, he gets his hero, it goes through and he can play the game. Like if you are confident enough to first phase this hero, you don't care what you're playing against. Like no matter how they counter you, it has to be expected because you did first phase it. Um, I'm not sure what to expect from TB. Like this hero really isn't in the meta, as a carry at least. He's more of this um, overglorified support at the moment. That also fell out of uh, favor for most supports. Uh oh. Smoke in. Uh oh. The focus got the stun! <laughs> they all lined up. Still oh, he's still be the stun. Are you serious? How does it actually work for OG? They run into a high ground, five man earth spike. Who cares? They got a bunch of AOE spells as well. Oh. <laughs> No, yeah, that was uh, like a reflection, right? Like reflection on the high ground. Seb with Wave of Terror is just preventing him from dealing too much damage. The shield crash is amazing. The whirling that the a lot of begins. trees around them, so a lot of damage has been dealt by Whisper. And of course, the stun. Ari connected onto, I, I feel like, everyone. So nice little weight by I, IG, but they're nowhere close to the level one damage that OG can dish out. Okay, I like the instant tips as well for Whisper. <laughs> like, just give this man his, uh, his, his dues, give him the confidence. What, he got two kills? So, Bracer and a full wand now <laughs> completed. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that's, okay. that's not the lane I want to see, man. I, I, coming into a lane and seeing a Bracer and a wand on a timber, get me out. Like, straight up. That's no fun. <laughs> Oh god. Uh, do they have a way of dealing with blast off in this lane? I, I guess with some nightmare or lucent beam, right? Something that you can uh, uh, work with. But yeah, top lane might be a mess. We'll see which way it goes, but usually if a timber has this good of a start, he has a free game afterwards. What's going on? Are you just spamming pings and spamming the stickers, whatever they are, the sprays on the ground? There's been the talk, they gotta increase the uh. The <laughs> that, was the that the pep talk? Guys, you're not spamming enough stickers. Yeah. I want to see 10 stickers per minute. No, that, that's not possible even. What's the cooldown? JT? Oh, top lane apparently, okay. I'm trusting you they're gonna get a kill, and right, they do. Trust me, well trust done, me, bottom yeah. lane. But Boka still getting chased down. Yeah, he's got the stick and a wand. This guy isn't dying, even with the stun, he's fine on bot lane. But uh, they are zoning them out, which is nice for Timado, like he's finding some farm down bot lane. He also has a uh, Bracer and JT now. That's Cuber.
Uh, pretty interesting start, don't you say? Like, crazy amount of fights, five kills, two minutes in. This is more than League gets in a full game. I don't know, we are getting quite close to League though at the moment. We got to be, it's either Blasphemy. a snooze game or it's not. Oh, I don't Blasphemy. know, man. It's, it is, it is, it is. I'm just telling you, you got to call it how it is. No, Some no, no. games have been snooze fest. Some games have not been, though. All I'm saying is don't cozy up to the rotten sort. Like her. What do you think we'll get with this one? Is this going to be a action-packed game? Well, if... Uh... First couple of minutes are anything to go by, then yes, I believe that we should have. We have a lot of rotation potential coming from nothing to say on mid lane. Same goes for the Pango, maybe a little bit more defensive. Uh, one difference for me is maybe JT. Okay. Magnus, skewer back. Skewer tomato. It's out of range pretty Actually, quickly. Go, now look at the minus armor. A lot of damage onto Popoka. Maybe the illusion. Oh, they got him in the end. JT is still striking back onto Tomato. Maybe Seb now. It's a bunch of the creeps. Oh, sir, that was a. Uh... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Come to JT. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dude. What did they just do? Seb, by the way, took so much damage from the creeps like that dark roll summer ripped him a new one like he was constantly right in the mid lane i might get the kill on pango a nice shield crash from bgm maybe the turn's gonna be there onto baboka lines up the swashbuckle as well so nothing to say a little bit low orb up in a couple of seconds BGM. we'll be on the mark potentially still in the water room as well but nova snipes him huh interesting early game I mean, it, <laughs> I love, I love the word "interesting" coming from a caster. It always means more than just interesting. But uh, yeah, nicely done by IG coming back into it. Like it started off a bit wrong uh, with those couple of kills on Timber and Monet dying, but now JT is having just as good of a game as Timber. So getting a couple of kills, also killing off EZM down mid. JT though. <laughs> Skewer. Oh, the body blocks. Not enough, unfortunately. Illusion had a little bit too low health. Will still be a lot of damage onto JT. Oh, just the terrible lane, right? Like, the moment he hits Metamorphosis, you need to go back. You need to wait it out. And uh, the most important thing for JT is that he survived through that initial go. Radiant structures are fortified. They are diving a bit, but I'm not sure. This is a bit too deep. Venge. Seb is rotating in, though. I would decree where they should be able to go for X Nova. Don't they go on Tomato as well, but let's see. X Nova. Just making it work for the kill, but Sir Wisp has got multiple rounds of spells to be able to use. But Boka's going to try and TP him, but I don't know if you're going to stop Whisper. Ari's got a, I mean, no real spells he can chuck out, just one more sticky bomb. But Whisper's still got plenty of mana, but Boka's gonna try and drain him. Nice chain! Drops the branch, yeah. Alright. So, oh, there was some discussion going on. Because, like I said, you really seem like Whisper has been struggling. A lot of tips given over to him. They are trying to boost his confidence. And with little cute players like that with the branch, I mean, you, you give this guy his confidence back. It's a scary, scary sight. Whisper is still one of the most incredibly mechanically gifted offlaners. Does he need any more confidence? This guy is level 6 on the Timber Soul. Luna is level 4. Maybe take some confidence away because like, he is just bodying them. Bottom lane? Nothing to say with the rotation. Tomato's got a big wand along with healing Lotus. They might just look for the kill into Seb instead. Yeah, but Ari's rotating. Even Pango's starting to come through the river as well. Nice shockwave. So it cancels the blast off, but yeah, it's unfortunately taken a little bit too long for them to guarantee these kills, and now they're worried about the Pango rotation. Have you found BZM? Boca, though? No way. Look at BZM. Okay, I mean, Boca's gonna die, but... I mean, this is a, this is a big kill. BZM just solo kills him. Oh my god, that incredible read. BZM walked behind the T1 tower, rolled up even before he saw the, the puck, anticipated him going for the wisdom room, then chain controlled and blew him up. 
I mean, they are, they are on one. Did he bounce against that skeleton? What was he bouncing against there? Yeah, I think he bounced back on the skelly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice kill. Very nice kill on the puck. And also the fact that puck didn't get anyone there, right? Like he rotates in, doesn't kill the bench, doesn't kill the Timado TB, and now your tier one tower is uh, maybe not gonna fall. They have RP. JT's going in. The worker, unfortunately, very close to level six. Not just yet, but yeah, JT's gonna be forced to drop the RT, RP, and X Nova. Is there to offer some assistance as well, so G2IG are going to be able to at least be able to slow down Tomato, but it does mean that Whisper and Seb are alone up top, and they're going to be able to claim the first T1 tower. I still love this. Like, from, from Tomato, I like it when a uh, terror blade player just pops the meta and forces, forces a rotation, forces a big spell. Usually, I don't like my carries dying, of course. No one does. I'm sure Tomato isn't happy with the death there, but he did force a lot out of them. Now, without, without the RP, can they actually pressure the tower? Probably not. Which opens up Whisper, and it looks like he's actually moving down bottom. And back top. <laughs> Quick little rotation, takes the Watcher. Good job. Much value. Dyer's bottom tower has been denied. Now oh, they're even going to get another tower. Bottom gets denied. Let's see. I mean, a G2IG really going to be needing the level sixes out of the supports. Arthur say is taking a, an ancient stack very slowly, but it'll get it. And that's going to help Baboka get his six. So, so you, soon you'll have the finger. Xnova is also soaking mid lane as well. So probably going to see them look to try and smoke. Radiant sixes. I mean, it definitely increases Ari's damage, but a little bit more defensive of Seb with his with the swap. Let's see. The smoke up top. They know where Monet is. This is basically where every Luna is at this point. That's right from X Nova though. I don't know if it's gonna matter in the end. Monet will stop the rolling thunder short. They've still got the oh, fiends, that's actually but bad. the shield crash beforehand. They're gonna be able to get some big return kills. Have they got the damage for Whisper though? All the control. Whisper's gonna be able to get some separation. Wait, doesn't okay. that grip actually kill him? Kill the Luna a little bit faster at least. Sep Going on him, no chance to wave terror. Maybe he can do it now at least. With a little bit of damage mitigation, but won't really help him. I, I, I felt like the grip catches Pango in place, and because of that, he hits the Luna again. Of course, he did use a shield crash before, that's true. Can they kill him top? There's no grip now. They have RP though. Oh, can they? They got finger. There's finger as well. Yeah, they should be. I don't. Ooh, let's there see. Okay. Come on. Okay. Come okay. On. Okay. <laughs> oops, oops. No. Look no one should survive RP and a finger at this point. <laughs> this start, they were doing no damage. I'm like, hang on a second. Surely he doesn't live by this. And then, okay. Yeah, they got. It. They got. It. It I like this though. Dude, this is. This reminds me of. I don't know if you remember when Notel used to play uh, position one in OG. And just one objective after another with Terrorblade. That's all he did. Just pop this meta and go in. And I feel like too many Terrorblades are moving back and just farming instead of contributing to their team with with meta just chilling there, not being used. Nicely done by Tomado. That's really cool. Um, there's really been a big move for carries, and it's really happened probably, I think, over two years where carries have had to find a way to be involved in the early game. It's just not enough for you to have this four protect one like hard carry i also think probably the meta plays around that though we really haven't seen like your deuces or whatever like deuce i suppose has been here or there but for your anti-mages and and whatnot so it there's been a, a big change for for carries forced to get involved early whether it be in fights or, or objective taking yeah even just doing the twin gate minute eight to ten and moving on the enemy carry mid lane it's a big one very aggressive position from BZM. I mean, the remnants of the T1 tower, G2IG, they're going to be able to respond. BZM is tanky with the shield crash, but he should still go down. Oh, Baboka just gets the, the uh, spike off, my friend. No impale. Wrong hero. It's okay, though. I'll let it slide. Don't make that mistake it's, again. It did, it did it impale him? It did. It's the same. Come on. Similar. Mm. Not the same. 
I agree. Um, by the way, he didn't he didn't believe in, in the Rolling Thunder. Like he didn't use it immediately because of that. Boboka had just enough time to get there, and he's got the blink. Wow. He's had it for a bit now. Like twelve minutes in, he's got the blink and seven hundred gold on top of that. He's living life with this smoke. If they if they scout to Tomato, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Finger up. They know. They know. Ta -dum. Ta -dum. They're coming. Oh, they use Fiend's group. This may be an opportunity for a Sunder. Oh! <laughs> okay. Where did you go? Oh, Nate's getting run down. Let's see if he's going to continue farming this, which he will. They have a ward to drop. They don't. Seb can maybe. Oh, they will drop the ward. They, have they might need to try and swap him back. They won. So, nice kill. Very good read. <laughs> carry on one side dying, carry on the other side dying. I think it's a little bit easier for Luna to make a comeback. Timado top lane is taking so much damage. Has Sunder though to work with. Has to be careful. Dream Coil and everything is up for nothing to say. Oh, they want to fight actually. JT is his blink. You get the catch though. Mine's being a bit of an issue to stop the blink. Triple blink for G2IG though. Nothing to say. Brown boots. Which played. And of course, the blink dagger now completed. So let's see how the mobility is going to be able to play out for them. It just opens up the map, right? Like whenever you have uh, multiple heroes that can initiate and catch. It opens up the map like you can possibly play with different heroes to get pickoffs. Like this lion, I'm not sure, he needs a finger though. Like even with this blink, he needs a finger to be able to successfully get a kill on someone like BZM. They just don't have the damage necessary. Like you talked about it very nicely during the draft. I, I feel like the rotations need to consist out of three heroes at least. Who are those three, ideally? I think any it's tree just... can do it. Okay. Like any tree can, can get a pick off a kill. Has fallen. But if you look at two, then it's kind of weird, right? Like, does Lion and, and Magnus really get a kill on... Do they, do they get a kill on Timber on time before he yules? Maybe, maybe, but... I, I wouldn't be 100% comfortable with that rotation. But the thing with the, my damage concern as well... It is going to change very shortly with how farm they are. Like, nothing to say has had an excellent start to the game. Second in net worth. Again, there's no doubts on what this puck is able to do after some you know, recent nerfs. This here is still incredibly strong once he gets his items. And it is a free puck game. So, how concerned do you... <clears throat> like, I know this is not a gigantic lead at all for G2IG. In fact, it's under a thousand. But do you feel like OG need to be kind of concerned with how much farm puck has gotten? Actually, well, that JT... Nice yeah, and now he's stuck. Might be able to get an RP off if they're thinking about even fighting afterwards, but G2IG are already retreating back to their side. Uh, he makes my he makes my answer much easier. If JT is dead and they catch him like this, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, but I, I do feel that IG they definitely needed this kind of a start because that's how they they their their heroes need more. Like when you look at Venge and Techies, these aren't really supports that like, they need levels, and that's it. They do not nearly as much with gold like uh, Lion does, right? So he needs this blink. Now it's on IG to actually execute properly with all these initiating tools. I expected them maybe to be doing a bit more at this point, now that they have uh, these big items and big spells to use, but... It seems like they're just happy farming, maybe waiting for that BKB on Luna. If you're Monet, you're happy farming, by the way. You don't have to push. Like, you have this Manta Mask with Madness. There aren't many heroes that can farm nearly as fast as her, she does at this point. And the BKB will be pretty much up in 2-3 minutes maximum, if she just farms. Pick on Tomato would be huge, unfortunately. I think they're a couple of seconds late before he rotates back to the triangle. Maybe Whisper, yeah. though. OG is starting to come together. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. You should be reading this, right? Like, you know how Luna drafts play Boca. 
Do they want to fight? I mean, if they catch some heroes onto the back line potentially. G2 IG are hunting. They won't intercept anyone before they actually group together on OG. They are still trying to play on the on the retreat. Maybe BZM's gonna run into them. Or Seb, so both. Nothing to say. Gets a start. Oh, nicely. Nice, nice sleep. nightmare into the uh, grip as well. Now it's gonna be able to set up for the RP. That's beautiful from X Nova. But still the response is gonna be there from OG. Whisper will be uncontested inside the team fight, and that spells issues for OG. Yours. Yours is there to cancel the teleport. And JT ripped apart as well. So you deal with two heroes. I mean, very nicely done from them, but Whisper gets no spells casted onto him, so he gets a free team fight. Yeah, three for two. What are the may what can we call the upside for G2 IG? Maybe the fact that they were pushing mid and the Luna wasn't really forced forced to be involved in all of that. So just farmed up. Monet continued farming, still top of the network charts, followed by Puck. Um, Seb was a little bit too close there, I would say. With bench. Like you probably shouldn't get double silenced by Puck. No matter what core you're trying to save with Nether Swap, like one of you should get silenced, not both. He got silenced because of that, he didn't have the opportunity to use swap or anything, then the sleep, the grip, everything on point by X Nova. If you give them just the small little opportunities uh, to outplay you in teamfights, they will 100% do so. So, we did kind of just discuss previously about the Puck's potential to scale this game and mm -hmm. like the teamfight from IG. How do we feel about OGs though? Because Again, on paper, Terrorblade into Luna is a very, very favorable matchup for the Terrorblade. So yep. do we feel like Tomato also is going to be, you know, if he gets a lot of farm, is he going to be like a, a big reason why OG can get over the finish line or do we f have some concerns? I, I'm, I have some concerns. My main concerns are the item builds right now. Like how well will the TB play into Luna once Monet gets Kanda, if he's even gonna go for Kanda. Right now he has a BKB, Manta, Mask of Madness and Shard. I think Kanda would be maybe the best afterwards and then you can just... Ari, bot lane. They have Grip and Luna is around, I think. But Monet is too afraid of this. Monet is actually too afraid of this, so he doesn't go in. Radiance Courier has been killed. But yeah, I, I feel I, I I feel like the matchup versus Terrorblade is still hard for Luna, but it's not as bad as it used to be. That's one thing. When it comes to scaling because of the Kanda, yeah, because of the Kanda. Just be, be, being able to snipe him from distance, and you have some puck inside, like deep of the fight. You have some RP Magnus, also keeping front. Like it, it, I I think it's a bit more playable. Um. And we talked a lot about their catch issues and like fuck. Well, some bright side for OG is they do have heroes that uh, itemize into things that deal well with the puck. Like you can get some basher on Pango, you can get a blink hex on Timber Saw as well. So eventually, eventually puck will be a bit less of a problem. Well, let's see if nothing to say. Feels it necessary to consider Lincoln's as the game gets later, if that is even a requirement. We don't particularly see that item anymore. We really can just go the damage route, and if he needs, can have a A on this to protect him. But yeah, it's a, he, he, he has Sanj, right? Like it helps a bit already. Yeah. Very true. Pupil's gift as well. So he's you know, honestly not too tanky, but is surprisingly tanky for for this stage of the game. Do we have to be looking at Roche pretty shortly as well? Like 21 minutes in, uh, you got Wave of Terror, Terror Blade, Timber, like Dire as well. Maybe a little bit weaker at taking it, but Luna's always not the worst. No, both teams, I feel like they take it fairly easily. Luna gets scouted by the mines, Nova. Oh, Whisper. Is this a fight you want to take now? Whisper. Maybe with Eclipse damage, look at the burst potential. Okay. Whisper's gone, and now with the call on the back line, nothing to say is an arcane rune inside the team fight. We already said Puck's gonna be an issue for them, but now with his extra benefit, it could be even more difficult. Nothing to say. Looking to try and JT? utilize as best as he can, because JT's at the ready. RP onto one, but it's a great target. They'll get rid of all the control on OG. And now Seb's gonna be run down as well. Tomato's thinking about entering, but can Tomato really fight? X Nova's still got the Fiend's grip. 
Are they going to have the damage to be able to bring him down through the control? They want to deal with everyone else before Tomato. Monade's going to be able to re-enter. And Ari, he's just got no stun. Joe Blade stuck on the high ground regardless. Blown up full to zero. And Ari will be chased down as well. A full five man wipe as G2IG. Take an incredible team fight. Oh, why did that look so easy? Right, she's well. He's fair, okay. Maybe he can make, uh, make them pay, but... You know, this this for me just looked wrong for OG. I don't think they're that weak in the game at the moment. But that team fight was terrible. Like Whisper jumping in first, and I'm thinking, okay, it's fine. He has Venge behind him, right? Right? No, he doesn't. It's too far. It's le it's level one other swap. It's just not enough range. And anyway, Seb wasn't close enough. So you lose your main chaos maker, the hero that's supposed to be up front. Hero that's supposed to make this RP harder. You know, supposed to hunt down Luna and the supports. Like you, you lose him instantly and then you continue fighting and just one hero after another just getting picked picked off. Yeah, not 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 too great, definitely for OG, but maybe as RP is gone, they can look towards Roshan. Yeah, they're in. One thing I saw back with that uh, replay, BZM had zero mana on the initial jump from G2IG. So uh, he, he could not counter uh, when they jumped Whisper, so he had to retreat back to the high ground, and even then he only had like half health when they jumped him as well, so... Low resources an issue, but they're gonna try and take the fight with ultimates down, but RP's actually back up though. And still no meta for 10. Oh, Monet is just going to walk in BKB. Walking in, Standing yeah. strong enough to Mato. He just snatched the ages to Mato. He doesn't have his own BKB. GT finds Bruh. a beautiful ankle. The RP is just the icing on the cake. It just looks way... It, it, it looks so easy. I'm not... I'm pretty sure it isn't, but... It looks way too easy for Raichi. Monet just walked, waltzed them. That was he waltzed them. Right click, draw Shan. Right click, his ult, clicked his ulti. Took ages. Moved back out when they're all RP'd. OG in a rough shape at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very rough. Very rough. This is a difficult position for them to be in now. 12,000 deficit, Luna ages. And the net, she's got a 6,000 advantage over Terrorblade. Like, Tomato so just multiple deaths in a row. It's not only her. I mean, yeah. You take on Puck, he, what's flying out to him? He's got full Parasma completed. Like, he's not that far behind as well. 16,000 network. 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 Networking Puck. Um, yeah, he's really big as well, and this is a hero that's a problem for Terrible. A ton of magic damage. This was caught. Ah, it's just another death? I mean, he's having such an exceptional start to the game, but... Multiple deaths onto Whisper in a row as well. He's actually lowest out of all the cores. Mid lane, Ari. Should be fine, but yeah, it all kind of started with him. If you think about it, with, with that pick off around the around this dire wall down bottom, Radiance yeah, in the jungle. Oh. Once he died, Radiance top tower has fallen. That was all Lincoln's on mag too. No, you're right though. Like once he died that first time, it did started going downhill. Yeah, it's uh, they Radiance didn't lose one single fight in which. They lost one or two heroes, you know. Every time they, they, they lost a fight, it's like four heroes lost or full team wipe. What what's what are the bright sides? What bright sides? What are they getting? They all have uh, a Tomato might right? just be blown off four to zero. It's under though. That's your bright side. The harder they, they hurt you, the more you can get used out of Sunder. <laughs> it's something. Um I don't know. He's buying this BKB and he will need it, even though he's. Is he on bottoms underneath the ward? Yeah, she's gonna be able to catch him and nothing to say he's here as well. <laughs> did Great he vision. buy Blink? He did, right? He bought out. Yeah. I think he has. It's it, so. 
Pumping from X Nova. Nothing says he's going to be able to reconnect with the boots of travel. They'll lose the Bane. But now with the coil landing on the tomb, when it's going to be able to enter into the team fight, beat can beat Eclipse up, ready to go. They're just running Tomato down because they know he's got no Sunder. So once the health is gone, he's not going to get it back up a second time. Whisper. I, this might be a wipe. He has Yules. That's not going to matter. Uh, Blink up. Just, they'll stop it. <laughs> He just bought him a little bit of extra time. Monet actually losing the ages here. On purpose, of course. And there is a potential for them to push high ground a little bit if these damage this tower, and that's exactly what they will do. No BKB on Luna for 60. But only Pango is up. If you lose this tower, you are losing the Rex. Oh, they're jumping him. Alright. Bye back. Not to death. Oh, that's a lot of damage from Whisper. He might just die though, Whisper. They're gonna be able to chase him. It's a die back. And look Pops cool. Traveled. You got the kill, but <laughs> yeah, definitely not worth it. Puck with those travels. He moves back in. Silence and finishes him off. This is rough. Like even this matchup. Like we talked about the matchup of Luna into TB. The way that Monet is playing, he just pops these moon lanes and he runs straight into the TB. Like he doesn't care. A long time ago, that that was considered suicide. Far from it now. Double damage, Luna now. BKB is up. Satanic completed. Rough spot to be in. I mean, nothing to say. He's just stuck. He's oh, okay. Swaps there from Seb. They're coming though. All of IG are ready. Double damage rune on Monate. The claves and nothing to say. Still going to be able to catch up to Tomato. He won't even be able to get the Sunder off. All the hate. RPUs. No buyback for him. You got creeps as well in the mid. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Your Radiance Timber is still dead for 15. Has, has no buyback, but Radiance realistically this game is over. OG fans. Very sad <laughs> at the moment. This isn't working attack. out. Like they're just going for strong. They are smoked up, let's see. He, there's no rolling thunder though, how do they fight this? Okay, JT actually keeping back, gonna take that wisdom rune. Maybe the tormentor as well, just gonna continue farming, moving towards agonims. There is, like this is the more, more disciplined approach, right? Like they could have maybe taken one extra side, but no reason to force it out this heavily does give uh, OG a little bit of breathing room. Ooh. I'm just gonna die. So I was ooing at the Bane almost dying to Tormentor, not Seb almost dying. Sunder? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah, the Sunder. Defensively. Uh, so what's TB buying? Actually, he's going for Orchid next. This is the problem, like, if the game was a bit e more even, they'd be able to catch Puck, they'd be able to have these items that are needed, but they're just not close enough. Which is going Orchid buying? too. Yeah, they, they're getting two Orchids, but... Orchid is a little bit easier to deal with. Guys. Than a Hex, yeah. He's so fond as well, like, he can... I can go yours if you want. You can really just argue with BKB at this stage. He caught him. It's... Alright, roll in. Oh, BZM jumped over them though. And now nothing to say is just creating way too much chaos on the back line. Seb at least will be able to cancel the Fiend's crib. So BZM with the remnant of the Rolling Thunder secures Not the kill. Bad. But Tomato is starting to come. He's a little bit too late though to, to get there at the start of the fight and... Whisper's still gonna be killed off nonetheless. Nothing to say. It's just there's nothing, nothing at all. This park has to be concerned about. You get to this stage where he has the items, he can freely do whatever he wants. I mean, this is more like some pop stomp puck. When you look at the items, this is how it feels when you're stomping. And unfortunately for OG, this is the second time that they're Radiant's on the receiving end of a stomp. Techies is up in Radiant's five seconds, but. What can you possibly do here? Look at that horn toss out of the fountain. No hiding in the fountain, friend. Uh, RP unused. Yeah. Right. We go next. 
Just a uh, mental reset for OG. Good lane start. Solid early game. Uh, just execution though from G2IG. A couple of, a lot of Gs from Tomato. Maybe some... Ah, I don't want to look into it too much, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah, he's... I, I mean, they didn't look happy coming into the game. Uh, on the cameras at least. I was hoping that they managed to find their groove back after the last series, maybe reset a little bit and come back strong. But okay, they did they did start off strong at least in, in, in the game. It it looked all right and then it kinda all fell apart around that one fight. There were no saves for the timber. He dies first. They they lose that fight completely. Like just clean. Clean cleanly lost. And then they go into the pit. They they I'm not sure. Like it don't it it looks like there's no big plan. Like TB is hitting Roche, but what happens if they come? There is no plan. There is nothing stopping that Luna from just waltzing into the pit, which is what she did. Waltzed into the pit, took the ages. The game felt almost impossible off of that. And they were trying to adjust with the item build a little bit. Okay, Hex is too expensive. Let's get these Orchids. Lion, by the way, almost had Lotus completed, like Lotus Orb. Like He had it queued up. I, I don't think he completed it by the end of the game, but... If the game lasted a couple of minutes longer, he would have it. So those orchids won't really matter anyway. Won't matter anyway. Just, yeah, it's hard to be in this situation. I hope that they uh, bounce back so that we see a little bit more of a competitive uh, game too. Yeah, and I think the the big thing though is the fact that G two IG were able to beat OG with the the timber. This is something that they have not been losing with, and this is their kind of go-to for Whisper. Who, I mean, he looked very, very, very good in the first 15 whatever minutes you want to say, um, but unfortunately wasn't able to continue on with that performance. That, that was that was the big fight, but also the, the previous fight was really the important one for G2IG. So, yeah, I, I think just back on the Timber th point, I, I think you're being able to beat the Timber really frees G2IG up now in, in the draft. Maybe OG will let it through and they can potentially try and steal the idea of the Luna because we did see the early game to mid game magic damage bursts with like mm -hmm. one stun was just, and even a finger was enough. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if OGs stick with the, the timber priority or not, if it does if it is available for them next game. I think if you're G2IG, you you've proven to yourself that you can defeat it. You had this nice little uh draft around it. Uh I, I'd like to actually see it banned now. I, the hero was still amazing. He still did quite a lot early on, and if the game went a little bit better, he would be the main reason why. Um so if OG get the chance, I, I'm pretty sure that they can pick it again for Whisper and just adjust a little bit around maybe banning out the Luna. You know, just b getting that Luna out, getting him um, getting him his Timber and the game might be a little bit easier. Because if you think about it, the, the reason why he died so quickly was Luna. It was that ultimate, right? Like she, she pops the ulti and he just dies in one hex. Um, the amount of magic damage is not something that he could handle at that point but overall i don't think this game is that much about it it's just that uh, og are looking quite off in the first series versus entity and in this series as well it like you get two games in which you're being pretty much stomped at the same time it it kind of similar thing happened to team spirit so might be a bad day for both of these teams something that they can work around uh, a little bit later or OG maybe in this game too. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they're, they're going to be able to do. There were some shining moments for OG in this game one, but uh, unfortunately not enough. G2IG, uh, a good start to the, the tournament for them. Uh, again, this was a team that has been you know, struggling in some qualifiers. They've recently won the PGL qualify in 3-1 fashion. Maybe that was the, the turning point for them. And it's just game one though. So you know, let's see if they're going to be able to continue with the momentum. But all our questions soon to be answered. First, a break. But when we come back, we've got game two, G2 IG taking on OG. We'll see you guys soon.
All right, game two coming up shortly. Lizard, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, you know, we're getting some stompy games today. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit more even heading into our final one. Hopefully, OG able to get a victory on the board as well. They are currently struggling today. Would hate for them to end a, end it with a 0-4 day. Never going to feel good. Maybe they can you know, turn it back around. Maybe they just need a bit of a beating to, uh, to work out some issues. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That's some... Good copium you're huffing right there, my friend. They need they needed to lose three games so that they can win the fourth one. Let's go. I mean, uh, it, it's looking rough. It, 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 if at least they were kind of... Actually, you know what? Maybe, maybe getting stomped is better. Because then when you find yeah. what clicked, what's wrong, maybe then you can turn it all around. And sometimes those games that are kind of neck and neck, you're super even, your drafts are working, and then you lose them. Sometimes those games... Uh, hurt you harder because maybe this is something that you can just say okay this was the biggest mistake we are doing i don't know if it's the draft or some rotations early on you blame it on that and you play on you you have to get some copium after a start such as that one maybe go back to what worked for them like for og i feel their ta worked really nicely in the swiss stage like they played uh, it on BZM with quite some success. The Shadow Demon, they looked extremely strong on, like when uh, uh, when Seb had a way of saving targets that's super easy, like just put disruption on someone. They they looked incredibly strong with that. Also the Batrider, another maybe hero that they can pick up. Of course, this is all if they don't get banned out. And that's something that we just talked about. G2IG, they have a uh, clear advantage over OG in a way that they have watched their recent games and OG played a lot of them so they could study those drafts they could pinpoint exactly what was uh, the strongest for OG and ban it out uh, well let's see if they have any surprises are heading into this second game we will have a draft getting up on screen very shortly OG going to be playing Radiant with first pick again and we got G2IG Dyer second pick again. So nothing will change. We'll just have to work out what the band situation looks like. You know, eyes on the timber once again. <clears throat> Coddle ban. They banned Coddle last time. They didn't ban Coddle. So kind of interesting. A hero that's, I wouldn't say up and coming, but definitely a new addition to the last couple of series that we watched in this tournament at least like usually untouched in the swiss swiss stage but right now um in the group stage we are seeing quite quite a bit of keeper of the light so i do like the hero i feel heroic demonstrated very well how the hero can look like and what he can do so as the meta is evolving so have to you like so so the teams have to evolve with the meta and uh i get it they ban it out bat rider that we mentioned earlier banned out uh, when it comes to these easier early picks that you can open up your draft with, Shadow Demon is still in. I put a lot of stock into into this guy, so we'll see if OG want to pick it up. But look, do they have first? They have first picks. So if OG, you have yeah, first picks, I, I I would be completely fine with Timber again. Like Timber SD for them for me sounds. Instead, they ban it out themselves. They played Brew today, so I'm going to say it didn't look that great. That was what the, the Seb Brew monster that we saw earlier today, so... Yep, it was uh, position 5 Brew, and Entity played Bane and Grimstroke against him, if I'm correct, right? Like Bane and Grim... or Lion and Grimstroke, not sure. One, one, I think Bane and Grim. In any case... Both of these heroes are work extremely well against it. And if you're G2IG and you watch that game, you also know that uh, Seb can play it. So you should be prepared for the flex. Let's see what they open up with. Um, they cannot get <clears throat> the Timber Saw. Dragonite is still left in the pool, like one of these heroes that is picked up early on. Tiny is left in the pool. Also, and a hero Lush. that can get. And Lesh, yeah, actually, very correct. Luna, too. Like they they first faced Luna last game, so did they? They did, right? They yeah, picked they Luna did. early. Yeah. Okay, so back into Baboka's like like Lord of the Lion. Holy crap! It is a, uh, it's a it's a classic, and I mean that was a very early blink timing, right? Last game, like thirteen minutes or something. Yeah, maybe even before, but he had brown boots blink. 
very early on. You don't really like playing a brew into it. Like if if this brew is, let's say, some whisper brew on the offlane, already you have to adapt a little bit with the item build. Like instead of two bracers, you need and an urn, you need two bracers or a bracer soul ring, something like that. And it helps you out quite a bit against him. It's not like a must must. A wand is always good enough if you keep it to use the split, but it can get dangerous. You also have to worry about the way you're using split because Hex, uh, Earth Spike into Finger of Death, you might never even get to use it in teamfights. So just to have to be a bit more careful uh, to, during the game. I do, don't mind the Luna, by the way. When I look at Brewmaster, the heroes that come to my mind are the heroes that don't care about the split. Um, on that carry roll, like the Luna is still solid for me, something like a Sven as well, but instead they go with Razor first. I know something they've been putting a lot of priority on over in the, the regional qualifiers, they have a lot of flex. Yeah, they're nothing to say, or JT's very content to, to play it. Yeah, what did OG do? Like when, when they played uh, the last game, they uh, with the Brewmaster, they had some long range. Uh, carry right they lost that game it was pretty bad for them but something similar wouldn't be that bad if your brew is a five he can cover enough space or should be able to cover enough space for something like a lena or a draw and these two heroes are pretty damn solid into razor so maybe some sort of an option for them another one is morphling and i really would wouldn't mind seeing a morphling at all you are playing into lion but it's such a nice counter to the razor we do get a Nari Rubik first. Let's see. I wonder what they pick here, though. Like, you're gonna reveal the the Seb hero. Do you uh, and then if you if you reveal that, then of course it shows that this is a Whisper Brewmaster. Maybe you go for your mid lane. Let's see. What do they go? They got a Templar Assassin. So still don't reveal too much. I mean, TA. I don't know. TA Razor matchup has gone kind of back and forth over time. I think it's all about them going back to their full comfort zone. Like you, you look at this TA, sh they played uh, it in the group previously in the Swiss stage, Swiss stage, and they won with the TA. They're having a really bad day. Just go back to the heroes that are working for you. So in in that way, I do like the TA. This could be a support gyro as well. It doesn't have to be anything else. Like you get Lion and Jaira supports, then you can get some sort of a. Uh, the only. Uh, the one thing that I really like about the TA in OG's draft is th the way they counter out um, illusion heroes preemptively. So you don't have to think about banning them. You have this Brewmaster playing a Naga or anything like that into uh, TA is great, but Brew counters you. So it kind of becomes a little bit ha harder to pick them. I'm a little bit surprised if they were, like, already the tier was in their minds to, to pick it on why they banned the puck then. Uh, obviously, it has to be a lot of respect and nothing to say, because I'm pretty sure, predominantly in a lot of OG games, it is BZM playing the Templar Assassin. I think he's, like, Grand Master, so, I mean, I'm sure Tomato yeah, yeah. is going to, you know, can play, but very often in, like, all of OG games, even other iterations of the roster, it's BZM playing it. So, I'm a bit surprised about the puck ban, but it's not the biggest deal. Oh, so it's the it's the carry gyro, right? They're not. I I doubt that they will flex. Who did you see playing? Larl, right? Like he's playing Lull, yeah. core. Um, but I don't think that's gonna, going to be the case here. You're gonna play this gyro as a carry, razor clockwork or razor lion. It doesn't really matter on the off lane, and then you have this clock uh, to help out with the top lane. I still think Morphling is amazing here. Like you have... Morph NTA? Big... I mean... You you can itemize the TA in a little bit less greedy of a way. It's just such a good Morphling game. That's, that's what I'm seeing. There you go. Look, I know that there are some problems with having both of these heroes. Like, you don't have your casual natural playmaker. Sure. At the same time, it's just too good of a game to skip out on. You don't care yeah. about clockwork. Lion is a bit of an issue, but these two 
uh, Razor and Gyro just get demolished by Morphling. Alright, let's see. I do have some concerns that OG are going to be very slow, especially Brewmaster going Radiance. When a brew can be impactful early game, whenever your primal split is up and you are quite a strong laner, Rubik's are definitely a pretty solid mm -hmm. pairing as well. But it's not really a kill threat lane though. Like Clockwork should be fine. Jaro's just going to be able to shove the lane out with Flat Cannon. So probably not going to be able to get kills to inject a, a bunch of gold early to buff that Radiance up. So I definitely am concerned, but let's see what G2 IG can, you know, we're probably looking for a mid laner here. Oh, uh, actually, because uh, uh, we obviously see TA mid. Do you want to put the Razor mid and go for a different offlaner to play into the Morphling? I think that's also possible. Like, the lane itself isn't that great for Razor as well. I mean, versus Morphling. Morphling can just waveform out, right? Later on in the game is where he really uh, messes with you by uh, using that static link that you can't get rid of. So, How's yeah, it's it's something that OG is, has read very well as well, as you can see the Centaur ban. How's Meepo for G2IG? Pretty good, actually. Like, it's a pretty good Meepo game. They could even offlane it. Like, you could get yeah. offlane Meepo for JT. It's Omega Greedy, by the way, but it's really good. Like, the hero does not care about the Brawlings, um, doesn't care about the TA at all. Like it, it, it's something sneaky that they have picked in the past. Maybe an option, really an option for them. Um, the way JT plays it is like he's constantly active. You can hunt down the TA with the Earthbind. So I, I wouldn't mind it. I like the two called for it. If they don't go for that though, what's what's the other offlane pick? Maybe some Slardar? Maybe some Beast? Like Beast, it hasn't been picked a lot by anyone, but but Secret, but okay, Tide Hunter would have been really good, yeah. Okay, now they have to reveal is this Brew offlane or or um, position five, and IG they banned out Omni and they banned out Ange, so they're not completely sure as well. I'm trying to think of other heroes that you can. Pick into the gyro as well, like to play with the Rubik. Mars is still. They're gonna bang. Okay, okay so we'll be. Oh man, Meepo. Do it. <laughs> it's a fantastic Meepo game. JT okay, so doesn't they... have a face. He doesn't have that sneaky smirk. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting a Meepo. Let's go. It's more of a face. Oh, goddamn. I have to play into Bane. Uh, if he was Meepo, he wouldn't care. Like, he'd actually love it. Let's see, may maybe it's an option, but uh, if not, what else is left in the pool? Like, Mars is okay, but not great yeah. here. I do want some, like, control. Yeah. They have it. Like, you have Lion, you have Clock. It's, it's not terrible already, but yeah, something like a Mars, maybe a Slardar, uh, something with a lot of um, stuns from that offlane. What else? I mean, there's not really many others, honestly. You just have some of the meta ones at the moment. DK's banned, right? DK's no, not banned. DK is still in, yeah. You could. So, uh, DK, Slardar, Beast that we mentioned as well. Mars, the obvious one. Okay, Beast. Yeah. I mean, it's a really good Beast game. There's a reason uh, why we called it out earlier. It's like a really good game if he goes for uh, Helm of Dominator like Boom did with Helm of Overlord. These two supports really do not like him. Like Bane hates playing into all the summons, just running him down. And uh, it's kind of similar. Well, of course, it's not It's not the same hero. They don't do the same thing, definitely. But like it's similar to the Meepo. Like a lot of units running you down, dealing with Refraction, dealing with these supports uh, that can't really deal with them. Damn, someone needs to lighten the mood in their camp. This is... <clears throat> They're super worried. This is... Yeah, I don't, I don't know who's going to do that then. Who is... Uh, sure, that's... And we got four youngsters with an old vet there. So he's 
always been a calming voice on whatever OG team he's been on. And he really has to be that, that big person for them to... Uh, sometimes you need a big, big person, sometimes you need a, a Jerax, you know, someone uh, with tiny airlines to, to lighten the mood, just crack some jokes. Like JT Dude. does that, actually, like in, in other teams, like you could... Uh, I don't know how much you follow him, but in, in his games, he's usually the one just doing mad stuff and making everyone laugh. Uh, talk to him about that in a couple of interviews a few years back. It's always nice to have someone like that, you know, like your, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the person that brings all the joy and fun into playing Dota. Makes you forget that it's all that serious and that you're playing for millions. Yeah. I, I can never get over nothing to say is Kitty is as well. Just, it's just something about him. Kind of funny. Just seeing this guy. He's, he's rocked them for a while. He did. Uh, Somnus did as well. I think. It was, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm like 99% sure it was Somnus. Maybe it was Fy, but I'm pretty sure it was. It wasn't. Hopefully, Somnus is doing. Hopefully, he's doing good as well. This is uh, always. What's with what's with what's with the kitty ears? Do. Uh... I think they're funny. I, well, I would, oh, okay. I just, I think it's like, it looks so bad that it's funny. That's, that's what I think. I respect him for, for pulling it off. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't care. I think it's like a gift of, from a girlfriend or something, and then you have to do it, you know? Like, oh, you don't love me? You're not wearing my headset? Okay, I see. Yeah. Maybe it was a dare as well. One of the, you know, he lost, lost TI, so he had the. Wear some, I don't know, kitty razor headphones. Whatever it be. Maybe it just gives him, maybe it gives him power. Maybe he thinks he plays better with it. It's like uh, Yatoro, Yatoro shaving his head, right? That's, that's it. Yes, yes. Uh, whatever. Like, a lot of players have their little rituals. We talked about Tuari after they won the last series, and he always plays some sort of music to, to get him into the mood. Like whatever, whatever makes you work because these players have reached the top. So something obviously is working. Something is right. It's unfortunate you missed that thing that was working for you, but I'm glad you're here with me though. It's where you belong. <sighs> oh, well, nice try. Feels bad, man. <laughs> Keep right, catching okay. strays for no reason, Bane. Do you see experience? Is he? Is, is he? Blood grenade. Okay, he's fine. Give him a tip. They just come on, Sam. Give him a tip. You got a you got a hawk. They use the blood grenade. Oh, I see my issue. That's why. Yeah, he got a little bit of experience, a little bit of gold there. Um, who will be lane? Will they be late to the lane? They will be, right? Like, there's no way they get to the lane by the time creeps are there. And you could maybe TP, but if everyone is late, then it doesn't really matter too much. Looks like that's sure. See so yeah, this midlane matchup is going to be able to go as well between these two. Should be pretty... Look, I haven't seen this matchup for a while, but I know it was quite razor favored in the past. And TA used to have to go play jungle on, on the early levels. I'm not sure if it's any different. I imagine it's kind of similar though. Oh, oh, damn, that's a good one. Why didn't you say something, Blizzard? Why weren't you watching? I was, I was just listening to you. You oh, yeah. were talking about Razor and TA. I respect you. That's why. My fault, my fault. I should have seen that. It is. Anyway, How dare you? Yeah, they, they just dish out a lot of damage between the clock and and Monet. Fade Bolt will not really be that helpful. When it comes to mid, I've seen TAs even win into Viper matchups. It comes down to nothing to say in how he plays the Razor, but I think he's more than capable of winning a lane versus a TA. So I expect him to be doing exactly that, what you just talked about, and that's just force the TA out of the lane. But BZM also is a beast. Like, was it him that won versus Viper recently oh. or someone else? Uh, I don't remember, but he almost solo killed. Nothing to say, unfortunately, but we're still on cooldown. 
I. Mm. Who was it, man? I'm trying to remember, actually. I know the game you're speaking about, I just don't remember who played it. But this is how, if you're gonna do it, it's, it's oh, it meld VP. early it on. Was, it was VP on... Squad X? Uh, yeah, Squad X. Yeah, yeah. Squad X was playing the Viper. He was the one that lost the lane. Ah. He did come back oh, eventually, okay. anyway. In any case, yeah. Uh, TA can recover if they create a couple of stacks for her. It is He's true that... Uh, yeah. yeah, a bit. But yeah, sir, continue. Tia can come back with stacks. Ah, yeah, it is a hero, right? Like, she's always like that. The only problem is if her lane isn't that, that great, like, your concerns that you stated earlier about the Morphine becomes, become even bigger. Like, you don't have a mid laner, like, she needs to recover, you have a Morphine that's just built in greed, and then you're playing into a Beast Master that's just, uh... You know, just pressuring you across the map. At least this beast isn't going for Helm of uh, Doms. He's going for King Boots instead first. Yeah. yeah, I was just looking back as well, the Tier vs Viper matchup. Abed went two points meld at level three. I also have a weird feeling that he got first blood somehow before that. Um, I may be completely wrong, but meld is, like, if you are trying to somehow get like a sneaky solo kill over a mid laner, you, this is this is the spell. I mean, it's still ridiculous level one, five armor reduction, yeah. even the extra level is really dumb, so. Not the, not looking good, bruv. Not right now, oh. at least. No, no. Uh, 17, 11 versus 10 and two. My Razor is really dominating mid at the moment. Yeah, and there's just kill threat in all the lanes, top lane, if Exnova is mainly able to come top of the Rubik. There's a little bit more difficult with the Telekinesis. Bottom though, snipe down. Okay, well done for Boko with the Earth Spike. JT as well, two points up in the Axes. Oops. All three lanes looking good for um, IG. Like top lane, they got that first blood. Bottom lane, now they can kill it. They get the snipe on Morphling. Mid lane, it's Razor versus TA. Not easy for BZM at all. The uh, looking rough bottom? once again. Are OG going to be able to get a kill? Hopefully Tomato is going to be able to find it, giving some injection of gold. We'll have to use the blood grenade. Nice stun at least before he dies. I thought there might be some opportunity. Nice attempt. Said, but yeah. Yeah. Nice attempt from Boboka to try and survive. It, it was good. Like the Dyer's double stun as well on point. Didn't really manage to... Radiant Save himself in the end. Look at BZM, by the way, diving really deep. Ruboka is here now. He stacks as well. Looks like Ari's starting to make some stacks at the Ancients. That hard cam too. G2 IG struggle a little bit of being able to contest the stacks. But they probably would start to drop some vision down. Xnova's got one ward. They are also both backstabbing OG. Yeah, maybe with the beast they can do it, right? Like just spamming axes. Star. Mm, a little bit of trouble here. Once my able to get on top of him, those two points rocket barrage. They'll deal with the cogs, but it's not going to matter. G2IG, nice kill for them considering you know, Whisper was off to a pretty decent start. 29-7. They're going to be able to slow down the Brewmaster, though. Yeah, considering they even got that kill, right? Like, they got that they killer bottom early lane. on Ari. Nice sleep. He stepped up way too far. And you had your support leaving the lane. And a good read, though, from Tomato. Instantly pinged out. Seb started to move down. Oh, another kill for them. Okay, making a slight comeback. Nothing to say, actually. Using the shield on going top. Boka. The Boka's gonna die, but uh, Whisper just has to commit to it, because there's no way he's gonna be able to escape as well once nothing to say is locked on. Maybe he can take the stack too. Three points plasma. Take a while, but with either storm, he'll get it. It's not a big stack, at least, right? Like, it's just a double. Still pretty solid for him to move in, get the kill. And go for the stacks as well, sn snatch them. Also, kind of bad for Whisper that he just died twice in a row. He doesn't even have a TP to work with, so he bought a smoke just to get to the lane on time. 
And it never feels great when you're a brewmaster and you're not getting six fast enough. Like you're oh, missing no. from the lane a little bit too much. BZM is also trying to steal the wisdom room, but I believe they scanned and saw that someone was already there, so he's going to start walking away. Yeah, a lot of stacks that he's scouting, like triple ancient stack already on Dire, will propel JT. Once he starts taking those stacks, will propel him fa closer to Helm of Dominator. It is the build that he's going for, so no Aghanims, no Vlad's pipe, nothing like that. Helm of Doms. And it's such a good build in this game. Can they so rotate bottom though? Seb is moving in. Maybe with BZM. It's it's a play. It's not a great play, but it's a play. And it's a play that looks like will work though. Baboka hugging the trees. They're gonna see the trap shortly. So go off. They're gonna turn to Baboka and Seb. Maybe they can also get JT. It's a little bit split with their decisions though. Mari is here though. With Ari being here, they're going to be able to run into JT inside the tree line. And you're happy with Boca that. Boca slips away, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're super, super happy with that. You you got a rotation in. The only problem is the top lane. Like, you're losing this tier 1 tower. Nothing to say also rotated in. Uh, and more importantly, Whisper was zoned out of some of the experience. Top losing a tier 1 tower Radiant's top lane like this is Radiant never a good thing. Keep it in the two supports of Radiant, where they're Ari and uh, Seb, but couldn't, they couldn't catch Dyer's them. Middle tower is under attack. Have you found a way for OG to be able to make plays this game in like the early stage? Because I'm still trying to work out uh, what the angle is going to be. The Brew got pressured way too hard, he's not... Uh, his level 6 yet isn't there. Okay, he just got it. With this level 6, maybe there's some sort of a play that you can make. Maybe even yeah. on Gyro, like he's not that tanky. He's got a pretty fat magic wand, but... With a good split and Seb being 6 here, yeah. Should be able to get him. And they will, no TPs. Alright, well done. Big kill, very big kill. You're gonna be able to get the carry out of IG. Second in net worth. Uh, unfortunately, their tower taking ability is a bit limited. Maybe that's where Tomato is going to be able to come into play. I like this rotation as well from the Wolf thing. So, exactly what they need out of OG. Yep. With the Morphling. Broken mid lane might also die. Okay. There you go. They're making some plays. On top lane, on mid lane as well. You can see the TA BZM is going D lance into Blink. So, a little bit more of an active build as well for him. I fear for them once Beastmaster comes online, but it's not like the easiest lane that JT has had. He died twice. I. I kind of. They're going to put a lot of pressure on bottom. Once they open up the tower, JT can go back and farm the stacks. Unfortunately, no hook shot just yet from X Nova. Tomato might Tomato. be able to get enough distance away to waveform TP out. Go. Oh. oh, I think What's it's taking a bit too long now. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, oops. You know what happened? What, I, I, at least what my theory is. He was trying to get next to Rosh to waveform over. But then he right clicked Rosh. And then his hero started attacking instead of running behind him. I think he just misclicked. That's how it looked like. I might be wrong. Mid lane, nothing to say. There is no way, right? Like, Ari is coming from behind. He's got 16 Maybe. All right. BZM shredding people. Monet as well now. Trap one, trap two. Exo with the wraparound. Monade's still taking a lot of damage. Fiend's Crypt's gonna be cancelled. Now with the roar as well from JT, they've locked the TA inside the cogs and kept Monade alive. So the main damage source can start to go to work and nicely done from Monade. Never fearing, always knew the boys were there to play with him. What happened? They didn't really commit, right? Like it felt like BZM moved a bit back, was reluctant, and that was just enough time for uh, Gyro to pop his wand, survive the grip and see. fight backwards. 
Oh, he was hexed. So it's really, that's why. Cogs is really anyway. just on the outskirts. Radiant are scanning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He couldn't hit from the cogs, definitely. Uh, um, oh. Nice scan, and he's down through the with the portal. But it's gonna try and tip out, but he'll cancel it. Uh, Whisper's doing some good stuff this game. So, you know, it doesn't have the net worth to represent it. But Wait, very well done. What did he buy? What did he buy if he doesn't have the net worth? Because he just had like 2.6k gold. Uh, okay, he has 2.7. Never mind. Is there a bug with with click when you click on the little what are they called like little uh, primal split brulings? Oh, I guess so. I didn't click on yeah. it. Yeah, because his net worth, yeah, it, it isn't great, but he's still got 5k. Considering how much they zoned him out of the lane, it's not that bad. He's going to have Dyer's sacred relics soon. Is under attack. I'm getting a little bit antsy with these ancient stacks not being claimed yet. I don't know, I just have some weird feeling OG wins some fighter, then BZM just walks in the triangle and takes them all. Yeah, uh, Jaru is. Oh, they're living from an A, okay. I. Don't... I really would have preferred Beastmaster to have gotten the stacks. What do you think? He's got a lot of farm. As it is, he has higher net worth than Gyro. Gyro is only going to take over now. I, I, I know what you mean. Like, if he gets the stacks earlier than Gyro, he gets some of Overlord. He becomes even... Uh, an even bigger issue. But... Clockwork, Hookshot mid. This team is gone. I, I think Gyro is also fine. I wouldn't mind one or the other. Gyro getting Agrims, getting like X crit BKB is his time, timing. Beast is. He's taken over the map anyway. Look at 7. <laughs> nice Free bait kill for by Seb. Yeah, yeah. Nice bait by JT. I don't know if you noticed. He was pumping Roar and then he threw axes instead. Just so Ari doesn't steal Roar. Axes are still fine, a lot of damage. Alright, well, good. Very impressed the fact that this is a quite an even game, and I feel like you're the greedy lineup for OG have to really be liking this current status quo. Not pushed out of it too far. BZM has been doing a good job of being relatively active and getting some important kills. Whisper as well. We've seen the splits oh. being utilized well. And they are in a, a very, very good position now. Mm -hmm. They've got Lincolns now as well and Morph Link. I'm not, like, the biggest fan of this. I know that he has to buy it. You're playing into Lion. You're playing into most, most importantly, of course, Beastmaster with the Roar. BZM? Yeah, okay. I mean, he wanted the stacks! So that's why they kept. They, they were just baiting the Templar Assassin, ready for him to walk <laughs> up the high ground. Oh, Jesus, he almost got Boboko. And JT will take a. Like, you weren't happy with JT not getting any stacks. He's gonna share them now with, uh, with, with Monet. Are you happy now? Yeah, uh, it's not bad. A bit happier, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a bit happier. That was very greedy from, from BZM trying to go win. It's a juicy no stack. There. It's kind of hard to resist. I don't, even, I don't even think he had any traps there as well, unless they killed them before he walked up or whatever, but... I don't know. Anyway. He had them a little bit earlier. Uh, probably just disappeared or... Um, disappeared to the right clicks of Boboka and... Uh, Exnova. Saving the haste, nice, nicely done with the cogs. That mantle? Yeah, okay. Mantle completed. Of course, the radiance always well. Got it, coming out of the car. All right. Uh, yeah. What's the probability? 54% of fire gen. I really feel like OG had to be very happy with the current state. You know, still, let, let's see what they're going to be able to do with the Helm of the Overlord. Like, that was the big thing you were saying you were concerned about, right? Where you felt like once this item comes online, then G2IG... Well, 
Multiple things now. It's it's the Helm of Overlord, you have uh, Manta on Razor, you have a way to initiate with Lion as well. Ruboka has a blink once again. Nova's in. Hookshot in, X Nova. It's going to be able to find it a great angle, but the double Earth Spike is well. Also, clips on Decept to prevent the Nightmare. Now the roar. Oh, it's just disastrous. All the spell casting again. Simulated game one. D2 IG connecting with all their spells. Just too on point. They don't waste anything. And that roar was exactly what they needed. Uh, rough game for, for Whisper. You have to worry about the line. You have to now worry about the roar as well. Like, a lot of these heroes can solo uh, contain you until you primal split. And there's so much damage pumping uh, out of Gyro. Especially with this aura from Beastmaster. Even Beastmaster as well, himself, he is dishing out a ton of damage. This Ancient Thunder Hide, like, should be praised a bit more. Like, the frenzy that he gives is uh, really damn good in some of these fights, especially if you cast it on, on the Gyro. Well, this is the one person who did not, well, a couple of people didn't die, but the important one, Tomato. And of course, we've seen very recently what a Morphling is able to do into a Gyrocopter carry. Um, yeah, the only difference is that, that that Morphling had absolute freedom to go for the meta build. Like yeah. he had a casual Manta Kanda, you know, like he goes in, morphs into Gyro and just becomes a better Gyro. This game, your Morphling has a Dragonlance and Lincoln Sphere, a little bit more uh, defensive of a build. But they do have split, they do have a very big TA when it comes to rush taking at least, so straight into the pit. They're reading this though. See if they're gonna be fast enough and Radiant will take it okay with the meld. No deaths though, they will flare. This is a bit sketchy, you might have to preemptively split. Same place, like in the last game, once again. Seb. And nothing to say, he's going to be able to lock onto BTM. So he'll be able to drain away the damage of the Templar Assassin. Roar as well is just going to bring him down to start the fight. Tomato needs to go huge, but he just doesn't have the net worth. And Whisper is gone. Dies with the Brulings. Tomato's going to be chased down. A good yes. TP location, but Ari as well tries to duck into the pit. G2IG spy him out. Just another great fight for Dyer. It's just a disaster, really, the way the fight starts as well. You lose Seb instantly, like he's your big control. Uh, Whisper, yeah, pro the Brulings just died instantly. Also, by the way, Tamadu, he morphs in, he goes in, he does what he's supposed to do. That's morph into... He chooses Razor, like Razor or Gyro, they're both good. He chooses Razor, he morphs into Razor, but instantly gets cogged out. And his static link stole an absolute of zero damage. Like, see, static link to Razor and just didn't really accomplish anything with it. Well, once again, another game that is not looking great for OG. It's another game that started fine, though. Like, yo, I know Whisper was a little bit behind in net worth, but I thought his rotations were great. Well, Ari's gonna get caught. x Nova's clockwork has been 3 0 and 2. Yeah, on point. 15 out of the 17 kills. 14 out of the 17 from the poker. Supports are just making stuff happen this game. This is this is high ground. You're playing into Overlord. Beastmaster, they need to defend this. He does not have a TP. He's not going to be in base for 20 more seconds. I'm not sure if you can even death this. You don't, just don't have the heroes to defend really well. You need Rubik with Fate Bolt. That's probably the best one. Yeah, it's just a full Rex 20 minutes in. And this is kind of the issues, I guess, coming to the forefront, like we were saying with OG's draft. Yeah, I, was, I really thought they might have gotten away with it with. 15 minutes, it was dead even, and G2IG weren't able to get anything done. But I, I'm going to sing your praises. You said exactly when Helm, Helm Overlord 2 comes out, 
that is the go time. That's when G2IG started taking fights. Of course, you've got to execute those fights, and, and they without a doubt have done that. BZM, they're now setting up on him, and uh, is going to be able to get the Hex before the Blink to respond. It's just the supports. Are they going to be able to kill like him? Yep. Oh, oh no, just got the refraction up at the last second. Now, OG have responded. Almost everyone has come over, so Beast Trying to fly away. <laughs> jumps back in. I love how he tried to fly away, you know, nothing is happening. I have my shard, I'm just gonna chat back out, but they didn't let him. Um, what needs to be said, yeah, the obvious timing is there for Beastmaster. Now he has Greaves as well on top of that, so even, even more utility for his team. But everything just looks way too simple and easy for IG. Every single fight that they are taking, just everything is clean and when everything is clean it's either you're a god gamer or the enemy team is just not ready ever and I feel like it's a bit of both, G2 IG are great, bot lane, but finally they're showing some cracks in the armor, like they managed to kill the Razor, the clock on top lane as well. I will be caught. Yes you are. Very very happy with that exchange. They might also get the Helm of the Overlord creep inside the base, unless JT can... Dominate this range creep, yeah. He dominates the range creep, so it's not gonna happen. The dragon just dies. Easy call for JT. Yeah, I like the change. I like the change a lot. Like, the, the fact that you get the gold. I, I'm not sure if I want to see the zoo meta once again being played, yep. but... Make it viable. It, it, it's not viable. And I, I'm always a big thing of like having as many options as possible. I think really anyone is because we... I don't know if, if this will ever change, but we really recently, more than maybe in the past, but maybe in the past as well, feels like the meta does get stale kind of early because there's not... You know, there's like 20 heroes that can be picked. So I, I no, don't know if this is just... It's because we have too many coaches. Fire all the coaches. Ban coaches from Dota. That, that's what you do. You okay. <laughs> They're looking at each other's games way too much. These nerds, they have nothing else to do. Everyone knows what everyone is picking. But yeah, you are right. You are right. Like, we have too many... Uh, like, when you have, like, that many broken heroes, they need to be picked. And that's it. Like, you, you don't have an option to pick anything else. Oh. And 20 seconds, by the way, that's how much they've got to take this push. No ages in 20. Tomato's... Yeah, it doesn't matter, sorry. He's got half duration DD left, but they're not going to fight. Yeah, he's got, what, the Phylactery, not even Kanda yet. Phylactery and Pike. Not too bad, but uh, it doesn't feel like they're in any leading position at the moment. I think they got a glimpse of Tomato actually parving in the trees. Excellent, oh, smoked. So is JT. They have, yeah. they have got flare if they want to try and scout him. Not an easy okay. catch. Yeah, with Lincoln, still not an easy catch. Vavoka needs to be like, literally, he needs to jump as Clockwork is hooking in. Uh, if you want to catch that. Morphling. Okay, at least the game did slow down a bit, right? Like, if you're OG, you're super happy with this. Um, the game slowing down, giving you a little bit of breathing room. Like, there's no more ages on Gyro. Your TA, I believe BZM has a BKB. Yeah, he's completed the BKB. So, it's not great. You're playing into Bookshot and Roar, but it's something. Like, you're getting there. You're a little bit harder to kill in fights, if nothing else. Every little bit counts at this point. Like, 10k advantage is big, but it's not something that you cannot win against. Satanic, I believe, yeah, completed on nothing to say as well now. I'm in. X. That's full stuff. Oh, nice great nightmare from Seb. Still look at the damage! Before the BKB responds, BZM's gonna get it off for the last second. Monet's in some danger, but with the Satanic activated, he's gonna be okay. Tomato creating chaos in the back line. He just doesn't have enough took items. took a lot of damage. He no stole right a lot click of damage. damage to be able to kill them. Maybe with a static link, it's going to be enough for the end. Waveform over the top. All the attention Nicely put on to Monet. They get a big kill. Can OG get more, though? They get a glimpse of JT trying to retreat to the east. And OG will get another very good fight. Some big sleeps 
great. You're disengaged as well, Ari, with the four stops, the glimmer caves to protect the cause, and in the end, no one died. Yeah, that's massive, like massive. The, the, the fact that they managed to rescue TA there and DZM with that BKB, all he had to do is just survive long enough, you know? You just survive long enough so your team doesn't crumble under the weight of everyone focusing someone else like a morphing instead of the TA. Like, he gets that BKB off, he survives for long enough for Timaldi to make stuff happen. And that lead that was 10k, it's 3k now, over one what? team fight. It is just like that, very simple. And another pick off. Okay, OG, at least in this game, they're definitely back. Whisper needs to be a bit careful to up top. Uh, as they have a Boca around. Should be fine, right? Like, he's going back, yeah. He's gonna have AC now as well. He's, he has it, actually. He just purchased, finished the recipe. A massive fight for OG. Massive. What a nightmare save from Seb. I feel like he dodged two things. I, I can't remember what it was. I feel like there was multiple stuff that was very clutch. Yeah, he still this didn't dodge every finger of that, right? The finger of that still went whisper. Yeah. With he the finger tanky. in the... He is tanky. But Poku goes full drain instead. They're coming, though. And they're going to be able to... They stole raw? Oh, they're back. They're back. They're, they're completely back. 1k advantage, not even 1k. And look, IG had a fantastic game up to this high ground push, high, high ground fight, that is. Now it's Timado's time to shine. Like, this man on Morphling... He's got Kanda, he's got Pike, and he's got everything, literally, that he needs to turn this one around. BZM as well. Yes. Had the BKB in that last fight, now has the Dazzle on top. They're absolutely back. Alright, let's see. They've been Dyer's given a... Bit of a light. Mm, I was gonna say lifeline, but honestly, it was it was really their play that got them back into this game, not mistakes from G2 IG with a couple of yeah hopeless deaths or deaths that didn't you know that were you know, unforced. So let's see what OG I, can do off the back of this now. The way I see it is like they woke up every single other initiation from IG and they just wiped them. This time around, OG was yeah they woke up and they were ready. They they came to play. Nice sleep save and off of that, off of that sleep save, everything basically happened. Still though, X Nova smoked up. Still a pretty big clockwork. JT smoke's gonna pop inside the trap. This monster would be a great pick up the start, but Broker's gonna be in before the split. Have they got the damage double four stuff? Whispers okay. Once again, the support's coming huge inside the team fight. JT's Lord gonna be able to hold the Templar Assassin down with the roar, but Tomato. He's soaking all the damage. Now the Fiend's gift from Seb. Yeah, they've woken up. OG, now the spell casting is there from them. The response with the jump back onto nothing to say. He's down in a heartbeat. The Boca will escape, but I mean, just a double force from them. You save on the initiation. Whisper gets the split off. And then Seb as well, again with the raw onto the Jarakov. They were able to get him from four to zero. Maybe you were right in the end. Maybe they did need those three defeats, you know, to wake them and force them back into shape because this is looking great. Full comfort zone heroes, of course. Brew on offlane, BZM, TA, Mad on the Morphling. Uh, but the game has definitely been turned by the supports. Like Ari and Seb on point, saving these scores and allowing them to actually take fights. You can see why people usually pick Morphling into Razor, into Gyro, because he just doesn't care about them. Goes in, sucks all the damage away from the Razor and then uh, deals with everyone else. Nicely done once again. They, will, they didn't have the luck of an early rush spawning top, but uh, Botlane rush fight is still very easy for them as they have the outpost TP2 as well. Oh, it's not the Biggest thing, but definitely sh can be said. JT was able to take the tier 3 tower down bot with all that going on with the Helm of the Overlord creep. Something, right? And, and they, they smoke up. They they, they want to fight again. Under a ward. Dado is completed though from 1 8. So let's see mm -hmm. if it's going to change a little bit with this damage now. There's also Halberd on Beast. So you have Daedalus okay. and Halberd. Like two things that. You know, one for TA, the other just for overall damage. 
and Timado is not really that far away from BKB. He needs like 500 gold. It would be wise to maybe wait for it, but you can't leave the pit. You can't leave this area. It's almost Radiant like you actually have to jump the OG supports first. I don't know if you get a clean kill into Whisper now. 2500 health. Very difficult with the, the Void Brawler that he has activated. AC as well. Can't, Whisper is... He knows he's slayer, and he doesn't care. Just brews up. And that's it. Stays there. Could they force it on IG? I'm thinking... Yeah, they, they're, they're just scouting now with... But there's a trap in the pit. They should know. So just sending Monet is... Sending Monet in just doesn't feel right. I wouldn't mind if they drop a sentry in the pit and just put a boar in there. Yeah, it would be bad. Like a sentry around the pit. Uh, yeah, that's go. exactly what they did. This <gasps> the sentry and the trap is killed. That scared me. Okay. Ah, yes, a good rush off. Well, top's getting pushed in. So this is eventually something that OG will need to, to worry about. And probably they pretty soon. Yeah, they have BKB on Morphling, though. I feel that this is maybe even their go time. They don't have to f go into the pit. Maybe they can force a fight instead. They have no smokes. That's that's one problem, right? Like, Seb doesn't have one. Ari doesn't have one as well. Is the matter baiting? Uh, I know, but they're going to do something, man. This top lane, it will put them on a timer. Really don't think IJ need to force this. They're pinging it. They're pinging. They're waiting for this. It's a huge top wave push as well. Like you have three range creeps. Uh, it looks like Koji might have to force or go back with someone. You got to make a call though pretty soon. Yeah, you got Glyph. And they're going to smoke, smoke now. now. So finally, they get one delivered. Radiance middle tower is under attack. How do they find the angle? Whisper, just aggressive charge in for the brew. Instant primal split. And what's the call? How they're going to be able to enter the fight off the back of this as well. They want to try and deal with the supports, Tomato. Early peek at me from Pavoka. Pavoka's dancing around the trees. They don't get a clean kill. It's messy. And it's not good enough. Whisper is They'll dead. lose the brew master. And now nothing to say. Great hurricane pike. BZM's going to be able to get out of range of the static link. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Nothing to say. Impressive charge in for as well. It's going to be able to find the Mado. hex. Thing Do they Mado. have the damage? Double four stuff again into the nightmare. Tomorrow's okay. Now it just blows up the clockwork. BZM wants to turn. They've got a fiend script as well. Someone needs to cancel it. Does anyone have a stun? They do not. A little bit too late for Baboka. Monet's going to try and run in, but this is tomorrow's fight along with BZM's to win it all. They're buying back on G2 IG, but they just do not have enough left. The stolen Earth Spike connects onto two. And OG, they're going to be able to catch up to X Nova as well. Unfortunately, there will be a TP out from JT. But Roche will be theirs now. Yeah, BZM TP's back because there was a Radiant big dragon pushing in. So he was worried about them maybe ratting mid. But like you said, Roche should be theirs. I... It really feels like it's better for OG not to start fights, to force IG to go, right? That's how it looks like. like if IG go in, they have to force this Razor in, and then it's so much easier for Timado to respond. But when Timado is going in, like, they just split and uh, juke him. He was forced to use BKB for uh, that blind kill that he didn't even get in the end. Not at the beginning, at least. Nicely done by IG at the beginning, but OG just outplayed them. The moment you, you focus the Madrin, or any target that is, the double four staff, the sleep, uh, the glimmer cape, it made all the difference in that fight. Yeah, I, well, ha, I'm looking at these fights now, do you, do you feel like G2IG need to... What's going on down the outpost? I thought they said was there. Do you, do you feel like Dai need to like reconsider their target priority and go for the supports instead? It would be nice if they could, but they can save each other as well. They have a couple of four staffs, right? Like the Glimmer Capes. Maybe.
maybe on the clockwork you can initiate on on, on the supports and zone them out or at least make the fight a little bit messier send all the creeps and clockwork on them and then fight off of that the problem is like uh, in this game if morphling initiates on top of the razor i feel the fight is almost already done if he finds the angle and also He's finishing off a Scuddy. Once he has a Scuddy, if he does the same to Gyro, it's also good enough. Just having that Scuddy and uh, Flak Cannon will, will prove to be good enough. Great position for Uji to be in. Age is on Tomato, Cheese on BZM, Daedalus completed for the Templar Assassin, and Flux of Items. Currently being worked on. There's always this pesky issue about the rat from the Beastmaster. Bottom is continuously be shoved in. Yeah, he's doing a really good job. Maybe eventually, if you get their Agonims on TA, is a way of dealing with it, but he's not gonna buy it anytime soon. Botlane has no tower, by the way, so someone what? needs to go. I didn't know you could Hurricane Pike the missile. Yeah, you can. You, you can force it forward as well. Like if you're a Gyro and you oh, that's right, that. yeah. I haven't seen the mechanic in such a long time. Nothing to see. He's ready to wrap around. A bit far away from their base, though. They like want said, to catch them because of bot, right? Hitting the melee barracks is going to be nothing. Jesus, big meld. G2IG doing, doing a really good job at, at kiting this fight. Whisper's going to be able to play around with the Primal Split. Nothing to say, trying to get to the back line. Instantly step with the Fiend's Group, but it's cancelled. It might not matter in the end. The damage from BZM, he doesn't care about the Static Link. So you're taking the fight minus the Razor. And Monet, he's just so hesitant. Jari doesn't feel comfortable about running to the middle. And it means that JT just, just has no damage to back him up. And Seb Sleep completely takes Monet out of the equation. They did lose, lose the Raxes down bottom, by the way. But will it matter? Maybe they just lose the game here. There, there are three buybacks. All three of them need to. All of them. Yeah, they have to. But you gotta get something. And Seb is just not enough. Maybe JT can catch someone with the raw, but the four stuffs get them out. I guess not losing the game straight away is not great, but I don't know if it's enough. But you were in a bad position anyway, and you did take both the Raxes, right? Like the, the ranged and the melee. So you're two sides up. You're two sides up in a losing game, 14k difference. It's not the worst. Like, how that fight could have went, you were fighting a really hard fight, and you got Raxes, but three buybacks. I'm huffing some copium, of course. This is... When you lose one fight, this game might just... Your grief, I suppose. I don't know. This is really risky business. Back up. Anything big? Like, there are no big items that will come for IG because of those three buybacks, right? Like, they were already waiting on Razor. Nothing to say. There's a trap on him. Sorry. Probably no catch, right? Yeah, they, they just don't have anything. Yeah, the problem is, like, they were buying all these big items on, on the dire side. The Razor went for Butterfly. You can see the Gyro queued up a Scuddy much, much earlier. And now those items that could have maybe changed the way the fights are played aren't going to be there, so... It just feels that this game is completely in OG's favor. Aegis will be gone though. Like, it will be reclaimed in a second or two. Uh, we get to take a look at that fight back. I mean, you, you definitely see what the, the goal was for G2IG. Like you were saying, it's really just a stall. You know, maybe trying to cancel some TPs. But it's at this age of the game where nothing to say can't actually even really run down BZM. BZM just with too much raw damage to start with a meld and couple of right clicks will almost kill the razor before the static link really does its role um yeah because he has dezo there's an ac as well on whisper 
there's of course on top of that the Daedalus on TA. Like you can't play the normal game of Razor anymore. The one in which you just run in. Maybe if he had the Halberd or something. He's just rocking a talisman of evasion right now. It's it's just not good enough. Um they, they are two sides up. And that's that's keeping them in at least. Like top lane is pushing in. If top lane isn't pushing in, then bottom lane is Do you think this should be a halberd instead of a butterfly for nothing to say? Maybe it's a little bit too small of an item this late on. I, I won't mind the halberd though, uh, just to use it on the TA in these fights. They already have one, right? Like JT has one. And butterfly will allow this razor to scale much, much better. So he'll be able to dish out some bonus damage in these fights, unlike like the halberd so very low level we'll is nothing to say level 20 we already have a couple 25s refraction instances from bzm mkb queued up for him I do wonder when he goes that scepter i know you were bringing up earlier on to to deal with the split push i don't think he needs to right like it, it, it's doable like you could go for the scepter if you're really worried about the split push but they're in such a commanding position right now that they're able to even push out these waves. And all they need realistically is one fight. Right? There are three buybacks we're committed on three cores of IG. All you need is this one fight. Rush may respawn in 40 seconds. Let's see how disciplined they are. They lost so many games today that <clears throat> I think that's also maybe affecting them a little bit. Just full discipline mode on. Yeah. Of, of course, a so one successful fight and, and this is game. You know, Beastmaster, Gyro, Razor brought back previously. So uh, ev every single call on G2IG without a buyback. And more than this likely, you are going to get lucky. All right. I mean, this is... Monet yeah. well, has a butterfly. Do you think the butterfly changes things on Gyro? Like, it, it does give you some more damage, right? Tomato! Tomato! Broke it. Yeah, they don't know anyone's behind him. him as well. He's fine, they're starting to come over. Now they're in a really awkward spot, though. Whisper's gonna charge in on I mean, Whisper doesn't need to really worry about too much. Tomato's gonna get the Gyro the replica as well. The perfect target for him now with the flat cannon. Tomato should be able to deal with everyone quite easily, but... They've lost Seb, he's been pivotal to the success of the team fights. Not that I say he's gone as well, but still Tomato standing strong in the middle. They just don't have the control. But Boca jumps in too late, but it doesn't matter. And these are cords that have all no buybacks. And now they can chase down the stragglers. x is going to be caught out of the river. Maybe. You will get the TP away from Boca, but... Walk it down now. Yeah, pretty much just walk down straight mid. JT... He might try to do something about it, but there's nothing to do. Whisper already moved back. He's got travels. That's one of the ways to, of dealing, right? Like with, with with rats. You just buy travels, you go back. And look at JT even trying to go around, like hoping maybe if the creeps go in, I, I'll be able to go for throne play or something similar. But uh, it, yeah, I, I, I doubt that OG will allow that to happen. They're kind of slow, by the way. After that whole oh, fight, they're kind of slow when it comes to pushing in. Yeah, something... A, a wave master got caught. <laughs> Whisper's gonna be able to run into the helm of the Overlord. So we'll prevent that next wave getting caught. They've got a glyph, at least. 25 seconds until the raise is back alive, but both got... They, they're so in, undecisive, like they can go thrown. They have 20 seconds though, and there is a glyph. Oh, there's a Raper on Tomato. Oh, it's coming out of the quarry now. It actually still doesn't have it just yet. Ah, oh, they should kill it too fast. 10 seconds. You just gotta throw bodies. You just gotta throw bodies. It's not gonna matter. They're gonna kite them. Tomato's just gonna avoid them at all costs. See, Whisper's right clicking the throne as well, and OG. They'll get their first victory of the group stages. Man, they had to work for it. This was a very, very difficult day for them in the end, but. I, that's that's going to feel quite nice, though, for them. You, you lose three games, but you at least end on a victory, and you end on, on quite the game. Their reaction isn't 
They're not that yeah, happy. Well, Seb's yeah. out of his seat. So yeah, Seb's, yeah. Seb's cheering, but everyone else is, you know, it's uh, it's just business. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not that happy, and they can't be that happy after the th three first games that they've had. Um, then again, at least they won this last one. And it, it, was it super convincing? No, it wasn't. It looked like it was G2's game. G2IG was completely dominating up to that high ground push in which they restarted everything with Seb uh, using that nice little sleep into a four staff from BZM, BZM surviving, and then uh, Morphing manages to turn it all around. My problem is, like, where was this before? Like, this was all possible in other games as well. It's just that they fell apart too many times, one fight after another. It's like being tilted. That's how it, fe that's how it feels watching them. Of course, I'm not sure what's happening within the team, what the problems are, but uh, I hope we see more of this OG that we saw in the last game of, in the last, what, 15, 20 minutes of, of this series. Because it, it looked like the OG that we should expect. Like the team that mm -hmm. actually can put up a fight versus most tier one teams. I don't want to like... Mm. I, this game in particular, we have really felt the support impact as well from OG. Which is something that has been... I mean, it's very mm -hmm. easy to not feel that in losses. Because you just have no net worth and like low level. You, you're not really able to have a lot of impact. But I think in this victory... I really wonder how different this game would actually look if we didn't have like back-to-back -back fights where you get double four staffs to save. I think maybe it was actually this fight with this Seb fight, with yeah. the Nightmare to keep BZM alive. Like Ari and Seb clutched up two to three gigantic fights. And I really think without that, this probably has a different outcome. So uh, really, really well performed by them. And, and you get the boys the, and the cause in particular to a position where they have enough items so then you'd be like they are a big threat now yeah like also during the draft you called it really nicely you you said that uh, their draft is greedy right and it was greedy but somehow they managed to go through that um started losing the game eventually once that overlord was up this fight as well, I believe Morphling survives. Yeah, double four staff into sleep. This was a big clutch as well. And you could see that the moment IG manages to initiate on someone, if they don't completely blow that target up instantly, they lose the fight. Because it's so easy for OG to reset with this Morphling going in and out. Same goes for the TA. But um, yeah, very greedy draft from OG from, from the get-go. But they did manage to make it work in the end. Good to see. Good to see, nonetheless, that they're able to get that victory in the end. And it probably feels a little bit better to be able to end the day with a victory. And, and it was a hard-fought one, but this is gives them something that they're able to to work on heading into into the following day. Yeah, if nothing else, just for the peace of mind, just for the morale, right? Because it looked disgusting in a couple of games like those uh, stomps that they suffered like in the first game of this series in the series against uh, who was it not heroic entity once again i keep on forgetting like it looked really rough maybe it has something to do with as well with you know you start off the group stage poorly like you get a very bad game one and then it kind of spirals out of control i'm happy that they managed like you said to talk it out perhaps uh, figure it, figure out what was wrong, more or less, and come back strong. Even though I really think it's all down to execution. Like the drafts, more or less, uh, every draft that they had was playable. It was just the execution in the end that really mattered, and this game was a prime example of it. Okay, the moment everything starts clicking, the moment you start using your uh, buttons properly, the game becomes much, much easier. I want to see more Beastmaster though. I feel like this hero is really in a really good spot. Like, I, th I think it's um, with the recent changes to Dominator, I, th I think we might get to see a little bit more of him, especially when all the big boys are banned out and they're banned out constantly. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting to see other teams' reads because we definitely know there is a lot of Beastmaster specialists in. Every single team. I mean, it's a must as, as an offlaner to be able to play it. So uh, let's see how that's going to go. OG in particular, we uh, will get a winner's interview. Uh, not quite sure who we're going to get just yet, but uh, first we need to set the interview up. So we're going to go a quick break. And when we come back, we have an interview with one of the OG members.
Another short break, no time to waste. Me and Aries here will be joined for an interview first before the next series. An interview with, uh, well, he's not really upcoming anymore. He's a star already coming from OG Busy and welcome. Congrats on this one win you guys got off of uh, G2IG. I need to stay, just ask straight off the bat, what's happening? What, what's going on today? The games didn't look that great for you guys. Most at least, most of them. Um... Well, first things first, uh, it was a 9 a.m. game for us, so that has some impact. Too early? Um, um, <clears throat> especially for me, yeah. Uh, but for this series, um, I don't know, first game just it looked okay, uh, first couple minutes, and then kind of just... Uh, exploded like in the matter of seconds like it was really fast how it turned uh, the second game it was a hard battle yeah. so really tired right now uh, rough day for sure yeah yeah, I won't uh, keep you for way too long then if you are tired. Like, congrats again for taking game number two and coming back into it. I, I'm sure you you guys are at least a little bit relieved, right, that you uh, tied out with G2IG. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we could have done a lot better, but uh, you know, we take what we can. So definitely need to look for more the upcoming days and so on, so yeah. Well, um, yeah, thank you for the answers. I wish you luck and I wish you no more 9 a.m. games. I hope that you can get some games a little yeah, bit later. Too, so too. There's some, <laughs> there's some <laughs> berries. Do you have any questions for BZM? Yeah, I just, just one. I won't, I, won't, I won't keep you too long. After, after a long day, what do you do? What, what do you like to do with your time to like decompress and relax after a big day of Dota? Uh, well, I, everybody wants to. Like, not everybody in the team, but like everybody in general wants to go chill after uh, such games. But unfortunately, you have to improve after such a clown fiesta, or I don't know how to call it. But uh, you need to improve constantly, and um, there's definitely a lot to learn from today. Um, thankfully, you have to uh, tomorrow off, so. Maybe I can take it a little bit chill today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully you. Hopefully you can sleep in tomorrow as well. Get the get the rest you need and and come back you know, prepared for the for the upcoming game. So yeah, we we won't keep you too long, BZM. Thank you for joining us and congratulations on the the second victory. Good luck in your upcoming games. Thank you. Goodbye. Good awesome. Luck. Thank you, mate. Oh. Thank you. All right, there we go. Here from BZM and uh, wishing, of course, him and, and OG all the best as well. Does uh, that? That was a very stressful game. That was a very stressful yeah, game. Could, he you, had you a long day as him. well. Yeah, yeah. long yeah. day, and you could you can see that he's depleted. Better off just let 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 the man rest. Let him go recuperate because <laughs> it's um it's rough. It's rough having these tough games. I it's rough even even a game such as th that one that you lose. It leaves you depleted at the end. And I can feel yeah. I can feel that need to chill in him. You know, that just to take it off. Even this interview, I know uh, we that we the talent and the hosts and whatnot the analysts we enjoy picking their brains and asking them about stuff. It's our job after all. But uh, as a player, man, there's it's, it's just not not not. Let's just say it's not first on your list of the things that you like a lot. You know, it's like, can I just leave after the game and go stretch? That's that always yeah. feels better. I must say, I, I do very much appreciate like the emotions that he showed. I think a lot of people we don't particularly get that too often 
Um, especially Dota, uh, everyone knows that that plays this game. Dota is a very, very, very complicated game, probably one of the most complicated games. That's why we all come back to it. And to be able to play on a level like this, where you're playing from behind, you're already zero three. I know there's a lot of other stuff going on, unfortunately, behind the scenes as well. And there's just, it's difficult. It's difficult for the boys. The fact they're at least able to get a victory in the end. And yeah, it's just still, I know it's not the the best emotions because he's incredibly exhausted, but it's cool to see someone being kind of vulnerable in that way and still showcasing them and saying he's going to be happy to join us for the interview. Because I know we actually don't get too many interviews from BZM as well. So uh, very much appreciated for, for him to be able to join us for, for a couple of questions. And uh, like you said, at least they're going to have a, an off day tomorrow so they can prepare, rest a little bit and, and hopefully come back a bit better in their in their upcoming games. But with that being said, we are done for our third series. What do we got up next? Let me actually take a look real quick. I know we're going to have uh, two more uh, series at least on this stream. We've got Falcons, Falcons versus PSG Quest. That's I the first you. one. Sorry, my friend. Yes, that no, is the first fine. one. And then the one I can after have the second is one. Heroic versus G2. I, yeah, I no, can't you have can't. Have can't. I can't have <laughs> that's fine. So, yeah. <clears throat> that's why you get the big the, bucks. You're faster. Heroics versus G2 IG and Team Falcons versus PSG Quest. It's going to be a fun one. Like uh, Pretty good casters coming your way as well. Team Falcons versus PSG Quest. I, I mean, everyone wants to watch Falcons and how good they are. And Heroic versus G2 IG as well. Just a fun game because Heroic, they uh, demonstrated what they can do today in the morning. And let's see if they can repeat what they did versus OG uh, in the game versus G2 IG. Yes, let's see if they're going to be able to do that. First off, of course, real quick, there is a secondary stream going on as well, guys, for you to watch. I mean, that series is going to be Boom versus Aurora. So if you're wanting to follow, I mean, ex-Southeast Asian organization versus a Southeast Asian team, you guys will be able to do that. That's exactly the same kind of um, tag, just with the underscore B at the end of the Twitch channel. Of course, make sure you guys check out the Twitter as well to stay up to date with all the games going on. But this is our our third series done for the night. Next up, we're going to have another blockbuster. We've got PSG Quest up against the boys on Falcons. Let's see if Falcons are going to be able to have a solid debut and continue their recent success in every single tournament. We'll see you guys after a break.
What is up, everybody? Welcome back here to the Elite League. We've got two more series lined up. We've got the Mina qualifiers basically happening right now. It is Falcons versus PSG Quest about to begin. My name is Cryptic here with Z Quixotics. Uh, yeah, man, this should be a fun one. We are into the first day of round rob. We've already had some amazing games, and now we get to see the quote unquote best team in the world, right? Falcons have looked unstoppable basically compared to like, people are comparing them a lot to gaming gladiators of last year, right? Yeah, they, they've just looked really dominant in their tournaments. It has been a little bit since we've seen them. There's been a small patch. I don't really expect it to have massively changed the team. Uh, I still think we're going to see a lot of like uh, Mars, Razor Bands, that type of stuff. Uh, yeah. But should be should be pretty exciting. I think a lot of people are looking forward to see how Falcons is playing right now. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And uh, they are a very hard team to draft against. And I think that is what has been making them look so dang strong. Because you do kind of have to respect ban some of these, these heroes, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You've got you know snake king who uh very versatile on the support but you have just like have to ban mid mid, mid lane heroes like the razor like malreen they will just first pick his razor every game if you give it to him and you know it forces the drafts to be a little bit you know a little bit more difficult um and then a hero that we haven't seen a ton is the mars now whether or not they still want to pick that for for Amar, we'll have to find out. Because um, a lot of teams have kind of been ignoring it with some of the other heroes kind of rising and or falling in popularity. But either way, super excited for this series as we are into the draft here. We can kind of see, you know, what these teams are focusing at the moment. Yeah, not too surprising. Uh, maybe the Keeper of the Light ban, the most surprising in considering like the entire meta. But Chen... Yeah, you're not you're not letting that through, especially uh, for for Quest. They they've got a good experience playing Chen. Uh, you don't want to let that hero through. Timbersaw, Razor, gonna take those out. Dragonite, you know, uh, Faceless Void. That's a little bit uh, different. We don't see that too much. I wonder if that is suggesting they are, yeah, like just a targeted ban, but maybe also prepping for that potential Mars pick that has not been banned out yet here. Uh, Faces Void True. is one of those carries that can uh, just time walk off a lot of that burst damage, get out of the arena, things like that. Maybe You're Quest right, that, deciding that, that, if that they want to ban it right now. Seen it. The the first phase ban? Yeah, for Faces Void. Dude, there's so many five positions still left. We have the Disruptor Shadow Demon still in the pool, which we see get focused up a lot in these early drafts centaur is still available which a lot of teams still prefer as an opener not really something that you want to pick into falcons when the mars is on the table though so we'll have to see i'd imagine shadow demon mm -hmm. makes sense to me so is it just a mars first pick right away i don't think it would surprise anyone too much maybe dude I, I have to wonder. You could. Uh, Shadow Demon's a little bit difficult to play into as a Mars. Just because, you know, you go for the Spear Arena, you can just pretty easily get the save. It does just mean that the way you play for Spear Arena is you spear back into Arena Formation instead of, like, dropping the Arena and spearing them forward, right? Mm -hmm. So it can still be done. And if there's anyone who has enough experience playing it, it would be a Mar. He might be up there. He might definitely be up there. All right, first pick Pango. Why not? Hero is still kind of the king of mid lane in terms of consistency. Yeah, he's a good Pick hero Pango. and... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. go ahead. No, no, I interrupted you. I insist. <laughs> I love <laughs> calm delays. Um, so I would say if you're going to pick the Pango, the one here I would really focus on probably banning at this point if your PSG is would be that primal beast just because we've seen it look so dominant against the pangolier but mm -hmm. we'll have to see if that's on their mind oh uh, for sure i was thinking it's uh it's a great hero just in general malreen plays a very nice pango as well and then uh 
PSG Quest, they actually flex this hero a little bit more than other teams. So, of course, the mid Pango, but they're willing to play offlane Pango. Many other teams will sometimes do it. If they're kind of forced into it, you want to pick a different mid hero. But uh, they've done it a little bit more frequently on the side of Quest. So a little bit of a steal pick as well uh, for Falcons. Morris is still in the pool if they want to go back for it, but... You're right, Shadow Demon is annoying to play into. I'm, I know Amar is well-versed in it, though. He, is, he has played this hero into every single counter in the game if, if they still want to just go for it. True. Absolutely true. I would... Okay, so... It's like the more and more I look at the open heroes right now, it, it I really am starting to wonder, like, what their plan is um because mm -hmm. like with pango there are like some of just the hardcore counters things like bloodseeker and puck grimstroke okay so it's like maybe you just focus and and get like the really hard pangolier bound uh counters out so they do get rid of the bloodseeker psg quest you could still look for something like a grimstroke which we've seen uh south america actually have a lot of success with playing against pangoliers now whether or not mm -hmm. They want to go that route. It doesn't seem like an amazing support duo with the Shadow Demon, but could work. Yeah, especially depending what else you pair with it. They're going to go for the Marana right Classic. now. Uh, Snaking pretty much made this hero meta, I feel like. Yeah. So he, it, it did get nerfed at like five movement speed off since we last saw this, uh, since we last saw Falcon's play, but Marana still pretty much does everything she did before just just a little slower you know so uh i think she's still still solid pick for them pango is a little bit awkward as far as uh lining up the arrow ganks but you got other picks uh you even have that shadow demon you can kind of work with though if he's using it as a save sometimes the illusions will end up tanking the arrow uh but you can still try to play around that uh depending on the situation Yeah, I'm trying to think the last, like, the last time we, like, we, a lot of teams have went for the Marana, I think, early on in the Swiss stage, and then we haven't mm -hmm. seen it picked a ton since. There are just great combinations that you can pair with it, Shadow Demon obviously being one of them, but you already have a Pango mid, which is not a great arrow target. I think for Snake King, a lot of the times when he plays this hero, he does end up just kind of maxing Star Storm and... Yeah. He kind of rotates a little bit. We might not really see him play around the arrow, say, as much as some of the other kind of iterations of the Murano we've seen. Either way, I think the hero usually looks pretty good on the side of Team Falcons. Yeah, for sure. We usually see more, or I won't say usually, but the games we've watched happen to be like position four Murana, and you're a bit more likely to max out arrow in those situations since you can uh, uh, get a little bit more out of it since you're more likely to roam compared to position five Marana, which like sticks in the lane longer. That's why the Q is better. We see Naga picked up here. So that's pretty cool with the Shadow Demon. You're gonna get tons of illusions this game. The illusions also make it hard to land arrow. And it's also a bit of a, uh, you're stealing it from Falcons because Naga plus Marana, she's one of the carries that can set up arrow and Skeeter plays a mean Naga Siren. So you're gonna steal that away here. It's interesting to see it this early in the draft. I know it's a TA2000, like, massive comfort pick, but there are a lot of heroes still in the pool that you can go for. Pr primarily, like, even just from the offlane are, you know, things like Lashrak. You have uh, Primal Beast still available. Pudge is still in the pool if they want to go one position Pudge. Ooh, that would be a fun. Ton into the Naga Siren. So they have options on Falcons, and I'm curious which one they want to go for. Um... Pango's also not really that bad against the illusions. Like, yes, you burn a little bit less damage, but they, uh, or you burn a little bit less mana, but generally with the Aghanim Scepter, you're doing more damage uh, than before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what, like a hundred and, I don't remember, a good amount of damage, like over a hundred extra damage. Uh, I think it was think, uh... bonus damage per like combo. No, I think it's 70, like 70 extra damage per swashbuckle thing. Or like yeah, when you're in the Agonims. Crash, yeah, yeah, yeah. That it adds sense. up against these illusions. They're gonna go for the Doom though, uh, and then pair that with the Lion. So Lion, Huge the lion 
the shard will help kill off all these illusions. Uh, we've been seeing some teams move away from the lion. He did get nerfed, but I, I feel like he still does what he needs to do, especially when you know you're picking him into an illusion hero like Naga. Uh, so you know that shard build is still pretty value there. And then the doom pick for the offlane is uh, something we haven't seen as much since it's dropped, but it does look good when uh, teams pick it. I think you just need a more specific game before you can just like first pick doom every time you need to see a little bit more and this time he sees the enchantress position five likely to try to pressure him with some creeps and then he's just going to eat the creeps i like it i think the this adaptation of the draft for going into doom lion is just really strong i think the naga is going to have a, a much more difficult game especially once the shard comes out we see the Kunkka, and that results in a Lifestealer ban immediately. One of the few carries that can play into Naga Siren very easily, as well as the Kunkka, which you're probably like, but why would it? Why would you want to play Lifestealer into a Illusion hero? Well, he gets way more Lifesteal back from Illusions. Uh, you can never kill this guy as a, like a, an Illusion-based hero. As soon as the Open Wounds comes out as well, you can have like a Mjolnir. He'll just stand his ground in, in, indefinitely. So I like that ban. Makes sense. Yeah, he also we'll has teammates to help him. For. Yeah, he, he also has teammates to help him find the real hero, and then he can just focus down that real Naga. Though into Shadow Demon would have been tough, but looks like Quest still does not want to deal with that. Uh, we saw Skeeter play a lot of Sven the last time Falcons was playing. That was about a month ago. It wouldn't be too bad into like the Naga, but... The Shadow Demon really does kind of make your life miserable. But I think they've like they've done it in the past anyways. So curious if we're gonna see that band out. I will say Okay, so do get rid of the Primal Beast. Interesting. So Generally, just a strong hero of the patch. I'm not surprised. This guy is... Kind, like, no matter what his build, he seems to have impact, whether that be just, like, first item BKB or Blade Mill, and then you greet out for a BKB later. But, yeah, I think that hero definitely gets the respect it needs. Ban out the Alchemist. That could have been cool. He would hit a much faster timing than the Naga Siren. Might, uh... Might be able to just put yourself in a winning position before your before quest is like really ready to play the game. I think they're looking for another early hero. You got to make space for the Naga Siren with the four of your heroes. Enchantress, pretty early on uh, active hero. Kunkka, he can be two. He still has some flex potential, but you're gonna have to reveal it here. I feel like it's got it. Okay, so they're actually gonna pick a new mid lane. Interesting. So I was like, you could technically move Kunkka. I thought they might just go for something like a Centaur to get people away from Doom and you know Rolling Thunder, but instead they pick up a Zeus, a heavy damage mid laner. Also blocks a couple picks that you might want to go for in the safe lane, primarily being you know things like Terror Blade. But Terror Blade's not a traditional like good counter to Naga Sirens, so I'm curious what they're thinking here. The actual initiation from Quest will be a little awkward because uh, X Mark, there's like counterplay around to that. Disruption, it's it can be good setup, but it can be also like kind of awkward, right? Sleep, all that. So if they need to initiate, it might be weird. But in terms of delaying for the Naga to come online, they're really good here. Like Arc Lightning, X Mark, Walk Up, Tidebringer, you know, spam out these illusions, all of that. So. I'm, I, I find it a little interesting with the Enchantress, but I wonder if they're planning to go late. Like, Enchantress will help you get a really good start in the lane. You're sort of set up to maybe make some early plays with the Enchantress, but if you don't, it's kind of okay. She does scale pretty well if the game goes late. Uh, and then in the late game, I mean, you would have Naga Siren, Zeus. Uh, they're really good for those late game scenarios. And, I mean, so are, so are these others. So... See, I'm going to see if Falcons wants to try to match that late game potential or just go much earlier. I, I think with the Sven, they're planning to go faster. Yeah, and this was something you talked about early on. Like, we've seen Skitter play a lot of Sven recently, and I think they are looking at this as a, 
we don't really have a lot of great options. Your carry needs to be able to go in with your team. And with the Aghanim Scepter or, or the Blink, whichever he decides to go for, both are quite good. He's good at uh, dealing with the Enchantress. I was like looking at all these different potential carry picks. It's like the only thing that's really left in the pool that I think they might have been able to go for would have been Luna. Uh, she is mm -hmm. decent at dealing with uh you know naga siren but you'd be playing it into a shadow demon which you don't want to do same with the medusa so yeah i think sven's probably the the, the right pick i like it yeah i think he's also got um got some good teammates to do some stacking for him uh looks like actually it's going to be marana four instead of the the lion uh we oh, okay. do sometimes see that i'm Hmm. Thinking about it, I feel like it has to do with the lanes. They must be aiming for something. Maybe expecting the Enchantress to be position 5. I mean, which she is. But like with that in mind, Arrow might be better up there to instantly kill the creeps. And then Lion in the bottom lane will still be able... Like, I mean, he's perfectly fine position 5. He'll be able to help Sven out and then roam around. And then maybe the Shadow Demon down there, like they try to make a play around Disruption with Mana Drain, you can like instantly kill one of the Illusions, get a little bit of money for you. Uh, I think it's probably more the Marana into the Enchantress than the Lion into Shadow Demon, but that's cool. That's a cool switch. We'll see how it works out for them. Uh, it might also free up Crit. Well, actually, I was going to say Marana's faster, but I guess, I guess she's not anymore. <laughs> she's usually a little in the past faster to go like do multi stacks for Sven uh to oh maybe she'll still buy boots early and then she'll be a little faster <laughs> after her nerfs but yeah we'll see if she makes her way to that triangle man as you like to put it you know sagan uh getting old uh in his, like 12 in his years age, you know, not yeah quite as fast that he used to be tired all right everyone welcome in it is falcons versus psg quest here in this uh round robin group stage date number one Excited to see both of these teams as we haven't uh, had a chance to see Falcons. Obviously, PSG Quest, we've seen uh, quite a bit of lately uh, as they uh, played through the Swiss stage. But now they've got a pretty big opponent going up against them. The kind of gatekeepers of the MENA region, I think a lot of people like to refer to. Yeah, and they've been... Um, these two teams are pretty familiar with each other. Not only do they play each other in the region quite a lot, but Amar played with Quest for a little bit. Uh, you guys didn't get to see it, but there was a ton of friendly friendly chat in the lobby while go. people were waiting. You saw all the tips come out at the very start. So it'll be cool to see. Sometimes you uh, you see some unusual plays, which like, wow, this is so weird. But it's the team's like next level, next level mind gaming. Like, I know, he knows, I know. You know, and so people do some like crazy stuff. I, I'm, I hope we get to see some of that because it usually makes the games pretty fun. Agreed, agreed. Great scouting already just from these Naga Siren Illusions, trying to give some extra info. Snake King will be able to get the rune, so three actually going the way of Falcons and Omar. Not able to get close enough for that disruption, so into lanes we go. Pango versus Zeus mid. Not a, a matchup we see all that often. This should just be two heroes drawing farm, I imagine. And then maybe if Pango gets that level six first, we could see him go for a kill. Yeah, I think it's much easier for Pango to eventually kill Zeus than the other way around. But Zeus, with help, like if you have any kind of rotation, you could do it. This game, a little tough in terms of the like Shadow Demon Enchantress. Killing the Pango might be tough, but you could force him out and pressure that tower with, for example, something we see five and a half minute rotation from Enchantress with a hard camp creep. Uh, you just like get that pressure in. Maybe you take the tower, maybe not. You, you get the rune. Uh, that might be something we see, but I would be surprised if Zeus manages to actually kill Pango on his own. You say that, and he's actually getting a lot of damage in the mid lane. That being said, Zeus CSing perfectly as expected. Not really a lot you can do about that. Chain Lightning, or Arc Lightning. Ooh, very good. Chain Lightning also good. Maybe we'll see that. Maybe Doom will get that later on. Or Enchantress. Dude. We were casting a game where Doom got the Heartbeat Creep, and it, he had like a coddle in his lane, I think. I don't remember. But the game just ended. 
<laughs> yeah, I forget. I forget what that matchup was, but chain lightning is a insane assassin. spell. That's all I remember. Yeah, yeah, she was miserable. Just chain lightning down. Well, we could see it here. Well, not yet. Small decent. camps blocked. Actually, a lot of a lot of camps blocked by falcons to start off. Kind of predicting some stacks coming out. Three mercy. cores I can farm stacks. Snake King pretty low in the bottom lane. Looks like he's going to fall. First, I think he got he was super deep. Yeah, he got caught by disruption and torrent. I'm not sure why he walked so far up. I missed why he was there. Unfortunately, you don't have three sets of eyes to watch all the lanes. What can you do? Actually impossible. <laughs> okay, so imagining this game going forward, I think Falcons will try to invest in this Sven get the stacks going for him. Uh, Skeeter should be okay on his own once he gets a couple levels. Sven, like this is the strength of Sven. He's so tanky early on and he's very hard to kill. So you get him a, a good start and then you can start roaming around with the, the lion. You can go get some like arrow ganks with Marana or you can just do double stacks throughout the jungle. Let Sven hit a really strong timing and then all you need is like roll from Pango who I'm sure will get like defusal Maybe an Ags this game. Maybe Blink if he wants to focus more on initiation. Uh, I'm sure Amar. Let's see, he's got Veil queued up. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Blink from him later uh, to get the, the Blink Dooms on. Mm. Zeus or Kanka would be pretty good Doom targets at the, the start of the game. Uh, but with that, like I think you just play off the timing of the Sven. Yeah, likely. One of the things that we see a lot with the Sven hero is the reason it was picked so much in this last patch is the fact that it can join so easily early on, mm -hmm. right? He's a strength hero, so he's going to have a lot of HP. He's not at risk of like walking to a fight with 900 health and getting two shot by a mid hero or something, you know? So it, it makes it a lot better uh, being able to contribute, you know, early on with the god strength and all that extra HP you get from Cleave is fantastic. I still cannot believe that ability gives strength. That still blows my mind. I'm a little conflicted on it. I feel like abilities that just give raw stats is not a good design. I don't know if it's like not good design or I just feel like I don't know, it just feels strange, I guess. It feels like you're forced to take those abilities. Yeah. Because stats are so right good in the early game, so it's like insane value. Do you remember like Centaur's old ability that was just like, here's 18 strength, good luck, buddy. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> that was like Centaur's old ultimate. You never had step B, it was just like, you got a lot of health. We got Chain Lightning in the top lane. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. Oh, but this one's on Ducalis, okay. Yeah, and unfortunately Eddie Doom arrow. already has his uh, Helm of the Iron Will, so <laughs> I, it won't be the same as the uh, the level one immediate chain lightning spam. Yeah, it's also an Enchantress, right? He gets as much value out of it as he can right before it expires, which is great stuff. Mid lane is dead even, exactly as expected, right? Both these heroes just kind of farming that being said, Malreen is a little bit low on resources. He's got also just a f completely full courier and inventory. So, he's uh, juggling like 13 items right now. He needs to get his Tango in, eat an Iron Branch, and then he can get his uh, stuff. Interestingly, Malreen is going straight for Diffusal. We usually see a lot of Arcane Boots first, but... Obviously, going straight for the Diffusal will give you the most playmaking potential and early damage. And perhaps they're planning to go with the Lion, who would help then solve your mana issues. Uh, so we might be seeing them start making plays a lot faster than we expected. It's also really good against Zeus to get that Diffusal up as fast as possible, right? Because Heavenly Jump is a great ability. But if you're able to hit him with the Inhibit first, then you might be able to just walk him down even 
after the heavenly jump will give you some kill right early on uh, at least into the zeus lane which you may not have we're gonna see the rotation for the six minute rune great stomp from Paulus, and that will be a fusion rune picked up there but he's gonna get bonked up onto the high ground and malreen's first rolling thunder not looking super hot at the moment trying to finish off the enchantress but they have decided to walk away there's too many heroes here good bait from this enchantress yeah, really nice positioning to uh, not be killed there because she is low health enough that I, I think he could actually pick up that kill. Um, but yeah, first first roll, not really not really getting very much. They will have to be careful of Thunder God's Wrath. Uh, maybe the bottom lane the most. I don't think top like Doom's pretty tanky. I, I don't. Uh, maybe maybe the maybe the Marana. He just finished Veil. They might go for Naga here. They're gonna try and just chain stun him down with a ton of damage. Going for the split now, but these two and three points in the scorched earth doing work. TA 2000 almost gets away. So far, a two for one trade in favor of Quest is new. DPing in to help clean them up. Nice job from the Zeus. I thought Doom was pretty tanky, but I guess under the tower, not so tanky anymore. I, I mean, I guess you killed Naga, so it's like, that was what you came for from the rotation from Lion and Sven is fine, is like we attack. talked about, but losing all three is definitely a, a costly price. You were not expecting it to go that way. I think Quest will be pretty happy with that. Oh, absolutely. Zeus is the biggest Dyer's benefactor there, and I mean, Nagas Iron's back in the lane. She is like 800 or more gold in front of this Sven right now. She's having a great time. Sven is really struggling in this bottom lane, actually. A little bit surprised, but Snake King's gonna get to stacking. Very late tip from Amar. TA2000 getting a chuckle out of it. All right. This power rune does go to Malreen, and it will be an arcane. That's a uh, much better than the illusion rune. And if Luke gets that on the Zeus, you would have been uh, pretty scared. It would help Zeus farm up these stacks that they've been preparing. And certainly could play a little aggressive around that. I would actually, if they can scout out these stacks, they definitely have the heroes to steal the stacks. Sven and Pango can both do it. Pango going to choose to rotate top, instant smoke with the Snake King. They're going to look for the Dyer's Naga Siren again. We were saying... He is level 6 if he wants to go for it. Swashbuckle in, Malreen into the Rolling Thunder immediately. Will he find him? Just barely missing on the initial stuff, but the follow-up from Snake King is there. Kunkka coming through as well, but the damage is more than enough. And now the Doom comes out, hits Malik, but he does get the boat off in time. That rump to keep him quite tanky and a Thunder God's Wrath to finish the job. A one-for-one -one trade once again. A This time, I think you're happier with that. You do get the Naga kill first. And we're re really looking at like Sven versus Naga as the game goes. Uh, both teams looking to make a lot of space for the carries this time. And that's why all these ganks are aimed at the Naga to slow her down while Sven, he got kicked out of his lane, but he's just farming camps everywhere. And he has, he's actually trying to steal camps in uh, the enemy's triangle. He gets found, backs out, but like he's not being stopped. Uh, so right now his game is going uh, well it should have been better but I, naga getting some of those like assists is keeping her gold up even Radiant's though she's died twice is under attack. yeah Radiant's i will say zeus is enormous it is almost to the 10 minute mark he's gonna get 5200 net worth with a full phylactery done and Radiant's this guy is gonna start doing some serious attack. damage unlucky on the rune there for him crit Got those leaps available, it's gonna be fine. So Malreen grabs an invis. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I mean, it's still Radiant's a pretty even game. That slight gold advantage for Quest now as they grab the bottom tower. Helped by the Alpha Wolf from the Enchantress. That was a very nice find in the jungle. I mean, Kunkka is doing great as well. I feel like I missed something. I don't understand how Sven has this many last hits, and he's not died or anything. I'm kind of surprised his net worth is so low. Did he like lose an item or something? What happened? Wait, 
actually. What the heck is 94 CS? 98 CS? I know some of those might be on like items. small camps creeps and stuff, but I'm I don't know, I thought I thought his net worth should be higher. I don't feel like he's been particularly bothered in that lane. Dude, what if he did like drop an item somewhere by mistake? Didn't realize. That would it. be devastating. Well, he is clearing up some stacks now. He's jumping up in the net worth. Yeah, that'll help. Full set of ancients and hard camp that does wonders. TA2000 working towards that Manta style. She will get eventually. Nagasari, not a great hero at clearing the ancients. They'll like them bring the Zeus and Kunkka for those. As Crit's trying to get some wards here in the enemy triangle, scout out what's going on. I'm wondering what Snake King's gonna do on his build. If he is gonna go for the early shard, or if he's gonna go for, say, you know, the blink dagger. Uh, against the Nagas Iron, I, I could understand going for the shard first, just because it pays for itself back pretty quickly. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing it. <laughs> if you have the pango to initiate, so you're not required to get uh, an immediate blink on the the lion. There's five sets of ancients being cleared up right now by this one. Good, just shadow he... demon things. You know, love that. <laughs> the uh, shadow poison, pretty useful for all this stuff. I think they wanted to make a play there on Falcons. They smoked up and Marana ulted, but I think they just didn't quite have the vision and didn't feel confident going anywhere. Don't know if this uh, early defuse has paid off for itself quite yet. I think probably hoping to get a little bit more out of it, but he's almost done with his arcane boot, so the build is pretty much back to where it is usually anyways. Yeah, Sven getting the space he needed there to clear up some massive stacks. Not only did he get a ton of gold, but he's also super high level now so skitter's game is completely recovered after what looked like a kind of rough start for him it's one of the reasons we see him go for this you know hero all the time they're just very comfortable on it they're gonna find snaking here on the bottom side the hex does come out with the disruption in from omar and it should only be a matter of time before the lion falls doing his best but yeah <laughs> not that he can really do about that gets 20 gold from the illusion really quick <laughs> What was the boat committed for the position 5? So I guess you won't feel too bad about it. But I think you take any kill you get right now on quest because you are just looking to delay the game. Yes. Oh, Wait for that arrow to get a strong connect. timing. Okay. And Malreen, like goes onto the high ground there, finds the Enchantress, and is like, well, dang, I can't do anything to you. <laughs> yeah, she's got the uh, Siege of Serenity. 150 extra health for a hero like Enchantress. Not an easy kill. And just the casual circlet fluffy hat wand. Like the hero, it's like one of the things that we see every enchanted player do is they fit in HP efficient items for every one of their six slots basically. Like whatever mm -hmm. they can do. If they have a slot open, it's gonna be an HP item. And it works. Both teams just kind of farming, but at the moment, going well for them. Gold lead staying about the same. Mid lane towers have pretty much been untouched. They would love to get this top tower, and I imagine Amar would like to get go for it soon, but New making his rotation to the top side. Grit will find that hand. And, well, does manage to leap away. Probably the best hero, I guess, that could have walked into the Zeus. No Thunder God's Wrath anymore. And he gets out. Okay, saved by uh, middle tower is full wand. Also Even still has a mech righteous. available and will pop the Moonlight Shadow. So they're going to go ahead and get active themselves instead. And they really want to play that works out. I feel like all their early rotations so far on Falcon, they got killed on the Naga, but like they, they paid a pretty big price for all of them. So trying to finally find one winning fight, but Quest seems to be reading it. They've, they've dodged a lot of these early smoke ganks and uh, Rana ults. T2000 is doing such good scouting with the illusions. Like, he throws them into the jungle where he's like expecting a wraparound and then like scouts them a second time on the resummon. They lose the tower, so a nice rotation from Skitter and good usage of the god strength, but not dying on the Naga Siren or the Zeus is pretty huge for this. Uh, well, Blink Dagger's on Amar now. 
He's the one who's gonna get caught. Does catch him on the demonic purge. Dyer's middle tower. Like gets is the under blink attack. to safety. So that's a pretty big cooldown actually to come through. Fairly slow start for what I Yeah, I thought Falcons would be uh looking for those early plays and i guess they are so i i guess the fact that it feels like a slow start is a good play from quest absolutely i mean they're getting kind of everything they want out of the map like noob on the zeus is going to be really scary if he continues to just kind of get farm like this and be uncontested he's going to eventually get uh the spicy fingers as i like to refer to it and a manta style and all these other things so yeah Blink Dagger now picked Radiant's up on Malarine as well. Attack. So the, this combined with the Doom Blink, this is really your best chance at finding a hero like Zeus. Yeah, it looks like he had the Shivas queued up originally, but maybe also wants to be part of trying to find some initiations. Now with the Blink. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Trying to see what uh, quest game. is waiting for. Yeah. Well, they did just finish the Aghanims on Kunkka, so he's got Phase, Blade Mail, Ags, and like two Bracers, so Jeez, he's pretty strong right now. Scanning. All right, uh, Okay, okay. Yeah, Shard done on Zeus, so maybe we're going to see them group up. But I don't think they have to force anything. Like, if you can find a fight, it's kind of nice, but they don't have to... I don't think they're feeling desperate at all. So if things yeah. look... If things look uh, sketchy... They'll just chill and back off. Looks like they want to try to find the Sven. They're in a decent spot to break the smoke, and it will. They'll see the Pinecone. Malreen knows they're here somewhere, goes for the Rolling Thunder, and instead will go straight for Noob on the backside. The arrow does connect. Can they bring him down? Omar in range for the disruption. Keeps him alive. The boat buffs, though. It's not going to hit him. Instead, they just collapse onto Skinner on the backside. He has to pop the BKB, but the Blade Mill is just returning so much damage. Doom comes out from Amar, trying to bring down Noob. They get the kill, a one-for-one -one trade. As all 10 heroes clash in this mid lane, and it costs you a mid for a carry. I can't believe all the heroes are there and only only one person dies from each team, actually. This is, uh... I mean, I feel like the Naga Siren just showed up at the very end being like, you might want to leave, you know? Like, just in case, like, I will start killing people, you know? He's got his Orchid done. TA2000 is very scary. That's a win for Quest, I think, even though it's one for one. Naga living while Sven dies. Uh, Naga just straight back to farming. And it's aggressive farming, right? They're, they're on the half of uh, Falcon. So they're stealing farm in this time. And she is working on her heart. Already has the Manta Orchid. Yeah. I mean, they get the... The opening's perfect on him, Sven. Mid lane, we're gonna see them go for another attempt here on the Snake King. He's not gonna have a good time here. Does get cleaved down by the Kunkka, and as expected, he does go for the Shard early, right? It is it is a pretty damn good item against the Naga Siren. Does he have four points manager? He does, okay. Radiance middle tower has fallen. So, tier one tower finally falling in the mid lane, going for quest as they claim another kill. Their momentum, they can start building. They have a good deep ward placed here, which this one's a little bit interesting. Scouting some, uh, little, like some of the ramp. Yeah, these players are good enough. Uh, they'll catch a glimpse of people going through, and that's that's all they need. They they just need to know roughly where people are going. Dude. That is such a sick play from TA2000. He actually sends two of his illusions into the enemy triangle and blocks both camps. And then immediately resummons after the minute mark to start clearing his own triangle. Skitter walks in and is just like, well, that's cool. <laughs> There's no creeps here. <laughs> sick. You're going to find Enchantress. Does ha did have a shield rune. And eventually, they should be able to bring her down. He is positioned in a pretty good spot, though. So we'll have to see. It's gonna be well, wait. Okay, I, they are not gonna be able to bring her down. I don't know what I was talking about. Instead, Omar walks right into an arrow, snaking. Throw the finger. You gotta get a kill here. Okay, he's not gonna do it. 
They bring all five Zeus heroes for this though, and they're looking for more. Zeus would be an amazing grab if Amar can get the Doom. But they know. And they've got a sentry. Scouting out this whole rotation in. Skinner will clean up the mid tier one tower. They're continuing to look for more crit. Let's get a glimpse of these heroes, but they will not find anybody else. Dude, for, for a 21 minute game, a score four to eight, this is definitely a different pace from what we've been seeing oh through some goodness. of the Swiss stage. And not for lack of trying though. Falcons have yeah. definitely been smoking up, using Ron ult. They keep trying to find the fights, uh, but Quest is just playing very patiently. And the heart. Where are we at? She has the Reaver. She's getting close. Looking for Doom. Disruption out from Omar. Does he have a blink? It is not. All right, very nicely done. And yeah, not much he can really do about this. Completely locked down, no BKB at the ready. He's closing in on it, but once he has BKB, he'll uh, you know, be able to potentially go for that BKB TP. Still not easy though this game, right? You could always pick up an Agonim Scepter on the Naga Siren, and Kunkka's X is always annoying. Kunkka going for a pretty normal build we see nowadays. The Agonim's into Bloodstone. It's going to provide a lot of utility in these fights, which, I mean, there is Roll, there is Sven BKB, but you don't always have those. And if at any moment, all right, hold that thought. We got a fight breaking out here. Potentially, if they can chain stun down, this Kunkka would be huge to prevent that boat from coming out. But the Song of the Siren from TA2000 will give him the reset. There's the boat. It's going to connect, but Skitter gets the BKB off. Trying to focus up on the Nagasite. He takes a full arrow from Crit. A disruption buys him a glimmer of a moment. But yeah, what a huge arrow from Crit. Ball is trying to get away here at the moment. Skitter does have a stun, but arrow to follow does connect. They got them. Finally taking down that pesky enchantress. They finally find the fight they want this whole time too. I thought that was that was looking scary. That song saving Kunkka to get the the ghost ship and the torrent off, but fortunately BKB pops instantly. It's really hard to get that timing perfect of canceling the song into like a chain stun and that arrow on the naga letting sven just kill her naga never feels comfortable to just stand and fight you see in that replay she just loses so much health that she just has to run the entire time and there's too much control so they find the real naga and then just finish her off yeah doom going on the backside too he was looking for the zeus on the doom ends up only getting the kunkka but still it's not a it's not a bad target to just remove from the fight <laughs> So, yeah, that was uh, very good from Falcons. Is suddenly they are 5,000 gold ahead. Going into that fight, it was a dead even game. Only a difference of about 400 gold. So, that is a big win for them. See what they can transition this into. Now, Reed is now only, I think, 200 gold from his Aghanim Scepter on this Pangolier. Yeah, they're going to be pretty strong. That Aghanim's on the Pango. Sven finished his Ag his Aghanims and just got a new uh, Ogre Axe to refinish that Echo Saber. So they're going to be very strong. They can do Roche, but I think you need to find a kill or two before you can because Song, Zeus, Kanka spells, all of those are really strong around Roche if uh, Quest is ready to contest. They see everything right now. They might know this is the real TA2000. They're going to go for the Rolling Thunder. Does he connect in time? The blink on the backside gets on top of TA2000. The roll up. Trying to just continue to chain stun him down. Amar on the backside finds Omar. They get him. A quick kill onto the Shadow Demon. And in comes Skitter with that Aghanim Scepter reveal. The BKP, the Doom for safe measure. They get him. Demonic Purge is out. Naga Siren not in this fight. We'll see if they can actually break down the Sven. And it looks like absolutely that 35% damage amp from Shadow Demon just crushes him. And now they're going back in once more, trying to just bring down this Enchantress from Amar with a great leap. Crit comes in with a nice Star Storm as well. BKB out from Amar, trying to chase down the Zeus. Can't stay on top of them. They're just slowly whittling through Ducalis here on this Enchantress. And Arrow connects again for a finger of death. That will finish the job. A 
long engagement. Still, Falcons managing to come out ahead. Get a dieback, actually, on the Shadow Demon. Yeah, so in the end, uh, essentially a four for one. And Sven did die, but he got the kill on the Naga first. So I don't think he'll mind too much. And then all the other kills you clean up. Plus, you're now just farming on the enemy's half of the map. So pretty big economic win. I say, it's still only 6k, actually. I guess that's the Naga Siren effect, being able to farm so efficiently on uh, throughout the entire map. And the Doom looks like a little silly at the end of the fight. You're like, alright, this Naga Siren has 5 HP, basically, and is getting killed. But it was a buyback on the Shadow Demon, and if he gets the disruption, it might be enough to get away. So I actually like the commitment there from Lamar. Just, just securing that kill is absolutely worth it. Yeah, and they want to get out as fast as they can because that was pretty deep. They're like fighting under the tier yeah. three while the tier twos are still up. So you want to just clean up the kill and try to get out, which uh, you see in the end, they still couldn't get out fast enough thanks to X marks. They currently don't have any saves for that. I wonder if we'll see like a Wind Waker later on. Uh, maybe from Crit. He's working on a pipe right now, almost there. Ring of Tarrasque, pretty expensive. But after that, maybe, maybe Wind Waker, and then you can save yourself from some of these X plays. Dude, as soon as Skitter's BKB was gone and he got hit with the Disseminate, that Zeus melted him. Uh, like, between Thunderbolt, Arc Lightning, and Thunder God's Wrath, he just died so quickly. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah, the damage amp is, uh... It's pretty good. Part of the reason Shadow Demon is so strong, and part of the reason we see some heroes exploring Shadow yes. Shaman. Not every team likes it, and obviously not in this game, but he's got damage amp on that hex as well. Catches you off guard because you get a feel for like how tanky you think you are, and suddenly your math is off by like 35%. <laughs> Radiant yeah. are scanning. Quite good. Smoke up from Falcons here as they just finish up the tormentor. Malik looking to scout the demon. He gets the amplified damage and a clean escape while popping the smoke. Good moves. It's such a value movement. <laughs> it's so many, so many wins in one play right there. Uh, of all the runes to get, right? He steals an Amplify damage right away from a Sven. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, you could have maybe just forced Roche Radiant's with that on the Sven. Is under attack. Kunkka backtracked, by the way, for Radiant a BKB before the Bloodstone. Fortified. I think that makes sense. He's, uh, I think he's recognized how much crowd control he brings and it's important for him to get off, but there's a lot of stuns, especially chain stun potential, so. The BKB making sure he gets his spells off in the fight. They're running up here trying to contest this Roche, but it is dropping fast. They are very aware. They missed this yep. ward by a single pixel, and they are waiting for their opportunity, but the wraparound will it connect. Snake King, he's going to get scouted first. Hit with the Orc, and the Guardian Green's buying him a moment of space. In comes Skitter trying to clean up these illusions, and with that, Snake King's actually going to live. Now looking for this Kunkka, but the Enchantress isolated off, so Dupalis... Well, he's still managing to survive as well. Meanwhile, Amar is taking his own fight, just gets the Doom onto the Zeus. He's managed to bring him down. Now, onto the Shadow Demon we go. Pangolier doing some work to buy back from Snake King to be able to mana train up TA2000. He gets the song off in time into the Shadow Blade. He's going to run. Arrow not likely to connect. He should be out. No blink on Sven. Otherwise, maybe he BKBs there because he got out of the song BKB blinking to there and finish off that kill. But he's going for the Daedalus. Pretty Jay, understandable. He's got Shiva's blink. Amar is not done. Do they have detection? They do not. If that swashbuckle hit legitimately, he would have had no mana to cast. It would have. It would have been enough. It would have been short by like 15. Very close. If Quest, I mean, you obviously don't know, so that's why Quest wraps around the Roche, and it, it would have potentially led to a good fight, but just a few seconds too late, and so they're able to take that fight with the Aegis. Uh, good find from Amar, too, just jumping straight to the Zeus, taking him out of the fight, because Zeus does a lot of damage if he's actually doing anything, but once that Doom hits, uh, he's just forced to run, and Sven just goes target to target, cleaning things up. Kunkka cast all his spells, but just didn't matter at that point because no one was there to do the damage yeah dude where the hell did crit find all this money did he just, he just 
there's just a pot of gold on the ground somewhere? Like, what is this? He has dr he has full pipe, full guardian griefs. And he has a cloak uh, of flames. Just He's so tanky. <laughs> yeah, he actually is so tanky. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, Aaron the Creeps. He's a uh, 1 1 and 11. 92 last hits. Crit's a good, uh, good force support. Finds his money. Dyer's top tower is under right. attack. Radiance middle that smoke tower popped. Is under attack. Uh, they're gonna guess. They're like, someone's down here. Ducalis is hiding in the trees. Malreen. Oh, come Radiance on. Oh, come, the auto pathing is, is messing with him. Oh, he's not gonna guess. Instead, we'll just go clean up the wave. That is some high level Radiance AFK sit behind a tree right there. <laughs> Patience. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if he moved at all, he would have been found. Now he knows to step out. You get to start farming. Look at that. So I'm going to get myself a little mine steel. I'm going to go scout with this, see where they are. They might see the courier going back and then realize, like, oh, it was the enchantress somewhere in there. Is under attack. Skitter picks up a nemesis curse, almost Dyer's has his satanic BKB backpack, gets the courier Dyer's as well. So, a 10,000 gold lead here for the side of Falcons. The thing is, is you have a Doom scaling late game, has his Octary now fully completed. It just gets more difficult, and yeah, we'll see it right here. He doesn't mind just throwing a Doom onto a support. There's no reason not to. The cooldown now down to 80 or 90 seconds. has been killed. Radiance top yeah, tower it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty good spot to be in. And we were talking about quest maybe more comfortable in the late game, but this is a bit Radiance of the weakness of picking the, the Naga relatively early like they did in that Sven is a natural counter, so it's not the worst late game matchup. And they were able to pick up a lion for the, the mana drain break on illusion. So even though Naga is top of net worth, you can instantly kill off a good chunk of her illusions, which really hurts her her damage output, so it's it's not the scariest late game Naga game we've ever seen. Still potential, but it's not the worst. Dude, Snake King's build is actually so sick. He just got Solar Crest, a Defiant Shell, because he needs so much armor to play into this matchups. Uh, right, like he just needs armor to just stand his ground with Mana Drain, and he's gonna actually find the real Naga Siren in Amar. He wishes he had his Doom right now, about 20 seconds on cooldown. He's gonna be able to try and pop the Song of the Siren, but Amar will continue to chase him down. He's got a gem, dude. You are not escaping this Infernal Blade spam. It's just way too much. Swash Buckle off the mark. The the net? Does it work? They get a vision of them, though. He's headed to the left. Whoa, holy... Dude, Amar no passes the gem. Oh, oh my god. god. Wait, what happened? That is insane. Amar did not have Blink, and they were like, Naga's gonna outrun me. Pango cleared a slot in his inventory in the roll, and Amar handed him the gem to continue the chase. You're going to see it right cool. here. Because otherwise, Naga gets out because they have no true sight, right? He realizes, like, I'm never going to catch up, turns around, passes it off. That is so sick. Yeah, I, so, I mean, those are like the small little plays that can make a big difference. It's like, I think it, they may have been able to find her, like, either way, but if if she doesn't go for the TP and, like, retreats further into the trees, the Pango definitely would have been the only one to continue the chase. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And that's why this team is the, uh, they got the highest MMR leaderboard average, right? They're, like, all in the top. I think all, definitely top 50. I swear they were all top 10 for a moment. Dude. It wouldn't I, I may be misremembering. Yeah, but they're they're all highly skilled players. It's such like a quick cost moment too, where you're like, hey, take gem. And he just like knows <laughs> instinctively. Yeah, like, instantly. Yeah, let me move my items one second. <laughs> like, come on, bro. No big deal. Yeah, I mean, you sometimes see that with like cheese because you can't use cheese on allies. Uh, teams are a little more prepped for that. But, uh, all right, while we're, while we're all hype about gem passing, Snake can get caught out up here, killed off. 75 seconds on this death because he actually bought back on that last Aegis fight. So they'll have to be a little careful without him. Mm -hmm. You don't want to Absolutely. throw away this lead. Radiant 12k is pretty stand. good, but uh, not Dyer's quite enough to feel like, oh, easy game from here, right? So it's going to be a big part of your fight. He really is. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't want to give that one up. And they will kind of back away from this push in the bottom side. 
As Amar was hoping to find maybe the Enchantress, but she's already Dyer's TP'd to safety. Kunkka and Shadow Demon are smoked up on the north side. Luckily for them, because they are just walking through a ward. Amar is just hunting. He's like, there's gotta be someone down here. It's just itching to press the dude button. Such a low cooldown, right? But it looks like, uh, looks like we're just gonna be waiting for the next Roche now. Potential spawn here in about 40 seconds. Lion will be up and uh, should be in that top half. Yeah, I think even with the max spawn top half. I can do math, yes. So I imagine, yeah, we see snaking immediately TP top. They'll go set up in that area. They have some good wards in this uh, try or this jungle area. I mean, eventually, if Doom comes up here with a gem, they should try and scout these two wards. But giving them some nice information at the moment. All right, we gotta look at the item check here because Nagasarn hits her level 20, has the extra mirror image, has Bloodthorn done. And a Vindicator's Axe, Bloodstone BKB done on the Kunkka. The Zeus, with those spicy fingers, finishes up the Kaiasan, gets a Grove Bow, also has a Nemesis Curse backpack, so you can kind of go one or the other. I, I think Grove Bow likely is to be the item he'll hold on to. It is just more damage than Nemesis That's Curse. <laughs> like, it just legitimately is. Mm -hmm. So. you going to go for the quick D-War. They saw these ones get placed, so. Nicely done. Roche was not too long of a spawn. 25 seconds left, and Falcons is not in the position for it. Exciting. Quest might Dying be the team that stress. sets up, and you have to siege into that. And that's not easy. You'd be running into Boat, Song, Zeus, who's already set up. It's much harder to find him in those situations. Crit is going for an Aghanim Scepter. Not something we see all that often. All right, come on, Amar. Walk onto the high ground. There's a ward right next to you. He's not going to see it. Uh, yeah, Aghanim Scepter on the Marana. He's about 400 gold away. Just lost all of his components on the Courier. So, unfortunately for him, that's going to be down for another 2 minutes and 35 seconds. I'm a little surprised to see him buy out for the Ags when Dyer's Roche is so close to spawning. But it is really good, this game. It's greedy, but gives a lot of scouting potential. Uh, which is great to find the right Doom targets and to maybe help kill off the illusions from Naga and figure out which one's real. Got a fight going on down here, but... I mean, Arcane's team's team rolling. quite here. They get a BKB out of it. I mean, Malreen actually just getting so much damage done with this, uh, this like, buff to the Aghanim Scepter. And it's Arcane Rune, right? So that rolls back up in just 25 seconds. Dyer's bottom tower. Yeah, that actually looked like Quest was making the play, but in the end, Falcons gets the win. And no kill, but like you said, the BKB is really, really nice to get out of the Kunkka. Maybe you can since Roche. chain. Yeah, yeah, Roche's coming up. Which is also partly why I'm surprised they, they all TP'd here for that. Like, I thought they would just walk into the Roche pit. Maybe both teams really respecting the opponent's ability to fight over Roche trying to find a kill before going in, but off of that, knowing that Quest TP'd bottom and they used a BKB, Falcons is now finally going to run into the Roche pit, just kill this. They're going to get cheese, which is great. They might not even take the Aegis on Skeeter, they might just give him the cheese as a transformation hero type, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe he'll still take Aegis. It's like uh, everyone else is leaving, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's not, not that crazy either. He is He is still the carry. They got the real Naga. Amar reads it. Oh, no. Okay, so this whole thing is set up initially by this, like, Dire War top. They see them go for Roche. They beeline mid to try and put some pressure. But it just massively backfires. Amar is just ready and waiting. Well, no Naga for 60 seconds. She bought out for her Scythe of Ice. That's huge. <laughs> They're running over. Where did Cheese end up? Let me pass it off to someone. Looks like Crit's holding it for now. He's gonna get his eggs. He's got the money. Courier respawning. No 
Doom. Has the refresher, but again, the cooldown's up in about 30 seconds. You'd rather, I guess, have the double Doom available. Maureen will just go for the Rolling Thunder, try and make some space here onto the backside. Try and just keep them away from the Sven, who is, at the moment, just shredding through this tower. And Maureen, yeah, he's just gonna walk away. There's gonna be your fortification, timed up with the God Strength. Try and buy them a little bit of breathing room. Nagasaren back up in eight seconds. This is not a bad hold at the moment here for Quest, but you gotta deal with this Sven pretty soon. And well, quickly dealt with it would seem. No God Strength does, does have, have BKB strength. when he respawns, but he gets caught from the Hex from TA2000. Skater gets the BKB off the last moment. He's managed to get out. Amar trying to find his Doom target. Instead, just throws it on the Zeus, has to run, but Ducalis. This is actually doing so much work on the Enchantress and a massive Song of the Siren out from Rolls up again. There's the Refresher out from Duty. Gets the real Naga. Maureen with another Rolling Thunder trying to just zone them away on the backside. This damage is too much and your Naga Siren's dead once again. What a turnaround from this Doom, dude. Amar has owned this game. That being said, Maureen in maybe a little bit too deep here. Does pop that Disperser, another Swashbuckle available into the trees, but they get him, and he's gonna lose the gem as well. Apparently maybe they don't, they don't know, know though. That, though. Yeah. I guess Doom was carrying it before, maybe they didn't realize he passed it over. It's just a niche right. right spot now. <laughs> I guess so, you scout couriers to kill later. I thought they might be able to punish the Sven there, but he is so tanky, and with the Ascetic's cap he has, they just weren't able to lock him down long enough with the spells they had, even though they get the hex off before he can BKB because it still had the, the backpack cooldown. It was close, but just not enough. He gets out, they pass the cheese to him. Pretty much everyone gets out. I know Pango died, but considering how deep Sven and the rest of the team originally was, I think you'll, you'll take that. Uh, so you open up the, the high ground. I guess it's not that bad of a hold from the quest either, though they did commit some buybacks. I guess just Shadow Demons. So, they did finish Shadow Demons Aghanim Scepter now. So, that is a little bit scary for the side of Falcons. The Demonic Purge now having multiple stacks as well as the break, but also two stacks of the Cleanse. We'll have to see if that makes a difference in these upcoming fights. Amar trying to get to his level 25. He is very close. Skitter just finished his, grabs the God Strength damage. They are smoking right into Quest. There's going to be an arrow. A boat comes through. They've managed to just lock down Crit. That's a great find for them. Amar thinking of going in, but will not do so. Man, Ninja Gear is one hell of an item. I'll tell you what. Dyer are scanning. Too good. Both teams basically just have ninja gears and aesthetics caps. That's it. Why get anything else? Yeah, a lot of, uh, at least the heroes that are meta, a lot of it is realizing, like, I actually do enough damage. I don't really need more damage from the neutral item. I just need to not be killed. And so, yeah, we see that trend of the, the Acetics cap helping to reduce status resistance, which crit actually had, but there's so much control from... Uh, Torrent Storm, maybe a bit unlucky too on like where, where it hits, but couldn't actually get out anyways. Uh, or like the ninja gear, like you mentioned, just like staying out of sight. And for Zeus, it makes a lot of sense. Amar has been looking for Noob this entire game, trying to get the Dooms off, or like Pango rolls on top of him, try to keep that Zeus out of the fight, uh, because he does contribute quite a lot of damage uh, along with his Naga Siren. I'm curious which of his 25 talents he's going to go for. Most people usually choose the AoE Lightning Bolt just because it's, it's so much better. But can the Thunder God's Wrath combined with Disseminate is pretty sick this game. And they've done a really good job of holding it until the Disseminate comes out. So I wonder which one they would do. We'll have to find yeah. out. But That'd be kind of cool. I, I expect it's just the AoE Lightning Bolt. The... Uh... The fact that it, you can like mini stun for that time is, and uh, just clear all creep waves. Yeah, it's so useful. A lot of level 25 talents, right? Pango grabs his, of course. We see Doom going for the mute talent. So Rolling Thunder cooldown, basically non-existent. Yeah, that talent. I mean, in that last fight we saw, he used it to make space, and then he still had it for the fight after. So now he's going to have it even sooner. Yeah. 
I will say quests still have, like, they, their high ground hasn't really been broken. They still have, a full, like, no lane of barracks that's gone down. Amar actually smoking in here. I don't know if you realize the real Naga Siren is there, and now he's on the run, gets caught from a hex. They have a lot of damage. In comes the Kunkka, but he's forced to BKB and go for the run. The rest of the team TPing Radiant's in here to offer some help. Under attack. But they do scout an Amplify Damage Rune here on the backside, and Naga Siren will be... Are they going to give it to him or the... The Zeus. Okay, it will go to the hands of the Zeus, who also picked up a Parasma lately, so. As uh, one of the highest damage items you can find, Marana once again in the mid lane in some trouble. Gets the Moonlight Shadow off. Malreen with the Rolling Thunder. Now gonna try and just scout for them. BKB out from Kunkka. He's gonna TP to safety. Omar does not find him. I think with the mute talent. I don't no, it just no prevents. Idea. Does it still cancel? I cannot remember. I don't know I if don't it, think does it does if he has BKB up. Oh, in comes Skitter. They got a good initiation here on the Malri, but he's got a refresher. A second rolling thunder coming through. The finger of death trying to bring down this enchantress. They will finally get the job done as Malreen continuing to scout for more on top of Noob. This Zeus needs to be careful. Great song in the siren. Once again from TA2000 Amar. He has his whole kit available. They're baiting. He's baiting. He's waiting for his opportunity, but Sven's got to be careful. He goes and gets the Doom onto the Shadow Demon. The Refresher comes out. He gets it onto the Zeus as well. That is the best possible scenario. TA2000 on the run. Mana drained by Snake King. No illusions for you, sir. Three heroes dead inside the base. About to be a fourth. Ducalis will have no shot. That's a dieback for him as Malak forced into his fountain. What a turnaround from Amar. Unless they're all inexplicably drawn into the fountain, I'm pretty sure they might just go for throne here. I, I guess they don't know the buyback situation, but they would be interested in forcing the buybacks, and as those don't come out, you start to realize, like, hmm, I don't think they have them, guys. I think we've got this. Kunga will throw out as many spells as he can, but... One verse five. He's gonna need a lot of spells. The sick, hold on. Sell boots by Tidal Wave? Sickest Tidal Wave in history. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> He's in trouble. He gets the Torrent Storm off, but BKB's come out and a Valiant hold here. A Finger of Death from the Snake King to finish the job and GG's come through. Falcons will take game number one. Very nice find for them at the end there. The, uh, First the Doom onto the Zeus, and then the the Blink stun by Sven, just giving the AoE to then just clean up those kills right away. Neither of them had buyback, and from there, the rest of the fight is so easy. Uh, that high ground defense could have been tough uh, for, or the high ground siege could have been pretty tough for them because, uh, I mean, it is into a Zeus Naga, right? So they had to be very careful about it. We saw earlier, even with the lead they had, they are, they're only comfortable taking the tier three. Uh, Maybe if Quest is able to take like a safer fight, they could have held their high ground for longer, keep dragging this out, but uh, Falcon's finally able to close out a game, which they started on the back foot. It felt like their early game was pretty slow, not really finding the fights they wanted, but eventually they did. I think they had to try like six times, but once <laughs> they had that fight, it uh, just felt like they were in control for most of that game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the whole point of the Shadow Demon pick is to sit super far back and, and get these saves and turn the fight around with like multiple demonic purges. But the fact that Amar just blinks onto the high ground and the first target he sees is the Shadow Demon like right next to him, your fight's just done. Like the, it's so impossible to take the fight with the three refreshers on, on these cores. Like there's no way to actually turn at that point on quest, I think. And yeah, it's just a really clean game. Uh, patient game, like you said, they didn't find what they wanted early, but eventually, with the net worth advantage they started to build up, it started to become a little bit easier. Yeah, and I think originally we were a bit worried about, or at least I was. I won't, I won't rope you into my incorrect assumptions, but uh, I was worried that like maybe Quest has the better late game for Falcons, and they would struggle as the time went on. But I think this really early pick of the Naga allowed Falcons to pick enough heroes good against the Naga that it didn't feel 
that scary. Like they did have to deal with the Naga ratting and stuff like that, but they were able to find her and kill her off. And it's partly because they have so many tools like the lion to like, it's not that one. It's not that one. It's not that one. Okay. One of these last two. Right. And when you can quickly cut down the illusions to find the real Naga, it just, it just makes her game so much harder to play. She doesn't get to do the same. Look, she's got no illusions. You're not worried about a Naga with no illusions. Yeah. And, and that's true. It's one of the reasons we see the lion come out and it's just such a, such an easy thing to execute at that point right like you don't have to like try super hard to just guarantee you get the mana drain off like he can just hold the spell um and like just blind check with hex you know it's like oh maybe this one the one that's like randomly over here will be the real naga and if he gets it with a hex like it's just a real simple initiation for them but yeah, Doob also just a great counter eventually. He has plenty of AoE damage. His choice to go for the Octarine early ends up working out really well just because of how how sick Inferno Blade is at, at dealing damage to the Naga Siren. Like one of these heroes that builds just super tanky. But yeah, here's the final fight as we see once again, right? It's the perfect Doom initiation. There's just no way to, to turn around your fight at that point. And... Yeah, just too far behind. 25,000 net worth adds up for sure. Definitely. I think uh, Falcons will be pretty happy with that one. Uh, good showing for their first game from them that we've seen in about a month, I think, since the last time we got to see them play. I think Quest played pretty decently, too. I, I think the draft kind of is, like, is uh, what gave them a bit of trouble here, along with the fact that well, like, I think their early game reads were pretty good. They dodged a lot of stuff. But then in that mid game, it felt like Falcons was able to keep finding like, oh, we found the Doom on the Zeus. We found the the real Naga, right? Some of that, like we talked about how the draft is why maybe the Naga could be found. I think it was pretty, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to credit it to good play from Falcons to constantly find the right target. Uh, to start off a lot of their fights, but it yeah. did mean we never really saw Zeus just standing in the back, throwing out the lightning hands, throwing out the spells, uh, Naga getting to just like run people down with the illusions, right? Um, a mix of draft and execution, I think, decided this game, but it didn't feel totally one-sided, so pretty excited for game two coming up. Yeah, absolutely. I, it was a little bit of back and forth, but we'll see what PSG Quest can do in game two. Maybe they can come up with something new. Um... We'll have to find out, but we're going to go to a short break, everyone. We'll be back here with Falcons versus PSG Quest here in the Elite League. We'll see you in just a little bit.
Welcome back to the Elite League. We are going into game number two of PSG Quest here versus Falcons in this first day of the round. Robin, and unsurprisingly, Team Falcons look amazing. They've had a, a really good run so far this year. And, you know, game one, no surprise. We'll see what they can do, though. Maybe uh, PSG Quest will come up with a new solution for game two. My name is Cryptic here with Z Quixotics. Talk to me, man. What's the what's the main difference that they got to have going in for game two? I don't think you want to pick Naga so early, or maybe you need to change your bands to better protect her because it it does feel like she got off to a relatively good start. I feel like they had some pretty quick rotations from the side of Quest to uh, react to Falcon's play, so they got some counter kills. So she had a decent start, just felt like the game was a bit tough for her. Too many ways to kill her illusions between the cleave of Sven, uh, Pango, Ags, uh, the lion spells doom went shivas and the the burn right so it just felt like her game was too hard and i i know he's an excellent naga player but i think give yourself an easier game you know like don't make yourself work so hard uh if you pick her a little later or the draft sh shifts a little bit I, I think it should uh be a better time for quest because i i do like the the movements they made i think their early game was really nice um so looking forward to see what they they adjust here agreed yep We'll see the draft as uh, I think all these bands are the same. Nothing out of the ordinary quite yet. So the Razor, Timbersaw banned out from PSG Quest. We'll see the Chen, the Coddle. I think they first phased out the Faces Void here last time. So we'll see if they go for that again. No, this time they go for an Earthshaker ban. That's an interesting one. Not a hero we see all that often, but maybe they're... Uh, you know, maybe maybe Snake King's cooking up something interesting this this game. We'll have to find out. First phase will be the Bat Rider. Makes sense. You could just go for the Shadow Demon response, which has looked fairly decent, or the Crystal Maiden. But no Pango this game. Yeah, I think either of those support picks sound good. Uh, the Earthshaker ban, just to talk about it a little bit. Uh, some teams do like him as a position four. It's not too common. Uh, but you can still you know, the classic position for Earthshaker. But uh, Quest is one of the few teams that really enjoys the Earthshaker mid, and it does stomp a lot of melee mid matchups. Which, uh, if you think about some of the popular heroes right now, like Primal Beast, Kanka, Pango, I know some of them are banned out here, but Earthshaker would do well against that. So. These two teams also being extremely familiar with each other, I think it just shows a lot of respect to that Earthshaker, recognizing like, we know he plays it, we know we could pick around it, but no thank you, right? It's the same reason we're seeing the Razor bands, the uh, the Timber, the Pango, right? They're, they're meta, so it's like, yeah, I get it, but also, this is Falcons. I don't really want to play against Falcons, Razor, Timber, Pango. We, we tried the Pango, we lost, not again, take it out. Here's yep. that Crystal Maiden pick. Yeah, just a classic counter to the Batrider, right? Uh, one mm -hmm. of the strongest strongest laning supports into a four position Batrider. Now you could always dodge it, move it to the five for the Batrider and uh, maybe pick a new four. But yeah, Crystal Maiden has looked like one of the best supports. Again, kind of off the back of Falcons in the last event, right? Like Snake King was playing this a ton, using and kind of uh, abusing that Crystal Clone for farm speed. And people are like, how does this mm -hmm. Crystal Maiden have like three full items? Like what is going on here? Um, they get slightly nerfed in the mana cost, rightfully so, but still has been an exceptional hero. And of course, one of the best lanes, laning supports against a bat rider. So it's no, uh, no surprise we're seeing it picked up. We'll see the Gyrocopter and the Life Stealers uh, banned out from PSG Quest. There's still a lot of options on what you could go for here on Falcons without revealing too much. We've seen the Grimstroke paired with the Crystal Maiden a few times. There's still heroes like Rubik um, in the pool, so and Tusk as well. So there's there's a lot that they could go for. So going up here. I mean, does he eventually go back for Mars? It's crazy. Like he's not, he, he wasn't picked or banned that last game. It feels wrong. The hero definitely like got side nerfed by the changes to Brooch. I honestly don't think it matters all that much. I think Mars is still very much the same hero for the first like 50 minutes of the game. But yeah, it's uh, 
Interesting. Well, we're not seeing it quite yet. It was just too good of a Doom game. That is true. It was a really good Doom game, and he played fantastic. So pretty understandable why they went for that. Disruptor's been pretty good. The uh, the change to Q has made his laning stage a bit better. Still not the strongest laner out there, but that's not the reason you pick Disruptor, right? You just got to get through the laning stage, and then you're playing around Glimpse. And uh, right now, Crystal Maiden, Disruptor, looking pretty good, but neither of them really initiate. So we're definitely going to need to see that out of uh, the mid and the off lane, someone who's going to start fights and give you that vision for the glimpse. But once you have that, you'll be in a good spot. The Enchantress pick uh, de definitely helped in the laning stage last game. I don't think the Enchantress was the problem, so I like I don't mind going back to it. Uh, I like this opener more. I, I think this is less mm, like counterable. Right. Like, of course, you're going to yeah. pick to adjust, but it doesn't feel the same way of like revealing a Naga in the the second pick. Yeah, I think that's the big thing for me too is like you're not putting TA2000 into a heavily countered scenario. Oh, we've seen this one before. The Wraith King. I mean, there is no shot PSG Quest don't just pick the Alc on 18 here. I don't, I mean, you have to come up with some way of, of countering the Alc pick right now or at least preventing the Alc pick because... It is completely free. For a second, okay. I thought they were going to pick the Alchemist. <laughs> that, I mean, that's this one be... way to prevent it. <laughs> I mean, this would be cool. We we definitely don't get to see a lot of Wraith King. He's been out of the meta, but it's, it's pretty fun to see this hero. And part of the idea here is that when you get doomed, you'll just come back to life. Uh, second time, Lasso, if you get pulled out, uh, you get killed, you come back, maybe you can blink out BKB, get your stuff off at that point. Uh, you're right, though, Alchemist is really good versus the Skeletons from Wraith King. It just gives so much gold. We saw... Who was it just yesterday? Was it Heroic? Yeah, Heroic, I think it was Heroic. versus uh, Talon. I was just such a farmed Alchemist. Every time Wraith King tries to use skeletons, you just walk over, farm all of them twice, and get what you said it was like three hundred twenty something gold. Three hundred twenty-eight right? gold. That's a lot yeah. of gold. Three hundred twenty-eight for a full set of skeletons, and if you go for the plus five, it's like five hundred and sixty or something. It's an it's absurd. Like it is a ridiculous amount of gold. Now, whether or not they think they can play this, play the elk into the primal beast, we'll have to see. Maybe TA two thousand has another idea. Okay, they go for a Medusa. I mean, Wraith King isn't the worst hero into Medusa because he is just like overwhelming physical damage. Doesn't really play around minus armor like some other heroes. But yeah, forced to ban the anti mage. Not surprising. Yeah, I wonder if, if you had. Well, the same thing kind of applies to Medusa. If you had gone Alchemist, it would have been a pretty greedy draft where everyone wants to farm though medusa's kind of down that alley as well uh this is something quest does i feel like they i don't know the exact stats but they have to be one of the the teams with the longest average game time they tend to pick later game heroes and kind of drag out the game and right now medusa doom will be great as you go later and later enchantress scales up well bat rider can get pretty farmed as a support I think they need someone else to help make plays in that mid lane for their last pick. And going to have to be able to play in the Primal Beast. Could just be an offlane Primal. But can't pick someone weak and then just get stomped there. Yeah. Okay, Puck Death Prophet bans. I, I think that makes sense. I was kind of looking at the Alchemist as a way to just out-tempo Falcons. Like, yes, the Doom is a little bit sad into Wraith King because he just respawns or whatnot, but you just leave the Alchemist to kill the Wraith King and you Doom up something like a Primal Beast or whatever their other hero is. And I think at that point, you just out-tempo Falcons and you would outscale them because a lot of people a, a lot of people look at Alk as being this hero that like falls off once he hits his sixth item. The thing is that... A lot of times with the way the map is right now, you get your six items and then you can just lock the enemy team in their base indefinitely because you're just so much stronger and then they can never get out to make a play. 
So we'll see what their last ban's gonna be. It, it has to be something to counter the Medusa. Maybe just Darkseer. I feel like you have to ban the Darkseer here. Yeah, maybe. I, I'm trying to think about it because Enchantress is a pretty strong support and you're playing into that Disruptor who's not that strong. So Medusa's looking to have a good time. I'm trying to think of like an offlaner that could sidestep that, maybe just do creep cutting, which Darkseer could fit that bill. Uh, looks like they're going to go for the carry counter route because it could be offlane Wraith King. I don't know what they've sure. been playing in scrims. Maybe that's something that's been going on. But yeah, Slark and Anti-Mage both pretty good versus Medusa. It's a little scary. Like if you get doomed, obviously that feels bad, but they have tools to help them avoid being doomed and lassoed. So then they would be just like chasing the Medusa and uh, uh, Wraith King offlane's not that bad, even though it has dropped out of the meta. So I can kind of understand making sure you take out those carries. Okay. Tiny pick for the mid lane, it looks like. Pretty, I mean, pretty solid hero. He's also very good against the Primal Beast if you put the Primal Beast mid because you can Avalanche or just toss him away. So it should be decent enough to being able to CS against him. I actually kind of like the theory here that you just take Wraith King off lane and he doesn't actually struggle to the Medusa in lane, which is kind of another, I think, problem with this Medusa pick. And you can just pick like a Phantom Lancer. It's not like the best hero of the patch, but you literally have nothing to deal with the Phantom Lancer this game. I think I'm up for that. I wonder if it's a little too greedy, because Wraith King is a bit of a greedy offlaner, but... Yeah. I mean, I'd be curious how he builds them. You could just go for, like, double bracer into, like, a blade mail, and then play to run with the primal beast otherwise you go for the radiance which is definitely greedy is that right i mean if this is fast if this is amar playing it i feel like it's gonna lean towards greedy it's either it's either dark seer or, or oh, okay they go for underlord that is strange i'm not sure how i feel about the underlord pick i mean it got slightly buffed ever so slightly buffed in this last patch and i thought it was gonna be enough to where we'd be seeing underlord more often but we have literally never seen this hero picked so i think that's the first of the tournament yeah i am curious what amar has been cooking because i like i said i thought the hero might be decent uh clearly it wasn't as no one has picked it so we'll see how it looks this game my idea is that the buff he got, one of them, is to his passive, which gives him more damage as things die near him. Yeah. And he might just be able to massively out-deny a Medusa. And then you have the heroes to play pretty fast. Like, that is something a Wraith King carry can do. Is And you might still go Radiance, but uh, whether you do Radiance or not, there are builds to, to, build, to go for that help you play pretty quickly. And... Maybe just like run down quest before this Medusa comes online. Um, I, I'm up for it. We really have not seen very much Underlord, but if Falcons feels comfortable with it and they see something in it, like I'm excited to see what that is. I think it's really good. Like, let me rephrase that. I think it's good. I don't think it's very good. I think the <laughs> Underlord definitely is like a situational pick. Um, mm -hmm. I think the buffs definitely help. The fact that Pit of Malice can now slow off your 15 talents, I think is like pretty sick. That was your entire old Aghanim Scepter. They're just like, put it as a 15 talent. This hero has been dead for like years. We'll see what he can do. Um, Firestorm is a little bit, uh, I would say bad against the Medusa, right? It's max HP burn built into it. And Medusa is a hero that has almost none. So you're not getting a mm -hmm. lot of value out of it. So I think you're right where you're probably going to see like early levels into the atrophy aura, probably two, maybe or like I, I would imagine it just goes like one zero two and Straight just denies it. on the lane. Yeah, it just denies in the lane, gets like an early phase boots and, and bracers and just auto attacks. I, I wouldn't be I would not hate that at all. So we'll see I mean, what happens. Right now, I think... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going <laughs> to. Right now, with just the base items, Underlord is sitting at 74 damage compared to Medusa's 53, and that is without the passive. So, 
I mean, Amar is a very good player for last hits, right? Like, if anyone can do it, I fully believe in him to have an insane amount of denies this game. Man, this just, this again just comes back to, like, I'm not a huge fan of this Medusa pick. Like, it doesn't do, it, it's, it's not like a hero that does exceptionally well against Wraith King in the first place. But now you've kind of put yourself on a timer where it's like, you have to just survive Falcons. And now they have this Underlord Primal Beast, which are very strong and very tempo based. To battle. Yeah, I I think I agree. I know they are probably very comfortable around Medusa, and that might be why they picked it over another hero. But even if it's not Alchemist, I feel like there's probably some other heroes that make a bit more sense to us, but. I, I want to trust Quest of like what they've practiced, what they feel good with, right? You can't you can't go too crazy. Sometimes that like backfires. Um, but Falcons, <laughs> at the same time, Falcons out here picking like Underlord Wraith King, right? If they lose, then people are going to be like, man, what are they doing? Like pick something more normal. Like we're talking about Medusa, but Underlord's pretty out there as well. But I feel like we just trust that Falcons as... What many of us take as like the best team right now is like, oh yeah, this is next level. This is huge brain play right here, <laughs> even though it's like so different. It is very different. Yeah. I think it makes sense into the lane, and that's what they're playing for, right? Is Falcons are just mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're gonna win this lane. Skitter, I don't think is gonna have a great time on the Wraith King in lane. Doom is definitely very annoying to play around with Scorched Earth. <laughs> You're not a very high armor hero at all, and Doom like can just get like a casual point in Infernal Blade. So I, I do wanna... I, we'll have to be curious to see how he plays that. Yeah, and I want to throw out here in this pause, they did another swap. So it's actually a position for Crystal Maiden, which we don't see that often. Uh, occasionally, again, I think it's just because of this Enchantress. Disruptor yeah. is not a strong laner. And I think, like when it comes to jungling, although Medusa is pretty good early on, Wraith King is way faster just because of the skeletons. So I think they're putting the best heroes they can in this bottom lane to slow down the Medusa. And they'll like get by in the top lane. Disruptor, not the strongest laner, like we said, but like, it's fine. Skeeter, you'll go jungle. You did it last game. You'll do it this game, which I looked back. Uh, he did buy like a Sal for himself, but a lot of his last hits just came from small camps in the jungle. He had like mud golems. He had like kobold, stuff like that. So it was just like inflated numbers a bit. He was getting denied pretty heavily by the Kunkka in the actual lane. That checks. That makes sense. Yeah, I remember we looked at him. He was like 30 CS above everyone else, but like the sixth core in terms of net worth. We're like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> like, yeah. what happened here? Um, overall, lane's pretty static at the moment. Nothing going on too much. The level two timings could make a difference. I will say Wraith King with these skeletons, he definitely has more lane pressure than a lot of people kind of like expect like these do a decent amount of damage especially when combined with the wraith fire blast so it's nice that he's just chip using it as like chip damage essentially before you get to like level three scorched earth or level two firefly where those skeletons just die immediately you know mm -hmm. do you think the lanes will be as slow as we had last game because it was a Bit of a slow pace to start us off last time. I think... I think you, it probably will be because Underlord is not a hero who is really going to, like, shove out a Medusa. He's just going to sit here and, like, CS as best as possible, trying to get what denies as he can. And the CM has to be wherever the Enchantress is. So I don't think this bottom lane, like, anything is going to happen. The only real kill threat should be top. Well, not like he just gets a little unlucky there from a centaur stomp, sets up another round of spells from Skitter. Uh, there's also like toss back potential in mid onto a primal beast, but because it's a primal beast with so much HP, I don't think he cares all that much. Yeah, I think so. I think mm. everyone's just gonna be farming. Yeah, I will say. Crit, one of his best play styles is like the roaming potential. We see him often make moves into the mid lane. 
uh, when you don't expect it, find kills for his mid laner. But Crystal Maiden, not really that type of hero. So this is a little bit of a different play style for the team, I feel like. But I mean, that's also fine, right? The team should have. Well, maybe not should, but it's good when a team can mix it up and do different things. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yeah, helmet the uh, iron will out onto the onto the underlord. So again, absolutely no intention of kind of leaving this lane. I, I don't think he's gonna go for the veil right away. He might go back for his face boots, or you go mana boots. You can you have some options, but I think he just wanted the armor early to just ignore yeah. the harass coming out. Which top and lane first blood. finally coming through? Omar will be able to run down the disruptor, and he's got quite a bit more duration on this firefly. So Skitter, force all the way back to the tower. Dyer's I mean, getting killed. Doom first is huge. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, you're you're happy with that trade. It's just Thank you, Snaking. Every time. Yep. What was it, two point Thunderstrike? Yeah, it was, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just full Thunderstrike duration and auto attacks, and I don't know if his Helm of Iron Will was delivered yet on the Doom. It may have been slightly slower, so. Malak does need to be careful again. Another Wraith Fire Blast. He's gonna take a decent chunk of damage from the, spi uh, the spiders, from the skeletons. Nothing for you. So, he's got plenty of sustain at the moment, though. Checking on the damage in the bottom lane. Without too many charges, Underlord is like roughly 100 damage, bringing Medusa's down to like 60. Now, he doesn't actually have that many. He's starting to build up denies now, right? He's up to 10. It wasn't that bad at the, the beginning of the lane, but now that he's got two points in the passive, curious to see at level 5 what he does. Um, I, I think this is going to start getting bad. He might just go and max the Firestorm for pushing the lane and farm speed, right? Like, I don't know if he needs more than two points in the aura. Whereas, he can basically be left here for the rest of the game. I don't think he's ever going to move. We're going to see rotations to the mid lane for the six minute power rune. Noob gets an arcane. That's quite nice. Crit in some trouble. Blood grenade comes out. The boulder toss, the tree tosses, an avalanche. Just everything being that could be thrown in this game is just thrown at a Crystal Maiden. Unlucky. Yeah, they're going to keep moving, though. Batrider coming down here. Uh, I don't know. Underlord's got a 1,000 health. It's going to be pretty tough to kill him, but they want to try to at least put some pressure on while he's down here. Batrider is one of the traditional best counters to, um, like, to Underlord, and we're seeing it right here. You do not have the magic resistance to sustain, and Ducalus will just kite this one away. Those double, the double shard golem, like, toss, plus constant sticky napalm. That's a huge kill for this lane. It just frees up the Radiant Medusa entirely. Scanning. You are going to potentially double Wisdom Rune them, though, and that is very good. Snaking will have the glimpse to send back Malik. Uh, maybe wanted to attack. hold that another moment, but Malreen is coming as well. Snaking does get an avalanche out from Noob, and <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Primal Beast. He's like, see you later, buddy. Uh, That's but you got the Wisdom, wisdom Rune. It's totally worth dying. It's totally worth dying as a position five to steal the Wisdom Rune. Oh, wait, it wasn't double. Omar stole the other. Oh, he did get it? How did he steal that from Crystal Maiden? She was right there. I guess he must have knocked her back with the flame break. Wow. Yeah, crit might have just gotten caught off guard. That's surprising. I feel like there's no way the Barrett should be able to get that one. But yeah, as a result, no XP advantage going the way of Falcons there. Big pole rise on the top side onto the Bat Rider, trying to make his way onto the cliff. He'll be able to, but a glimpse back right into the hands of the Wraith King. Skitter's doing great in terms of net worth. He's at the top of the charts. Yeah, he actually has a bunch of his own denies. Didn't really expect that versus Doom, but I guess your attacky animation is a lot better. Yeah. Plus, just Thunderstrike spam is super annoying. <laughs> that is true. The attack slow is really, really a pain. Looking 
looking for TA-2000, potentially. I mean, it's a lot of magic damage out, but... Again, Firestorm, not an exceptionally good spell against the Medusa. So, she's able to just walk it out. Amar did end up going for the Veil right away. Picks up Boots, but when you bring a Primal Beast, that should bring the damage. Pulverize, though, All immediately spells being canceled. canceled. Malreen cancels his Onslaught as well, so... Amar gonna try and just chase down Crit, should have no problem, and Falcons gonna yeah, stomp out from the Centaur, well played. All right, ends up being a one for one across the map as they do lose Doom on the top side to Snake King. That was a really good avalanche. I feel like it stopped literally all of Primal Beast's impacts. Otherwise, that's for sure a Medusa Radiant's kill. Top tower is under yeah. Attack. I mean, T2000 is not really being slowed down by this offlane Underlord, and that was kind of what we anticipated was the reason for picking it, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe they have a different read on the hero. We'll we'll see, but we definitely thought it would get more denies at least. Maybe the that's the power of the Enchantress. Helped in the laning stage, had the Mud Golem for the gank, so that was like an extra 200 something damage from the, the Golem stuns and all that. Mid lane. Again. Yeah. Oh, are they? Oh, yeah, they are. Looking for Malak. He's level 6 now, has Doom. There is a Wraith Fire Blast available. Trying to fog them. This should be one big crit to finish the job. The tower armor? Not enough. Okay. Nice grab there. Skitter, again, just top of the net worth. He's super farmed. Ends up going three points in the Mortal Strike as opposed to four points in the Vamp Spirit. I guess the skeletons will be killed by Doom and Batrider relatively easily. So maybe the early points to do damage before those spells. Pick, like the skeletons don't scale, right? So like when the Doom and Batrider are low level, their spells don't kill them that quickly. But if you max out skeletons, they would probably just be oh, dead good away at this point. Amar pulling the team bottom, really wanting to get this Medusa. Static Storm is down. Your TPs will not have a chance of helping him out. That was such a clean move. Back to the top lane they go. straight back to farming. And crit comes up this time too, actually. Yeah, they want the tower. They're gonna... I mean, they might end up getting both. There's still a catapult in the bottom wave as well. And with three heroes here top... They do scan, Radiant's see the Enchantress, and they will back away. Okay, they do not actually want to risk it. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. Okay, well, bottom tower will be defended now as well. Dyer's the TA2000 is back. Is you end up attack. losing your mid tower. Omar does have a lasso, but unable to get in, in range here for the Underlord. Where are we on Tiny Blink? Oh, we are on Tiny Blink. Just picks it up off the courier. Really excited to see how this pays off. Enchantress has a has an Aghanim queued up, which um, if Skeeter goes the Skeleton Talent and then you use Little Friends, I mean, those Skeletons are going to do some work. They should get this Primal Beast, surely, right? Yeah, they do. Okay. So, that, I mean, that's the blink reveal. Really well played. They bring in uh, Malak as well for the Doom. So, fantastic. Uh, fantastic, but... Yeah, at the least they uh, they glimpse the Enchantress back, grab a, a kill top, which is going to help right. He's 1,500 gold saved up already for his Sacred Relic. This is going to be a scary Wraith King to deal with. The casual pushing the tower without having to be there. One of the Wraith King classics. Yeah, he is really farmed. You gotta be very careful about Skitter. And they saw they saw Medusa through this observer. I don't he doesn't have skeletons though. I don't think he can kill her. They might just be down here for the tower. So I mean one thing I was talking about earlier is the the way you beat Medusa if you don't have a form of mana burn, right? Is you just do a lot of damage. And he's maxed mortal strike, so four second cooldown with a three hundred percent crit. Like that's gonna burn a lot of damage. Or a, a lot of mana just because of how much damage it does. Mm -hmm. um, but looks like he's just opting to Radiant's who's here just to guarantee the tower. Amar grabs it. 
Back away. Mid lane, looking for new potentially. Nah. Okay. So, again, a little bit of a slow early game from these two teams and they're just trying to farm up to their next set of items. We are about 500 gold off the Manta here for the Medusa, which will help a lot. We have the Blink Dagger on the Bat Rider as well, which was being shown. So, Omar would love to put this to good use. They will see the Wraith King there, but not the Radiant's hero you want to lasso. Meanwhile, Smoke into the mid lane. Able to dodge out the Avalanche. Good movement from Maureen. They get a great Static Storm. Even the Freezing Field committed. In comes Omar on the Bat Rider. The Lasso delayed thanks to that Static Storm. And Amar comes in for a little love tap and just goes right back bottom. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, that one's mine, guys. See you later. <laughs> right back to the tier two push. Radiance Not that they're really trying to get this tower, top. but Radiance look where they are. They're just fortified. pressuring this Medusa. She's like, I want to farm over here. It's nothing to farm. Attack. It's all being taken from her. Radiance middle tower is under attack. This is a pipe on the Underlord. Are Looks like, like it. it is, right? He's got he's got a cloak and a ring of terras queued. It has to be. Yeah, the rest is on the courier right now. Top lane. Duvalis in some trouble. There's a big old beast chasing after him. They have a glimpse, potentially. He's going to be forced to go for the pulverize. And Snake King will just trap him in the cage instead. Crit coming in as well. And Chandra's healing through a lot of this. So three points in nature's attendance. There's another glimpse pushback off the onslaught. Slow, <laughs> slow but painful death. They managed to get it done. Four points Thunderstrike as opposed to max glimpse. Different build from the Disruptor as well. Yeah, with the, uh, with the change this ability, a lot of people still leave it at just like two points and then get glimpse. But... I've seen some experimentation with Max Thunderstrike and then you get the shard because it is just so many strikes Radiant where you are applying that 100% uh, move and attack slow. Crit's uh, the sacrifice for his boy there. Snaking just sees the shenanigans happening here and goes right through the gate. Sorry, continue your thought. No, I think we we're at the end of it anyways. Anyway, with the shard, it's like 600 plus damage, so you can use it to like kill creeps really easily. It does a good chunk of damage, and then you can uh, uh, also be like oh, slowing the enemy a lot for your too. team. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So you are correct. He bought it pretty much right away. Dyer's top tower has fallen. I also want to point out, Snaking, he had a co it, it got killed instantly by the enemy team, but uses his Kobold to scout. Falcons with AUI as a coach, they do all the micro things, like the the mini efficiency just for like, you know, maximum try-hard effectiveness. Like, I like it. I think that's one thing that this team, or any team that AUI seems to be part of, they're usually very good about. Cool. They found Omar. He's going to have a hard time getting away from this one. There's the glimpse perfectly timed from Snaking. Right back in to the hands of Falcons. Dude, the cast range on Thunderstrike at this level is ridiculous. And that is the other thing that people underestimate with the shard is the fact that you can just get it from two full screens, basically. Yeah, it is so funny. All right, Ducalus, you're never getting away, buddy. I hate to break it to you. There is event like right well? <laughs> surely <laughs> no they'll get him it's just slow it's slow <laughs> i mean he, he can never tp out at some point the thunder strikes the glimpses and the frostbites will win mm -hmm. lines being another drawn nice all thing, over top another nice thing about Dyer's this shard is that is you can attack. place it on the ground and it will last for seven seconds and then when it starts activating it lasts for another 12 seconds so it is a lot of vision in a given area. Like for example, on these uh, twin gates, if you're trying to do Roche, you can just drop it there and just feel comfortable with the vision you have. And then it'll latch onto a hero if they walk into it as well. All right, we'll see what they can find. Glimpse comes back. They've got Malik as well. The Pulverize on the money. That's good stuff. They're looking at Ducalis. I mean, this shard is just lasting forever. Unfortunately, Snaking doesn't have the mana to recast it, but Skitter just needs one good auto attack, and that should help set it up. So, 
three dead on the side of Quest, continuing to build their net worth advantage. I love how active Skitter has been in this game. It's something you'll see from a lot of the top teams. The carry, it at least is like seems good in the current meta. Carries are getting more involved. Um, Raking has been like going through the twin gates. Maybe not always like being part of the kill, but he put puts himself at the part of the map where he's like, I'm still farming these camps down here. And if a fight breaks out over this tower, I can come help. But if not, I'm still staying hidden and then I'll just like go straight back to farming, right? But it gives himself the option to help his team make these early plays. And I think it's something that sets apart some of the top teams from like the tiers below where it's like, you just go AFK farm the whole time. That style can work, but this seems I don't know, it seems like the most uh, consistent from the top teams. Yeah, absolutely. Well, with Radiance done, he is almost to his Blink Dagger now. It is a 7,000 gold lead already, and they're going to spot the Wraith King, and guess what? <laughs> or not the Wraith King, they're going to spot the Tidy Snake King, just throws that Thunderstrike from downtown. He knows he can't go anywhere. There's going to be the kinetic field as well to lock him in place, and it's just a matter of time. A couple more auto attacks, waits for the crit skitter, picks up another. Now 8-0-3, dude. He is enormous. Yeah, he's got his blink, too. I mean, some of this is like the amount of kills he's getting, but this is, for example, a life stealer does a very similar build as Wraith King, but it's the difference the skeletons make of like how quickly you can farm he's uh like oftentimes you'll see life stealers go phase armlet radiance and it finishes around now uh skeeter has all of that and the blink and part of that is that he's he's got eight kills right now. okay quick smoke up here as they want to just continue the aggression I, the thing is is like you have this underlord who can just be anywhere on the map and join this is kind of like that Dawnbreaker effect. Blink onto the high ground skitter. He's only going to find Ducalis. Unfortunately, those are just going to be some illusions onto the backside. Great Fire Blast comes out. You've got some help behind him if he can stall this great avalanche. But the Static Storm holds this Medusa in place. And here comes Amar as well. We'll be able to trap the Medusa with a real nice pit. Doom does connect here onto the Primal Beast and a Lasso as well. Trying to just buy some space, but the Medusa surrounded by the side of Falcons. Double kill goes to crit, and they're not done. They want more. They will not find it. They do manage to take the enemy Wisdom Rune and uh, Skitter armlet toggles within the Tormentor to just get his old pop. They're going to be able to bring down the Tormentor here in a moment. Right? Surely not. Never mind. Okay. Was that an armlet toggle or was it an intentional... I thought... I thought he was pretty low, so if he tried the Tormentor, he would have died, and then, like, uh, Primal Beast would have taken too much damage on his own. It might have been an intentional death, but either way, they still didn't have enough people to do it. Uh, just barely. I mean, maybe he cast the ability, too. I don't know. I didn't quite see. Yeah. But either way, it's, like, unfortunate for him. I don't think he uh, was anticipating it. So... I'm trying to look at like the next set of items for quests, what they can play for. They're going for this Disperser, of course, on the Medusa, a great way of kind of kiting out potentially this Wraith King or this Primal Beast, but also getting her out of the Pit of Malice, which is a huge problem. Well, they're found noob once again. He unfortunately walks into Underlord. He's going to get clipped, so not able to contribute a whole lot, but Pit of Malice still managing to just root this guy in for eternity. Little smiley face going out. He's just going to TP bottom. Uh, Primal Beast, no blink, but looking for Malik. I mean, as soon as you press Onslaught, he's blinking, right? So you have to cancel the blink first. And there's the root, perfectly timed. And Maureen, with a Pulverize as well, should have more than enough damage. They take down a big kill, and they're looking for Omar as well. Snake King's got vision. Glimpse sends him real far back. Great with a follow-up for the uh, roots. It's just... One by one, going back and forth across the map, fighting kill after kill. Quests are at a loss. Falcons was playing at such a fast pace. And because you're behind, you need multiple heroes to get kills on the side of Quest. Because uh, your your targets are a Wraith King with two lives and uh, 2,000 health with the armlet activated. You got a Primal Beast who has Blade Mail, Eternal Shroud, 2,700 health. An Underlord who has got the pipe, 
to the veil. It's so hard. So they're just trying to like split. Yeah. And then once you split, they're like, hey, we got this global ultimate. We got these TPs. We got pretty fast heroes. Blinks. Let's just keep running at people. Keep getting kills. Oh, we're not fast enough. It's okay. We got this massive range uh, Q on the, the Thunderstrike from Disruptor. And then he glimpses them back. Right. So right now it's just so hard for Quest. They're smoking top for something. They're gonna find Skitter here. They've got a Doom to follow it up if they can get his first life, and he's falling quite low. Snaking here, the great Static Storm. Doom actually won't get the initiation now, and Skitter is out. What a save here by the Disruptor. And now it's time for Falcons. Glimpse pulls Omar pretty far back. Malik in a bad spot as well. Malreen walks in on the Primal Beast. Onslaught's not gonna connect. The Doom will come out now. As the Primal Beast may have gone a little bit too far forward, in comes Noob. Nice Avalanche toss back onto the Medusa, forced to pop that Disperser, get away from the roots as Amars is going to continue to chase the clips. Will be enough to save Malreen. He's going to get out, and now Malik in trouble. Dude, Snake King is crushing these guys. TA 2000 falls as well on the backside. Just the damage is too much, and the GG comes the out of me. You are 17,000 behind. Just getting ran over from Falcons. That was a cool game. Wasn't sure how the Underlord would play out. Wasn't sure how that lane swap would play out. Apparently, it's a, a slow start to get your items and then just kill everyone across the map. That's a pretty cool strategy, I gotta say. It's it, I like the way that he played this Disruptor. Like We don't see this Max Thunderstrike very often, but the fact that he picks it up so early and then goes for the shard just gives them an insane amount of catch potential and there's no one on psg quest that's gonna have a bkb right you know tiny and batrider and doom are all gonna go for blinks and medusa doesn't really build bkb either so it's just such a free game for snaking to set up picks it's super well played this is a cool draft yeah, I think it might start catching on. I, I think there's a little bit more you need to it because obviously if you max Q, you miss out on glimpse levels and it stays pretty short range. It's harder to use. But in this particular game, they have some natural catch through the, the Primal Beast. And with the heroes they've got, like the Underlord and the Wraith King, they aren't necessarily looking to make plays when Disruptor's level seven. They're kind of like farming up a little bit more than that. So Disruptor has more time to like max Q, get some kills, farm with it, and then go back for the glimpse. So I don't think it's something we'll see every single game, but it it definitely looks like a viable option and one that support players should consider on Disruptor. Probably even better in pub games than at like the pro level. Yeah, I will say the Medusa pick, like I wasn't feeling it in the draft. It didn't really check any of the like boxes that I was looking for. And this Underlord last pick just causes way too many problems. Like, yes, it's not like the hardest lane counter by any means, but the fact that it gives you the root and Medusa has to go for like this Manta and a Disperser to just be able to mm -hmm. get away from Underlord. And there's so many other things you have to worry about is so cool. And then of course, just the global rotations early on, like the dive at the bottom tower where he sends the portal top, immediately brings in Wraith King and Disruptor to kill the Medusa early on. Like those types of plays make a huge difference. Yeah, and I think this last pick tiny, it kind of makes sense in terms of the initiation, but the other cool thing about like then picking the Underlord after is like your kill threat as a tiny is usually through early burst damage, not sustained damage. And these cores are just so tanky. Like I don't know who he goes for. He has to look for the support, but Falcons was just playing really well behind their tanky cores, and they weren't showing until they they felt confident to show it. Like right in this fight, right, all the supports are just like in the back, like just casting their long range spells. Like the Primal Beast tanking like the full duration Doom, getting hit by everything. I was like, whatever, guys, we got so many auras. We all have like <laughs> over two thousand health. Like let's just a click in, guys. Just go. It's easy. Yeah, and I think that's something that also comes back to the tiny pick even. This hero does not have sustained damage to kill heroes like the Primal Beast and the Wraith King, right? You you might be able to burst down Wraith King's first life, but we saw them mm -hmm. struggle to ever get the second one. And, I mean, Primal Beast, like you said, tanking a full Doom, picks up an early Eternal Shroud and a, and a Blade Mail, doesn't even have to get a BKB. If he gets one eventually, it's, you know, even worse for PSG Quest. So 
just a potential outdraft again here from Falcons in game two, and they play their they play their uh, game plan like exceptionally well. Yeah, very impressive game, and uh, one I think many of us were somewhat expecting to see with Falcons being you know they were the best team winning the last two major tournaments, and we didn't see them for the last bit. So it's you know, are they going to do anything different? Did people catch up? I think, uh, you know, still looking really good. Still looking like some uh, favorites for the tournament. Of course, it is just right at the start of the group stage, right? There's still a lot more Dota to be played. But I think Falcon fans are, they're going to be feeling pretty good right now about uh, uh, the, the odds for Falcons. Absolutely. All right, we're going to go to a short break, everyone. We'll be back with an interview here from Team Falcon. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. As promised, we got an interview with Team Falcons, and we are lucky to be joined by Crit. So uh, how you doing, man? Congratulations on your opening series. Pretty dominant performance. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so I want to ask you guys, obviously, probably one of the favorites coming into the event. You guys have had a little bit of time off, didn't play through the Swiss stage. How is your team uh, kind of feeling going into this event? Are you guys like already warmed up? Uh, I mean, it, it will be the first time we're playing a tournament or anything online where we're not together. So, and we also didn't have much prep time. So we're, we're, we're a little bit, uh, a little bit shaky. You know, we're, we're using this group stage to, to kind of get into it a little bit and just get back on track, which is kind of the same thing we did in, in Dream League where the first group stage wasn't super clean. So I, th I hope we will make it through the first one so we can, uh, can improve through the tournament. Yeah, that yeah, makes this sense. Is a shaky performance, huh? <laughs> Looking forward to uh, to how it's going to get even better. Zach, go ahead and no, a uh, question of your own. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Sorry, we have a slight delay, but uh, yeah, go ahead. No, it's it's more like uh, our preparation, and there, we like it's just different circumstances than we used to. So we might not we might not be the, uh, on top of our level for this group stage. Is is all I'm saying. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, then I do have a question. So Falcons is a relatively new team. And in the past, we've seen like some superstar teams where everyone's got tons of MMR, but it doesn't quite work out. This time, you guys do have an insane amount of MMR between all your players, and it does seem to be going well. Um, do you think it's the team dynamic that is different in this case for you guys, that it's working out? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, the last team I played on was also super high MMR for most, for most of the teams I was on with, with EG and Shopify, so... I'm not sure. I think it's just uh, it's a good mix of players. I think everyone a little bit out of their comfort zone, but has the same goal in terms of what we want to achieve, and everyone's working hard. And I think that's that's why we're we're getting the results. Got it. And then with that, I guess being on a new team, is there anything you guys did in particular to like get to know each other? Like I'm sure you knew of the players, but now that you guys have to work together on our team, 
anything you did like i don't know bonding exercises or is it just we play a bunch of dota talk about dota to uh reach that level of comfort with each other i mean i think the the biggest bonding exercise is just having Melrin on the team and like kind of just you know like all of us just bonding together to kind of be his his teacher you know that was like the start of the team when he first joined and we had to play qualifiers and everything uh he was very much like the kid of the group so we kind of bonded in that way um and we just it's just been very full on like we haven't really had much time to to do anything outside of, of just playing and and trying to improve and that's that's a bonding experience in itself and i think uh it's been it's been good so far and every every time we play we we get better and i think it's it's just it's a good group of people that just make it easy to to want to make it to to make it like we want to grind all of us so i got a question for you um Obviously, with the end of the DPC, it's been a very kind of different take on the Dota season this year, right? Already, it's been kind of back-to-back -back tournaments. Is this something that, like, you personally are favoring? And then, like, how does your team kind of feel about the change and kind of how the year is developing at the moment? I think probably the biggest problem is that it's a little bit unpredictable in terms of the schedule. Uh, I think it was hard to know what was going to happen before... The season started like nobody really knew when the tournaments were and like you couldn't really plan ahead and it kind of just meant you had to take like basically from the start of january until after riyadh you had to kind of put it in your calendar as if you have the full schedule uh, booked which is a little bit hard you know in terms of just having a life and being able to <laughs> to be a person you know so that was a bit a bit hard like you kind of have to do it on the fly so i think that's like the biggest downside of not having dpc like the consistency in schedule is a, is a little bit rough uh, but other than that, I mean, it's it's a lot of Dota. I think it's I as when I'm when I'm just a viewer, like the last couple of weeks when I was watching qualifiers and watching the first part of this tournament, it's it's very enjoyable. There's always good teams playing, and I think it just means that uh, all the teams are getting better faster because you have to 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 stay on top for us as well. Like we know that every team is is playing all the time, and there's no team that's not you know improving so then if we don't we're, we're not going to be on top anymore so i think it just makes the game a lot more competitive and and it's very a lot of tournaments just cannot be that bad yeah i actually like that i think that's a really good take where it's like everyone's getting good exposure and good experience um i got one final question for you here we've got obviously the potential for crown fall coming up soon uh kind of off topic but are you excited for a potential like big shakeup of a patch or are you guys really enjoying what we're currently playing on no i think any dota player is looking forward to a little bit of a shakeup. uh i think when this last patch hit like a month ago already uh i think everyone was looking at the heroes and like really trying to make these heroes work with like minor changes <laughs> yeah. and a lot of the heroes were just it was just not it and a lot of the heroes are the same. Obviously, there's some new heroes, which is nice. Like, there's some Disruptor coming in, you know. Uh, but, you know, like a little bit of a change to Earth Spirit is not going to make him a competitively viable hero, you know. So there's some some things that I hope they they take a look at. Um, hopefully, some, some meta changes a little bit as well. Uh, that will make it so that you can pick some different type of heroes in each role. I think that's that's probably the biggest thing. Awesome. Zach, do you have any other questions you'd like to ask him? Uh, last one, I guess. You mentioned you were watching some of the qualifiers just like as a viewer. For you, are you full focused in just watching the game, taking notes maybe too as like a competitor? Or is it like, oh, I have it on the side, I'm relaxing, doing other stuff? Like, what's your approach for that? Uh, I guess a little bit of mix of both. I think it's mostly just like for entertainment. I think in terms of like studying teams, it's not relevant until you're playing against them. Uh, so mm -hmm. obviously you, you look and if there's something cool you see, like you'll you'll take a mental note of it. But for me, it's more like just entertainment. I have a lot of, of ex-teammates and stuff that I'm watching. It's very enjoyable for me. Um, and then also my parents are just massive Dota fans. So I just, when I go to my parents' place, it's like it's just on the TV and I'm like, I don't really have a choice, you know? So that's, that's awesome. part of it as well. That's did so they get into cool. Dota through you, or did you get into Dota through them? Oh, no, no, no. It was definitely through me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Well, Crit, it's, uh, it's awesome to speak to you, and obviously great opening series. We're looking forward to watching you guys through the group stage and, you know, hopefully in the playoffs as well. But, yeah, we'll be talking to you soon, man. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. 
Uh, very uh, very uh, chill guy to talk to. Always always fun for the interviews. I always, I'm glad we get to have a few moments to kind of pick his brain on how him and his team are feeling, just like in general, but also leading into the tournament. But the fact he says that this was like a shaky performance, like, oh, we're not really firing on all cylinders, and like they just crushed this series is, is a little spooky for everybody else. Mm -hmm. But I think some of that, I think, is always the, the mindset of a competitor, right? You even talk to like the TI winners, like, oh, man, you guys were awesome. Like, man, I can only think of all the mistakes I made, right? <laughs> so I think part of that is like, it's part of the mindset, I think, to reach this level of the highest competitors and where they're at. Like you said, like, we're all encouraging each other to grind. We're all excited about that. And I think, I mean, you don't need to be too hard on yourself, but at the same time, maybe that's some of it too. It's like, yeah, I want to, like, we want to keep being better. Like we, we keep seeing even more areas to improve. And it's, uh, we've kind of heard that too, where like teams at the top, then it's like, oh, we kind of lost motivation and you start to drop. Like so many players and teams are really good that it seems like if everyone doesn't have that motivation, you will, uh, you'll be passed out by some other guys. So great to hear that they still have it. And uh, it looks like it's showing. I mean, yeah, a strong performance, even though, <laughs> even though it sounds like, you know, they want to keep getting better. Yeah. Well, we got one series left for the day. It's been a fun one so far. Uh, day one, not disappointing. But of course, it is going to be G2 IG taking on Heroic, the team from the open or from uh, the Swiss stage that I think a lot of people had kind of written off, but they're looking pretty good. The, they took a 2-0 earlier over Team Spirit. So we'll see what they can do, if they can keep that momentum going. Um, but yeah, we're going to go to a short break, and we'll be back with our final series of the day. Stay tuned for more. We'll see you then.
the final series of the day here for the Elite League. It's going to be G2IG taking on Heroic. My name is Cryptic here with Z Quixotics. I mean, Heroic's coming off of a burner to start this day. 2-0 over Team Spirit. G2IG, I believe this should be their first series, right? They have not played yet. Uh, uh, no, they went 1-1 one and one with OG earlier. Oh, they did? Okay, I was missing that one. I was looking on the wrong side. Yes, yeah, so they went 1-1 one one with OG. I did catch that series now that I think about it. Um... Yeah, very important game for both these teams. If they manage to get, you know, another set of wins either way, that's a great way to start start this uh, group stage out. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, ooh, nice. We got the standings here. So some teams have played multiple times. Not everyone has. There are, I think, six days of the group stage. So tons of Dota to go. But like you said, uh, the sooner you can get those wins, the better you'll feel because only four groups will, uh, four teams from each group will move on. So the top two will uh, make it to the upper bracket. Uh, third and fourth will get to the lower bracket and everyone else is eliminated. And I mean, when you look at here, there's a lot of good teams, right? So uh, you definitely want to be racking up as many wins as possible. Dude, Eastern Europe needs to rebound. I don't know what is going on, but both their teams got eliminated in the Swiss stage and Boom, Bet Boom, uh, as well as uh, Team Spirit got 2 0 today. So. It is only day one, but these guys need to to get some wins under their belts. Um, that is, I mean, surprising. I think a lot of people expected, you know, Bet Boom, of course, to come out strong. Liquid, absolutely handling them in their series earlier. They looked super clean. So excited to see more of what Team Liquid's going to do here. I think a lot of people memed on them at Dream League because they had their 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 quote unquote repeat dream league performance of bottoming out somehow <laughs> right which is like insane considering they are so good but uh this is another tournament like it like we just spoke with um you know crit and he's like yeah it's you know we don't really play online lands that often or online events we'd like their team is mostly used to the land environment and you know it changes the dynamic for a lot of these teams quite a bit mm-hmm yeah, this time we'll be having a uh, heroic versus G2 IG. Pretty excited, South American team versus a Chinese team. We didn't get to see that too much in the Swiss stage because there was only one Chinese team. And I actually, I was looking at, I don't think they played any of the South American teams. So we're gonna have a clash of the uh, regional metas here, which I think is always pretty fun. Like you said, heroic came through that Swiss stage. They had to really fight it out uh, all five days of the Swiss stage, but they made it. And sometimes that ends up working out a lot for the teams. Like more games is more practice, right? You learn the most when you lose. So uh, we'll see if they can keep uh, bringing all of that into uh, into this series here. G2 IG did go 1-1 earlier, so they have played a game. It's not like a warm-up first, first series for them. Um, but I think G2 IG is a team that they are recently formed really big name players on this team. And yeah. a lot of people had high hopes. They seem to do really well in the Chinese region, but at the interna international stage so far, not quite the performances they've wanted. So uh, we haven't seen them play for a little bit here on the international stage, but we'll see what they have been uh, working on because I know this team as well wants to improve and they want those top finishes. I mean, there were three Chinese teams directly invited to the round robin, right? So mm -hmm. All three of them have looked incredibly good. Incredibly good. I think Azure Ray has been kind of the most consistent. They have looked exceptional. Um, Extreme and G two IG still still great teams, but uh, we'll see how they actually do going through this group stage. Obviously, is we're going to see the first phase picks come through Gyrocopter and an immediate Primal Beast response. Very cool. So Heroic has really favored this Gyrocopter pick. It's very often just put on KJ. Uh, the position five and you just have a strong laning stage and you get active early with insane amount of damage but you can always flex it to the carry so they they've enjoyed starting with this pick uh the primal beast pretty meta overall a lot of teams like an early primal beast uh, but nothing to say is a very good primal beast player not that you can't still move it around but would not be surprised if this is just the mid pick right here yeah absolutely it wouldn't surprise me at all and there's there hasn't been a lot of heroes that are shutting down the primal to be honest i think shadow demon is one of the primaries right where it's like okay you can at least demonic purge him so he doesn't get a ton of damage out with his trample and whatnot mm -hmm. you might be able to save your ally with a disruption but you've got this gyro already picked now you could still go for the like four position shadow demon 
It's still still a play. I will say I love G two IG's bands. They made a they did a they did their research right. They get rid of Kunkka, KJ's uh, Nature's Prophet. They get rid of the Grimstroke, which they've been playing a ton, and they actually respect ban out the first phase Death Prophet that we've been seeing heroic runs. So, yeah, they are coming to play. Yeah, I like this uh, this research the bands here the the grimstroke also like it's not just respect bands of what they play also makes sense with the the picks we've seen so far the uh soul bind is very annoying for primal beast so is the silence uh and he's not you're not a fast attacking hero um so that silence can be a big pain for you and then the death prophet if you get like if you have a bad time you can be killed by some of this massive burst coming out here but otherwise she does do well and long sustained fights versus tanky heroes so just removing her removing that silence i think that's all uh smart heads up play we'll see that techies pick which if this does end up being an off lane primal beast that is a lot of burst potential in that lane that'll be pretty scary for whoever lanes there uh but we're gonna see a timber saw pick who with all these more targeted bands actually timber makes it through and he's gonna be well like you said, actually, he should have a good time versus the Primal Beast, but we've seen this before where it's like the first couple levels are like, man, it's annoying to play versus Timber. I guess I'll go cut creeps. You know, you just like <laughs> drag creeps behind the yeah. tier one and you just farm, bring him to a camp, all that. And then he seems to be fine. So he's he that's it's part of the reason he's been such a common first phase pick. It just seems so hard to shut down the Primal Beast, even with a potential counter pick like Timber and now the Rubik, who's also a very good response. So I'm actually curious where they where are they going to place the timber? It's almost always played by Divine Llama on the side of Heroic, so it, I would say chances are it's the off lane. You could put it mid if you really wanted into the Primal Beast. It's it's an okay lane. It's playable for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I would imagine this will just be your off lane hero, and pair that with a Rubik. Pretty straightforward duo. Nothing, you know. Nothing too uh, like flashy there, but Rubik does have some pretty decent spells already to steal from the techies. Um, Pulverize, obviously a classic ability that you can steal. If you see the Primal Beast go for it, you just Uno reverse card him and just teleport him to you. And yeah, it's great. It's a really good steal. So I like the Rubik. We'll see what they do on G2 IG here. Because when you said there's a lot of targeted bands that they went for, right? It leaves Timbersaw in, but it also leaves things like the DK, the Centaur, the Mars. Like, there's a lot of heroes that we typically see banned that have slipped through the draft. Yeah, that Luna ban was uh, pretty heads up. I guess they were thinking yeah. about the Timber. Uh, that's been a very common response to, to the Timber. Ooh, TA instead, uh, who brings a lot of early physical damage, which you do have um, reactive armor, but TA hits so hard, even on her initial hit, right? Like just the meld strike alone is pretty hard hitting. So it could be a carry TA and you pair it up with someone like, uh, maybe like Crystal Maiden, then that's a pretty scary lane for a Timber Saw. Yo, sign me up, Muerta. So, I'm a big fan of this hero personally, but I think most often we still see it ran in the support position mm -hmm. against the timber saw. It's pretty cool. And what you can do with it, it's a lot of magic damage as well, just from the support position. Once you get pierce the veil online, I'm curious what the lane is. If it's more, it's a primal beast or if they're going to go back and pick a different off laner, either way, very cool pick. Yeah, there's a lot of flex potential here, and G2IG does have the last pick. So they'll see whatever Heroic does and then decide where they're going to distribute these heroes. And I wouldn't be surprised if Heroic spends a little bit of their uh, reserve time, if not a lot of it here, trying to decide, like, how do we want to address this? Because there's so much potential flex. Bro, put Timbersaw mid, pick Darkseer. Purple hero, close. That's an interesting looking Darkseer. Now, face is point is fantastic. Pointy. This is really good. It lanes well in the Primal Beast if they want to put it off lane, and it's a good core matchup into TA as well. So, yeah, this mm -hmm. is nice. I like it. He will have to be a little careful of the silences because uh, yeah. there is a good amount of burst here. And as long as you can get the time walk off, right, then 
all's good, but uh, man, I don't know. Muerta Silence is so good. It I don't even get it because it's like the cast range is so short. When I play it, it's so hard to do. And yet when you're against it or when you see these pro matches, you're like, dang, how do they they get every single silence they need, it feels like. Yep. Doom gets banned. Okay, one of the rougher matchups for the Faceless Void makes sense. Again, Primal Beast very flexible. Templar Assassin, I have to imagine, is the safe lane into the Timber Saw, right? They they pick this specifically for that matchup. Maybe you could move it around still, though. Um, Pango is still in the, the pool. <clears throat> He's another hero who's extremely safe to just pick when you're not sure what's going on. And Heroic does have the first pick out of this next phase. And yeah, you can hide the Primal Beast, but there's a lot of heroes you still have to worry about. So yeah, they get rid of DK Lesh. Really good heroes against the, the Templar and the Primal Beast. Not to mention it's something that they've they've liked running. So makes sense. For G2IG, they'll probably protect ban for the Faceless Void again. Or they ban the Pango if they don't want to run it. But I mean, we, we know that uh pango has been struggling against primal beast right as a hero in general so if they don't want the matchup i could understand it i think some kind of playmaker whether it's a mid or an off lane is still pretty necessary for heroic like Gyrocopter brings a lot of damage, but Rocket is a really slow setup. So someone else who can just go in first, grab a hero, and then let everyone else do their damage. Chronosphere will eventually be good for that too, but, uh, you know, typically farms at the start. K1, especially a good farmer. So you don't want to force him to come Chrono every single time you want to make a play. 17 seconds of reserve time left. Really thinking this one through. It's pretty tough because you can't be totally screwed over by silences because there's the TA trap plus the Muerta. Yeah, I like the slaughter. Band. I forget what's it's called. It's, what is it? Dead Reckoning? What's the uh, what's the the calling? You're the calling. What am I thinking yeah. of? <laughs> Dead Reckoning. That's a sick spell name, though. You should uh, send that one over to Valve. Give that one to Puppet Master. I mean, uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Ring Master. What the heck? What uh, what is it like? Day 100 of waiting for Ringmaster, Pepe Hens. It's tomorrow. Don't worry. It's almost here. It is day 96. Unlucky. All right. They go for something a little bit more straightforward. The tiny pick for analog in the mid lane. We saw this exact played out last game into a Primal Beast, and it looked pretty good for Primal Beast. So I'm uh, wondering what they do. That being said, he has way squishier cores and supports than what we saw last game right he was playing into a tri strength core and some tanky supports even so yeah maybe he can get more done on the tiny yeah i mean uh ta refraction is good versus tiny but he has some teammates to help him with that uh with some high rate damage like constant ticks to break refraction and after that ta is not a very tanky hero and he could definitely bring the burst damage for that otherwise like the techies and the uh the muerta avalanche is really good here too i mean you don't you can't pick an enigma here because the rubik you don't want to pick mars into the faceless void you could look for something like a tide hunter or even a viper if you want to get a little spicy and experimental Again, then, oh, okay. We're starting to see more Axis lately. I'm pretty sure he was picked in an earlier series, too. It was uh, Divine Lama. We, he, no, uh, there was another. Yes, that one. That was the first Axe pick. And then someone, one of the series today that we didn't cover, I think there was an Axe pick. So maybe Axe has been making the rounds in scrims because he seems to be coming up a little bit more now. Mm, okay, I can see that. I mean, it looked very good with what Divine Lama did into those late game matchups uh, of like Morphling and stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, this is this is neat. Okay, yeah, it looks like Bet Boom ran it. They got crushed, but they did pick it. Um, <laughs> so that might not be an indication of the hero's strengths. I think for the most part, 
you pick this hero to guarantee a kill onto like the carrier. Last time we saw it was against the Morphling. This time into the Faceless Void, very similar. But the difference though is if you kill if you don't kill the Morphling, he's still going to be low. If you don't kill the Faceless Void, he time walks off a hundred percent of your call damage. So there is going to be a, a moment where you know maybe K1 gets out. The silences could be problematic with the following up damage from like techies. So. Mm -hmm. I like the axe pick quite a bit. I think it, it is pretty sick this game. He does have good follow up in the the other teammates for like the blink calls, and uh, well, gyro can be pretty good versus axe. But if we just think about axe versus faceless first in the lane, like once you can creep cut, uh, faceless void does not have early wave clear, right? So he will take a lot of like little chip damage from creeps that you don't want to time walk, especially because you know as soon as you use it, axe is going to be looking to run at you. Um, so that could help Axe's laning stage. We have seen him struggle a bit. It, it seems to be like part of the reason we don't see as many Axe picks lately is that Vanguard is not very good right now. Uh, we saw a little bit like when Shivas was first buffed, like there were some like Axe Shivas builds, but then that got nerfed and then he just wasn't as good as like the other options. Uh, but I think that BKB piercing call is like starting to come back. Like players are liking it, uh, to set up the the damage from their other teammates we're getting to a point where like people are getting so farmed so quickly on the map that it's a it's all you really need is kind of like a moment to try and burst down some of these like uh carries and axe gives you that moment right so mm -hmm. a single support can offer an, a, enough damage and x nova it is a five position techies of course but at some point, he will be following his axe around the map once JT has like blade mail and the blink dagger, and then it's just going to be blast off into sticky bomb proxy mines. Like Muerta will have the calling to follow it up, and K1 mm -hmm. will have to be very careful with his manta usage. He will need one absolutely this game. But even then, you can't really manta the calling if you're still under the spirit. So he needs to be careful about re it reapplying. But. Mm -hmm. Either way, it should be a very exciting series. It's our final one of the evening, everyone. So thank you for tuning in. It is Heroic taking on G2IG. Both teams playing their second series here today. 30 seconds to battle. Both teams were next to each other. I thought we were going to see some action. It's kind of cool. They're baiting K1. They smoked. They're going top. But actually, the entire team is down here for G2IG. So, so long as K1 does not get killed and he does have time walk may not see much happen although techies is going top x nova might be in a little bit of trouble we've seen heroic do this play or something very similar many times the battle begins. x nova they don't have anyone close oh he turns around for the rune they have a blood grenade if they want to go for it but no real way to cancel tp so instead kj is just gonna chase this techies and deal a ton of damage all right He's going to come to the lane a little low. Did end up going for six tangos, though, so he'll be able to reset. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they're cutting the creeps, grabbing the ranged creep. So it should help push the tower in, or push the lane into the tower. Yeah, this should uh, help to avoid Axe's weak Axe stage. Uh, we've been seeing this a little bit more. Kill the range creep. Actually, even in this case, his creeps even walked under tower, which is even better for Axe. But otherwise, you just like get to the lane, creep aggro, and then your creeps have nowhere to go because the range creep's dead, so they just go under tower from there. All right. Into the lanes we go. We've got the mid lane matchup of Tiny versus Primal Beasts. Exactly what we saw in our last series. Well, uh, I'm curious how this is going to go. I think Tiny... One of the few heroes that can CS relatively well against the Primal Beast, but it's not easy. Primal Beast just has so much damage. Yeah, and he's a huge hero oh, who just like stands Lama. over the creeps. He's just dead. First blood. Underestimating the constant slows from the Sticky Bomb and just that early meld damage. Wow, that is a really good kill. For sure. That's uh, maybe making use of that uh, early level meld. Uh, Divide Llama is also going for an urn, by the way. That's an interesting one. I don't think we've seen that one before. Bottom lane help break the fraction. A lot of early aggression in these side lanes from the side of G2 IG. I think 
as you pick up more levels on the side of Heroic, these lanes get easier. At least for the top lane. Bottom lane... I don't know, there's a period where, like, Faceless kind of becomes okay, but then Axe becomes able to creep cut, like we talked about. We'll see if he chooses to do that or not. Sometimes they do just play the lane uh, against melee heroes, where you can just threaten call all the time. Wow, they're Locked going off, really aggressive going for on Divide the Divide Lama, Lama top again. again. So, one it thing just... I noticed that we didn't really bring uh, bring up quite yet is the fact that they, it is KJ's Gyro and Schofield's Rubik, but they've lane swapped, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not fully sure why. Maybe the Rocket Barrage better against the the uh -oh. TA compared to Rubik's Fade Bolt. Yeah, that probably why. Yeah, the Vylon needs to be very careful. The the Sticky Bomb spam that's been coming out from his techies has caused a massive problem for him. And Monet just doing a great job at keeping the damage in with the side blades. We can see why they picked this as the counter. Now KJ in trouble going for the Rocket Barrage. Blast off through as well. They're going to clean up a second kill in this top lane. They're getting a lot done up here. I feel like they're they're actually doing better than expected and actually maybe not be done. He's chasing Divai Lama now with Refraction up. I don't think he'll get the kill, but he's gotten a good chunk of damage in. Mid lane is going quite well for NTS. He's sitting up on nine denies to the tiny, so stuff from him yeah the hero model is so big on primal beast you'll see a lot of players just like stand over the creeps and if you don't use smart attack or one of the new dota labs things it can be pretty difficult to actually target the creeps you're trying to last hit and even just like a fraction of a moment trying to like fix it can lead to a deny at this level so i'm actually not sure i didn't i don't even really know what smart attack is because i'm you know Boomer gamer, I don't pay attention to these old, these new features. Boba Cup bottom lane will get brought down from Schofield. Very nice bait from him, but uh, yeah, actually, I was Quinn was talking about this um, last night, I believe. He has that one of that Dota Lab features enabled that allows you to uh, ignore hero targeting and uses it specifically. JT? Oh, he goes in for Schofield, getting a little bit punished. Lost under the tower, yeah. Sorry, what was a? Uh... No, he, he Tell just me more had, about he what has Quinn that feature saying. enabled. Oh, Bobaka, the op main gets a kill from downtown. You deserve nothing. Uh, it's a good really feature nice for uh, for last hitting in particular. Uh, K1 is taking Ooh. so much damage that he gets the he call. He's gonna get a calling blade, or the counter helix rather. Wow, that's huge. Even switch tower aggro in time too, so he's just gonna TP home and heal up. And they missed a lot of creeps on the faceless void. Yeah, and NTS rotates top to finish off uh, Divai Lama as well. They are crushing this lane stage one to five at the five minute mark. Uh, I mean, net worth isn't too bad quite yet, but we're only five minutes in. And the main problem for me is Divai Lama's like timber saw is level three, man. He is getting owned right now yeah that's uh i mean timber he is a really strong hero and he'll recover with some levels but it's not the start you really want to have six minute runes coming up here oh, what Ooh, they chase away primal beast but baboka there just to uh deny the haste rune which would have been great for this tiny maybe could have made a gank to help out one of the lanes maybe that timber saw who needs some help yeah, and boy, does he need help. There's a one hard stack. Maybe they can make a little bit more for him. He, he clears stacks so easily on Timbersaw that you can help him recover pretty quickly. Stoko managed to grab a courier bottom, but I mean K1 is struggling very heavily against his axe. Like he's he's okay net worth wise, but JT's got like a double wave pushing into his tower. He's got like a pretty sizable XP advantage, almost a full level. Yeah, off the kills see. are getting. Seven minutes come through. KJ will take. Okay, so they just swap wisdom runes. KJ 
and X Nova taking them away from the enemy team. That being said, Axe is going to use his time to rotate on over. He's got to throw the missile. Going to do what damage he can here with the two points in the rocket barrage. But KJ turns his way back towards those ancient creeps like, come on, let me get the deny. Not going to happen. Looking at Divai Llama again. Ooh, Timber Chain away just in time. No blast off. It feels really bad when you have to max Timber Chain on this hero. It, it, it's still like a decent ability in terms of damage, but you absolutely want to max your Whirling Death. So his mm -hmm. damage output here in this like early mid game is going to be lacking for sure. Scanning. He's still queued up a Blink Dagger. A lot of times you want to go for the, the Kaya into Blink. That's a Shield Rune picked up on NTS's Primal. You're not killing this guy. He is so tanky. It's going to be like over 2,000 health here at 8 minutes with that shield rune active. He's just cleaning up a lot of stacks in his own jungle. Gets the level 4 trample out, so makes quick work of those. And yeah, I mean, G2IG just playing a really clean early uh, group like lane stage and now looking to transition this into some maybe kills. NTS not going to find anything in the bottom side. We'll just walk back towards mid. Do TA though. Holy heck. Monet is enormous. Yeah. Now, TA is the kind of hero where one or two misplays can be very punishing because she does not have a lot of health. So even though she's farmed and she has a ton of like kill potential, she can be killed, especially with like Chronosphere oh, stuff like that. Oh, that is uh, but if you play carefully, Lama gets baited there as a big rotation top comes through. Yeah, and when you have your team come and help you, then you're safe to just do damage. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's they have a ward scouting this whole attack. rotation bottom side from the two, from uh, Tiny and Rubik. So they're gonna get this top tier one tower uncontested. Divai Lama is gonna need some major help to get back into this game. Dyer's structures are fortified. Boca is getting really close to passing Timbersaw. That is not good. Pulverize for some fun. Yeah, the tempo that's going to come up from G2IG is going to be really scary. The blade mail for the axe, of course, into the blink dagger will be the mass, the big timing for JT in the off lane. And with that, if he's able to find kills onto the faceless void and slow down his game, then I don't know what you could do on heroic at that point. Because mm -hmm. he really needs to start pulling ahead in net worth, or at least trying to catch up to this Templar Assassin who is, you know, halfway to a, a, a Desolator. Yeah, and, and Baboka, his first item of choice is going to be an Atos. He's still, he's still a while away from it, but that's going to be really good to help them pick up some early kills, too. With this rough start, like, you don't have Dispels quite yet. Oh, Divai Llama misses the Timber Chain. He might just die. Cool. Uh, I mean, he does have a lot of damage into Monet and did Radiant's have some extra charges, but he's got a greater healing Lotus. Radiant's so he needs to very top. much respect that healing. All right. Meanwhile, during all of that, they cleared up the massive Ancient stack that had been made. So both JT as well as NTS grabbed those. Virus go. <laughs> Monk and Obi you. Oh no, what links are being clicked? <laughs> Alright, things are looking really good for G2IG here. I mean, a 4k advantage here at 11 minutes. I'm trying they're to see where done. they're... Uh... Oh yeah, Invis rune on, nothing to say. Might pick up a free Rubik kill. Scofield just got level 6, so he'll be able to steal Pulverize, but... Yeah, not when you get the techies follow up. And that's what we were talking about, right? Like, X Nova is going to be able to contribute so much damage into this mid game. Like, once the blink daggers come out from Axe as well, you can follow up any call, but pulverize as well. Yeah, otherwise, he just gets to throw in like sticky bombs and scout for his team to find those targets. He'll just back up these tanky initiators. He's a six. 
thousand gold advantage already. It was it was like kind of not too bad around the five to six minute mark, but it is falling apart very quickly. And they're also just going to take the enemy stacks as well. NTS feeling unstoppable on the Primal Beast, and rightfully so. Divai Lama, he really does not want to lose these Ancients, but he's going to have to give them up. There's no way he can stay here. Maybe you bring Tiny, but he does not have a Blink Dagger yet. And again, does not have enough damage on his own to kill something like a Primal Beast with a Blade Radiant Mill and 1,700 health. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what they can do. I think with this Tiny Blink and like the Maelstrom from Faceless Void, you have to make a super quick rotation because you're going to need multiple cores, like you said, lack of damage. But as soon as you're missing multiple cores, G2IG should see that and just back off. So you're going to have to be really fast, like all TP, instantly smoke, run at a target. But if that works and you can find a kill on, for example, the TA, who went a little bit of a greedier build, Deso first, right? She's killable if you can chrono her with some teammates behind you. And there aren't really any saves from G2IG that will work against a chronosphere. So that could be a method to recover, but you gotta do that soon, I think. And if uh, if you don't, it feels like this lead's just gonna keep growing. There is a smoke up with the tiny blink. Yeah, they gotta no find something. in this triangle though, unfortunately. Nope, not at all. And they're also finishing up the desolator on Monet as well. So he's thinking of probably getting active soon. JT, I mean, he just finished his jungle pattern. He's going back to base, wants to heal up, Schofield actually gets seen here behind the tower so they know he's there Dyer's bottom tower but is under attack. 14 Radiant minutes wisdom rune could be a good steal for hero if they can get it but guess what g2 ig smoking across the map it's gonna be nts with the duo supports this is a great play Baboka's one gold away from his atos it's on the way the scan attack. comes out they know that this is happening NTS will scout him. Missile comes out. KJ, no call down, so he's lacking a lot of damage. Great dead shot there from Schofield to try and buy some space, but the chase continues, and now he's the one in the in the rough spot. Call comes through. Ran down by the Primal Beast. They get the tower, unable to take the Wisdom Rune. Good response from G2IG. Dyer's middle tower. Some deja vu right there of an axe call being lost to Primal Beast just onslaughting it. <laughs> yeah, it's true, huh? I mean, they did bring all five heroes bottom. They are getting a little bit of space for Analog as well as Divai Lama top, but I can't imagine it's going to be for long. Yeah, they smoke back across the map. Analog's in a decent spot to pop this. He sees him. Avalanche out, toss, and he's going to immediately blink to safety. Needs to be careful, though. TA nearby. Atos is out, has an illusion rune. Going to start scouting rune, with these. Wow. Yeah. I think that actually just saved his life. Absolutely. I mean, he knew about this. Call down's here now, actually. Primal Beast, he's tanky, but there's a lot of magic damage here. Chrono, it barely catches, and that call down's gonna hit on the money. Okay, they finally get a big kill, and it's gonna be the Primal Beast. And Blink is now online for JT. So a little unfortunate for them that they lost their Primal Beast there. But I think once he's up, you can just go again. You have a lot of good items. Schofield stole Onslaught, which is kind of funny. You want to see that happen. Call JT, or K, yeah, KJ finds, JT finds, K, okay, I'm just, that's a going to be an awful thing to say this game. Axe finds Gyrocopter. Doesn't get the Culling Blade, though, because of the uh, missile, which is unfortunate for the Axe. Was that two kills now? Still no culling blade kills. Mm -hmm. Give themselves a nice D ward on this top river. Unfortunately for them though, the 16 minute room oh will be top. God. And Tiny gets it. Bottom lane. In comes the axe. Gotta be careful though. Divai Lama does a lot of damage. The pullback. JT's in trouble. Avalanche toss. He gets him. Now looking for a Monet. Instead, he just throws the Melt Strike onto the Rubik. He steals the Melt himself. And now Monet is dead. Middle tower is under attack. Uh oh. The misplays by G2IG right there. I think they were playing really well up to that point. A bit of an aggressive call, and then Monet wanting to try to get something out of it, but sticking around against four heroes Radiance by yourself. Not the best idea. <laughs> that's uh, that's going to significantly cut down their gold lead. So I was worried about Divai Lama going the blink dagger first. I, was, I thought I was going to undercut a lot of his 
damage that he needs to put out, he did end up going back for the Kaya. So the Axe, you know, he goes for that aggressive blink. He blinks into like the, the literal biggest part of trees that he couldn't blink into. So that whirling, the whirling death did like 600 damage to him. What did Schofield take? Gunslinger. Gunslinger. Wait, what? Because of the That's toggle. Because cool. the toggle, yeah. That's why he tips over. That's pretty cool. Like, okay, That's... okay, well played. I respect it. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't think about the toggle. All right, time to turn that bad boy on and start farming on the Rubik XD. <laughs> How do you shoot twice with one staff? He's a magician, man. You can't question it. He's a wizard, Harry. X Nova gets scouted actually on the backside, but a pulverize comes out from NT as the follow up is there. The Chrono's not what you want. He will be able to find the Muerta before the Pierce the Veil, but he doesn't get the bash in time. And now K1's in a rough spot. KJ on the backside runs into NTS to Blade Mail, returning a lot of damage. Analog here as well. They want the Primal Beast. There's the Avalanche. The toss to chain them in. Great time dilation as well, but JT gets a fantastic call. They've got the tiny K1. Time walks the last second. He's out. A fantastic play from IG. Monet's not done. He gets an extra. Still looking for K1. Still thinking about it. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Just like 100 to zero that gyrocopter. Oh, Schofield and Bo Bobica having some fun over here in the trees. Well, maybe one more fun than the other. Will steal the this he steals the gunslinger again all right that's actually quite funny great call out from jt no calling blade available bobica steals the at the end he's like yeah, this one's mine homie i got this the gunslinger almost worked for him there he got one proc and the uh, second attack went to bobica i think he needed one more attack to get the kill though dude this is actually a massive buff to muerta against the rubik i had not considered this because i was thinking about how good it is to steal any of the muerta spells but the mm -hmm. fact that you can just toggle similar to Bulwark is pretty cracked. Oh, Divai yeah. Lama into it's... trouble in the top lane. Pulverize coming out any moment. Try oh, he, he doesn't actually have it. It's on cooldown. However, Divai Lama, uh, yeah, he's got a sticky bomb on top. And ends up going into a proxy mine anyway. One mistake was a little worried for G2IG, but they're back with the Vengeance. Right back up to now a 9k lead at 19 minutes. I will say one difference though is that K1 has been finding kills in those those uh, last couple fights. So he's not that far behind the TA and this hero is pretty scary as the game goes on. They will not be able to save anyone in the Chronosphere unless they get some like Wind Wakers. Uh, then that could be something. But he's working on a BKB. You won't even be able to like put your... Techie's reactive taser shard onto the chrono targets. One thing to note too is they've got BKB timings coming out. So you, of course, NTS has his already. The axe very close, uh, closing on his about a thousand gold away. Monet just starting on his, so he's got a little bit more time. But the triple BKB from G2IG is going to be really good. Yeah, haste rune on Primal Beast too. One of the best you could get. Might just use oh. it to kill KJ on his own here. He's looking at the map, trying to see where the enemies are. Oh, into the Pulverize, Onslaught with a Shift Q. Classic combo, really well played. Uh, K1, he needs to be careful top lane. All right, he's gone. He's also going for a BKB. So the face is void realizing that Manta is not going to be enough. So he queues, he buys just a casual Sanjanyasha, which status resistance is quite useful in this game to, to reduce the duration of Axe Call, right? But also recognizing he needs a BKB. So his, his impact's a little bit slow. NTS forced a BKB as Analog finds him with the Wisdom Rune, so he'll TP to safety. A pulverize as well piercing BKB, so yeah. status resistance will be nice. He is still going to get a BKB, and I think he has to, to deal with the silences and to make sure he can get killed with Chrono. Really nice find bottom. That's uh, another set of Deso stacks. K1 goes for the Chrono, but guess what? Pierce the Veil lasts even longer. Bobica, Avalanche, Toss, though. He's still going to die, so a lot of good rotation on through. But that is a big cooldown, right? Chronosphere down for over two minutes. Yeah, you might just 
Well, I thought they were waiting for BKB on TA before wanting to do Roche, which looks like they might still, but I mean, with Chrono down, I feel like you could actually just go and do it. Yeah, I think you might. You you would need a little bit more help. You'd have to bring the, the Axe and the Primal Beast, but... Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Monet probably going to start setting up for it. Yeah, he is. There is a stolen Rubik trap in here, though. That is kind of sick from Schofield, so he sees this happening. I did not Hanging consider the fact when he stole that. So, yeah, that's they a will really be able good. to smoke. Let's see, if they don't bring the axe, this is a really good fight for Heroic. Axe is going to start making his way through that portal, though. The Twin Gate will get him to this fight. Roche, about a quarter HP left as JT now comes through. The wraparound, are they going to find it? I mean, this would be an amazing Avatos in from the tiny. There it is, the Avalanche, the Toss, the Aegis. It snaps, he does it. get it. Monet is low, Analog trying to bring down this Templar Assassin. Schofield comes right through, they get the kill. So Tiny's going to respawn. JT is blinked, canceled by the trap from Rubik. BKB is going to be forced from him. Where is your faceless Void? He's not even here. He's in the top side of the map. The rest of the team's just trying to do it without him. Looking for more. The toss out from Analog. Trying to just bring him down. A Yule's out from Divine Lama to cancel the disengage. They they took this fight without the Faceless Void. That is... I mean, that stolen trap is... That's a game winner right there. Oh, that, oh. We're, not, we're, we're on a replay. That. You don't see the BKB. You don't see it. I mean, huge plays from Analog, right? Goes in, gets the Avatos, gets the Aegis steal, and during all of it, he got a lot of damage out onto Monet. Yeah, Monet was one second off of Refraction, and at that point, maybe he lives. Also, if he had his BKB, he lives, which is why I thought maybe that's what they're waiting for without the Chrono. I thought like, oh, okay, they can just do it. But I, I also had not realized he had stolen Trap and put one in there, and I guess G2IG had not considered that either. That gave them all the vision they need for the perfect jump from Analog to, I want to say, turn the game. They're still 8K behind, actually. So it's like, it's not a, a done deal or anything, but that was huge for them because I, imagine a TA with BKB Aegis. That is going to be so difficult to fight into. Yeah, it would be really problematic. Ooh, nothing to say. Going on to Divai Lama, nearly killing him with his own Blade Mill. That was, I mean, that's a sick play. You need to be very careful about that. Under I think the longer Heroic drags this out, the better, because of the Faceless Void. Not that G2IG can't win in the late game, especially with something like Axe, who like sometimes the right blade mail blink call can just like win you the game, but considering the start they had, Heroic just delaying things out, especially with that Aegis snatch, uh, they're going to be pretty happy. Dude, JT's build is sick. He's going Kaya Sanj, which does amplify the pure damage of Culling Blade, so your coal threshold is just higher, which is kind of cool. Pretty sick. Who got that shard just now? Goes to Schofield. Schofield. Any cool shard steals from the enemy team? If he steals traps. Yeah, if he steals traps, you could get the silence. That could be cool. More Gunslinger. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Muerta, though, she finishes up a Gleipnir, so Bobica's definitely scaling. He ended up going for the fourth point in Gunslinger, has a strength talent. He's surprisingly tanky already. So not an easy kill for this oh, face as well. We've seen him already struggle to bring him down in the Colonel before, but can it get more difficult? Nice, super deep smoke coming in from G2IG, knowing exactly where someone's going to be farming and analog. Uh-oh, buddy. JT, smoke breaks, goes for the call, catches him right at the edge, and in comes NTS, the follow-up from the Techies. More than enough damage, Culling Blade number three for the Axe. As the lines are drawn, push mid, push top, guys. Yeah, I think G2IG can take this tower so quickly, though, and then back to defend. Uh, I guess they don't have Pulverize, but... I mean, it's a pretty low cooldown. They can fight here in, like, 13 seconds. Yeah. Absolutely. And NTS goes back to the mid lane just to make sure that this uh, push gets put to an end. Does go back for the Eternal Shroud after his BKB. So even tankier on this probably He's sitting at 3,000 health looking for his Aghanim Scepter next. It's going to get to a point where this guy will never die. 
And that's kind of the reason we see Primal Beast get banned all the time. Like, there's just not enough damage you can throw into him. You eventually just fall short. I like the Ags he's building, too. Break is going to be really useful this game. Versus really all three cores of Heroic. Yeah. I mean, it's just a lot of damage, too. Like, that, I think a lot mm -hmm. of people, like, underestimate how much damage the Aghanim Scepter does from Primal Beast, especially when he's got the uh, Pulverize going. Yeah. Did get nerfed a little bit. I think it lost, like, 15 damage per per line, but still a great chunk of damage. Time is money. Dude, Boboca is going straight carry at this point. He's, he's got his Glyphon here, finished up a Dragon Lance. He'll probably go for like a Hurricane Pike. No, nope. he's going Crystal. Oh no, the Chrono <laughs> top lane, bro. He was looking for Axe. Oh, oh he was looking for Axe on the JT. Chrono. I wonder. JT has Vampire Fangs, so the extra Night Vision might have given him just a little bit more time to react. It actually was 100. percent because he, he, he could cast the Chrono from Radiant's outside of the, the night vision range, attack. I think. Radiant are scanning. KJ. And some trouble here. Gleipner out from Bobica. The follow-up from X Nova. Just so easy for these two supports. <laughs> JT was waiting to not like waste his blink call if he didn't need to. But he was going to commit for the ult. But the first damage is actually too strong. Dead before he could even get there. It does mean he still has like half stone. this smoke duration. Is he gonna CK one? He has a BKB. Radiance Curry has been killed. Under the tier two, it's it's a bit tough. It's fine you zone him away. Your TA and <laughs> your TA and secondary carry more to support. Air quote support is <laughs> taking the tier two, so. You don't even need to find another kill. Yeah, not at all. No chrono available, right? So like, K1 can't, doesn't really offer any threat right now at the moment. That being said, Analog is going to walk over two traps and just get immediately called from the Axe. He does have an Avalanche that he can throw instead. He's going to go for the BKB, but guess what? NTS is here. Pulverize, not going to allow you to TP out. And it should be another death for this Tiny. As the call comes through, Pulling Blade. Now available, JT's got another. Four stats, that's eight armor. Rylan does find X Nova, but he's quite tanky, has that Guardian Greaves, just jumps away. They need a gem on Heroic to start dealing with these TA traps. They're freaking yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah, oh no! I saw the double mine, KJ just walks into it and dies. All right, Techies, uh, doing quite well this game. If you look at just G2IG's vision, they see so much. They have two very deep wards, so give them all the information they need to just know, like, he's somewhere bottom, let's go. We'll find him eventually between the traps and just, like, running at them. They also have, like, mines in other spots, so they have so much random vision on this map. I, yeah. I do think you need, like, a gem pretty soon here, if not already. Radiant are scanning. I have Scotty finished up on the Faceless Void. Does help him tank up a little bit, but Monet is closing in on that Daedalus. Radiant's middle tower Has that full attack. pike complete like we talked about. And JT is going for the Bloodstone build on the Axe, the one that we typically see increasing that Berserker's Call AoE, but stacks very nicely with that 25 talent. The very long Roche timer. Oh yeah, two minutes and uh, about 30 seconds. Potentially helping out Heroic as uh, they want to stall this one out. TPing down to set up for this because they don't know it's a long spawn. Oh, well, actually they're kind of going mid. I think they want to pick off uh, the last Roche fight. It was a little bit unfortunate for G2 IG. They are so much stronger right now that I don't think it would really matter. Uh, oh, mine's going to pop. They know someone's nearby. So they know the Roshan is definitely the target here once again for both teams. JT coming through the twin gate. But look at the techies mines, baby. They are everywhere. 
Someone's gonna walk up here and have a bad time. It's gonna be analog. Oh, they find JT on the backside. They go in. K1 thought going for the chrono. Decides against it. But dude, KJ just gets one shot by the primal beast. They force the BKB out on the tiny. There's gonna be the pulverize. G2IG are just waiting. They got nothing to spend at the moment. Two heroes dead, both supports. I think Heroic felt the pressure of not knowing whether Roche was actually up or happening, so they tried to take that high ground, but yeah, they were, the Dire was just waiting and all the mines go off, weakens the enemy, gets that magic resistance down, and that's why KJ just <laughs> gets totally deleted there. Uh, and then, I mean, from there, they don't even feel they can fight. And in fact, so many G2IG, they're just chilling in the back, they're just watching, nothing to say go. TA throws in a couple of attacks. Actually, live. Super fun at the end. Yeah, live once again. We're gonna see analog. But dude, JT is about to delete his blink dagger if uh, X Nova takes another kill like that. I swear. No, it's a. Uh, <laughs> it's so difficult for this tiny. Is why I also didn't really like the tiny pick in the first place. He's playing into really tanky, uh, like primal beast in the mid lane. We know the matchup is not great already, um, and they just pick a really tanky hero to round out their trap. And now. You know, what does your Tiny really do? He's going for like the Conda, of course, to try and scale, give him some more damage, but he, it's struggling for sure. You know what's funny? Hit me, I like jokes. So Axe went Kaya Sanj, buffs up the Culling Blade damage, right? Took the talent for it. 700 pure damage threshold. Still can't, still only has four stacks. Still get all kills he, stolen from him. All he needs is a Conda now to add to it, right? That'll even further yeah. increase this, the damage. It's like a thousand play. health, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? You have a thousand no, HP. What if you were to uh, be deleted? Dyer's top tower is under attack. Nah, I mean, this is this is a sick Axe build. I like this a lot. And I'm glad we're seeing more Axe. He's one of my favorite heroes in Dota. I think he's just incredibly fun. Has just really fun build as, as well. The Aghanim yeah, Scepter, I mean, JT's Bloodstone. got the Bloodstone. Yeah, it's all really good. He's uh, level 22 and a half, so not quite at that 25. But with that talent, you know, we might actually see him call a Faceless at the edge of Chrono. Depending how it's positioned, it might actually happen. It could absolutely happen. I wonder, like, what K1 is going to do this game. Like, he, obviously, you have to go to backtrack talent at 25, so he he just needs to be able to start securing kills in Chronosphere. I just struggle to see which ones it's going to be. If you don't catch Monet on the Templar Assassin, uh, it's just rough. Like, I, I, he doesn't solo kill Axe or Primal Beast anymore. I don't think. It would be pretty tough. They have to already be low. I mean, he is... He's getting pretty farmed. Maybe if he picks up his butterfly, he would have the damage. Uh, but it's... Yeah, it's tough. Like, you might get TA. This, uh... This Muerta secondary carry in the back, she might actually kill you while you're, you're trying to kill people in your chrono. She's That's just true. been farming back here. Dude, he's almost level 20. He has his Chrysalis Pike done. Now going for a Silver Edge. He's like, yeah, why not? I'll just snipe people. I mean, Boboka hits for almost 300 right damage. Dude, I would be so stoked if he actually just went Aghanim Scepter. I think this is one of those points where it's like you could just go for an Ags and play around the parting shot because it is pretty cracked of an ability. But... We'll see. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Be kind of a cool, cool potential save for Chronosphere. I hadn't even considered it for that one. Uh, I was more just thinking like he's just gonna go up to a hero and delete them with parting shot. But yeah, I guess you can also throw it onto an ally, Dyer which is neat. Are scanning. That's how you know you're the core player and I'm the support player. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I played a lot of where to carry when this hero came out. I love this hero. Uh, nothing to say, just again, not really caring about anything in this game. So he had 4,500 HP, the Violama blinks in, and uh, that's just immediately temper chain away. 
Let's say you steal on Rubik. Anything useful? Onslaught. It's okay. That's not bad. Three mobility now with the Ogre Seal and the Four Staff. Yeah, problem is there's a lot of BKBs already. So definitely once... I'd say Pulverize. Traps could be good to maybe get some map control back. Techie's Mines for a similar reason. They're going to try and lay into the Primal Beast here. The break is how it just responds with the Pulverize, but Analog just deletes the Techies onto the backside. They will enable to time walk off some of the damage. He's going to have to BKB soon. He does. JT gets the call. He's got a Chrono available. He's looking for Monet, but he does have him Aegis, so he doesn't want to throw it quite yet. Bobica on the backside does finally fall. Two kills for Heroic. As a decent fight actually comes out from them, and they don't actually spend too much. Great play from Analog there to find that Techies. Yeah, Axe, Axe has boots of travel, but uh, TB to the outpost, so it took a little longer than they would like, and by the time he's here, you know, the fight's kind of already in a the spot they don't want to continue. If they manage to kill K1, maybe with some like more lucky hits from the, the Daedalus, then that fight probably goes better. They can keep pushing it, but K1 manages to get that time walk off. Partially thanks to that Sanj, making sure call duration is not as long, silence duration isn't as long, and then he's able to just get out. Doesn't actually commit the chrono, but uh, they can now look for something else. He finds an Aviana's Feather, which, I mean, will give him a lot of evasion once he finishes up the Butterfly as well. Uh, JT finds arguably the best thing he could get for the Axe, the Ninja Gear. The only other one at this point would be... Uh, that timeless relic, right? Just giving him even more spell damage for his <laughs> that would be blade. Sick. But um, yeah, I mean, Ninja Gear is fantastic for him to play around. Yeah, maybe like Rattle Cage or Trickster Cloak could be cool too. But Rattle Cage actually is probably really cool with Radiant's Axe Call and the armor attack. scaling. Mm -hmm. Where to but Ninja Gear to get the calls. Oh. See, like, that's that's it. That's why he just needs to find the calls, because you got to have a TA and a Muerta just throwing in insane damage. Dyer's top tower is under this game is still far from over, uh, I will say. It, it, like, barring, like, a single fight from G2IG where if they don't have buybacks on Heroic, they could just clear the base so easily. But, I mean, Heroic want to stall this one out for quite a while. Where did he die? He just walked into. He went through the dice. twin gate. No, he went through the twin gate. Just got deleted. Dude, literally six hundred damage sweeper. from th only three mines. Really? Okay, yeah, uh, that is literally uh, sixteen hundred damage. Wow. Yeah, it's like seven fifty per mine, and they are shredding your magic resistance. So the first one does like some damage, but then the next ones are doing like bonus damage. Yeah, he doesn't have like a magic going resist to that item. He like queues yeah. up a glimmer immediately. <laughs> He's like, okay, <laughs> not doing that again. I see how it is. I mean, that's why it would be such a good steal on Rubik, because you get the same stuff, but amped up with your talent. You might be able to get some lucky kills in this game. She would definitely use 20k behind. It's 40 minutes, so it's not like, you know, it's not the worst, but it's pretty rough. Can they They're get this axe? like staying on JT. He gets the BKB. The Chrono comes out again. I don't think you have even remotely enough damage to find this, but a stolen Pulverize from Schofield. They will do it. Okay, so a costly, a costly kill. It does you know spend a lot of resources for this? Is Pulverize not a better? I mean, I know Call is AOE, but I feel like Rubik's gonna die trying to use Call. I guess he has Yules. Maybe he's gonna like blink call, four staff out, <laughs> Yules himself. That'd be interesting. I mean, you could telekinesis, like four staff someone into a call. Like there is some cheeky stuff you could do with it. Uh, that K1 being said, time walk. Yeah, K1's right, gonna fine. have to BKB out of this one. Time walked up for farm. This While game. Axe was dying. Yeah, go ahead. TA took off three-fourths of the tower in the bottom lane, so they do kind of get something out of it. Because the high ground is one of the hardest parts for G2IG here into the Chronosphere. So in a way, you kind of trade one kill for nearly taking off that tower. 
Not too PC bad. NTS. This is just not the hero they want. He's got 5,500 health. They're literally looking for anything else at this point. But he does have a BKB. You can't really... Well, there's the call, actually, from Schofield holding Monet in place. The Techies tries to survive. It looks like he will pulverize. Will hold Schofield in place, and Monet is just going to delete him. And now you got to be careful. Bobica is here. Does have to pierce the veil. Going to turn it on. Space point silenced up for the moment. He's got a time walk. Gets to safety. Timber saw. Timber chains out. He's got. They actually get out on everyone. A one for one trade, despite being all 10 heroes on the top side of the map. Pace was uh, a little scary there. Had no BKB, no chrono, but manages to get out. Again, that uh, Sanj helping out so much with the status resistance, and now the Avionis Feather too, helping him dodge out some of TA's attacks. TA's gonna go for Hex. I wonder if she I needs like an it. MKB. I mean, if he does finish the butterfly, I feel like you're gonna need some sort of true strike, right? Like, with AV on his feather, it's too much. You're gonna miss way too many attacks, and he already has backtrack to, to worry about. Mm -hmm. Maybe secondary carry Faboka can get the, uh, the MKB. <laughs> He's uh, or it's just you rely on edge. Axe, right? That's, that's true, the yeah. Play. Speaking of Axe, is level 25, has the refresher queued up, so he's going for the double, uh, you know, Berserker's Call. Quite good, if you can land Depot it. Depot wide Berserker's Call online. Let's go. Monet will grab the Tormentor, gives the shard over to uh, Bobica. Unfortunately, he has zero kills under Pierce the Veil, which uh, is not that surprising. It is a quote-unquote support where it does. He's about to pass the Tiny in net worth. I think all his Pierce the Veils earlier were all used defensively to live during, like, Chrono and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we missed the call, but you guys saw how wide that is. <laughs> well, analog, avalanche toss. He's going to be able to BKB to dodge out for the moment. Oh, my gosh, KJ gets melted by Nome. They also managed to grab Schofield. Timber saw with a Wind Waker. He's got to run, but JT's there with a call, and good night, Timber. No shot. Three dead just so quickly on the side of Heroic. And they're not done. They're looking for K1 on the other side of the map. NTS. Will he chase? He's not going to. Yeah, the support's getting found by Monet is a massive problem. Yeah, when Refraction's up, he has like oh, 500 JT. plus. BKB is out, Avalanche is there, this face is void, the Pulverize is last forever, he dies! The Calling Blade just in time! And that might spell the game here for Heroic, as that is going to be a dieback on your Timber Saw. That Pulverize Duration talent, yeah, stat resistance is nice, but it can't get you out of this one. And there it is, the GG comes through, and just like that, G2IG will take game number one. Wow, they blew that game open at the end there. Um, they were just... I don't i don't know if they planned for that, but off that like first fight, they were just kind of like poking at that tower, and then they actually catch the faces void with no buyback. So with that, I mean, you can just win because you have a TA in the base. She'll destroy everything. They're very calm about this. They're like, that's okay. It's just game one. We must now do it again for game two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was kind of a beat down for most of this game like heroic did find a couple fights here and there but g2 ig definitely felt in full control and again another last pick axe where it's very surprising like having a, a fantastic game we saw it against the morphling yesterday this time against the faceless void k1 finishes two two and four like doesn't really have a lot of impact the tanky heroes of the primal beast and the axe were just too much and i think a lot of teams might be revisiting is this probably being like, can we even let this through the draft? Because it just feels a little unstoppable. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's uh, it all goes back to that, like starting bands where there are ways to deal with it. And many of these top meta picks, they can all feel like this, but it depends like what else is in the game. And that's, that's kind of the hard part about these bands where you're trying to like target certain heroes that, oh, they're really good with the he these heroes, we gotta remove that. But then sometimes stuff slips through and 
It's like, oh, we have the Primal Beast and we can't take Shadow Demon. We can't take like these other counters that make Primal Beast his life hard. And now he's just allowed to like go around, right? Um, so I think it was a really good draft. I also really like that TA pick when they saw the early timber because yeah. if it was a mid timber, you could like flex the TA there. And if it's an off lane timber, you can do carry TA. Uh, and paired with a strong support like the the uh, techies, they were able to just like whittle him down a bit, nuke him, okay, kill him, right? Uh, we see like this was the possible comeback for Heroic. This Aegis Steel was a really cool play uh, off that stolen trap. But after this, it still felt like G2IG was con able to continue using the tools they had to just keep finding pickoffs and just eventually reclaim the lead. Yeah, I think some of it comes back to the draft. I think some of it just comes back to how well they played. Like the lane was so bad for the Timbers It was just really well played from G2IG. Uh, X Nova on the techies basically killed Timbersaw entirely by himself. It was just like a single meld strike at the end to, to get that first blood for Monet, but I mean, like six or 700 of the damage came from Techie with like three sticky bombs and just auto attack after auto attack. So they they might revisit the the early Timbersaw pick or, you know, what bands they want to play against it. I think G2IG had a very good plan themselves on how they wanted to, to deal with it this game. Yeah, I, I like the draft a lot from them. So curious to see what the adjustment is because... I don't know, like, we we do see a lot of really good Timber Saw games, so I don't, I don't think picking it early was bad, but maybe you have to adjust your bands a little bit. Uh, maybe getting caught off guard a little bit by the, the TA pick, but it did work there. And, yeah. and maybe, maybe from their perspective, it's an execution thing, right? Like, maybe they think it actually should have been fine, like, they expected TA, but then just misplayed that lane. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they just... All three lanes started off on the back foot, and that leaves very little room to to do much to come back. Yeah, that fight in the jungle there, if, you know, it goes slightly different, you know, maybe they're not unable to go high ground, or G2IG doesn't feel comfortable going high ground, and Heroic could stall it out. I, there, there's a lot of things that just uh, G2IG barely outplayed heroic in and i think uh yeah is why they come out with the victory here it's going to be a close series though i can imagine so we're gonna go to a break and we'll be back with game two here heroic versus g2ig our final game of the evening everyone stay tuned we'll see you in just a little bit <laughs> 